Hello friends, this is Uts with a grain of salt or two and today we're gonna be going over all 660 killer add-ons. You don't need to squint too hard if you are interested in one of these particular killers. You can use the timestamps down below to quickly go to the part that you're interested in. Uh, but if you want to watch the whole thing, well, you're gonna end this video with a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of time that's been put into this and I've also had the luck and privilege to consult a lot of very knowledgeable players to put this together. Now, uh, before we jump into the first killer, just a word about the criteria that I will be using. Generally speaking, the add-ons on each killer will go from A to E. They will be within this box, from best to worst relative to each other. Some killers have add-ons that stand out and are really, really powerful, are much, much better than the rest or are relatively overpowered, and those add-ons will go on the S tier. Not every killer has add-ons like this. There's also many killers that have add-ons that are not very good. They're kind of meme add-ons. They actually make the power worse than if you didn't have anything. So if an add-on is detrimental, if it's worse than literally nothing, then it will go on the F tier. But for the most part, you'll be seeing A to E. Obviously, some killers' add-ons are more powerful than others, but we're only comparing them among themselves. We're not comparing add-ons from one killer to another for obvious reasons. Now, that being said, I think we're ready to start, and we're going to start with the Trapper. The best add-on on the Trapper is, no doubt in my mind, the Purple Trapper Bag. The Trapper Sack allows the Trapper to start with all of his traps, and this has maybe one downside that you will notice right away, and it's the fact that you cannot collect your own traps. So once you put a trap down, that trap is going to be there for the rest of the game, no matter what. You cannot collect it. It means that if you have a trap that the survivor's fine and you find it's not super useful, it's gone. But guess what? That is nothing. That is fine. The trapper doesn't even normally have time to set up out of his all of his traps anyway. And if the the more experienced and season you become as a trapper player, you will know that it's 100% okay to have maybe one or two bad traps as long as you keep putting them down. Without this add-on, what ends up happening many, many times is that simply you don't have enough traps at your disposal. If the map is large enough and the RNG on the trap spawns is bad enough, you will sometimes have traps on top of buildings, behind hills, in really, really far away corners, and you will normally have one or two or three traps per game that you just don't use. So it's much, much better to have all of your traps on you and maybe waste one than not have this add-on and waste more than one on average just because you don't have physical time to go and pick them up. So the downside of this add-on is nothing compared to the normal downside that the trapper has. On top of this, as we mentioned, it completely reduces the RNG because you don't have to go around picking them up. And it also allows you to use traps repeatedly in chase. If you want your first down to happen, survivors will never be able to use too many loops. You and trap one thing, then trap the next, then trap the next, until a survivor is choked out of possibilities. You can also obviously play into the trapper's arguably best playstyle, which is to lock down shack and lock down other basement entrances. So if you down someone by basement with this add-on, what you can immediately do afterwards is go up and trap an exit, trap the, trap the window, then trap the other exit, and then maybe double trap the window. You can go absolutely ham because you have all of your traps on you. The fact that all of your traps are on you also means that there's no traps on the ground naturally spawning, and this makes it harder for survivors to know that they're going against a trapper early, which is a which is a really nice plus. The fact that there's not too many traps on the ground also means that other add-ons like the Eerie Stone that we'll talk about in a minute are more effective. So overall, I think this add-on is a must if you're playing trapper really, really seriously. There is another add-on that does a similar effect called the green, the, the, the trapper bag. It's the green bag. This one is not quite as good. Instead of making you spawn with all of your traps, it only makes you spawn with one extra trap, and that trap is just randomly taken from the map and given to your hand. Uh, it's quite nice. It's almost like a half measure compared to the purple bag. Instead of spawning with all of them, you spawn with three, and you can carry up to three, and you can immediately uh, have to worry about one fewer trap being somewhere stupid on the map. So the green bag is okay, and it's definitely not bad. But, you know, it doesn't go as far as the purple. Uh, next up, we go for the stones. The Iridescent Stone and the Honing Stone. Both of these are really solid add-ons. Uh, but they are a little bit situational. The Honing Stone will have an inside timer going on. And every set amount of time, I believe it's 30 seconds, a trap that is disarmed will open. Now, this timer doesn't go it's, it's not individual to each trap it's not that every trap that is closed will open after 30 seconds no no this is only one timer 
And when that timer happens, it will open one of them at random. If you run this add-on by itself, I don't think it's too powerful because what's going to end up happening is that all the traps that are naturally spawning on the ground will reopen. And those traps are in fixed locations. They're not going to catch a lot of people. Occasionally, you will have a survivor run into a trap that you didn't even place that was open, but that's fairly rare. So this add-on on its own, at the start of the game, it's not very powerful. However, if you have the purple bag, or if you quickly set up the traps uh, in the middle game, then this add-on becomes quite powerful, because survivors have a lose-lose situation. If they disarm traps, they're wasting their time, the traps will be rearmed. If they ignore them, then they are obviously losing on the opportunity to use certain loops and so on. So basically, this add-on, you use it to make the traps really, really annoying. It also goes really well with endgame perks and endgame strategies. For example, if you have Remember Me or No Way Out or other really nasty endgame gate perks, you can trap exit gates and survivors will literally not... Ha depending on how many other traps are open, you might be able to guarantee that a survivor will be caught on a trap if they open a door. So what they would need to do is be smart, open a trap, disarm a trap, open the door, and then halfway they need to step out or else the trap will reopen at their feet. So there are some nasty things, and it's also a very mindless add-on. For the most part, you will get more or less value depending on how you think about it, but for the most part, you just put this on, traps reopen, and you don't worry too much about them being, um, being an issue or a nuisance for you. So that's nice. So that would be the Iridescent Stone. Then we have the Honing Stone. The Honing Stone has an interesting uh, ability to it. Anytime a survivor steps on a trap, the survivor can no longer escape by themselves. If they have a friend next to them, then the friend will obviously help them, and then this add-on does nothing. And if they have, uh, if they step on a trap right next to you, obviously you're just gonna hit them, and this add-on will do nothing. Uh, funnily enough, if you are running the padded jaws, this add-on still works, but we'll get to that later. So, what is the deal with this add-on? Why is it so good? The thing that makes this add-on so good is the guarantee that there's no RNG on the escape if a survivor is on their own. So say that a survivor steps on a trap very far away from you and you more or less know that they don't have a teammate next to them, Normally, it would be a very risky thing to go to them, because if they're far away, there's a really good chance they're going to get off their trap in the first or second or third attempt. By the time you get there, they're gone. But with this, they cannot do that. The only thing they can do is escape and down themselves, which is not very good. Typically, not a very good idea. So this add-on makes it gives you a lot of, of, of safety, of security, and knowing what to do at any given situation. It also allows you to immobilize a survivor in chase, and then focus your attention to someone else. Let's say that you have a survivor on the hook, you have a survivor on the ground, and now you have two survivors left. And one of them steps on a trap next to the person on the hook. Normally, you would now have to make a really difficult decision. You go for the survivor on the trap and you get a quick down, but then the other survivor maybe gets a pickup or a rescue, or you go for the survivor that's not on the trap and hope to God that you can down them quick enough before the guy on the trap freeze themselves. But with this, a survivor that steps on a trap is basically the same as a survivor on a hook. They are completely useless. So obviously it can create a lot of clutch situations where your ability to snowball and get back into the game and take control of the game is multiplied. So this is a very, very strong add-on in that situation. However, Keep in mind that even this very, very strong add-on still has the downside that if survivors mostly step on traps only next to you, it doesn't do a whole lot. Next up, we have the Bloody Coil. The Bloody Coil is a nasty iridescent add-on that makes it so that anytime a survivor disarms a trap, they get injured if they are healthy. Now, there are ways to bypass this. If a survivor is injured and they disarm a trap, this add-on does nothing. And if they are 99% healed and they disarm a trap, they are still fine. They can, they can disarm a trap, 99% healed, still injured, and then heal afterwards. And that's something that survivors might start doing if they notice this. Uh, what this add-on ends up doing most of the time is simply become a bit of a deterrent. If you hide your traps very, very, very well, this add-on is not very good because they're not finding them. This is an add-on that you put on when you want to be very, very annoying and very uh, overt and very straightforward with your traps and put them in very obvious places. If um, there, there's a few things you can pair this add-on with. You can pair it with the Iridescent Stone, again, to just make it really unpleasant and very pointless to do traps. You can pair it with the, blood, the, with the, um, with the Oily Coil, which will allow you to reveal the person that disarmed the trap so that you can find them when they're injured. Uh, you can put it with the... You can use it with the Sack so that you obviously can put a lot more traps in one spot. Uh, at the end of the day, 
it is a bit of a weird add-on. The moment survivors notice, they're going to hear and see in the HUD. The, they're going to put two and two together. Uh, even if they're solo players, they will hear a trap snap and then they'll see someone injured and they'll put two and two together. So the moment they see it, they're going to play a bit different. And I don't think this add-on is as impactful as you might think. Not to mention that many times survivors in the current meta stay injured and then this add-on will do nothing. So weigh that uh, into your decision-making if you want to bring this with you. Uh, not a bad add-on, however. Next up, we have the green setting tools. This add-on has two effects. It makes you set up traps and reset them much faster, which is very useful in Chase. There's a lot of situations where you reset a trap that's been stepped on or disarmed in Chase, and the only thing survivors can do is run away. Well, with this, you are ready a little bit sooner. You catch up quite a bit faster, so that's really nice. And it also increases the time it takes to escape and be rescued from a trap, which is not a huge, huge deal on its own, but it does add up. Every time a survivor tries to escape, if their timer to escape is a little bit uh, longer, that means that on successive attempts, it adds up to more and more time. The fast, the rescues with this add-on are still really fast, but it's still better than nothing. So it is a really, really nice add-on that goes well with almost anything. I don't super recommend that you pair it with the um, trapper sack because you're not going to be picking your own your own traps too often. But even then, it wouldn't work bad with it. That's that's how good uh, this add-on is. Uh, we also have the brown setting speed, which is only setting speed, and it's a decent replacement uh, for a brown. I think it's quite good. And then we have the yellow uh, bricks wax, I think it's called. And this basically, like, just so you understand, these two add-ons together basically make this add-on. So the brown has a bit of the speed, and the yellow add-on has a little bit of the delay on the unhook and sorry, on the untrapping and the escape attempts. So just as you can see, both individually are not quite as good. Both together in the green add-on are actually a really, really nice thing. Next up, we have the delaying coils. That is the green coil and the yellow coils. These add-ons are quite underrated. They each add a significant amount to the disarming time of a trap. Uh, normally a trap takes about a th uh, three and a half seconds to disarm. Each of these add-ons add more, uh, uh, they add about a second each, the green one being a little bit more. It's quite noticeable. It's very, very noticeable. And um, this is not super, super good in some situations. If you hide your traps very well and survivors never find them, guess what? This add-on does nothing. Um, if you put your traps in the middle and waste a lot of time putting them in the middle, but then survivors see them and disarm them out of chase, I mean, this will buy you some time, but you're still going to lose the game. The worry, the 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 place these add-ons really really shine is in shack and other lockdown places. If you hook a survivor in the basement in shack and then trap the top, and there's three exits trapped, it takes them such a long time to escape that unless they have some very very smart uh, playstyle um, and and teamwork ideas, they are probably going to die. Like if it takes five seconds plus to disarm a trap. What's going to end up happening is normally you recover from a hit in three seconds. That means that if two survivors start opening traps at the same time, you hit one, then the other one gets it and they all get away. You know, maybe a survivor is opening a trap, so you have to disarm, you have to try to hit them and then they open the other. You're going to leak somewhere. But with this, you just don't leak. If you're in the basement, uh, a shack, for example, or similar, you can interrupt the person, go hit another person, come back, and they're nowhere even close to disarming the trap. Keep in mind that traps are like totems. They cannot be buffed. If you uh, if you um, start to disarm and you're interrupted at the last second, it goes all the way back to the start. You don't pick up your progress like in generators. So with these add-ons, in these circumstances, the basement becomes a very, very inescapable place. If that's something that you want to do, you can run this add-on with something to go with it. Next up, we have the makeshift rub. I think he's best brown add-on. This add-on allows you to step through your own traps while you're walking normally or while you're carrying someone. And instead of being caught in them and being stunned, you simply go through it, no problem. The trap does spring up. It does spring open uh, or spring closed, uh, rather, uh, which is a bad thing. But you don't get caught in it. Now, there's two main things that you can do or maybe three things that you can do with this. You can go through a trap in a moment in a in a place where a survivor doesn't expect it. So say you have a small loop and you trap you trap the the um, uh, for example the pallet and the survivor's on the other side. You can in a moment of of confusion you can go right through it and they might not expect it. You can also trap the basement every exit out of basement and this would be bad because you wouldn't be able to go through it. 
But now with this add-on, you can go through it even if the trap is up. And another thing that you can do is use this as a trap, as a chase tool. You can put a trap on the edges of a loop, and the survivors obviously will have to go around it, which wastes a little bit of time since they have to take a, a wider path. And you can go right through it to save time. So I've made a video on this recently if you want to watch it, but you can use the makeshift wrap to help you in chase sometimes at small loops because it basically makes your path around the loop shorter and it forces them. You can use it creatively like that. And it's a really, really sweet add-on. Next up, we have the the oily coil. Uh, this is a bit of a add-on. This is a bit of a strange add-on, and the game often happens too fast for you to really, really do something about this. Uh, but it does have a bit of utility that cannot be underestimated. Whenever you reset a trap in the ground, the person that disturbed that trap, the the person that disarmed that trap, will be highlighted to you. Now, this is huge because there's no timer for it. If you see a David King disarm a trap at the start of the game, and later, like five generators later, you are looking for that guy, you can leave that trap there and go and rearm it at the moment where you need it. And that is a huge, huge deal. Uh, as we mentioned, it goes pretty well with the bloody coil, because if the person that disarmed it is injured, now you can track them down, and that's an interesting idea. Uh, the only major downside of this trap is that in the current meta, in the current state of the game, people run distortion and off the record very often, and both of these perks disable your ability to be seen by Aura. So you could have this purple add-on and then everyone runs one of those perks and you don't really see anyone. Uh, but regardless, it is a, it is a good situationally useful add-on to have. Uh, an even more situational add-on, in my opinion, is the spring coil, or the stanchion spring, whatever this is called. Uh, this purple add-on is really, really weird. It reopens a trap after a survivor has stepped on it and escaped or been rescued. Now, this is really critical. Unfortunately, if you grab a survivor out of a trap, or if you hit them out of a trap, uh, you the, the add-on does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. However, um, if the survivor has already made the mistake of stepping onto a trap, then the add-on works when they get off by themselves or with help. Now, why would this be useful? Believe it or not, a lot of survivors do not understand how this add-on works or don't even know that it exists. So what will end up happening is they'll go to an exit gate, they'll start to open it, oh, they step on a trap, uh -uh. they escape from the trap, and then what do they do? Well, they just open the trap again, right? They just, they, they just open the gate again, right? They don't worry about the trap. And then after one second, the trap immediately reopens and it catches them a second time. Uh, this can also happen if they start to heal right on top of it. So there are some situations where this add-on genuinely can kind of clutch it. But as I mentioned, it doesn't work when you hit or grab survivors out of your own traps. And that makes it a little bit of a loss uh, to me. Um, most of the times you would rather have another add-on that is just straight up better. Like, for example, with the Honing Stone, they would straight up never be able to get out of the trap, even with help. So that would be a lot more reliable. But yeah, it's not. It's a, it's a gimmicky one that can lead to some fun situations. Uh, next up, we have the Coffee Ground. It's a really strange add-on, but basically whenever you place a trap down, or whenever you reset a trap that was already down, you will get a 5% movement speed for a few seconds. 5%, if it lasted a long time, would be quite noticeable, but... Considering that you slow yourself down very, very significantly, I don't think this add-on is that great stuff. It's not that good. If you are out of chase, this add-on does almost nothing. If you are in chase, there's a good chance you're never going to catch up in the time. However, you know, it does help a little bit in situations like we explained earlier with the speed add-ons. In situations where a survivor is completely corralled in one corner and you reset a trap and they try to beat you to the next loop, with this, you sometimes catch them. I do think that the other add-ons that we mentioned, the speed ones, are just straight up better. But it's not bad. And if it ever gets buffed, this add-on will be quite okay. It's definitely not too bad. You put it on, you'll feel it, it's, a bit, it's a bit comfy to use. Next up, we have the tar bottle. Ah, oh, this add-on used to be so good. Uh, this add-on makes the traps very, very dark. They go from a metallic sort of color to a straight-up dark pitch black almost color. And this, unfortunately, is a completely uh, double-edged sword, and it's a complete gamble. On some maps that are naturally... Like, in the past, in the previous DVD, the, the ground in most maps was very, 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 very dark. The farm maps were dark. Macmillan maps were very dark. Indoor maps have had, like, rubble on the ground. 
So the traps were honestly, on average, very hard to spot. Nowadays, there are a few maps that do have dark floors, like for example, Midwich, but most of them are pretty, uh, are pretty light and some of them are straight up very, very white or very, very bright, which means that if you run this add-on on some maps, your traps will be less visible. On some maps, they will be way more visible. So, can I recommend this with a clear conscience? No, the answer is no, I cannot recommend it. It generally makes your traps more visible on certain maps, and the maps where your traps become less visible, I'm not even sure you need it. Uh, it's a fun add-on to use, but I, I, I just cannot recommend it too much for, for those reasons. And yeah, that's all there is to it. Uh, another thing about this add-on that is quite unfortunate is that the traps that naturally spawn on the ground already start colored darker. So if a survivor spawns into the map and they see a trap on the ground, they can look at it, see it be very dark, and then immediately know that one of your add-ons is doing this. And that is giving them information ahead of, ahead of time, which is really not great. Next up, we have the Jaws add-ons. They all do fun little things, and I wish they were all just like a single add-on. Right, so first of all, the ma the first we have the the green uh, I believe so, uh, the <laughs> what are they called uh, the the green rusty uh, teeth I believe uh, the green add on is the one that does mangled uh, this doesn't go away so that means that if a swabber steps on a trap uh, next time they have to heal they'll need to heal a little bit slower that's not a terrible thing but also many times survivors are they they go down to the threat of traps rather than the traps themselves so many times you have a survivor that runs into a trap in a loop and then they're like oh well i can't do anything so they just they just go elsewhere and they go down but they don't step on the trap just because you use your traps to down a survivor doesn't mean they actually go down to the trap itself which means that this add-on even on a best case scenario you're gonna get to use it a couple times per match and i don't think it's super super worth it for that reason not to mention that nowadays survivors have many tools to heal themselves instantly inner healing ignores this adrenaline ignores this syringes ignores this pretty much um and also many survivors just like to stay injured they have mft they have resilience other perks to stay injured they don't care about this so this add-on not the greatest but it's definitely a little bit better than the next one uh, the lengthened jaws are basically a add-on that makes it so that if any uh, so that a survivor that is injured um, has to deep wound however there are a few problems uh, if you are already chasing the survivor the deep wound doesn't matter so let's say that you chase a survivor and they step on a trap and you down them that deep wound lasted 0.2 seconds why would you want that this is only useful if a survivor steps on a trap and then and then you just decide, okay, I'm not going to chase them. And I don't really care about the survivor. In that case, it makes them, it forces them, unless it's the end game, to have to mend at some point. And okay, that, that will save you a bit of time. How many times do you have a survivor step on a trap and you don't chase them and you just let them go? Not too many times, not too often. Typically, survivors, if they're playing even half smart, they don't step on traps randomly just because. So this add-on is quite situational, even though it can buy you quite a bit of time. And the final add-on is the serrated jaws, and that's the one that applies hemorrhage. If they step on a trap, they will now have the status effect where if they get interrupted, they will lose healing progress. And this is beyond situational, beyond situational. It's true that survivors will step on your traps every now and then, but what are the chances that a survivor steps on your trap, that a survivor then decides to heal, and that that survivor then at that point at some moment gets interrupted by you or something else, and then they lose progress? Uh, it's like three conditions in one, and it's not looking too good for you. For that reason, the jaws, I don't think, are super, super hard. Uh, we already mentioned what this add-on does. It delays the escape and rescue attempts, it's decent, it's not bad, but, I mean, hardly the most uh, hard-hitting add-on. And then we have the bear oil. The bear oil is a really fun add-on that makes Trapper silent when he places his traps. Instead of hearing the little mechanical click, 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 the little metal sound, you don't hear any of that. But unfortunately, you're not totally silent. You're not totally silent at all. You still make a lot of rubbery noises, and obviously your animation is still playing out. So, when can you use this? The answer is, I guess, in a loop. Yeah, if, if you're in a loop, you could put a trap behind a wall and a survivor that doesn't have great sight on you might not, see, might not see you or hear you. But if they're playing with high volume, they will still hear you. And if they have Kindred, if they have trap, um, um, if they have uh, Wiretap, if they have any kind of, uh, of, of, of perk or, or effect to see your aura, which are, which are not that uncommon, 
This item is terrible. And there's also many times where if a survivor loses sight of you, they will just hold forward away from you, which is the opposite of what you want with Trapper. So this add-on is supposed to be cute, but in my, in my experience, it comes into play an exceedingly rare amount of times, and as such, even though it's not worse than anything, I cannot recommend it. Now, an add-on that is actually worse than nothing is the Padded Jaws. The Padded Jaws makes it so that a survivor that steps onto a trap doesn't get injured. Now, if you catch them, you can hit them, and, and they'll come out injured, or you can grab them, and you'll obviously down them. Uh, but if you're not there to do anything about it, if they get rescued or escape, unless you have uh, this bad boy, um, they will be healthy. This add-on is a meme, it gives you more points, which you do not need, you're gonna be completely fine, and it's obviously horrible. Now, there's only one thing about this add-on that is kinda cute, and that is the fact that because survivors technically don't go down in one hit, you could farm, say, the best for last stacks. So if you have a survivor that is not the obsession, step into a trap, you can hit them, they'll be super confused, they won't even realize that, that they're not down, and then you can hit them again for a second stack. And that's funny. If it's still the obsession, obviously, you try to grab them to save the stacks. And um, yeah, that's the only thing to do, but even then, even then, I wouldn't recommend that it is a meme add-on. But that's fine, it's a meme add-on. Next up, we move on to Wraith. And I'm going to tell you right now, Wraith is possibly the hardest killer to make a tier list on because he's got several add-ons that all do the same thing on very small increments and very small differences. And also, depending on the survivors on the map that you get, some of the add-ons spike up and down in in usage uh, and, and usefulness. Uh, the generally agreed best add-ons in general are Windstorm, the speed add-ons. These you cannot go wrong with. These add-ons increase your speed by, I believe, 9, 7, and 5%. Now, 9, 7, and 5% doesn't seem like a lot, but keep in mind, this guy moves at 150, so that is very, very noticeable. Especially with the purple and, and greens, but even the yellow is fine. You move much, much faster. What can you do when you move faster? Well, the first one is find survivors sooner, uh, catch them with their pants down after a chase faster, um, patrol the gens and keep an eye on your hexes, on your totems, or on, on your gens, on anything around the map that you're trying to look for, like, like the hatch, find the hatch sooner. Like, just getting more information by being there yourself is possible when you're even faster. And another critical thing that these add-ons do is allow you to be much faster than a survivor in chase, which means that if they are trying to beat you to a particular window or a particular pallet, with these add-ons, especially the higher rarity ones, you can very consistently get ahead of them and body block this element. And if you body block the only window or the only pallet that they could go to, which is a very strong strategy with this killer, guess what? You're gonna get a hit. And that is really good, and that could not have happened many times without these add-ons. So they are very, very, very strong for those reasons, and I bet others that I haven't even talked about. Next up, and very close to also being among the strong, are the Swift Hunt family of add-ons. These add-ons make you come out of your cloak 12, 10, and 8% faster, if I remember correctly. Your uncloaking takes 3 seconds. If you do it from outside of view, the first few seconds, they don't. the first few moments of that doesn't make a noise, but after that you make a noise and you slow yourself quite a bit. So basically, most of the times without these add-ons, if you uncloak next to a survivor, they have quite a bit of time to make it to a pallet, to make it to a window, maybe to get a spring burst off, yada, 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 and ultimately be safe and you will fail your initial ambush. With these add-ons, however, you are shaving off a considerable amount of time. Keep in mind, it's three whole seconds, so the 12 or 10% that you take away from that is a very big chunk of time. With these add-ons, you become a lot um, scarier because you are you can threaten to uncloak in many places um, where normally a survivor could be fairly safe until they see you out of cloaking. Another thing that these add-ons do is they facilitate the very basic strategy of uncloaking at the very, very back of someone and lunging into a hit. When the Wraith uncloaks, he has a speed boost movement that allows him to do a big lunge, and normally, without any add-ons, if a survivor is going in a straight line, especially if they have any speed modifier or anything, uh, what's going to end up happening is that if you swing out of your launch, you're going to barely, barely miss. But the moment you have one of these add-ons, and the higher, the better, you will pretty much guarantee to hit survivors with this. And then at that point, you can cloak again, catch up again, do it all over again. So these add-ons are just straight up very, very, very good. 
and you might not want to bring them into your build depending on what other add-ons you have but you can almost never go wrong with them the only situations where these add-ons are a little bit redundant is when you have fully body blocked the survivor and they literally have no options and when you bring uh, certain add-ons to, un to to mask your uncloak uh, but we'll get to that in just a hot second another great contender of one of the best add-ons in the game is the all-seeing purple the all-seeing purple allows you to see artists or survivors in a close Close range around you. I believe it's eight meters after they nerfed it. Um, so it's basically like a little detection radar around you while you're cloaked, only while you're cloaked. Uh, why is this so good? Well, uh, in indoor maps and other tight uh, maps that have indoor places, like for example, Badham, you can see people through floors. You can see people hiding on the next wall. You can see people that are close to you through some obstacle that you would normally 100% never see or never hear with this. And that's really, really nice. It also allows you to do some very nasty mind games. Uh, even on survivors that might be uh, willing to like break line of sight and do something unexpected. So if a survivor is doing something wild, you see it and you punish it. If a survivor is being predictable, you can maybe see exactly where they are to calculate exactly uh, which side you should approach from to guarantee the hit. So in little loops, this add-on comes in clutch quite often. Keep in mind though that nowadays perks to hide your aura are fairly common on the survivor side and they can kind of neuter this add-on a little bit in the middle of the game or at the start. But on that very, very good add-on. We then have both clappers. And honestly, there's there's arguments that even the yellow one could be better than the Eerie. They're both very good. Uh, the Iridescent Coxcomb... Uh, the Iridescent... Uh uh, Coxcomb Clapper um, makes it so that your uncloaking is completely silent. Now, you still make some gargling noises to the people that pay attention, and you still play out a, a big range sh shoes sound effect. So, survivors, if they're a bit smart, they, they can kind of figure out that you have this add-on somewhat early, but it's still really, really crazy. If you uncloak from no, uh, from no visibility, even if you do it very slowly, you will guarantee hits on survivors that are not paying attention. Heck, you can even guarantee grabs sometimes, and getting a grab on Wraith early on is not that uncommon, and it's super, super good for your pressure, needless to say. So this is a really, really strong add-on that allows you to just get really, really close and turn a lot of situations um, that would normally give survivors a bit of a head start into advantageous situations for you. A survivor healing under a pallet would normally hear the cling cling, hear the direction of the cling cling, and then be able to drop the pallet from the correct side. But here, they don't have that luxury. Now, the other add-on is the Bone Clapper, and it's not quite as simple. Instead of playing no noise, you play a map-wide sound. Now, this has ups and downs. Uh, downs. It does play a sound, so survivors will be a little bit on the edge, but it also has an advantage that the other add-on doesn't have, and that is the fact that it will confuse and, and make people waste time everywhere. As long as survivors are within a certain range, they will hear a non-directional bling blong, and that will mean that even if you're not chasing them, they're going to be paranoid, they're going to stop their healing, they're going to lose progress if you have mangle, they're going to maybe miss a skill check, yada yada. So this add-on can really mess with the whole team even while you're just trying to single out one person. And eventually, if you do it enough, people will become accustomed to this add-on, and when they get relaxed, you can do some really nasty things. Uh, personally, I like quite I quite like pairing it with the Ghost, which is an add-on that we'll talk about in a second, and I have been able to get grabs consistently with these two add-ons together. You uncloak, survivors think, okay, I didn't hear anything, so I think I'm safe, and then suddenly you appear from behind them uh, with a vengeance. So <laughs> yeah, it's quite a fun add-on. If you play against the type of survivors that are hyper aware, hyper safe, you would you would not you would rather not have these add-ons. You would rather have uh, some of the more straightforward add-ons. But regardless, these are very very strong add-ons. Next up is the All-Seeing Spirit, aka the All-Seeing Iridescent. This add-on works when you're cloaked, and it takes all of the generators in the in the game and color grades them based on their completion. That means that if a, if a generator is at zero, it looks very, very white. If a generator is close to completion, it starts to look really, really bright red. So right at the start, you can use this add-on to immediately see where survivors are starting to do gen repairs. And this goes extremely well with gen-kicking perks, such as Eruption. What you can do... Quite frankly, it's just go to a gen, erupt it, go to another gen that you know has been done, erupt it, keep doing a bit of hit and run, eventually one person goes down, bang, every gen regressing. Then you can check which one they're focusing on, go there, rinse, repeat, and it makes playing Wraith extremely easy and very hard for the survivors if they're not handling it well. There is an argument that can be said that instead of running this add-on, you could just have 
speed. I just go and check yourself. And I mean, sure, whatever. But it's still not a bad add-on. And there's no counterplay from the survivors. There's nothing they can do to hide the progress of a gen, at least not directly. So that's pretty, pretty good. Next up, we have Blind Warrior, the green one. Um, this add-on only applies when you uncloak and then in the next few seconds hit a survivor. If you do that, that's considered a an ambush, an ambush hit. And if you do that, that person will have mangled and hemorrhage. So it will be like a sloppy butcher, but with an add-on. Now, what this allows you to do, obviously, is to have sloppy butcher without actually having sloppy butcher perk. So you could have four slowdown perks or three slowdowns and one info perk like nurses and still have some anti-healing in the form of an add-on. You could pair this with some other standard add-on like speed or uncloak. And if you have a group of survivors that is not very comfortable being injured and runs out of a medkit pretty fast, you will put them under a lot of stress. I've seen this add-on do a lot of damage, so it's very straightforward. Next up, we have the Shadow Dance add-ons, the purple and the green. Now, these add-ons have very similar effects. They're not that far. One of them, I think, is, what, 60 and then they're 40. They're, they're very close. Uh, obviously, the purple one being a little bit better. So what this add-on will do is it will, it's, it will speed up your actions while you're cloaked. These actions include vaulting, uh, breaking pallets, breaking walls, and breaking gens. And what this means, essentially, is that the... The, the Wraith, obviously, is very fast already at moving. Now you're already fast at doing these things. Uh, while you are cloak, in a conventional sense of the way... Uh, in a conventional sense, you're not really capable of injuring people. So this isn't that insane. But what this add-on can do, essentially, is... It's still quite nasty. There's a few things you can do. So, for example, there are a lot of buildings, uh, such as Haddonfield or Dead Dog Saloon, where a survivor can rotate through the same window several times and force you to close it. And if you have, for example, this add-on with a little bit of uncloak, what you can end up doing is follow a survivor through a window, do it very, very fast, and then uncloak and hit them before they even make it around, which would not be possible with pretty much any other combination of add-ons. So that's kind of cute. Another idea that you can do that's a little bit gimmicky, but also works, is to run it with the Serpent. So the Serpent is an add-on that uncloaks you when you kick uh, something. So you can kick something really, 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 really fast and then uncloak on the spot, which is a little bit funny and can sometimes be all right. Now, do be careful, though, because when you're cloaked, survivors can do certain... They can abuse certain things. For example, if it's a, if it's one of those windows that doesn't have a big drop, what a survivor can easily do is vault the window infinitely until you, un until you uncloak. Um, they can also do this on a pallet. So watch out because these add-ons, even though they have a very big, very visceral effect, they are, at the end of the day, uh, a bit susceptible to this kind of play. So you need to be smart and know what you're doing. But ultimately, they're not bad. And being able to destroy a pallet and so on a survivor quickly after is never, never a bad thing. Next up, we have the first brown, the ghost. Uh, the ghost... Uh, makes it so that when you uncloak, you do not have a red stain or a terror radius for an additional six seconds. In chase, this does absolutely nothing. In fact, it prevents you apparently from starting chase, so it could be a bad idea to run with Blade your food, for example, or other perks that have to work in chase. Um, let's not list them all, but you you get the idea. But overall. Um, this isn't super amazing. It's really nothing to write home about. It would be a pretty forgettable effect. However, however, especially if you pair them with the Silent Bell or with the Bone Clapper, this is quite nasty. Because now it means that you can uncloak and have a little bit of stealth after. If you have the Silent Bell, it means that you can uncloak from behind cover and then approach them and get a grab on someone without them seeing you. Um, if they're not looking at the right spot. And with the Bone Clapper, it can mean that you will constantly confuse people with sounds that are non-directional, and then suddenly, all of a sudden, you're going to be on top of them, they're going to have no warning, no idea. So with this add-on, it, it is a decent combination. The, the less aware and the less coordinated your survivors are, the more effective it becomes. It's not too bad in that context. Next up, we have two add-ons that, at first glance, might be really, really bad. They are the green and yellow blink. These add-ons allow you to cloak faster. Now, we already explained that uncloaking add-ons are really useful because cloaking takes three seconds, which is a long time, and you're very slow. So if you reduce the time and you don't have to slow yourself down during that time, that's good. However, cloaking is very, very fast. Cloaking is a second and a half, I believe. And while you cloak, you move at normal speed. So why would you want to speed up something 
that is out of the very fast and that doesn't slow you down too much? Is it really that big of a deal? The answer is no. But believe it or not, there is a situation or two where these add-ons make a significant difference. And that is if you hit a survivor and then you want to uncloak immediately again to follow them in cloak mode. So if you cloak, say, th these add-ons save a little bit of time, right? They save 0 0.4 seconds or so when you cloak, if I remember correctly. So if you cloak half a second sooner, for example, that is um, actually half a second where you are already moving much faster than normal. So in a situation, which is not super common, but in a situation where you hit a survivor and then you immediately cloak and you catch up and then you have a straight shot at healing them again, these add-ons are actually quite noticeable, especially the green one, obviously, because it's better. So if you pair this with one of the speed add-ons, if you pair these two together, you will be pleasantly surprised by how easy it is to hit Cloak, immediately speed up, and catch them for a body block. Uh, that being said, you should probably just stick to running on cloak and speed, and that will be universally more useful. But still, you know, that's their niche use. Next up, we have the Serpent. The Serpent is a cute little brown add-on that uncloaks you every time you kick something. A wall, a generator, or a pallet. Normally, when you kick a wall or a generator, you want to stay cloaked, so it's a little bit useless. Uh, normally, but especially the pallets, it can be okay. Normally, when you break a pallet, you you have to uncloak after. This, it uncloaks you automatically and gives you a tiny bit of a speed boost that comes from it. I don't think this is too good. Uh, survivors, if they see you cloak, they can abuse pallets and windows forever until you uncloak, so this add-on can be brought down to complete irrelevancy. However, there is one interaction and I've made a video about this if you want to look it up, that makes this add-on actually really fun and somewhat viable if the survivors are a little bit unaware of the interaction. And that is with the perk, this solution. With the perk, this... Oh, that's more like piss. <laughs> with the perk... <laughs> okay, with the perk, this solution, uh, this add-on becomes quite good because this perk breaks pallets for you. So if you hit a survivor and then catch up and they vault a pallet, they will, like, obviously you have to run another add-on, we'll talk about that in a minute, but they will automatically break the pallet and then uncloak you, and it's like an immediate hit. It's actually really, really funny. So if you want to try that gimmicky build, you can do it, and it's fun, and you'll probably win a few games because survivors never see it. But for the most part, this add-on is a bit of a, a, bit of a um, gimmicky thing. Uh, if you want to break things fast with, um, with Shadow Dance, I recommend you simply bring... Um, faster uncloak, and it will be more universally useful, and it won't mess with you anytime you're trying to kick a gen. Next up, we have the Yellow Blind Warrior, and this is appropriately named because it also works when you do a surprise attack. When you uncloak, and in the next few seconds you hit a survivor, that survivor will be blind for 60 seconds. Blind survivors don't see the autos of their teammates, of their perks, yada yada. And yeah, it's not great. It's, it's not bad. I mean, sometimes you hit a couple survivors in quick succession and now they're confused and they don't see each other. And when they are confused, they obviously appear worse. But it's not that big of a deal. And the duration is really nothing to write home about. 60 seconds. Mm. Most of the times, not the biggest deal in the world. But it can help you find uh, the very common windows of opportunity, for example. So it's all right. It's not too bad. Next up, we have the Hound. Uh, this, wait, is this the Hound? Yeah. Uh, the Hound makes it so that whenever you are cloaked, the blood stains on the ground are much, much brighter. Much harder to miss. Not a big deal. Not very good. Um, it, it, I mean, it's better than nothing. And sometimes, especially for folks that have color blindness and might struggle, maybe that brighter blood helps you. But it has a very, very minuscule effect that I can't honestly recommend too badly. Next up is the Beast. Uh, the Beast makes it so that when you're cloaked, Instead of being fast and stealthy, you're only fast. You still have your normal terror radius. This is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. You should, like, taking away the stealth of a stealth killer, um, obviously, is as, as stupid as it sounds. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, it can go well with this add-on and this solution, since this solution requires you to have a terror radius. Um, it, it can also go well with perks like Chlorophobia, Distressing, just to, just to make your terror radius completely uh, all over the place and constantly interrupt people healing and so on. If you want to try some gimmick like that, some terror radius related perks, then this add-on is an option. And it's a fun one, but it's obviously probably worse than nothing. 
Next up, we have Hellbilly, and his best add-on probably is the Low Pro Chains. The Low Pro Chains are good at every level. They are good for beginner billies, they are good for the best billies. And they are one of the few add-ons that really transforms the way you can play uh, the Hellbilly. Uh, what this add-on will do is, normally, when you break a pallet or a breakable wall, your chainsaw would immediately stall and, and stop, and you would be stuck in place for uh, for a bit of a second. But this add-on changes that. This add-on allows you to keep going after breaking a pallet or a breakable wall. Um, there's two reasons uh, why this is a good thing. Even though you don't insta-down, if the survivor gets hit, you don't insta-down, that's still a hit that you normally wouldn't get. So that's really, really good. If a survivor drops a pallet on you, or if they linger in front of a pallet because they're silly, you can break through it and hit them, and that's a hit, and that's amazing. That's really, really good. Something that you simply cannot do without this add-on. So that's already really, really amazing, and would make the add-on very good. But there's also a couple other things that are worth considering. Number one is when you want to do an uninterrupted um, saw through the map. Let's say that you are in a map with a main building that has a breakable wall, and you want to go from the main building to the other side of the map, you can break through a breakable wall or a pallet that was down and then still go and not have to waste your time using two chainsaws. So this will save you time. And on top of that, it also changes the way your cooldown works. Normally, when you break a pallet, you recover standing in place. But while you break a pallet with this add-on, you can actually move a little bit. So say a survivor is aware of this add-on in a small loop corralled in some corner of the map, you're still, you can still benefit from it. You break the pallet, and then you m start to move your camera and your model away from the pallet, and you will actually catch up much quicker because you can move during your cooldown. Uh, if you have ever played Nemesis, you know that you can break a pallet with his tentacle and still kind of move away. It's a similar idea. So this add-on also helps you to break a pallet and immediately put pressure or move faster towards a survivor, for example. So yeah, very good add-on. Undisputable, probably number one. Next up, we have the two engravings. Now, uh, these two add-ons basically do the same thing. Um, the, the yellow one just has a, a smaller effect. Um, so as you can see, it drops down significantly. They take, they make your chainsaw take longer to activate, which is a really, really bad thing. By the way, it's a really, really bad thing. Uh, it means that it's much harder to use it in loops. It means that it's much harder to use it in tight windows. It means that it's a little bit... Um, it wastes a little bit of time um, when you rev it up to go across the map, but then the effect is very worth it. The effect is that it makes you much, much faster. It makes your chainsaw spin 15 and 20%. This is 15. This is 20%. And this is 20% of 230. So it's a very, very noticeable increase in speed. You can stack them both. And some insane hill build players do stack them both, but I do not recommend you do that. Do not stack them both. If you stack them both, the downside becomes way too much, and the upside at that point doesn't matter. Um, being faster means that you travel, you travel through the map quicker, which is good. It is a little bit harder to navigate and, and go around certain obstacles, which is a little bit of a downside. But it also helps you in loops. In loops, you can now suddenly curve around things. And there are many cars and many, many straight loops where normally if you use your chainsaw, the survivor straight up can react to it. They can see you. They can physically time their movement to 100% dodge your attack. With these add-ons, especially the green one, they don't do that anymore. They have to guess. They have to guess where you're going to go because you're so fast going around the car and doing your little curve that they, they, they cannot react to it anymore, especially with ping. So these add-ons actually allow you to play and be really nasty and do nasty curbs that are difficult but, but, power, but powerful around many, many obstacles. So that's a great thing. Now, what is the problem with the green one? Well, you're, you don't want to use it by itself because it's worse, and you don't want to stack it. So, sorry, with the yellow one. So the yellow one is obviously a step, a notch below the green one. You should only run one, probably, and that should be the green. But if you have nothing else, I mean, the yellow one is okay, I suppose. We then have the two boots, the dad boots and the spike boots. Uh, these add-ons increase your turning rate. Normally, when the chainsaw begins, you have a 0.7 seconds where you can go basically anywhere. You have a very, very um, flexible turning, and that's what people call curve. But after that, after the first few seconds, you are very constrained. You can barely move to the sides. You have to go mostly forward and maybe turn a little bit, and you don't turn very fast, especially if you have something like those movement speeds. 
uh, yeah, like it's it's difficult to navigate around the map. Well, these add-ons increase that. They increase it by, I believe, 28. I believe it's 28. And I believe this is 34 or something, or 36. However, why is the yellow one better? The yellow one doesn't have any downsides. And the, um, and the purple one has a downside that if you bump into something, you will have a longer um, collision stun cooldown. Because of that... I don't recommend you run the purple one, just run the yellow. The yellow is almost as good as the purple and doesn't have any downside, so that's nice. Uh, these add-ons don't help in curving, but they help in navigating the map, and they are generally pretty damn useful. And they can sometimes, if you find a survivor in the open, in the say in the, in the farm, you can sometimes use this advanced turning speed to really mess with them and get hits that you normally wouldn't do. So you can sometimes manage to hit survivors in the open with your Chenso at the end of a long sprint, thanks to your increased turning speed. So they are quite okay, with the yellow ones being a little bit better. Uh, moving on, we have the Apex Muffler. The Apex Muffler makes it so that your chainsaw is only audible within your terror radius. Normally, the chainsaw makes a sound that is really easy to pinpoint if it's, if it's close, and is in the background with no, um, with no directionality to it. If, if, if it's really far away, up to 60 meters, I believe. With this add-on, instead of having a 60 meter radius around you, let's say this is 60 meters, now the chainsaw is only audible in your terror radius, which is normally like half of that, 32 meters. But guess what? If you have monitor and abuse, now it's 24. If you have tinkerer or some other add-on or perk to have zero terror radius, then, oops, oh, what did I just do? Then it's a zero. So, basically, with this add-on, if you manage to make your terror radius small or non-existent, your chainsaw is completely silent, and this can really, really mess with survivors. In maps that are very open, it is quite good. In maps that are a bit more closed or have a lot of buildings, it's not quite as useful. Uh, but especially if you have a build around it, it is decent and really messes with survivors. Uh, the other add-on that does something quite similar is the iridescent brick. The iridescent brick makes it so that when you've been using yourself for two seconds, you begin to lose your terror radius. In maps that are large, this pairs pretty well with the add-on we just talked about, because you can just start your chainsaw, and after a couple seconds, if you haven't reached your objective already, you will be silent, and you can sometimes like crash into survivors doing a gen, and they don't even hear you, which is pretty poggers. But... That's only in open maps. In closed or smaller maps, you don't even get to use your chainsaw for that long. By the time you've been going for two seconds, they've already seen you or heard you and you've already traversed the map. So, not the absolute most incredible add-on. You'd be better off pairing uh, the Apex Muffler, not with the Iridescent Brick, but with, say, Tinkerer. But, hey. Next up, the low uh, kickback chains and the wooden steel boots. These add-ons do the same thing. When you bump into an obstacle, you, I believe, have a cool... Yeah, you have a very cruel, very long cooldown where you stand perfectly still. And survivors see this, and normally they use this time to get the hell away. Um, this is, a, I believe, a 12, and I believe this is a 28. Something like that. So you have a 28 reduction to, to that very long cooldown. And believe it or not, with this add-on, survivors sometimes feel so safe to leave after you bump into something that you might actually catch them and get a hit on them because they didn't realize that you were going to recover so much faster than usual. So this can be a little bit of a, of a clutch add-on sometimes, and the brown one has a smaller effect, but you could also bring it or combine it if you want to stack the add-ons. If you bring this add-on, by the way, it completely offsets the downside of the spike boots, but just don't use the spike boots. Alright, we've already talked about most of these. Now we are on to the Leafy Mash. Anytime you hit your chainsaw on a survivor, you will become undetectable for 15 or 16 seconds. Now, there are multiple ways to think of this, alright? Um, number one, let's say that you just hook the survivor. That is still a good thing. A very common perk nowadays is Kindred. It's not the most common, but it's still a common perk. Kindred is a perk that will reveal your aura when you hook a survivor, and the other survivors will see where you are and where you're preparing your chainsaw to go. So if you hook a survivor right after downing them with the chainsaw, you will still be undetectable, you will be completely impervious to the effects of Kindred. So that's a nice thing. There's also the whole thing where you might down a survivor and then just decide to leave them on the ground and go for someone else, and not having a terror radius and not having a redstone might help mess with them. It also obviously would work well with Apex Muffler, 
muffler if you decide to bring that because of the obvious stereo radius thing. So is this a super reliable add-on that is going to work super well that you should play around constantly? No. If survivors are smart, they're going to call out what you're doing. They're just going to see it. They're just going to play it safe and this add-on will do very little. But it's still much better than some of the other ones we're going to see. Next up, the mother's helpers, which we could talk about at the same time as... Uh, <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. Um, we can talk this uh, at the same time as the Grease. So basically, these two add-ons make your chainsaw a lot faster to charge, which sounds really, really good. Uh, but one of them only happens when you get blinded. Blind. And the other one only happens when you get stunned by a pallet. Now, many times, if a survivor is about to drop a pallet, you're better off making them drop the pallet and instantly breaking it with your saw. There's not too many situations where the faster chainsaw charge is helpful because it only lasts for a short while after this. And the blind, the blindness, I don't, I think this is even worse. Like, what are the chances that you play against people with multiple flashlights? Low. But even if you do, should you switch to this add-on? No. There's many times where they're not even going to try to blind you. Like, or they might try and then give up. Or they might try and then it doesn't make a difference. Having a faster chainsaw by default would be an amazing thing. But with these conditions and these short timers, it's just really not worth it. So yeah, the one on the stun is a little bit more useful. The one on the blind, definitely not so much. Uh, we now have the heavy clutch. Uh, this add-on reduces the collision zone of your chainsaw for obstacles. This means that if you have to navigate around the map, or sometimes even uh, curve around some obstacle, if you hit a tree that's a little bit too wide, sometimes you'll get stuck, like barely, barely stuck. But with this add-on, that happens a little bit less. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that you are less likely to bump into little obstacles and more likely to, like, glide past them like butter this can save you sometimes sometimes you will try to do a long map traversal and get stuck barely barely on some rock and this add-on could have saved you some time but it's ultimately not too incredible i've also heard rumors that this add-on decreases your chances to hit the survivor um i don't know if that's true i don't think the collision and the survivor hitbox detection is the same but something to keep in mind i haven't been able to confirm that we then have the two add-ons that increase your tolerance to heat. The first one is the air muffler, and then there's the junkyard filter. This add-on makes it so that you recover faster from the heat, and this add-on makes it so that you have more tolerance, more heat meter. Both of them, I think, at this point are pretty useless. After some recent changes to the, um, to the overheat system, if you use your chainsaw in chase, you will almost never, and I mean almost never overheat. The only time you overheat is when you use your chainsaw to go around the map very, very long times repeatedly. In which case, yeah, these two add-ons are relatively similar and will do a little bit of a job at delaying that, but even then, not so much. Uh, we then talk about the pick house gloves. This add-on is really, really strange. It does two things that are pretty good. It makes you kick things faster, as if you had brutal strength, and it also makes you recover faster from pallets, as if you had Enduring. And it does stack with those perks, so if you have Enduring and Brutal, they stack with this add-on. That would be amazing, but that only works when you're overheated. And overheating your chainsaw, as we just explained, is actually really, really difficult. Uh, and obviously, while it's overheated, you cannot use your chainsaw. So, what the hell? Why is this add-on still somewhat usable? You could create a macro you could create a, a or, or get really good at flicking your finger and then overheat your chainsaw on purpose. Let's say that you're chasing a survivor that is injured and you just want to hit them and they're playing around pallets. You could have this add-on, overheat your chainsaw super fast, takes a while, with like mouse wheel down or something. And then if they stun you with a pallet, you might, you have like base free enduring. You can pair that with Spirit Fury, you can pair that with Brutal Strength to kick pallets super fast, but you obviously have a saw, so what the hell. So this add-on has some niche, fun build utility, but is overall not very worth the money. Next, we have the... Oh, what is it called? It's called the Tune Carburetor, right? Yeah, I think it's called the Tune Carburetor. This is an add-on that has a massive upside, but an even more massive downside. The massive upside is that it makes your chainsaw very, very fast to charge. It makes it much faster to charge, more so than even these two add-ons that we mentioned, and it makes it faster to charge permanently, not temporarily. So that's really, really good. Uh, 
However, your normal movement speed when not using your Chenso goes from 115, the standard, to 110. That's really bad. That's really, really bad. It used to be that this add-on could be used competently with other add-ons, and it had some... It had some good ideas. Back in the meta, when survivors used to heal very quickly with medkits and heal very quickly with circular healing, it made sense that you could pair this with, say, the engraving, and you would constantly be able to play around many loops that would otherwise be unplayable and get quick downs on healthy survivors. But guess what? Survivors now stay injured. And not only do they stay injured, they run speed perks. So it's very possible that in most of your games, you're going to have at least one person running made for this, uh, running hope or both. And with this add-on, those survivors become gods. They, they are simply uncatchable. And unlike some of the other 110s, like hunters, you don't have a projectile. You don't have an insane. Uh, you don't have an insane mobility or teleport. So yeah, running this add-on is a massive gamble that I don't recommend you take it. You you partake in, but it still has an upside if you are feeling adventurous. Next up is the off-brand motor oil. I believe it's called. Uh, this add-on makes your chenso quieter. It doesn't, it doesn't change the radius. I explained earlier that around you, well, actually, how about we do it around here? Around the billy, there is a 60 meter range. 60 meter. And then if you use your saw, obviously, if they're very close, they'll hear you directionally. But if they're far, they're hear, they'll hear a map wide or a non-directional 60 meter wide uh, sound. With this add-on, the range is still 60 meters. The only thing it does is it makes the chainsaw play at a lower volume. It, like, reduces the volume by, like, whatever percent. This makes your chenso for yourself a little bit less awful, so you can hear on yourself a little bit better, and it makes it a little, a little, little, little bit harder for survivors to tell exactly how close you are. But that is a pathetic effect. That is a downright pathetic effect, and definitely not worth the add-on slot. We already explained that this add-on makes your chenso faster when you get blinded, pretty awful. And now we have the big buckle. The big buckle is very much like the pick house gloves. It only activates whenever your terror, whenever your, uh, your chainsaw has overheated, which is very difficult to do these days. And definitely not something you want to do just, just like that. And what it does, it, it reduces your terror radius by a little bit whenever you have an overheated chainsaw. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Could you stack this with monitor abuse and some other gimmick? Yes, you could. And then you go to a map that's super big and they see you from a distance or they have a perk to know where you are and it doesn't matter. An absolute worthless add-on. Definitely not as worthless, though, as the speed limiter. At least this is a meme add-on. The speed limiter makes your chainsaw give you more points. You don't need that. Don't do it. But it doesn't insta down. I'm not even going to try to explain why that's not a good thing. It's terrible. <laughs> if you have a chancel that's really hard to hit and then it gets the same effect as a normal hit, yeah, that's terrible. Don't run this out on unless you are a memer of the highest caliber. All right, moving on to the nurse. She used to have a lot of add-ons that were extremely impactful and S-tier, but now they have been nerfed. And her best add-ons are a little bit simpler, but they're still quite powerful. Possibly the best one is the green mangled add-on. This add-on is very, very simple. Anytime you hit someone after using a teleport, using your power, you inflict mangled, which makes the healing progress a little bit harder. This on other killers would be okay. On the nurse is even more powerful because she's so unbelievably good at applying it. Other killers would have a hard time hitting people with their power. Nurse can easily do that three times in 30 seconds to different survivors. And then the difficulty of healing becomes compounded when she has other um, slowdown and information perks. Now, you don't want to uh, sloppy butcher doesn't work and insta down doesn't work on nurse anymore because she has a special attack so this is one of the only ways you have to reliably slow down the healing and it's just really really nasty and a very simple add-on so probably her best add-on uh, across all levels we then have the add-on that increases the range on your second blink um the range of your lunch, that is. Normally, when you blink, uh, you have a lunge that allows you to go a little bit forward and catch a survivor, even if you're not right on top of them. But the way the nurse works and the way survivors behave, you're always going to have a situation where a survivor is a little bit further than you thought, and you swing, and you barely, barely, barely make it. Well, with this add-on, that barely is a very, very safe one. And sometimes, survivors that you would normally miss, you can hit because your lunge is 30% bigger. 
uh, what can I say? This is just really, really stupid. It's a bit of training wheels. It has no downside whatsoever. It just helps you land hits that would be harder. It makes you... If you're going for a very tight hit or a survivor that has hope or made for this, that would normally make it a little bit harder to land it. This add-on pretty much guarantees that you'll hit them. And it's really, really powerful. For obvious, obvious reasons. Uh, another add-on that is very powerful but has a bit of a downside is the Torn Book Page. This add-on gives the nurse three blinks, which is absolutely bonkers the blinks are essentially inescapable one blink she uh, she closes the gap another blink she might be able to correct and even if you make the outplay of the sentry she still has one more blink to hit you um this is really really oppressive and a good nurse can make this really really powerful but it does come with the downside that it makes your recharging of the blinks much slower so Essentially, with this add-on, um, if you, you will have a burst of mobility and a burst of lethality, but in between those moments, you will have to charge for longer, so you will be kind of useless for a little bit longer, and you you making a bad play will be far more punishing than if you only had two. So it's a risk and reward add-on that might not fit everyone's playstyles and could do more harm than good on some beginners, but in the hands of an experienced nurse, no doubt about it, it's really, really strong. You... When you become really, really good at nurse, you honestly don't even need that third blink sometimes, so it might be a bit overkill. Uh, next, we have Campbell's Last Breath. Uh, these are four breath add-ons, and they do different things. Uh, this is Campbell's, and this add-on is an insane ability um, to gain extra um, mobility. It can backfire a little bit. If you're not sure how to use it, uh, I don't recommend it. But essentially, normally the nurse can do a teleport, a blink that is about, what, 20 meters? And then you could do another short one um, as a second up. However, with this add-on, if you do a full charge, not a partial, but a full charge, you will immediately get a second blink that is shorter, but this one is immediate. It's super fast, very, very fast, speed lines. So this add-on basically um, lets you, um, wait, did I say half charge? Hold up. Oh yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. I'm thinking, I'm thinking previous patch. No, 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 no. That that made this add-on. Eh. No, 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 no. This add-on does a full charge blink at full speed, really, really quick. So you don't have control and you don't quite know exactly where you're gonna land as easily as if you charge it and you and you check. But yeah, this add-on essentially takes the second blink and makes it immediate. Uh, sorry for the mix-up. So this means that you save quite a lot of time. If your objective is to get from point A to point B ASAP, this add-on is pretty incredible. And it's really, really good to cover semi-large maps in a very, very fast way. More so than the three blink add-on because that one has the obvious downside of slowing you down. This add-on has no downside. And if you want to not do the effect, let's say you don't want the effect of this add-on, instead of charging 100%, you can instead charge like 99%. And then you will get almost a full blink um, without triggering the effect of this add-on. So on, a, on an experienced nurse, this add-on has quite a bit of utility. Next up, we have Jenner's uh, Last Breath. And this add-on is a bit strange. It's a bit of a tracer from Overwatch, uh, Prince of Persia style callback. Whenever you use your blink to go to point B, you can use another blink to go away, or you can use the, the control uh, uh, active ability button to immediately be teleported back to your starting location, and you will always have one blink left to use, so you can then maybe go and hit someone else or check something else. So what can you do with this? This add-on essentially allows you to check a part of the map and then go back to your original location, very, very quickly and much faster than using two regular blinks. So you can use this by hooking a survivor and then going checking on a gen and then coming back and making the unhook difficult. You can also use it in chase. Uh, say you teleport through a survivor and they vault through uh, a pallet back to you. You can press this add-on and be right back and still have a charge to maybe correct and hit them. So it has quite a few nasty applications. It's not the most straightforward beginner-friendly add-on, but it is very powerful. We then have the... Uh, what is this called? The Catatonic Boy's Treasure? Uh, it's the Pinecone. Uh, this add-on uh, reduces the um, the additional 
uh, fatigue that the nurse experiences from using her power multiple times. So if you if you use your your multiple blinks at a time, especially with this add-on, you will have a longer and longer fatigue. The more you use your power, the longer it takes for you to <gasps> gain your breath back. This add-on reduces some of that penalty so that if you use two blinks, your cooldown is not as brutal as if you didn't have it. We then have an add-on um, that does a similar effect, but it's much smaller. It reduces your fatigue by a little bit, very small amount, I believe it's 8% now, they nerfed it. They, it reduces your fatigue a little, little bit, far less than the other add-on, but it reduces it in every situation, even, even fatigues from just a single blink. So with this add-on, what you can do is kind of mess with survivors sometimes. You can teleport, uh, land next to them. They might think they have time to finish a gen, but your fatigue is a little bit shorter, so you actually hit them faster than they'd realize. So because, because this add-on comes into play every single time, even if the effect is pretty small, that does mean that your head goes up faster, you start to see it better, and you can even follow up with a, a blink faster. So in situations where you do one blink teleport hit, and then another one blink teleport hit, which happen sometimes, this add-on is actually pretty much the best you can have in that situation, uh, in terms of fatigue reduction. So it's not too bad. Uh, we then have the... Oh, hold up. Well, let's call it the wooden horse. I believe that's what it's called. Uh, the wooden horse removes the fatigue, uh, removes um, part of the penalty that you get for missing an attack. If you do extra blinks, you have a longer fatigue. But if you hit, that also gives you a longer fatigue if it's a miss. With this brown add-on that is very easy to bring, you reduce that and it removes some of the fear. Normally, you might teleport to a survivor and be like, oof, it's, I'm not sure if I hit them. And you will have to wait the possibility of missing. If you hit them, that's great. But if you miss, you will get fatigued for longer. So maybe it's not worth trying. With this add-on, you don't have to worry about that. You miss, doesn't matter. The cooldown will be still the same as if you hadn't. So it is, it is a good thing to bring, especially for beginners. We then have the Batman keepsake and the spoon. These add-ons have two effects, and they trigger similarly. When you hit a survivor with your power, um, the spoon makes them louder if they are injured, which they should be. So it makes them louder. Um, this unfortunately gets completely countered by off the record, but whatever. And the Batman keepsake makes them uh, have an anti-healing info. It, it gives them like a nurse's calling kind of effect. Uh, a nurse's calling kind of effect, like a little cross. Yeah. So what ends up happening is that if they heal within a certain distance of you, they will be revealed to you. Believe it or not, even though it sounds really niche, it does come into effect pretty often. Many times you hit a survivor, then you go for someone else, and then you see that survivor that you hit earlier healing or trying to heal someone off the ground or trying to do some kind of heal next to you, and seeing their precise auto location is obviously a death sentence unless they stop at that moment. Uh, as for the spoon, making people a bit louder, I mean, it's not the end of the world, it's not the biggest effect, but it's a pretty consistent one, and it makes certain characters that would otherwise be a little bit hard to track uh, a little bit easier to follow. Uh, next, we have Kavanaugh's Last Breath. Whenever you go into fatigue and there's a survivor next to you, they become oblivious. Oblivious. Which means they don't hear your terror radius. And this lasts, I believe, for a minute. Oh, wait, did I say oblivious? Uh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, they become blind. Yeah, that's what they do. They become blind. And this is an incredible. This, you really shouldn't be teleporting and missing fatigues next to people to trigger the blindness. But the thing about this add-on is that it can actually happen pretty naturally during your playstyle. So say that you teleport next to a group of survivors and you apply blindness to multiple of them. Maybe even you down one of them. That survivor now goes on the hook. He's on the hook, so he's blind, he doesn't see his teammates, maybe he gets rescued, but he has no idea where his other two teammates are, so he's not going to play as efficiently, he's not going to know exactly what is going on, maybe he's not going to see perks like, um, like for example, Deja Vu, or other information perks or items they could have, so it's not too bad, but the effect of blindness is pretty minimal. Uh, and after that, we have the, ma the Batman slash Breath. Uh, this add-on makes it so that if you hit a survivor with your power, you become undetectable for a very short amount of time, and then it goes on cooldown. It's not incredible. Uh, the nurse makes a very loud noise when she teleports, and people are pretty aware of that. They're not going to be caught off guard too often by this, but sometimes in some maps it can be quite clutch. And if you're undetectable, you might also be invulnerable to the effects of Kindred and other stuff. So it's not too, too bad. 
Uh, we then have the rope add-on. This add-on makes it so that when you teleport once, when you do one blink, until you do the second one, that little moment where you can prepare your second blink, you have an elevated movement speed during that time. This, most of the time, doesn't come into play. If you teleport and hit immediately, this does nothing. If you're just teleporting for distance, this does nearly nothing. But there are a few situations where you might teleport around the corner and, and you're not fully around the corner and you don't quite see the survivor and you need to see them. So you go, you move a little bit while you make your mind up. And because you have this add-on, you will see them a little bit sooner and you might be able to react and do the right thing. So... With this add-on, sometimes you might get that little bit of information around the corner or or maybe make your mind up, see what the survivor is doing and get a hit that you normally wouldn't get. So every now and then, this add-on might be noticeable and might make a difference, but the effect is pretty mild. It's a very mild effect. Uh, we then have the funny meme add-on that makes it so that when you go through a survivor, uh, you teleport through them, they scream. This is not a, a fantastic you know, chase power or anything. Uh, but the thing this add-on can do um, for you is basically reveal survivors that you're not aware were there. Uh, many times you will be going from place to from place A to place B, not really having a, a goal or not really knowing someone's next to you. And you might teleport through a bush and a survivor that was hiding there will scream. Maybe that's a survivor that you're interested in. Um, yeah, it can be okay. Survivors obviously will immediately be able to tell that you have this add-on. So it's not gonna catch them by surprise very much, but it is it is a gimmicky thing that can sometimes benefit you. We then have the plat flannel, and this is a learning add-on. Uh, this add-on essentially takes your landing spot and it creates a little flame around it to let you know where you're going to land. Now, this is a great thing to put on when you're starting to learn the nurse and then go on a private game against bots and learn things. You can learn... Okay, if I hold at this angle, I go down. If I hold at this angle, I go into basement. If I hold up, I go second floor. Um, if I hold it against a bot, I can see that I'm not teleporting to them. So the hitboxes of the swabber, they block my landing spot. You can learn a few things with this add-on and understand the underlying, um, the underlying mechanics of the nurse's teleport. And that's great as a learning tool. However, eventually, do you need this add-on to know where you're going to land? 100% no, your muscle memory will do that for you 99% of the time. This add-on doesn't give anything valuable once you're at that level. In fact, the light itself might actually get in your way and get a little bit bright and get and be more of a distraction. Not to mention that it looks a bit wonky as well. So it might be more of a distraction than anything. But, you know, its usefulness obviously depends on what stage you are at Learning Nurse. We then have five add-ons that are all worse than running nothing, which is a record, I believe. Um, the matchbox. The matchbox makes it so that instead of having two blinks, the nurse only gets one. But to make up for it, she moves at a much faster speed by default. She's almost as fast as a, as a, as a normal killer. She's 105. So basically, you don't have two blinks, but you're, you're, you have an easier time setting up the first one. Is this add-on worth it? Nope. It's not good. It's not good. Having two blinks allows you to correct for little survivor uh, spins and correct for your own mistakes. Having one blink, even if you're very good at setting it up, is just not worth it. It also makes your overall mobility far less threatening. You can no longer teleport to a hill and then see someone and then teleport and hit them again. It's just not good. Now, the question remains, could you take this add-on and combine it with this add-on so that you have two blinks together, plus one, minus one? And this and that. No, it's not good. I, I believe... I, 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 I highly... I'm not even sure it works. They might have even patched it not to work. But even if it does, and I'm forgetting right now, I don't recommend you do it. It's still not worth it. The, the bad recovery from this will hurt you a lot. Next up, we have an add-on that is meant to help you, but doesn't actually um, do a lot for you. It's the watch. Uh, this pocket watch takes the time between both blinks and extends it. You have more time to teleport, think about where you're going, and then teleport again. Now, this does result in you making it a little bit further on your second teleport if you fully, fully charge until the last second. So this add-on can give you a bit of distance, which seems nice. But for the most part, this add-on backfires horribly because there are a lot of situations where as a nurse, you want to do one teleport, zone a survivor out, and then wait. 
you are not ob you're not obligated by law to use both of your blinks. You don't have to. In fact, it's a bad idea. Many times when a survivor is in a bad spot, what you want to do is get one blink. Okay, assess the situation. Get two blinks. Okay, now one, two, bang, down. With this add-on, every time you need to extend to end your your fatigue, you have to wait that little bit extra. And the benefit it provides is outweighed by this negative. The fact that it forces you to wait. You cannot cancel and go into cooldown immediately. Uh, you have to sit through the window of, of between blinks and then go into fatigue. So overall, it's probably worse than nothing. We then have the add-on that makes you a uh, 115 regular movement speed killer after you hit a survivor with your power. So essentially, you're a normal nurse. And when you hit a survivor with, after using a blink, you become like a trapper without traps or a wraith without cloak. You become a normal killer. Now, this add-on is hilarious. Sometimes survivors don't even realize it's there, so you chase them down as a walking nurse, which is really, really funny. But the nurse has the best power in the game, pretty much. Why would you want an add-on that takes it away half the match? You wouldn't. It's terrible. It's funny, so maybe use it, but it's terrible. <laughs> and then we have the two meme add-ons, the doll bracelet and the white knit comb. So this add-on is obviously horrible. It reduces your lunge uh, significantly out of a blink. That means that if you teleport right on top of the survivor, you're fine. But if you need to do a bit of a lunge to hit them, you're not going to reach them. It's really, really small. You can put this... It gives Both of these add-ons give extra blood points, but obviously that's terrible. Don't bother with that. Um, now, the brown add-on is not too bad. If you are accurate with your blinks, you will still get hits. In fact, it could even be a training tool. If you are if you want to get better at Nurse, put this add-on on. And now, every time you make a blink that's slightly inaccurate, you're going to miss. So that will teach you to do good blinks. As a training wheels, if you want to be pretty hardcore, uh, feel free to put this on. Otherwise, awful. And the door bracelet is far, far worse. What this does is it takes your first teleport and it makes it, like, way shorter. To the point where a survivor holding forward and just running will basically outrun you. And your mobility is just absolutely pathetic. So yeah, that's by far probably her worst add-on. Moving on to Myers, we have another add-on that is on the S tier. This add-on right here is a contender for one of the strongest add-ons in the game in general. And definitely the strongest on his arsenal and a very unfair one. Uh, this add-on will make it so that you take a lot longer to reach tier 3 which is a bad thing. With this add-on, you're probably only going to reach it uh, realistically only twice in a game, maybe only once if you're a bit unlucky. So you're only going to get tier 2 twice, let's say, per game. But whenever you catch up to a survivor, if you get the option, you can insta-mori them. This is something that you can only do with another, uh, sorry, yeah, with another add-on, um, but we'll talk about that later. But this add-on, other than the longer charge, has no other downsides. What you do with this add-on typically is stalk a person, stalk a person, maybe a third, a little bit, and then when you catch someone in the open, you pop tier 3 and you stab them. This will automatically send you back to tier 2, which is bad, but it's not terrible. Even though it takes a while to get there, and even though it kicks you out of tier 3 immediately, uh, if, you, if you don't bug it somehow, um, there's a bug about it, but let's not, let's not address it. Um, this is amazing. Killing a survivor? A healthy survivor? Three hook stages dead? That's, that's, that's unbelievably unfair. So what you will often do is bring tons of slowdown perks, maybe one tracking perk, maybe play with your food to make it easier to catch up to a survivor. And unless they hop into a locker or do some other thing to avoid the stab, they're going to die. And this is going to often hit them uh, from left field. You're going to be able... You can stalk one survivor, then stalk another, then go to a third that you haven't even seen the whole match and then just immediately kill them. It's a really unfair, really strong add-on. And obviously, it pairs best with uh, stalking speed, but you could, you could run it with almost... Uh, any stalking speed or on its own, and it would still be really, really strong. Next up, let's talk about the stalking speed add-ons. We start with the Memorial, we have the Memorial Flower, and then Judith's Journal. The Memorial Flower, if I remember correctly, is 11%. Um, the Flower Memorial, the Memorial, I believe it's 20-something percent. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> and then the Judith's Journal is 40%. That sounds really good. Yeah, but this is only on the obsession. This is only on the obsession. So, obviously, 
If you're going to run a perk like Nemesis or some other gimmicky perk that can change the obsession, Jodid's Journal is really, really funny. Because if you find that guy that's the obsession, you're going to tear up so unbelievably quick. These add-ons help you to get to tier 1, uh, from tier 1 to tier 2 really quickly, which is super amazing. That's what makes them some of the best. Uh, but in terms of pure consistency, the, the memorial takes the cake. That extra 20-something faster stalking speed is just really, really, really good. It, if you catch a Subaru in a, bad, in a bad spot, instead of taking five seconds to tear up, in, at which point they've already run away and, and slowed down the process, you, you just get to tier two immediately because it only takes about four seconds. So it's very, very, very powerful. It, it, it goes well with infinite tier three. It goes well with, um, with Tombstone. It goes well with the next add-on. It goes well with everything, basically. So yeah, stalk and speed, generally useful, generally good. We then have four add-ons that increase tier three duration. The ribbon. Um... The brush, the lock of hair, and the blonde hair, I believe. Yes. So these add-ons, they increase tier 3 by 30 seconds, by 20 seconds, by 40 seconds, and by 10 seconds. Uh, there's one tiny little problem, though. They all require more stock speed. Uh, they, they require more stock um, for your first tier 3. Your first one. Just your first one. Oh, one second. We have a uh, distraction. Uh, right, apologies for that. So I wrote on screen how long your first tier 3 will take extra to, um, to trigger when you have these add-ons. So as you can see, uh, the first brown add-on on the bottom is awful. It gives you 10 extra seconds of tier 3, so from 60 seconds to 70 but you need to stock an extra 50. That kills your momentum in the early game. This is awful. Do not run it. It is worse than nothing. Bad, bad stuff. Now, the purple add-on seems pretty enticing. It gives you 40%, uh, 40 seconds extra, so you go from 1 minute to 1 minute 40, which is pretty good, but it also, lets you t it also makes it take twice as long to take to, to, to get there. So that means that, honestly, why would you have 1 minute 40 when you could just have two, you know, two individual tier threes that are one minute. Uh, the fact that you need extra stock also means that you, one of your survivors is more and more likely to hit the cap and become fully red. And this is just bad. So it's not worth it. This add-on, I th there might be some situations where you can use it, but it's not very good, I think. Then the green one is the perfect, perfect middle ground. It takes you 50% longer to get to tier three, which is a bit of a ask. But only the first time, only the first time. And then you turn all of your 60 second um, uh, tier threes from that point onwards into 90 second ones, because it's plus 30. So basically with this bow tie, all of your tier threes for a small cost are 90 seconds. In 90 seconds, you can down, hook and camp a person the entire hook stage. Or indirectly do that. You can also down and still have more than a minute to get another down, which is very realistic. And um, yeah, this messes with survivors' timings. It messes with their plans. It makes them think they can outrun you when they can't. Uh, if you have any other thing in tier three that is beneficial, um, you have more time to get to to use it, such as the faster vaults or the or the longer launch. So it's really really good. So overall, the hair bow is the best of this type. A second would be the hairbrush. The hairbrush is 20 extra seconds, also for 50%. It's not as good. And the and you you don't want to run both, obviously. But I mean it's it's alright. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But this add-on is just straight up the best. So run it. We then have one of the first areas, the fragrant tuft of hair. This add-on makes your tier three infinite. Which is really spooky. But to make up for it, you need to stock a lot. And I mean a lot to get there. Uh, if you the, the way this typically works is if you play against people that are not super aware, you will pop it with a few gens left. And then at that point, they'll be kind of useless. They won't be able to rescue. They'll go down immediately. Uh, they will panic. You know, they will quit, whatever. If you play against people that are a bit more aware, they're, they're going to play into it a bit better. They're going to use certain second chance perks to play around the insta down, and it's not going to be so easy. So while, while this add-on is strong, it is far from like OP or flawless. You'll find out if you try it yourself. We then have the rabbit. The rabbit is a really cute add-on. 
it reduces your terror radius by minus 25%. Whatever it is, it takes it minus 25. While you're in tier 2. Uh, while you're in tier 3, it makes it larger. <laughs> so basically, without any other perks like monitor and abuse, this, this is really good. It saves you... Uh, it does give you a bigger terror radius in tier 3, which might even be a good thing for some perks. And the smaller terror radius in tier 2 makes Myers very scary. Instead of 60 meters, now it's 12 meters. And if you have monitor, instead of 8, it's 6, because it's 25%. So those very tiny terror radiuses are awesome for interrupting people, catching them um, red-handed on gens, and so on and so forth. So the rabbit is pretty good. With the only minor downside that, yeah, sometimes you will go to a big-ass map that is super open and the smaller terror radius means nothing. But it's not bad. It's really not bad. Now, it's time to talk about the two mirrors. The Vanity Mirror and the Scratch Mirror. The Vanity Mirror gives you a 32 meter... I'm so sorry, uh, that's wrong. <laughs> We're off to a great start. The Vanity Mirror gives you a 60 meter uh, wall hack ability. And the Vanity Mirror makes that, I believe, 32. But with the Vanity Mirror, you are locked in Tier 2 forever. Means no insta down. And with Scratch Mirror, you are locked in Tier 1 forever. Which means that you have a small launch, that you don't have a terror radius, that you're very, very slow, etc. So, uh, right off the bat, the Scratch Mirror is a... Is an absolutely terrible add-on. If you send yourself to an indoor map where survivors don't see you from any angle and your speed doesn't matter because you're constantly wall hacking and, and abusing the lack of, of line of sight, then this add-on is fun and it's a classic. Fair enough. But if you go to any other map, most of the times, this is a horrible mistake. Any survivor that you chase will almost be faster than you. And if they have the most minimum amount of, of awareness, this is going to be a horribly backfiring add-on. However, the Vanity Mirror is actually not too bad at all. Not having tier 3 does hurt, but if you pair it with the Rabbit, you will have a killer that has wall hacks, that has a tiny terror radius, and that can constantly surprise and hit people. Pair that with, say, the Vesolas or Coup de Gras or some other perks to enhance your, your ambushes, and it's actually maybe not better than a normal Myers, but surprisingly viable. And in some maps, being able to see the aura... Um, it's really helpful in loops and really messes with survivors, so it's not too bad. Uh, next up is the Myers' Tombstone. Now, the Myers' Tombstone uh, allows you to moor people in Tier 3, much like the Tombstone Ps, but there's three key differences. Number one, it takes more stock to get there. Way more stock. So that's out of the uh, minus. Number two... Uh, you don't have a you have a speed uh, percentage debuff. Uh, you are slower in tier three. You are you walk slower, which means that it's going to be even harder for you to put it to to pull this off and then actually stab a survivor before they go into a locker or do some other maneuver. And the one thing that makes it a bit better than the tombstone is that it doesn't end. It doesn't end the tier three. So with this add on, you can theoretically pop tier 3, murder someone, and then go and murder someone else. But obviously, you only have one minute. The only way you can do this infinitely is if you pair these two atoms together. If you pair these two atoms together, now you have infinite tier 3 and infinite mores, which is going to mean that people will just go into lockers. But if you do this, it also takes basically an entire full-time job to get to tier 3. You will need to stock like three survivors fully and the four survivor partially, which is, it takes forever. It's a very, very difficult task. So overall, this add-on is much, much better than the tombstone. However, if you want to run like play with your food and run it with this other add-on, it's not too bad. It does put more stress on teams than some of the other add-on combinations. So it can be somewhat redeemable in the certain build, but overall, this add-on is just much better. You're never going to tombstone four people unless you're going for that one achievement. So it's overall, this isn't so good. We then have the three mirror shards. And keep in mind, two of them are good and one of them is very bad. Um, the 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 green and, and yellow shard um, are pretty great. Whenever you stalk a survivor for a second or more, 
that Subaru's auto is revealed to you. Obviously, Subaru's on distortion and off the record often, but assuming that they don't have that, you will see their auto. This is super useful. This is super useful. Sometimes you stalk a Subaru and then you go for someone else and then you can check behind you and see if they follow you, see where they're going. Sometimes you stalk a Subaru and then they try to hide in a loop and try to hide behind the pallet uh, or, or they try to hide behind the pallet to stun you and you can see that and then you can bait it and then they drop the pallet and you get more stock. Like, you can do a lot of little things when you know where a Subaru is exactly. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't work in tier 3 because in tier 3 you can no longer stalk. Uh, but they're, but leading there, these add-ons are pretty good, and even though they don't have the, the obvious, um, wall hacks that you would get from Vanity Mirror, they don't have a downside at all. They don't lock you into anything. So they are quite nice and sometimes useful. Now, the problem with the second yellow shard is that this only works in tier one. Tier one is something that you want to leave as soon as humanly possible. Sometimes you will stalk a survivor in tier one and they'll run into a building and maybe with this add-on, uh, these obviously work in tier two, if, if that wasn't clear. And then with this add-on, maybe you can see them, but you're so slow, what are you going to do with that information? Nothing. Uh, overall, this add-on is almost unusable. Uh, I don't recommend you run it ever. We now have three add-ons to increase movement speed during stock. All right. And they are the jewelry box, the tacky earrings, and the jewelry whatever. Uh, these add-ons are pretty bad. Myers has two stalking speeds. One is when he's walking and he's stalking nothing. And that's pretty slow. And one is when he's actively locked onto a survivor and he's consuming the stalk. And then he goes really, really, really slow. With some of these add-ons, or many of them together... Sorry, Thunder. Uh, Myers walks very fast when he's stalking normally. And relatively acceptably slow, not too bad, when he's stalking someone. Um, so, yeah, why would you run these add-ons? Well, there's two reasons. Uh, by the way, these two add-ons are really bad. Don't run them. Don't run them. Just, they're, they're, they're just so poor. You'd never want to stack them. It's not worth it. So if you're going to use one of these three add-ons, use the best one. So, uh, assuming that you take my word and only run the best one, why would you want this add-on? Uh, two reasons. Number one, in a normal situation when you find a survivor in the open, you can stalk them, stalk them, stalk them, and then stop and then go and hit them. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Being able to lose a little bit less distance, even if it's very little during that time, it's not a bad thing. Another thing where this add-on really shines is if you bring it with the scratch mirror or the vanity mirror to a, to a lesser extent. With these add-ons, you are going to be stalking constantly because you want to find survivors. So basically, you, you can run this add-on and just spam the stalk constantly to be pretty much a radar. And whenever you slow down, then you know that you're seeing someone, and then you can stop, and it, it eases a little bit the use of the mirror add-ons. So in that regard, it's alright. It's not too bad. And now, that leaves us with only one add-on that we haven't talked about, and that is the Boyfriend's Memo. The Boyfriend's Memo makes your lunch in Tier 1 a little bit better. In Tier 1, Myers has no lunch. He barely, barely, barely can do anything with his normal attack. That's why you want to get to Tier 2 ASAP. With this add-on, the launch is still really bad, but it's it's like half a normal launch. It's a little bit more acceptable. Uh, you should never run this add-on on its own. This add-on is absolutely terrible. In Tier 1, most of the times, you want to stalk people to get to Tier 2 or grab them or whatever, but you never want to go for M1s, uh, basic attacks, almost ever. But some people like to run this add-on with the Scratch Mirror. Since they're going to be locked in Tier 1, they kind of want to have a longer launch. Um to go with it. And that makes a bit of sense. I still think you might be better off with this add-on, but it doesn't matter. That's a decent combo. So in that situation, the add-on is acceptable. Every other one, I wouldn't really recommend it. And I think with that, we've talked about all of the Myers add-ons. Next up, we have Woyo, the hag. Uh, let's talk about her possibly best add-on, the Rusty Shackles. This is a very unique add-on. Um, it makes her traps not work as usual. A normal trap uh, from the hack, whenever a survivor goes into it, will spring a little fake hack that goes, hey! and you will, they will see that, their camera will snap onto it, and if you look from a distance, you will see the hack, and you can kind of tell which direction the, the survivor is on, because the hack looks at them. With this add-on, that whole thing is removed. You have two downsides. Number one, the survivor's camera doesn't do a snapping which sometimes can be some, it can be useful. So that, that part of the trap uh, of the trap is gone. And also, if you look at the trap, you're not gonna see the 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 hag miniature thingy to to know where they are. But other than those two minor um, debuffs or do those two minor downsides, this is an insane add-on. 
maybe borderline S tier against some of the weaker, you know, less experienced teams. So why is this so good? If a survivor steps onto a trap, they will almost always immediately, after panicking a little bit, go away from it. That means that if you teleport even a second late, you're not going to get a hit. With this add-on, they often keep walking into the trap after triggering it, and when you teleport, you might as well find yourself right on top of them, which is really, really good. Heck, sometimes I've even gotten grabs on gens, because people trigger a trap on a generator, they start repairing, and then you grab them out of the gen, or out of the gate, or out of the totem, because there is no warning. No warning whatsoever. And also... Since you don't have an animation to teleport, it happens also a little bit faster. So if you're spamming your your mouse, uh, your your middle mouse or your mouse wheel or E or whatever you use to teleport, if you're spamming it, you actually get the hit a little bit faster with this add-on. Uh, the the amount of chaos that this add-on contributes to is just so crazy. It, it sends survivors into a spiral of mistakes that they often don't recover from, and hence why I place it in the A tier. Against the stronger survivors that immediately pick up on it, it might not be that strong. Uh, we then have one of the iridescents, the, what is it called, the mint rack? I think it's called the mint rack. So this add-on allows you to use your traps normally, the same way they work normally, but on top of that, every X seconds, I believe they buffed it recently to be, I believe, 10 or 12 seconds, every 10 or so seconds, you can now choose a trap that is far away from you and teleport to it manually. And that is a pretty big deal. Uh, again, this add-on has a minor downside. The downside is that you can no longer spam your teleport. One common strategy for hack players, myself included, is to spam the teleport key, spam it, spam it, spam it, spam it, and then anytime someone in chase steps on a trap, you show up immediately to hit them. If you do that with this add-on, you will teleport to whichever trap is closer to the center of your screen. Not good. While the add-on is on cooldown, then yes, you can spam again all you like. So that's a minor downside. Uh, also, when you teleport to a trap manually, not normally, but manually, you will be looking at the same direction you were looking before. You will not be looking at the direction of the survivor that triggered it, because no one triggered it. So, why is this add-on so high up when it has potential to even mess with you a little bit? It's because it gives you a lot of control. Um, with certain perks and certain situations, being able to on-command teleport across the map is pretty nasty. Um, you can put a you can put a trap next to a, um, next to a, an exit gate and teleport from it m like every few seconds. You can do the same with gens. You can put it on top of basement. You can even hide it a little bit so that. You can hook someone in basement, they unhook, and then you hit the rescuer with make your choice. Like, there are a lot of nasty perk combinations that are super, super evil. And if you dedicated yourself to playing this out exclusively and making a build around it, if you put it on on a normal build, it's probably going to mess with you. But if you dedicate yourself to it, this add-on is quite naughty. It can also help you. Even in chase, if you have a trap that's in the middle of the map and a survivor is running towards it, even if they don't step on it, you can teleport to it preemptively to cut them off. So you can play a bit like a nurse, where you teleport ahead to cut them off and, and corral them. So, and that's if you know what you're doing with this add-on, it has quite a bit of potential. We then move on to the teleport distance add-ons. They are all the insect ones. This one's right here. These add-ons allow you to teleport further into a trap that was triggered. Normally, this distance is 40 meters, but with the brown add-on, you have 8 extra, with the yellow, you have 10 extra, and with the cicada, you have 12 extra. Notice that there's not that much of a difference. The yellow and the green are very close, and even the brown, for a brown, is an insane add-on. To add extra 8 meters, that's amazing. Uh, this means that in larger maps, you can be pretty, pretty spread out with your web of traps, and no matter which one gets triggered, it's very likely that you're going to be in range. I personally find it really, really nasty to trigger, uh, to, to pair this with, for example, uh, Noid. Which would make, sorry, I'm having too much fun here. <laughs> uh, which would make basically uh, trapping exigates and far away totems that are really, really dangerous because you can cover the distance so quickly. On some of the smaller maps, the 40 meters is enough. And sometimes I've seen some tra some hacks that put on these add-ons, and they they don't think it they don't think through uh, their planning. If you put a bad trap and someone sees it, and then you teleport across the map and they baited you into a bad teleport, 
that's not gonna that's not gonna help you. It's gonna hurt you. So you need to be a bit smart. You don't you don't need to put these add-ons on and let them do the thinking for you. But if you keep that in mind, the add-ons are undoubtedly some of our best. We then have the two add-ons that increase the auto, well, no, not increase, add an auto reading to anyone that tr triggers your traps. Uh, this one is only three seconds, so it's a little bit worse. This one is a pretty generous five seconds. So anytime a survivor triggers your trap, uh, even if they don't get notified because you have the shackles, you will see their aura. And this happens so often that if even if they have uh, distortion and stuff, you're likely to burn through it. This is really, really, really good. It helps in two scenarios. If a survivor is triggering a trap and you teleport and you hit them, for the next four or five or so seconds, sorry for the thunder in the background, you will see their aura so you can see where they're headed next. And this sometimes allows you to predict when the next trap is gonna happen so that you can teleport accurately. So say that a survivor is in basement and you hit them, and then you see them come up, you can see their aura, and you see that they're gonna vault the window, and you know that there's a trap on the other side, well, you already know to, to look at it and spam the teleport the moment you see it uh, get triggered. So it allows you to really, really know what survivors are doing, what exit escapes are they taking. Sometimes this can help you in the future as well. Say you hit a survivor on a gen, and you see that they run behind a certain obstacle, from a distance, you're like, okay, I'm gonna trap it there next time. So it's quite nice. You can also run them both to stack the effect, but it's overkill. The green add-on, the, the, the yellow add-on is, is, is nice. The green add-on is fantastic. I think uh, even in competitive settings, I think this add-on is really, 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 really good. So I would highly recommend it. We then have the three add-ons that increase the trapping speed. And much like the previous add-ons that we discussed, they are very, very close. You'd be surprised. Uh, the brown add-on is really close to the yellow, and the yellow is very close to the green, and the green is incredible. With these add-ons, you can set up traps a little bit faster. And obviously, uh, as a setup killer, the hack is not super slow. She, her, her setup speed is out of the acceptable. But in the heat of the moment, this does make a difference. It is a very common thing for hacks to teleport, hit and reset the trap or teleport with a miss and reset the trap it's something you do fairly commonly and sometimes you reset a trap and you expect to teleport to another subsequent trap because you know they they, they often snowball one into another so what you can do many times is teleport hit reset the trap and then be a bit readier faster sooner to hit the next one so that's really really useful and honestly if you don't know what to what to bring these add-ons almost never ever uh, let you down we then have the egg family of add-ons coming up. These add-ons extend the times that your trap stays up. Uh, this has two main uses. The first one is for practical teleporting. If you would normally not be able to teleport because you're busy or far, these add-ons help a lot. Say that a survivor triggered a trap across the other side of the map, and you're like, oh damn, I don't have a distance teleporting add-on. Ah, damn it! What am I gonna do? Just walk. Just start walking to the to the to the trap that they were that they triggered, and because it takes so long for the trap to go away, uh, normally it's five seconds. These add-ons have been buffed recently, and they add an extra chunky seconds on top. Um, you will be able to teleport before the trap goes away. This also happens if you're busy. Say you're carrying a survivor to basement, and someone triggers a trap. Normally. Unless you are about to hook already, you're not going to be able to teleport. But with these add-ons, if you want to, you don't always have to, but if you want to, you can hook, maybe even put a trap down and still have time and still teleport to the one outside, which is wild. Uh, you can also use it in chase. If a survivor triggers a trap in the middle of something and they're not too close, you can now begin to chase them in the other direction and they'll have to walk back into your trap and it's still going to be there. So you'll still be able to teleport and you'll still be looking at them and you'll still be able to swing and hit them. So it is a pretty big deal. It's not too bad. I don't think they are quite as universally useful as some of the other add-ons we've talked about, but they are not to be slept on. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the next seven add-ons. The Grandma's Heart is a stupid add-on. It's a really stupid add-on. Uh, it makes it so that when a survivor triggers a trap, the trap has a fake terror radius. Wait, was it fake? Yeah, that's yeah, fake. I don't think it affects it. Um, oh, I need to... Ooh, I tested this so recently just to remember. I'm pretty sure that the terror radius... Yeah, it plays a terror radius. And the terror radius, if I remember correctly, it's a fake terror radius. It doesn't have uh, any effect from the terror radius, like, for example, Chorophobia or so on. I could be wrong, but either way, it doesn't matter. This is a stupid perk. Uh, whenever someone triggers a trap, you lose your terror radius, and the trap gains a terror radius. It is the stupidest, gimmickiest add-on 
ever, and honestly, you can't take it seriously. It it basically makes no difference because the trap, even without this add-on, already has a bit of a noise to it. So it's not even going to mess with survivors even a little bit. Not to mention that if you teleport and hit them, what is even the point? Uh, a very gimmicky, silly add-on. Almost, um, almost as gimmicky is the disfigured ear. Whenever a survivor triggers a trap, they get a, a little muffling effect that makes it harder for them to listen. I don't think survivors use their ears too much against Hag in chase or after a hit. So this add-on is super gimmicky. It is a weird, weird purple add-on. I do not recommend you use it. We then have the waterlock shoe. The waterlock shoe is a bit strange. It makes your traps completely different. You can no longer teleport to them, which is a huge nerf. It basically changes the way Hack plays. It turns her into a normal killer. But if they trigger a trap, they get slowed down, uh, kind of like Freddy or Clown. So the slowdown from the traps is really meh. So basically what you do with this add-on is you just put it on and you just play Hag as a chase killer. Funnily enough, it increases her speed to be faster than the normal 115. So she's a little bit, she has a smaller tail radius than a trapper and is a little bit faster than a trapper, which is a little bit fun. Uh, I don't think this is an incredible playstyle, but considering that Hag is a short killer that is a little bit unpredictable, I mean, it can be okay. It, it can be all right. That's why I hesitate to put in the F tier, but losing your power, which is otherwise really, really good, is not a good thing. Uh, sorry, minor distraction. Uh, after the Waterlock Shoe, we have the three add-ons that increase the range of a trap. When you set up a trap as a hack, if you look at it and you pay attention, you will see the trap, and you will actually see like some particles around it that, the, that basically tell you the range of it, which I think, if my mind is not too muddy, I think the I, I think it's 2 meters by default. These add-ons increase that by 10, 20, and 30%, making the range a little bit larger. This is a bad thing. If a survivor triggers a trap right here at 2 meters, you can immediately whack them. But if they trigger it here, you cannot hit them immediately. They have more of a warning that you are that you're going to hit them because they're further than you. So these add-ons arguably are all F tier. The only reason you might want to do these add-ons is because you have like the waterlock shoe and you want some other effect. But even then I don't think it's a great idea. It really it really hurts more than it helps and for the most part I recommend you stay away from them. Even though there's three of them, they all have the same downside. And obviously the greater the effect, the greater the downside. Uh, last but not least, actually, uh, last and definitely least is the Severed Hand. This add-on is a little bit similar to the, um, to the Waterlock Shoe in that it completely disables your power. You cannot teleport to your traps, which is a really, really bad thing. It makes her worse for, for that reason. It doesn't give you any speed like the Waterlock Shoe does, but it does make your traps um, have collision. Which means that you can put them in tight doors and tight uh, spaces and survivors cannot go through them easily. You could also have the egg add-on to make them stay up longer or just pair it with the water lock shoe, yada, yada, yada. Overall, this can be fun in a few maps if you want to go for memes, but it just makes her power worse and has not a lot of redeeming qualities. So I do not recommend you run it. Next up, we have Doctor. <sighs> Let me drink a bit before we go ahead with this. All right, excuse me, but even even I, even to this day, I still have a hard time knowing which of them are which, because unless you read very carefully, it's actually hard to tell them apart, but I, I should be fine. All right, so uh, first note about the Doctor's add-ons. There are a lot of the add-ons that follow the same um, the same pattern. All of these add-ons that I'm highlighting right now, these are we're going to call these the file add-ons. These add-ons um, have a primary and a secondary effect. Okay, the primary effect is something that can stack. The secondary effect is something that cannot stack. So, for example, if I bring two disciplines, the primary effect will be good, but the secondary effect, it doesn't stack. It doesn't work twice. So the doctor add-ons are designed in a really interesting way that encourages you not to stack them. Instead, it encourages you to try different add-ons so that you get the primary and secondary effects of both. So I will try to explain this, all right, as we go forward. So uh, let's talk with his best add-on and the other add-ons in the same family. The Discipline family of add-ons, which is this one right here, uh, I believe this one right here, 
And there's also a yellow right here. Sorry, I need to see it. So these add-ons have a secondary effect between the two of them. All of them have a secondary effect. And that is the red stain. The red stain that comes in front of a killer. Uh, when a survivor is in Madness 2 and you're chasing them, the red stain from you will disappear and will instead show up behind them. So if they look behind to try to check your red stain, they're not going to see it. And it's going to mess with them a little bit in chase. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. This doesn't stack. So having multiple of these add-ons doesn't change the red stain. In, in Madness Tier 3, the red stain is constantly on them. And they are constantly assaulted by like the, 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 the terror radius uh, noise. Or the chase noise. And this is really, really good. Because it means that if someone is snapping out of Madness Tier 3 and you approach from some unseen angle, they will have no idea where you're coming. So this secondary effect is pretty good. On top of that, they also have a primary effect of reducing the time it... Oh my god, I'm so sorry, guys. I cannot stop the recording at this time, pray for me. Uh, it also has a secondary effect of reducing the time it takes for your shock to hit the survivors. This is incredibly important. How many times have you played doctor and chased a survivor into a window and you shock them? And when you shock a survivor with your, with your shock, they should be unable to do any action for a couple seconds. But because of latency and ping and other stupid things, you shock them and they still vault the window. And you're like, what? That's so unfair. With these add-ons, you can reduce that. Especially with the purple one, you can use your power a lot more aggressively around a lot more loops, around a lot more stuff. And it is really, really, really powerful. Really, really powerful. Uh, the 0.1, not so much. The 0 0.2, I mean, it's all right. The 0 0.3, very, very noticeable. So that effect plus the secondary is what makes Discipline, especially the purple, easily his best add-on. It allows you to use your shock and deny pallets, windows, actions, unhooks much quicker than normal. And it gives you a lot more room uh, to do these things and a lot less room for mistake on their part. The next two add-ons that we're going to talk about are the Queen and the King. Now, the Queen is a very simple but cruel add-on. Anytime you shock a survivor, so psh, manually, or every time you blast them with your psh, uh, power, the survivors that are on their own, unless they're paired up with someone, they get they get a, a static charge. This static charge is like a debuff that they carry with them, and whenever they come close to another survivor for a heal, for an unhook, um, to try to help them or body block, they shock each other. This might not seem like a big deal, but it actually spikes up the, the rate at which you inflict madness. And it also forces survivors to stay separate from each other if they want to avoid it. So basically, shock every, uh, blast everybody, shock one guy. Now they go on a gen, they put themselves into madness. You might be chasing a guy across the entire team. Uh, across the entire map, and it doesn't matter. Even though you're very far, they are messing with each other constantly, putting themselves into Madness Tier constantly. Uh, obviously, Madness Tier 3 has downsides, especially with add-ons. So they're feeding you more information, they're slowing themselves down, they're suffering from more um, downsides, and that's really, really good. Every time that happens, it also feeds into the... This is the Queen. It also feeds into the King. So the King is an interesting add-on. All right. The king basically takes the secondary effects from all of the file add-ons that we talked about, all of them, and it combines all of the secondary effects into one. So we're going to talk about the secondary effects uh, later, but basically the secondary effects are the red stain behind you, uh, longer, uh, I mean, illusory palettes, um, what else? <laughs> uh, the distant terror radius, and also the the Doctor Illusions. So all of these effects that we talked about, they are all combined randomly with the King. So what happens, what ends up happening if you combine these two add-ons or if you shock people a bunch is that they're all going to be assailed by 
a bunch of different effects, which is going to confuse them quite a bit. Especially against beginners, the king is really cruel because beginners do not understand how this add-on works or what all of these effects are. So they're going to see fake pallets, they're going to see the red stain, they're going to see uh, all of these things, and it's going to really, really mess with them. At a higher level, the king is not that big of a deal, and the queen is actually a much better add-on to just keep the madness coming. Uh, after this... On third place, but a very respectable add-on still, we have the range add-on, and there's three of them. These add-ons take your shock range, and they increase it by, I believe, um, uh, I think they move to front percentages, but obviously they do it in, in increasing. I think it's 2, 4, and 6 meters, or 10, 20, and 30%. Either way, uh, your normal shock has maybe this hitbox, right? Well, these add-ons increase it like that. Now, if you are extremely, extremely keen-eyed, you might have noticed that this has a minor downside. Because they increase the shape of the of the of the cone, it also means that the cone is a little bit skinnier on the side. So if you had a survivor right here, normally you would hit them without range. But with range, you actually miss them. So these add-ons have a slight downside of making your shock a little bit skinnier if you're close. But I'm telling you right now, it's a very minor downside. And making making the thing longer is very much worth it. With longer shocks, you can deny on hooks from a distance. You can you can interrupt the survivor doing a generator or an exigate or a heal. Um, you can do all kinds of things. You can also play around loops much, much safer, knowing that they're, like, without any range add-ons, even the brown one, even the brown range is already really good. Without any of these range add-ons, survivors often are exactly a little bit too far away. So when you stop to do the, the shock, you slow yourself down, they gain a bit of distance, and bam, they miss by, like, an inch. With any of these add-ons, especially with the green one, that will never, ever, ever happen. So they are very, very good. And they go well with discipline if you want to be very aggressive, but I'm sure you figured that out. Uh, we then have the restraint family of add-ons. Let me find them. I think it's, uh, yeah, this one. And that's it. There's, there, there, there's only two. <laughs> it's a bit confusing. Yeah, there's only two restraint family of add-ons, if I remember correctly. Um, so what these two add-ons, I'm so sorry. There's so much thunder. I'm, I'm going to take a little break until it quiets down. Um, okay, I think it's quieting down a little bit. Uh, yeah, my bad, by the way. There is a green restraint. It's right here. So, these add-ons, what do they do? Whenever you make a survivor hit the next tier of madness, their aura is revealed to you. And from the top of my head, what is this? 3, 2, and 1. I'm gonna check on the side. Yeah. So, this is 3 seconds. This is 2 seconds. This is 1 second. Uh, when do they hit the next Madness tier? That is when you do one blast or when you do two shocks. So shock two people or shock one person twice or blast them and you see their aura. This is super, super useful. Uh, many times at the start of the game and throughout the match, you're going to hit blast that hits multiple people. And knowing where they are is good, but knowing exactly where they are and exactly where they're going and exactly who they are and exactly what shape they're in and if they're holding an item and stuff like that, all of that is really, really useful. They obviously stack together uh, if you want to, but it's better not to uh, stack them because the secondary effect doesn't uh, actually stay. Let me read it right. Yeah, that's right. So essentially, the secondary effect that they all share that doesn't stack is the increased illusions during Madness Tier 3. And if I remember correctly... Yes. Hold on. Let me get this right. Uh, yeah, forgive me. I had to double check this issue, but I'm, I'm fairly confident if I'm wrong, you guys can hopefully call me out. So, restraint. On top of seeing the auras of the people that reach the next madness, they also have longer doctor illusions. And I'm pretty sure, I'm almost confident, that when they're in madness tier 2... Uh, when they're in Madness Tier 2, you can also see the Doctor, which you normally cannot. I'm not 100% sure because I'm, I'm finding some conflicting evidence, but yes, it's, it's a good thing. Um, seeing the Auras is very useful. Longer uh, illusions is good, and seeing illusions in Madness Tier 2 can be super clutch to find that one survivor that you're really, really looking for. So the Restrained Family of Add-ons are overall really, really, really good. So with that, I think we've covered almost everything up to Calm. And Calm starts in purple... The other one is here, and the other one is here.
So calm has two effects. It's a bit like monitor and abuse, the doctor's own perk. It increases the terror radius when the doctor is ready to blast. And more so in purple, more so in yellow, not so much on brown. Sorry so much about the thunder in the background. And, and it also reduces it when he's not ready to blast. So that means that when you want to hit a lot of survivors, you will have a big terror radius, which will affect your blast, but also other perks. And when you're not ready, you will have a very small one. These can be stacked together, um, or you can run one with monitor and abuse, and you can actually have a doctor that has like a, like a 14 or 12 meter terror radius, which is super, super hilarious and actually really, really decent. The bigger terror radius will also let you catch a lot more people in your in your blast, which will lead to more information and more tier threes and more delay. So these add-ons are very, very decent. The secondary effect they have is not so good, but basically every now and then when survivors are in madness, they're going to occasionally hear like a subtle terror radius that is not real, it's fake. And that might mess with them. If these add-ons had a better secondary, they would be a little bit higher, but as I said, they're pretty nice and the stealth doctor is actually quite underrated. We then have two tapes that change the shape of the Doctor's shock. Not his blasts, but his shock. As we have talked about earlier, his default shock is like a little cone. Let's draw it this way. With the interview tape, the cone becomes a beam. Like this. Now, it doesn't take a genius to know that this has advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantages is that it's much harder to hit a survivor that dodges in front of you. With a normal shock, you would hit them with this interview scape that makes the, the beam very skinny. It is really difficult. However, notice that this also makes your range significantly longer. This can be further enhanced by, by also combining it with a range add-on like this one. So with this add-on, what you lose in accuracy from up close you gain in massive distance. So you can run this add-on with the range uh, electrode and you can shock people from outside of your terror radius and interrupt them at totems and gens and that can be pretty nasty and should not be slept on. However, you are losing out on any secondary effects and it, it, it does make your power very difficult to manage from close range. So the upsides and the downsides, they even each other out. But then we have the scrape tape. The scrape tape, all right, let's go again. This is a normal shock cone. This is the interview tape, which is a beam. The scrape tape, what it does is it turns your shock into a circle. No joke, into a donut. Uh, this is where the doctor is, this is where the doctor is, and this is where the doctor is. So basically, with this add-on, you hit people Kind of like around, it's weird. It's really weird. Now, the funniest thing you can do with this add-on is combine it with the other tape. And yes, in that case, your shock is like a donut, like this. So you basically have a decently long, decently wide shock, but you're losing out on any other potential add-on. So yeah, this is kind of funny if you run these two together, but over overall, the scrape tape, which is this one, is not very good for the obvious reasons. And mm, 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 have we talked about the order um, add-ons yet? Yeah, no, we haven't talked about the order add-ons. The order add-ons are this purple, this yellow, and this brown. The order add-ons make it so that you can use your blast a little bit sooner. Normally, it would take you... I'm so sorry, I don't know why I have so many interruptions today. Uh, I'm so very sorry, I got called by a telemarketer. Uh, normally, you have a 60-second... Is this recording nice? You have a 60-second uh, delay between blasts. With these add-ons, you can reduce it by, I believe, what? 8, 4, and 8, 6, and 4. You reduce it by a few seconds. It's not an insane effect. It's not an insane effect. Sometimes you're not spamming your blast every opportunity. Sometimes you even have it and you just hold it until the opportunity comes and you can hit many survivors at a critical time. So you, you don't need this add-on nearly as much. It doesn't have nearly as much as the other ones do. The secondary effect of this add-on, however, is kind of neat. It creates illusory fake palettes that survivors in madness see. And even though it's not a huge, huge deal, it does sometimes mess with them and it can load them into making a mistake. For that reason, they are acceptable, um, but you should probably never stack them. And yeah, they're okay. And that leaves us with only one add-on, the Maple Knight. 
Uh, this add-on takes your range for your shock, whichever range it is, uh, if you have other add-ons and it changes it, and it will highlight it for you. Uh, much like the nurse's blade flannel, uh, you will see like a little like a little outline around it. This is an add-on that doesn't really help. In fact, it quite distracts. But it's a really useful add-on to put on while you're learning the killer. You can go play with bots and tinker with your range and see it a little bit. And seeing it will give you an idea of what it looks like. So then you can take it off. But it's not an add-on you should put on and on and on. It distracts you more than anything else. It's, it doesn't have a great a lot of utility uh, past that initial learning stage. Anyway, uh, moving on to the Huntress, and what a what a sight for sore eyes. It is so amazing to see so many great add-ons on the A and B and none on the S. This is really good stuff. So, uh, her best add-on, uh, maybe family of add-ons, is the Babushka and the Mana Grass Braid. These add-ons reduce the time it takes for you to ready up and shoot a hatchet. Since you begin to ready it up faster, you can also fully charge it a little bit sooner as well. Uh, this is minus 0 0.12, and this is minus 0 0.08 seconds. Uh, sorry, I don't know why I do the commas, it's just a Spanish thing, I guess. So, yeah, you could also combine them, so that you have a combined 0 0.2 second saved. On a killer as precise and as tight as Hunter's, this is very, very good, especially the green one. It goes with anything. This add-on, or the other one, it goes well with extra ammo, it goes well with extra cooldown, it goes well with insta-down, for obvious reasons, because you can prepare it sooner. It also increases your overall DPS. Let's say that there's survivors coming out of basement and you're just chucking down and you want to get through health states, this is also going to help a little bit. So it's just overall really, really good. And the more experienced the hunters, the better the results. However, uh, a little bit of warning, be careful with this add-on. If you are learning Huntress and you put it on and then you take it off, you're going to suffer because you'll be used to being able to use your power in a lot of loops and situations that are now difficult. You might also get used to throwing them and spamming them when sometimes it requires a little bit of finesse, a little bit of holding. So watch out what this add-on can do for your muscle memory. Other than that, it is an inc incredibly good add-on and so is the Grass Braid to a slightly lesser extent. Uh, the next two add-ons that are worth our time and really worth running are the belt and the soldier belt. Uh, these add-ons are incredible. Uh, with it, she can carry two extra hatchets, and with this one, you can carry one extra, and you can stack them. Do you need to stack them? Frankly, no. The first one is good. The second one is also good. But if you want to, you totally could. Having two extra hatchets is an incredible sweet deal, because what it often means is that you can save on one reload if you are accurate with your with your hatchets. Normally, if you go on a chase and you hit a hatchet and then you miss a hatchet and then you hit a hatchet, now you have two left. That is a little bit risky. You don't want to go on a, on a next chase with two hatchets. That means that if they, I don't know, if they somehow don't go down after two hatchets, you will have to reload mid-chase, which would be bad. But if you have this add-on, now you would have four hatchets. And with four hatchets, you can probably not even reload and go on your next chase and be completely fine. So this add-on, every now and then, saves your reloads, which means less time, more momentum, more chances to catch them with their pants down. So the add-on is obviously incredible. Keep in mind that this add-on will, neither of these add-ons will combo with the eerie head. But we'll talk about that in a second. We then move on to the extremely good for their value hatch um uh, uh hatchet cooldown add-ons the oak haft and the what's it called bandage haft these add-ons remove 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 seconds of the cooldown now that sounds really tiny but the thing is the cooldown for hunter's hatchets is already very low when you throw a hatchet you recover almost immediately compared to a normal attack so reducing this out of the very short thing, it's, it's good for many things. It's good for many things. Um, even if you're chucking hatchets from across the map, the sooner you recover, the faster that, that you get on, that the, the sooner that you start moving at your normal speed. So you waste less time. Uh, if you hit a survivor, you're going to catch up to them sooner. If you hit a survivor from up close, you can hit them and then immediately, almost immediately M1 them. Um, heck, it, this can even help in unhook situations. If you have a survivor uh, in front of you and they're unhooking, you can hit them and then 
you're going to recover so fast that you can hit them again before they can get an unhook. So it's a really, really cruel add-on, especially if you run them both. But even the yellow one is amazing. And it obviously also increases your DPS, quote-unquote. More so even than the Babushka. So what you can do with these two add-ons together, if you have survivors coming out of the basement, you can go... Pew, 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 and shoot hatches like it's a machine gun. It's really, really disgusting and a really, really strong add-on that only really comes into play after you hit a hatchet. So it's not going to help you to hit it, but it helps a lot into what happens afterwards. The next add-on is a bit of a double-edged uh, sword. It has a massive upside, your hatchet, your hatchet insta-downs, but you only have one. That means that after throwing one hatchet, you have to go and reload. This is a very mean add-on. You throw it maybe across the map, hit someone, insta-down them. Go pick them up, put them on the basement, stay around the basement. What are they going to do? Nothing. Nothing. You, they can do nothing. It does force you to reload and be without hatchets a bit more often than others. That's why certain other add-ons that we'll talk about later are going to maybe be worth considering, or Iron Maiden, or whatever. But it is an insane add-on. It is an insane add-on that, if run correctly, it puts such pressure on the, on the survivors that they often find it frustrating, and they often quit, and they often give up. So, yeah. Uh, for best effects, you could also run it with uh, Babushka so that you are really, really hard to avoid um, in chase with this add-on. Nasty, nasty add-on. But if you're playing seriously, it's not your only option. We already talked about these two. We now have the Glowing Concoction. A very uh, interesting add-on that makes it so that when you hit a Subaru with a hatchet, they are highlighted and you see their aura for the next five seconds. This can be increased by Lethal Pursuer, which is a common perk that you might run on Hunters anyway, so that it's seven seconds. It's pretty nutty. Uh, you hit someone through a window, and then they come out of another window, you can preemptively hold a hatchet and snipe them. You shoot someone through the... Sorry for the thunder. Uh, you hit someone through the farm um, cornfields, and they go into the cornfields, and you have a perfect vision of where they are if they're not juggling side to side you're going to hit them. And if they are juggling side to side, you see them perfectly, so you can kind of guess where they'll be next. So it's a really, really nasty add-on for follow-up hits. And obviously it doesn't help when you are to get the down too much, but it is nasty, 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 and very helpful and very favored by uh, experienced consciousness for a very good reason. Uh, another add-on that is not quite as flashy, but still useful, is the Venomous Concoction. This add-on inflicts five seconds of uh, exhaustion on a survivor that you hit with your hatchet. Now, this has a few effects. Um, if a survivor was working on a generator with Spring Burst, well, they lose it. If they wanted to use Dead Heart, well, they can't. If they had made for this, which is a very common perk nowadays, they don't get to use it at all. Neither do they get the secondary effect. If they were hit mid-fall to get balanced landing, they don't have it. You get the idea. So you can deny very strong perks before they get a chance to be used. And that is amazing. Uh, if a survivor gets hit by this, they have to walk for five seconds. So unless they drop a pallet safely and then... Like, it's difficult for them, if you're pressuring them, to get five uninterrupted seconds of them walking to get their exhaustion back. So it's very common that if you hit them once, that's it. Whatever exhaustion perk they had, they're not going to have. If they have... <laughs> what is it called? Uh, overcome, they also lose it on the spot. So it's a pretty cruel add-on that plays around strong common perks. So it's definitely worth ringing. We then have two heads. The begrime head... And the Rusty Head, I think it's called. One of them does Mangold, and the other one does Mangold and Hemorrhage. Obviously, the purple one is the stronger one. Uh, they're both good. They're both good. The Hemorrhage and Mangold obviously hurt, hurt, uh, hurt a little bit more. Because the harder... Like, it's really easy for Hunters to hit and injure a lot of people in in a bit of a, um, in a bit of a flurry of hits if things go south for survivors. And with this, you make their recovery much, much harder. Uh, very simple, very straightforward add-ons, though. Then we have the two add-ons that affect the flying speed of the hatchets. Now, hatchets go slowly, and if you charge them, they go faster. Twice as fast, I think, in fact, if you fully charge them. Uh, but with these add-ons, you can take that even further. You can make even the, the ones that you don't charge too much still go really, really fast. With this, you have a bit less room for um, mistake. If you have a survivor that's trying to, like, dodge, they have less time to react. They have less movement to dodge. It makes you, it doesn't make a, a, an insta-hit attack or anything close, but it's still really, really good. And it helps a lot to hit long-distance targets because your flight speed also means that there's less curve. 
Now, this is both a positive and a negative. If you're trying to throw a hatchet over a small obstacle to hit someone, these add-ons make it a little bit harder and they might mess with your muscle memory. But if you're trying to hit a target that's really far, the drop of the hatchet because of the flight speed is lesser, so it becomes a little bit easier. So these add-ons are favored by some huntresses that like to snipe and help in small, um, small loops as well to make the hatchet a little bit harder to avoid. They can't suddenly bolt the window and crouch. They, they will get hit regardless. Uh, this is 20%, I believe. And this is 10%, so, so you can imagine the green one is a little bit more noticeable. We Don't mind Nina in the background. Uh, then we have the very interesting um, wooden fox. This add-on gives you a very, very lengthy, uh, undetectable uh, status effect whenever you reload. You need to reload, not just open a locker. You need to actually reload, um, just, just so you know. Uh, this happens frequently. You will reload every now and then. And being undetectable can have several uh, positive effects. Uh, it can hide you from auto-reading perks, which are really good against Huntress. And if a survivor is listening to the lullaby, which doesn't go away, the na 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 na, they typically wait until they hear the heartbeat to. Uh, um, they typically wait until they hear that to really get into flight or fight mode. If they wait a little bit too long, waiting for the heartbeat to appear, and there's no heartbeat, you will often catch survivors with their pants down. Uh, and this is an add-on that doesn't seem all that useful at first glance on a killer that has the singing uh, lullaby, but actually does quite a bit, especially on indoor maps, where survivors will be struggling to know where you're coming from. So it's really, really quite okay. We then have the shiny pin. This is a really interesting add-on that, for the most part, gets outclassed by the, um, by the other add-ons that are a little bit simpler. But in the hands of a professional, really, um, <laughs> really um, proficient huntress, it does something quite important. Whenever you hold your hatchet, you are much slower than a survivor. And as soon as you begin to pull it up, this slowdown applies immediately. So if you're going around the window, around the uh, around the door, and trying to get a get a shot before the survivor makes it to a window, if you pull your hatchet up a little bit too early, you will be doing yourself a massive disservice. With this add-on, that speed that you lose is lessened a little bit. You gain uh, when you hold your hatchet, even from the very beginning when you begin to hold your hatchet, you are now a little little bit faster, and this can go pretty well with the speed or or other add-ons um, that allow you to pull up a hatchet and then actually like hold it and go out on certain obstacles. Normally, if you did this, survivors would be far, far faster than you. But with this add-on on some selected tiles, if you really know what you're doing, you actually are capable of snapping them around corners before they can go around the window or around the corner. So it does have an effect that is very, very small, but probably noticeable in the hands of a very experienced hunters. So some hunters that I know favor this, even though it's not a very obvious, very intuitive add-on to run. We then have the Deerskin Gloves. This is an add-on that makes your reload a little bit faster. Now, don't be deceived by the percentage that this add-on gives you. The way the percentage is calculated is a little bit deceiving. It sound, makes it sound really good. It's not that crazy. It saves you a little bit of time. I've seen people run this add-on and, and, and run it without a maiden, and they think it's going to be this insane value. It's not. It's, it's an okay add-on. It saves a bit of time, but I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world. Don't lose your mind over it, but it's a comfy add-on. You reload faster, you get your hatchet faster, you waste less time. It's not bad. Uh, the weighty head, I believe it's called. Uh, this is a really unique add-on that makes it so that any swabber hit by a hatchet becomes incapacitated. Uh, it, I believe it lasts for 15 seconds. Incapacitated survivors can do um, most things in chase and most things about exit gates and unhooks, but they can't use items, they can't do healing, they can't do objectives. So, say a survivor has a gen that's 99%. You hit them with a hatchet, they cannot work on that gen. Let's say that they're healing somebody else and they want to, like, get the last heal if it's your last hatchet or whatever. They cannot do that. So this add-on can single-handedly prevent a survivor from working on an objective, even if you are busy. So you can hit a survivor, hit them on a gen, and then know that you can reload and they cannot finish that gen in those 15 seconds that this add-on works. For the most part, this is a really, really situational um, thing that never comes into play. But every now and then it will, and you'll be glad you brought this add-on. Compared to the other insane yellow add-ons that we talked about, it's really nothing to write home about. Uh, next up, we have the Soldier's Putty. This add-on only activates when you're completely out of hatchets, 
and it makes you move at the normal 115% speed, same as if you were a trapper. Normally, the Hunters is a bit slower than that, she's 110. This is really decent, and it's pretty much meant to be used with the Eerie Head. With the Eerie Head, you throw a hatchet, you get it, great, you don't get it, oops, now you're useless, because you don't have a hatchet and you're slow. But now with this, you're not useless, you're like, a, you're like a normal killer. So yeah, run it with that, and it's okay, I guess, but it's not super necessary. On its own, without that in mind, I don't think the add-on's that great. Yes, you're 115, but, like, come on, like, you should not aim to be in a situation without hatchets for a long period of time. If you find yourself half your game without hatchets, uh, that probably means you've been planning kind of poorly and you should be playing differently and maybe you would have been better off running this add-on to have extra hatchets so that you're not out of them. Typically, that's always a better idea than that. Uh, next, the Amanita Toxin, I think it's called. This add-on makes it so that when you hit a survivor, they become blind for a little bit. This is okay. You hit a survivor, they're blind, maybe they don't see windows of opportunity or other perks, then you hook them, maybe after you hit them with a hatchet, and they're on the hook, and they don't see exactly who's coming for them, when they get unhooked, uh, they don't know where the other two teammates are, it's alright, it's not too bad, for a brown, it's a decent thing, but blindness is not an insane effect. And then I think we got, what, what is it called, the course or horse stone, uh, this item makes it so that anyone you hit with your hatchet will have a louder cries of pain. If you hit a survivor and they're trying to sneak up on you, you're going to hear them a little bit louder unless they have object uh, off the record. If they have uh, Iron Will, you will partially uh, offset it, so you will hear survivors a bit more clearly. Not a huge deal, but hey, better than nothing. Moving on to Cannibal. Cannibal's add-ons are very, very complicated, so I'm going to do my best to try to make it digestible. His best add-on, for reasons that are maybe not fully intended, is the beast marks, the green beast marks. Uh, I'm gonna call them both marks, but this is called beast marks and this is called knife scratches. These two add-ons are among his best. This add-on gives him a flat increase of 3% speed, and this add-on gives him a flat increase of 2% speed. Uh, the, the way Cannibal works, um, he has to ch rev up his chainsaw, and then when he goes to the saw, he uh, gains speed right? And he becomes faster and faster. And these add-ons increase that speed from the first moment, which is really, really, really useful. However, they both have the downside that the chainsaw takes longer to charge. And that is a bit regrettable. That is a little bit bad. I am 99% sure from what I've heard that these add-ons are multiplied incorrectly and they actually make him a little bit faster than they should. And that's maybe why currently they are among the best. But until they sort that mess out, these add-ons are definitely worth running. The best that you can do is instead of running them both, which is an idea, is to combine them with the chilies so that you have a bit of best of both worlds. But we'll talk about the chilies in a second. So yeah, with these add-ons, using a normal chainsaw in the open is going to be a little bit harder because you will take longer to charge it up. A swarm might beat you to a pallet or a window. But once your chainsaw is going, oh my god, they are very, very noticeable. And the 2 and 3% really begins to add up when we factor in the chilies. So let's talk about the chilies. The chilies add-ons extend each of the sweeps from the cannibal by 0 0.5 seconds, I think. And 0 0.25, if I remember correctly. Uh, one of them is pretty good, the other one is twice as good. That's what you need to know. Normally, the, the Cannibal has three sweeps. So, if you can imagine that, with the purple add-on, you add one and a half seconds extra across your entire saw. That is a lot of distance. Keep in mind that these add-ons change the curve. So, they actually have a super, super minor downside. A super minor downside. When you start your saw, you will since your saw takes longer... To, to, to fully get going, the, the speed that you gain, the acceleration, will be a little bit lower. But don't worry about that, it's very minor. The, the extra distance that you cover with the chilies are, is more and more and more than worth it. With the chilies, you really begin to catch up to survivors from a big, big distance. And you can actually, you know, if they get greedy on Apollo, you can go all the way around and catch them before they make it back. So they are really, 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 really good. Now, um, before we move on to other add-ons, why what's the thing that you should do? If you want to go light, you can go with these two. If you want to go best add-ons, you can probably go with this. So, with these two add-ons, you have the three charges. Let's let's imagine the three charges, right? 
we have the three charges and each of them is significantly longer. So now you go much further than before. So that's cool. And not only do you go much further than before, even though it takes a little bit to, um, to get going because of this add-on, you actually go much faster. So if you're in a small loop, normally the, the cannibal is so slow with his base kitchen, so even with both chilies, that survivors can kind of react to what you do and beat you to a window, beat you to a pallet. But with the speed of the engravings of the beast marks, especially near the end of the, of the sweep, you go so fast that this enables a certain playstyle, right? Where, let's say that you're in a loop, let's say this is the loop on both sides, there's the pallet, and you're here in the middle. The survivor obviously is here. What you're gonna do, right, is you're gonna chase them a little bit over here, and once your chainsaw is back, you're gonna, you're gonna do a double back and you're gonna come back. And here the survivor is absolutely screwed. At this moment, if you go all the way over here, you're gonna catch them. You're just gonna catch them. You're gonna be so fast that if they let you gain that little initial speed, you will be able to catch them before they make it around to the pallet or the window or whatever it is you're playing around. So this combination is really, really strong, but it does require you to really know what you're doing. Now let's talk about some other add-ons that are a little bit simpler. Uh, let's talk about the two recharge add-ons that come next. The primer buff and the spark. These add-ons make it so that you get your chainsaw charges a little bit sooner. Uh, you use chainsaw charges every time you break a pallet, every time you swing and miss, every time you swing and bump into something, uh, every time every time you use your saw for things, you lose charges and they need to be regained back much like Nurse. With the yellow add-on, you get them back a very significant uh, amount of time faster and the brown is decent as well. You could even stack them together if you're crazy. So what this allows you to do, right, is to break a pallet with your saw, then break another pallet with your saw, and then almost immediately be ready to use your full saw sweep. Uh, whereas if you didn't have these add-ons, uh, every time you use your saw, you need to uh, wait a little bit. You, you can't really commit to using your saw again fully, or if you use it, you're only going to have one or two charges, so you won't go as far. So it's not bad at all. It helps a lot to clean up the map. It helps a lot to to have um, to have your saw ready. It's not bad, even though it doesn't have a powerful chase effect. We then have the Iridescent Flesh, which doesn't have as much of a consistent effect, but it's like these two add-ons on steroids. This, instead of, uh, instead of giving you a recharge that's faster, it gives you immediate, instant recharge if you hit a survivor. So let's say that you use your saw, right? And the first sweep goes a little bit. You use, you have three, right? So now you have two. Then you use the second sweep. Now you have one. And then you use the last sweep. Now you have zero and you hit a survivor at the end. If you press the, uh, like at this point, you will again gain three thanks to this add-on. This add-on will give you three. So that means that you can again go and then and then and let's say you hit another survivor. Well, you get another three and you can go on forever. Theoretically, you can go on forever. This happens even if the survivor that you hit doesn't go down. So let's say that you're chasing a survivor that is injured and you hit them at the end of your chainsaw and they tank the hit because they have borrowed time or whatever other endurance. A dead heart, for example. Guess what? You can immediately reset your charges and then keep chasing them at full speed until you mow them down like a train. So yeah, this add-on, even though it doesn't help too much if survivors are splitting up and being careful, it creates some really scary situations where one mistake turns into an absolute death bath, uh, you know, into a bloodbath. So it is quite clutch when it comes into effect. And moving on, we have the light chassis. This is a really interesting add-on that doesn't actually affect the chainsaw. It only works while you're revving and preparing the chainsaw. Whenever you rev the chainsaw, it creates a, a small distance around you. Let's say you're the killer where you can see survivors even behind walls. So it shows you the artists of survivors around you. Actually, with this add-on, you don't want to use your chainsaw. You want to use this add-on in loops to check where survivors are. So say a survivor vaults a window and then they're hiding behind it. You can you don't need to rev your chainsaw a lot. You can just tap it a little bit, just tap it a little bit, go brrrr, and then you immediately see people through the walls. And if you tap it a little bit like that, you barely lose any distance, maybe none at all. So basically with this add-on, once you're trying to find people and you're walking around places where you know people are hiding around or looping you around, you just tap your power, tap it, tap it, tap it, to constantly see little glimpses of survivors. It doesn't uh, stack with lethal because it's not a time effect, so don't bother doing that. But it's a really, really decent help that can actually be helpful even if you're not super confident with using your saw. Next, 
up we have the chain add-ons. Um, there's three of them. They have different effects. Um, hold up. This one makes survivors broken. They cannot heal. This one makes survivors mangled. They can heal, but they're slower. And this one makes items fall off their hands. The items don't disappear or break or anything, but they fall off. So, what's better, really? Um, the broken one, I think, is the best. It's a really heavy duration. And what ends up happening is that you down a survivor, you hook them, they come out of the hook, and they can't heal. They cannot heal. This is both good and bad. If they have resilience and they don't care, well... The atom's doing nothing. But if, they, if they're if they the kind of person that they are vulnerable and, and they want to hide and stuff, they will not be able to hide. And next time you see them, you can instantly hit them with your basic attack and down them. So the broken is quite scary. Making them drop items is a bit of a waste of time. That can make it a lot harder for them to get their heals quickly or use something in chase. So that's nice. And the mangled to slow on their healing. I mean, it's all right. It's not too bad. So these add-ons are okay. Just be very careful because when you bring these add-ons, you are neglecting to bring the other add-ons in chase. So what's the point of having these add-ons if your chainsaw just doesn't hit anyone? You might need to get good at using these add-ons if you want to actually hit the better, more prepared survivors. Moving on, we have the vegetable oil. Uh, it's a really simple, straightforward add-on. If you hit a survivor with your chainsaw, normally you have a bit of an animation to recover. Uh, this add-on removes 0.3 seconds from that animation. So you can down a survivor and then be a little bit readier to immediately hit someone else or do something else or use your saw again. Not the end of the world. Not the most amazing thing ever. But all right, not too bad. So uh, next up, we have the carburetor tuning guide. It's a really interesting add-on. As we explained earlier, you have three charges, right? They're all three individual charges that let you go far. You start with three and then you use one and then you're at two then you're at 1, then you're at 0, and then it ends. With this add-on, what it does is it reduces your speed a little bit, okay? So you're not going to make it as far, but it turns your entire charges, all three of them, or however many you have, into one charge. So what this does, it as you could see, you're not as far, you're not you're not making it as far. There's like a bit of a difference, so that's not great. But it makes it very easy to control your saw. This is an add-on that is ideal for a beginner that wants to use Bubba and wants to go get his saw going and doesn't want to like try to time the charges or try to learn the timings. And it's super simple. Uh, the problem is that if you down a survivor immediately, you, you can't end it. You, you're going to be swinging yourself for an extra five seconds for no reason. So it's a bit weird. Um, it also makes your tantrum fixed so that you don't have a super mega long tantrum if you bump into something. Um, now, there's one benefit that even experienced players could honestly get from this. If you're using the, play, the, the perk Play With Your Food, since it's technically only one attack, if you have three stacks of Play With Your Food um, and you use three charges, you lose all of them. If you use one of these, you don't lose any. So you could use this with Play With Your Food, but this is pretty advanced stuff. Overall, this add-on simplifies its power, but makes it worse, and it's not super, super good. Now, one thing that you could do that would be really simple and really stupid is to run these two items together. And then if you hit one person, you immediately, immediately get your power back and get another super long sweep. And then you hit someone else and you get another long sweep. And you could do that for a long time until survivors uh, become a bit smart. It's not bad. Next up, we have the tantrum duration add-ons. They reduce 0.5, if I remember correctly, and 0.25, if I remember correctly. Uh, whenever you're playing as Cannibal and you bump into an object on purpose or on accident, uh, you will do an animation that is really annoying. And yeah, you lose distance. With these add-ons, what you can do is um, recover from this faster. Half a second and, two, and a quarter of a second faster. Be careful, because this is a bit funny, but sometimes uh, cannibals bump into lockers to try to mess with survivors. And I've actu I actually find it harder to escape against this add-on than it is to escape against this one. But either way, if you do that and you have these add-ons, there's a good chance you will mess with them. When you bump into a locker and there's a survivor inside, they have a very precise timing that they have to do. With these add-ons, you might be able to throw them off, but I've even escaped with one of these, so watch out. It's not, it's not guaranteed. Do not run these add-ons with the intention of bumping into things. There should be more of an insurance. That's the way I look at things. 
Uh, next up, we have the Shop Lubricant. The Shop Lubricant has an extremely weird effect that you don't even know when it activates. If you down a survivor, let's say the survivor is DS, and within 20 meters of them, there is not a single other survivor, let's say the other survivor is further than that, then this survivor becomes invisible. He's shrouded. His aura is, cannot be seen by other people. Um, so you're the killer, right? You down them and you're like, oh, nice. They can't be seen. So their teammates are not going to know we're here. So I'm going to go chase this guy. And now the rest are going to be really confused. One tiny little problem. You never know when this is happening. The add-on doesn't tell you. It doesn't flicker. It doesn't turn on. It doesn't really tell you. Hell, even if it did tell you, you don't know if the survivor is in communication with their teammates. So if this guy is on Discord, he can just be like, hey, guys, I went down by Shaq. I'm here by Shaq. Yeah, come. I'm Shaq. Yeah, here. here thank you. You know, and it's completely fine. So this is a really weird add-on. In some clutch endgame situations, you might be able to down one guy and then go for someone else. And then the third guy doesn't know where anyone is and they're super confused. And that would really hurt them. But it's such a one in a million. It's such a... Uh, a, a bunch of coincidences. Why rely on that, right? Really, really silly. Very stupid add-on, but obviously it's better than nothing. And next we have the Grease and the Long Guide Bar. These two add-ons are really, really stupid. Um, if the cannibal holds his saw without fully charging it for too long, he goes into Trantrum. When has this ever happened? Never. Never. Now, if you were camping a survivor, you might want to hold your saw... But you know what you can do? Just don't. Just don't hold it. Just just wait. Just have your saw ready. And when they unhook, then you begin. And then you hit them both. That's what campers do. Campers do not 99 their saw like... They don't do that. They don't do that. They don't. No one does that, in fact. But if you want to do that, these add-ons add, uh, I believe, two seconds. And I believe one second. Uh, where you can hold your saw without using it longer. Without overheating. Which sends you into a tantrum. Um, this video is going to be very long, so I don't want to have long pauses where I'm shaking my head, but this is one of the stupidest add-ons, uh, add-on designs in the game. Let's just put it that way. Uh, next up, um, speed limiter. It's literally a carbon copy of the hillbilly. Instead of insta-down with one hit, you now only damage them, so you have to hit them twice instead. Uh, this is bad. This is terrible. This is awful. You should never run this. However, if you do decide to run it, it's not like hillbilly. Uh, it's a lot more fun than heal Billy because you can actually get uh, double hits with him. So let's say that you come, let's say that you bring the eerie flesh uh, with this add-on. What you could do is hit a survivor and then reset your charges and then hit them again and then reset your charges and then go for someone else. It's funny. It's funny. It's it's always better if you insta down, right? But it's fun. So actually, even though it's an F tier add-on, definitely try it out. Uh, the add-on I don't recommend you try out is the depth gauge rake. This add-on is terrible. Uh, this add-on makes your charge a lot longer, and it makes your speed a bit lower. And what it does in return, instead of giving you three uh, saws, we already explained you get two, you get one, now you're at zero. It gives you four. It gives you four. Um, sorry, is that four? Yeah, one, two, three, four. This sounds really amazing, but it's not. It's really not. The downsides are very noticeable. Uh, the lack of speed makes it so that if you try to use your speed in the loop, survivors always beat you to the pallet. And if you try to use your speed for mobility or whatever, like you, you're taking so long to charge it. It's awful. It's awful. Let me tell you, if you want to go really, really far, use the two chilies, which have basically no downside, basically. And if you want to have a help in chase, use the marks, which make you faster and more unpredictable in chase. That's it. That's it. And if you want to have a long, funny thing, then use the tune guide. The extra four charges, I guarantee you, are... They wouldn't be too bad if it didn't have any downside, but it really, really hurts you. It's like a chili with a massive downside, and it's really, really not good. The extra charge it gives and the... No, it's not, it's not worth it. F tier, no redeeming qualities. Um, if you want to catch... Like, if you want to have the longest Olympic medal Bubba... I mean, you just go double chilies or chili and speed and you're just as close and the downsides are far lesser. So, yeah, forget about that. Next up, we have Freddy. Uh, sadly, he has really under... 
underperforming. Uh, his add-ons are just really, really sad. Uh, let me tell you about the good ones. And uh, let's start with the paintbrush. The paintbrush is by far his best add-on. I even consider putting it in S tier because compared to every other add-on, it does so much. But then I remember that it's Freddy and even this add-on's not that good. So <laughs> I hesitated. Um, normally when survivors spawn in the map, they take 60 seconds to fall asleep. They can even miss a skill check to delay this, but normally they take 60 seconds. Um, until then, you don't have a power. Your teleport takes longer because everyone is awake. The more people are asleep, the faster it goes. And your snares or your fake pallets straight up do not work on survivors that are awake. So that is awful. That is terrible. Those first 60 seconds, they really, really, really hurt. This is where this add-on comes in. At the start of the match, every survivor starts asleep. This immediately does three things, really. Number one, it allows you to get your first teleport sooner because the more people that are asleep, the more people that um, that that contribute towards the faster teleport. That's how Freddy works. Number two, in your first very first chase, you can already use your power. If you have snares or fake pallets, you can already lay them out. Probably snares, they're better. Um, so that's really really useful. Getting a little bit of help in your first chase is invaluable. And this add-on. On top of doing this, which would already be incredible, it has another effect, and that is that skill checks no longer wake you up. This is so important for the next couple items that we're going to talk about, but this is super, super big, because it means that if a survivor misses a skill check accidentally or on purpose, now instead of having um, a downside, which is to miss the skill check and reveal themselves, and waking up, it's only downside. They're, they get nothing from skill checks, so it's awful. Awful, awful, awful. It means that they have to wake each other manually a lot more often, which eventually becomes really slow, or they have to go for clocks way more often, which wastes their time a bit. So yeah, that's a big deal. That's a really, really big deal. This add-on is really, really incredible. And as we'll mention in a minute, uh, the whole not waking up from skill checks will be important with these two add-ons. The next best add-on probably is the black box. The black box is a stupid situational gimmicky add-on but at the end of the day, it does something that almost no other add-on can do. And in my opinion, it's probably if I had to run two add-ons and I didn't have a, a, a precise build, I would probably pick this. So what does this add-on do? Anytime an exit gate gets open, let's point, let's paint an exit gate, right? There's the exit gate switch. Anytime this gets one light, two lights, three lights, the moment it begins to open, for the next 15 seconds. After a gate opens, no matter who opens it, I'm pretty sure that even if you open it, it works. Any survivor that is asleep cannot leave this gate for 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Asleep survivors. Uh, now, I want you to think. If you hit someone, obviously, they will fall asleep on the spot. So keep that in mind. How many times have you played killer and seen survivors like barely, barely manage to get one or two people out at the exit gates, and you're like, Ugh. you're like fuming, they're like, Ugh. this add-on hits them like a brick. There are so many maps with bad exit gates that you can, you can like defend them, defend them, defend them, wait until they fall asleep, they have no clue what's going on, they don't expect this add-on, because let's be honest, who runs it? No one. Who plays Freddy? No one. Um, so you stall them a little bit, they open the gates, they're out of the teabagging you, and then you hit them, and then they... They flop into the wall because it's blocked, and then you hit them again, and now you get one kill. If you have Blood Warden, mm -mm, maybe now it's not one kill, maybe now it's two or three kills on top. So this add-on has that little clutch potential that, in my opinion, uh, is already far better than what most of these other add-ons do. Now let's talk about the dress add-ons. This is the blue dress, this is the green dress. So yeah, the yellow dress is the green dress, and the green dress is the blue dress. Uh, they were inspired in the office that day. And the wool shirt is also a dress add-on. So these add-ons, they all do one thing. They make an extra four... Oh, Jesus, not 40%. Goodness gracious. <laughs> let's, let's hope not. An extra 4% penalty every time you miss a skill check. If you are asleep. Very important. All of these add-ons do this one thing. Uh, and then, depending on the rarity, they reveal your aura for three seconds... Two seconds or nothing, if it's the wool shirt. Uh, so, what's the problem? If a survivor is, a, is awake, this isn't very good. And if a survivor misses a skill check, and then they miss another skill check, well, now they're awake, so the second time it doesn't work. So these add-ons, ideally, you pair them with each other, or you pair them with the brush. If you pair them with the brush, they miss a skill check, they get the effect, and then, on top of that, they're still asleep, so the next time they miss a skill check, they also get it. 
So why is this such a big deal? Why am I placing this add-on so high up? Let's think about a normal... Let's, let's say that you're doing a generator, right? And you miss a skill check because the killer has oppression or merciless storm or, or overcharge or whatever. A normal uh, skill check uh, reduces 10% of progress. If you have the perk Lullaby, which is really, really good in this build, now it's 16%. Now, if you have one of these things, it's now, well, at 4%, so now it's minus 20%. Minus 20% is absolutely insane. That's like pain rush, basically. For one miss kill check. That's crazy. I have seen a streamer uh, that I went against miss two skill checks in a row and saw his gen go from like 99 to like 50, and he cried his eyes out with good reason. Holy moly, that's a lot. That's a lot. It's a bit gimmicky. It requires a build around it. Really good survivors, even the difficult skill checks they can get. Sure. But it's quite something. So yeah, these add-ons have that little bit of potential. And the green and the uh, and the green and yellow dress also show you auras when this happens, which is a little bit nice, but it's still really, really good. So yeah, don't sleep on these add-ons, uh, pun intended. Then we have the blocks for blindness. These add-ons were buffed recently, and I don't understand why. Uh, this one gives you 90 seconds of blindness, which is crazy. And this one gives you 60 seconds of blindness. If you have the perk uh, Fearmonger, aka Mindbreaker, anytime they touch a gen, the, 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 the thing will be blind. Uh, the, the, the blindness will be paused. So that means that if you put a snare next to a gen, and you have Fearmonger, and they step on it, they will be blind the entire time to repair and for 90 seconds afterwards, which means that if you hook them, they will still be blind by the time they come out. <laughs> it's it's pretty comical. It's actually really stupid. Question, can you stack them? Answer, no, do not stack them. If you stack them, only the 90 second one triggers, just letting you know. Um, so that would be really funny if you could blind them for like the entire match. Uh, so why is blindness good? It's not, it's not incredible, but it's a pretty consistent effect that you can do. And if you hook a survivor with blindness during the whole hook, they don't see their teammates. If you hook them out in chase, they don't see when there's opportunity. There's a few things that come with blindness. Survivors run auto perks fairly often, so it's not too bad. Next up are two of the most overrated add-ons for Freddy. Uh, these add-ons sound like they're really useful, so I don't blame people for thinking they're good. They're not too bad, but they're not great either. Um, they are the Nancy's Masterpiece and the whatever drawing. I forgot what this one's even called. They have a 3 and a 2% increase to the normal... Um, <laughs> to the normal uh, rate at which survivors give you your power. Uh, let me explain, okay? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the more survivors that are awake, the, the, the longer your cooldown. If you have four survivors asleep, with say, for example, the brush, your ability to teleport, which is really, really useful, is very fast, very, very fast. I believe for every survivor asleep, you have a 15% increase. So these add-ons are adding three and 2%, maybe five together for each survivor asleep. So instead of 15% faster for one, it's 18% faster or 17% faster. So what does any of this mean? I made the math, okay? I did the numbers back in the day. And what this translates to most of the time is in a, in a good case scenario where you have multiple people, if you have people awake, these add-ons do nothing, by the way. At the start of the game, if you don't have the brush, these add-ons, they do absolutely nothing. It's only for each person asleep. Keep in mind. So in a good case scenario where you have multiple people asleep with these add-ons, you will save one second on the teleport. Instead of 40 seconds or 30 something, it will be 39 or 34 or 36. Not good. Not good. If you have both add-ons or, or the green add-on, in the best case, you save two seconds. So these add-ons together on their own, they save you anywhere from one to three seconds. Is that something that is so important to you? compared to some of the other add-ons that we talked about, let me tell you, it's not that good. These, if you don't know what to put on, these add-ons are always good to have, but they are, their effect is very, very minor. So just keep that in mind uh, before you really, really think they are, they are doing too much. They're really not. We then have the rope and chain set of add-ons. These add-ons are all really, really mediocre. And the reason why is that because they only work on asleep survivors, again. And remember, if you don't have the brush, most of the survivors that you play against are going to be awake most of the time, and it's really frustrating. Even with the brush, they can still be awake, so these aren't great. Uh, the green add-on makes the injured sounds louder. The, um, the purple add-on makes their steps louder, and the yellow add-on makes the generator sounds 
louder. Uh, no, actually not louder, but they're they're more audible from a distance. It's a bit like uh, the surveillance side effect. So uh, the yellow atom would be really good, by the way. This with surveillance would let you hear people working on gents from like 60 meters away, which would be incredibly, incredibly good, maybe even further. The problem is they need to be asleep. They need to be asleep, and many Subarbers are not. So you cannot rely on that. Uh, the louder footsteps, by the way, are very noticeable. I've tested this add-on and I've listened with, with a decent headset and tried to, I can barely tell the difference. It's very, very subtle, but I mean, it's okay, I guess. And the louder moans of pain when they're injured, I mean, it's all right. Then they have off the record and they make zero noise anyway, so you're wasting an add-on, but whatever. These add-ons are okay-ish, but they are painfully, painfully useless because most of the times when you need them, they, the swabber is awake. Next up, we have the class photo. Uh, this add-on sounds really, really powerful, but it's really not. Um, it allows you to... It, it does two things, okay? One good, one bad. Uh, the good. Whenever you teleport to a generator, they do not see the the Freddy blood uh, outline come up. Instead of seeing you appear from the gen, they see blood splurting from it. So they don't know if you're teleporting to that gen or not. Every gen spurts blood, and it's confusing. So a survivor on a gen that you're not even teleporting to might get scared and run away and let go of the gen, even though you're not even going there. But the massive downside, the this is the good stuff, the bad downside is that you can no longer interrupt your teleport. Normally, it is not even a bad idea many times to teleport to a gen and then stop it just to mess with them or, or just to push them in a certain direction. So now, anytime you teleport, even if halfway you change your mind, you can no longer cancel it. That is really, really bad. Now, the obvious strategy with this add-on is to put on Deadman Switch and other perks so that you teleport to one gen and then every other gen gets... Uh, the, the blood sporting, and then everyone lets go, and then you can block multiple gens. Let me tell you, that's not even so strong. It would be much better to know which gen you have to go to with, say, Tinkerer, and then show up there with a real impactful perk, such as Pop Goes the Weasel, to kick it and then regress it a lot. Blocking gens for a little bit is not that big of a deal on a killer that isn't as insane as some of the other ones. So even that gimmicky playstyle is not that strong. For that reason... I am hesitant to say that it's worse than nothing. You can make a build around it, but it's definitely not incredible. We then have the two blocks for hemorrhage. This, this is just so stupid. This is just so stupid. If a survivor interacts with your snare or your fake pallet, um, what's going to happen is that they become hemorrhagic for a few seconds, uh, for a little while, actually. Uh, what does this mean? This means that if they try to heal and they stop, they lose progress. Okay, all right. Uh, I believe the yellow one is 60 seconds and the purple one is 90 seconds. Uh, and the purple one has the added gimmick that even if a survivor is healthy, they will still bleed. Now this sounds pretty okay. I, I actually tested this with Bloodhound, with other blood tracking perks, and I'm like, dang, dang, wow. That, that's kind of nice that you can track even healthy survivors. But let's be honest. Healthy survivors are probably awake once you hit them and you put them to sleep, and then you can hit them with the snare so that this add-on does its work. Then they're already injured. So it, it doesn't come into play that often. The hemorrhage without mangled is not even that impactful. And it doesn't even happen so frequently. And even and even in my testing, I realized that this add-on has a massive downside, the purple one. Many times, uh, when you're chasing multiple survivors, you want to go for the one that is most vulnerable right? Let's say that three survivors spread out in different directions, and one of them is leaving pools of blood because they're injured. Well, who do you think you're going to go for if that person's dead on hook? You're going to go for this guy. Now, imagine that you have this add-on and they all stepped on a, on a snare or something. Well, you're going to see blood on multiple survivors, so you're no longer going to be able to tell who the hell is who. You're not going to be able to tell that you're chasing the one guy that you want to. Even the healthy survivors are going to leave blood. So it's going to make it a little bit harder for you to discriminate who is who. And you might even be chasing a person that you don't want to chase. So considering that, these add-ons are absolute garbage. Jesus. Another add-on that I really try to wrap my head around are the pill bottles. So whenever Freddy is... Um, whenever a survivor is awake, um, they see Freddy from 32 meters, okay? Um, let's, let's imagine a radius of, of Freddy, 32 meters. 
If a survivor is within that, they see him. If a survivor is further than that, he becomes invisible. Wait, is that when they're awake or they're asleep? Am I stupid? Hold up. Hold up. I, 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 I'm having a crisis. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. They changed this some time ago, and I honestly thought I was going to say it wrong. Uh, right. So 32 meters, right? Um, further than 32 meters, as the, the, you're, you're invisible. From 32 to 24, there's like a ring, okay, where you are actually intermittently visible. So if you are occupying this distance away from a survivor, they see you on and off, on and off, and you can mess with them a little bit, I guess. With this add-on that we just highlighted, instead of being intermittently visible between 24 and 32, you're now intermittently visible between 12 and 24. So the ring that I just drew is a little bit smaller. This is a garbage add-on. This is an absolute garbage add-on. It also has another effect where uh, survivors that are awake do not see you when you're carrying a, a survivor. Now, I tried this in a public match and I figured, oh, maybe, maybe it makes it harder to blind the killer. No, it's very easy. You still see the survivor being picked up. You can still do pilot safes. You can still do blinds. You can still see the, the killer. Like, it's so easy. Like, it doesn't change anything. This add-on quite literally does... Nothing. The only thing it might do, if you have monitor on abuse or some kind of stealth perk, is that you can sneak up to a survivor in a very open map, and if you're lucky, they might see you a little bit later and react a little bit later, and that's a lot of ifs. So, yeah, uh, the pill bottles are absolute garbage. Uh, they're not worse than anything, so you can still bring them, but I'd be, I'd be very, very um, uh, careful if you expect any value from them. We then have the three pallet add-ons. Um, basically, all of these add-ons do the exact same thing. They all replace your snares, which are little blood puddles that slow down survivors when they walk through them, with fake pallets. Now, fake pallets are a bit funny. You can only place them in pre-set locations that normally have a pallet. This is sometimes <coughs> uh, a place uh, that had a pallet that's already been broken. And survivors only see the fake pallets when they are asleep. Now, there's a big problem, okay? Let, let, let me just go... Let, actually, two big problems. Let's say the most uh, obvious one. Some maps have pallets that are 100% always there. And that means that at the start of the match, survivors know which pallets are real 100% of the time. Um, so no matter what you do, like, survivors are 100% going to know that this pallet always spawns here. So it has to be real. Uh, and, and, and you're not really going to confuse them. Especially if they're awake. If they keep waking up with the clock, with missing skill check, then these add-ons do literally nothing. So having an add-on to replace the default snares for something that might not work, that's really, really bad. Um, but then there's another issue. And it's the fact that most of the time, survivors, uh, sure, sometimes they have windows of opportunity, but they try to go to places that they know have safety. If they go to a place with a lot of pallets, your, 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 your fake pallets are going to do nothing. If they go to a place that has nothing, with fake pallets, they're going to die. And without fake pallets, they're also going to die. If they go to a place where there's only one fake pallet and they drop it and they die, guess what? They would have died anyway because there's nothing there. There's not a lot of situations where survivors have a window and a pallet and they're like, oh, let me just go for the fake pallet, maybe. No, they, they will take what's certain they will take what's safe and these pallets are not very good um remind me again what is the difference between them is it the amount of tokens that you get oh one second i i kind of forgot oh uh, oh yeah um actually i i imposted immediately uh, i think yeah when they drop a pallet the aura is shown to you and with the green and yellow variants you see their aura a little bit more, but all of them are basically the same thing. They're not really good. We then have the kits drawing add-on. This is a meme add-on that makes you get more blood points, but your snares slow down survivors less. It's a meme add-on. It's bad. Don't use it. End of the discussion. Next up, we have Pig. Um, Pig has a lot of very good add-ons, and knowing exactly why they're good or when they come into play is a little bit complicated. It's not super easy to, to explain. Um, I'm thinking of doing things a little bit different. Um, 
should I? Nah, okay, let's follow the same order. Uh, the best add-on on pig possibly is the videotape. The videotape takes her four reverse bear traps that she normally stand starts the match with, and instead of having them in your inventory, you automatically distribute them to the four poor soul survivors that you're that you're playing against. So they all have the bird traps at the start of the game. They are all turned off, obviously, so they're not going to die to them most of the time. But it puts a lot of pressure on them. Because if they spawn together, they only have one box, they all have to search it. So this basically turns one of the major weaknesses of the pick, which is the early game, into a bit of an asset. Into a bit of a time when survivors actually have to fight back against their traps and remove them. And they can't really do gents too much. Now, what are some great things to pair with this? Uh, let's talk about some of them. Um, you can pair this add-on with an extra trap, so that you have four traps at the start and one trap for the middle game. You can pair it with um, with longer uh, search, obvious reasons. Do not pair it with the Amanda's letter, because then they will only start with two traps. Don't do that. You can also pair it surprisingly well with the uh, razor wires. This add-on makes it so that if they miss a skill check, they get injured. Many times this isn't a very good idea, um, we'll, we'll talk about why later, but at the start of the match, when everyone is healthy, this add-on is actually pretty okay. If you interrupt someone doing a search, they can get injured immediately and it's a bit scary, so it's not too bad. Um, and it also can go all right with any of the add-ons that have an effect. For example, if you, this would be included, if you chase a survivor with the, with the, um, with the toxin, you know that they won't have an exhaustion perk at the start. So it can be all right. But overall, it's an add-on that's really, really powerful. And it really tests the, the teamwork of survivors. If they go on an indoor map where they all have to spread out and find the the boxes it's going to be really difficult especially if you pair it with the rule set number two because now they won't see the boxes and until they do a gen they'll all be running around like helpless chicken uh, so it can be really really nasty and i think it's possibly her best uh, then uh, a really second good contender for best add-ons the two add-ons that increase her traps by one with the annotated plan and the annotated sketch instead of having four like we mentioned earlier she gets a plus one and instead of having uh, plus one, if you run them both, you have plus, plus two, so you have six. Now, normally, this is a bit complicated, okay? But normally, whenever survivors have traps, they have to do a number of searches. These searches always add up to 12. Uh, let's say it's, let's say it's, I'm gonna, it's a little bit more than that, but let's say that each search is 10 seconds. If it's 12, well, now it's 120, right? Uh, so that would be two minutes they waste. In reality, it's a little bit more than that, so... Already, if you put out all of your traps, you're wasting a lot of their time. But when you add traps to it, the, the total searches, they increase by 15 if it's 1 or 18 if it's 2. Now, if you do the math of how long it takes for a survivor to remove a trap, you'll know that each search takes quite a bit of time. I believe it's 14 seconds plus all the time they spend going up and down. So do it, multiplying that by 18 potential searches, that's insane. If you get six downs before all the gems get done, which is doable, and you get six traps, they, that is an amount of slowdown that most teams just cannot dream of overcoming. So having an extra trap or two extra traps is really, really wild. Now, there is a small difference between the purple and the green add-on. The green add-on has a downside that it increases the timer of the traps by 10 seconds, which gives a bit more time to the survivors, but it also decreases it by minus 10 seconds if, um, if they do a gen. If they do a gen while the survivor is on the hook, it doesn't work. It needs to be while the trap is out of the active. It also gives a little indicator in the HUD. There's like a little... Uh, icon, so survivors know about this and they're not gonna screw their teammates, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, the green one is not quite as nice. Increasing the time, you don't want that. You want, If they make a mistake and they're tired on time, you want them to really, really suffer. You don't want to give them 10 seconds. Now, the purple add-on, though, is really, really good. Because on top of giving you an extra trap, like we mentioned, it also takes a generator that's being worked on. Let's say this is a generator. Uh, there's the wheel. And it highlights it in yellow. So, if a survivor, let's say that you bring the videotape and let's say that you bring this add-on. And let's say that one of the survivors is a bit of a smartass, and he's like, yeah, I'm just going to work on this gen. I don't care about the box. Uh, I'm not going to remove it. Then you see it immediately. So, And you can tell, obviously, looking at the HUD, if only one person has a trap, that they're doing that gen. So highlighting, getting information while also getting more slowdown is just incredible. These two add-ons are really, 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 really good.
Now we have Amanda's letter. Amanda's letter does two things. Number one, it takes your four traps and it removes two of them. So that means you're only going to have two. If you bring the other add-on, then yeah, you'll have three. But normally, with this add-on its own, you'll now have two traps. That is really, really bad. That is, in the long term, it's going to really, really hurt you. But it also makes up for it with an amazing ability. Anytime you crouch and you go uh, and you go crou in the crouch mode, you will have an aura around you of, I believe, 12 meters. Uh, it might be 16 even, uh, but I believe it's 12, where you see the auras of survivors. And this is amazing for general uh, search and destroy <laughs> in indoor maps and also really good in loops. You can crouch and if they run away, you can you could bring this with, uh, for example, the... Um, the combat straps, so you can you can very quickly react to what they're doing and catch them and even find them hiding sometimes, and it's really 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 useful. And it only gets countered by distortion of the record, maybe, um, maybe uh, boon, uh, shadow step, but these shouldn't be too too common. So it's still mostly worth running. So it's a nice add-on if you want to be more combat oriented. We then have the crate of gears and the bag of gears. These add-ons increase the search time for the boxes. Let's remember that if you put all of your traps, they're going to have to do 12 searches by the end of them. The first guy might do one, the first guy might do two, but in the end, between all of them, they're going to do 12, sorry, 12 searches, right? 12 boxes. With this, you're adding a few, this is like a second and a half, and this is like three seconds-ish. You are adding a lot. Multiply three seconds by 12, and you get a lot of extra time. Lot. A lot of it. More important than that, if the time that they need to do a box is greater, that does two things. It gives you more time to interrupt them, which makes the whole thing reset. Let's say someone's doing the box and they're like, ah, trying to get it off, and you go there and you, 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 you hit them or you scare them off. Well, that's, that's a lot of time that they wasted and now they need to do it again. And that leads to people dying. Uh, if they don't remove their active box, uh, their active trap in two and a half minutes, they will die. And guess what? If they have to do four boxes on the average map, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, as we explained earlier, one person might do it first try, one person might do it second try, but there's a really, really inescapable chance that several people will have to do three, and there's a pretty realistic chance that at least one person, maybe more, might have to do four. These guys are, are screwed. I was going to use a worse word, but these guys are absolutely effed. They are really, really screwed. They do not have physical time if you have these two add-ons, for example, to get four searches off, especially if they get healed first, especially if they get interrupted even a little. They will die. If the map is big or the map requires them to go up and down floors, they will probably die. And with these add-ons, you literally get free kills every other game. It's really, really disgusting. Moving on, we have the Tamper Timer. Now, the Tamper Timer is pretty much the same story as, as these two add-ons. It doesn't actually make the searches longer. So the one guy that got it off on first try, he's fine, doesn't get affected. But it takes minus 20 seconds off the overall timer. They have 20 seconds less. That means that if you pair these two add-ons together, there is a really, really realistic chance that one of the people or two that you're trapping will have to pray to baby Jesus that they don't die on their third or fourth search. It's really, really cruel. So, yeah. It's not going to slow down the game, per se, but it's going to increase the chances that someone dies. And even though they nerfed this add-on, I think, it's still really, really, really good. So, yeah. Keep that in mind. These three add-ons overall for this playstyle is really, really disgusting. Uh, we already explained what all these add-ons do. The only remaining one is the rule set number two. Normally, when you put a trap on someone, if it's the first time, it's very likely that they'll finish a gen and the trap will be active. But if you put a trap on someone and the trap isn't active, that's when this add-on works. If the trap isn't active, the survivor with a, with, a, with, a, um, with a trap will not see the boxes. They will not be highlighted. So if there's a box nearby, they might do it, but if not, they might just go and do gens. This add-on on its own, I think it's pretty bad. You actually want people to waste time doing boxes. You don't want them to actually do gens. If they do gens, believe it or not, maybe that person dies, but everyone else is going to get out. So you actually don't want people to do gens. You want people to really be distracted until you get to kill them later. Uh, the only place where this add-on really shines, and the reason why it's decently high, it's because it goes really well with indoor maps with the tape. These two add-ons together are mean. If you send... Don't do this, but, you know. If you send survivors to, say, Midwitch... This is a, a map with multiple floors 
where if they even if they have a box that's really close to one another, they can't go from here to here. They have to go all the way to the stairs and then back and then here. And this takes an insane amount of time. They can't even know where the boxes are randomly because they don't see them. So what's going to end up happening is that you're going to spend minutes and minutes and minutes and you will still have multiple survivors that still have a box on, that still have a trap on, and they don't want to do gents because they are afraid of dying. So this is really, really mean even in normal maps. So yeah, that's a good combo. Now, uh, we move on to the combat straps. The combat straps save 0.3 seconds anytime you crouch to ambush or be stealthy, and also every time you get up. So the, the transition of going into crouching and out of crouching, you save 0.3 seconds. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's actually really, really nice, and I so wish this was a base kit thing. One of the saddest things about the, kit, uh, about the pig's base uh, power, most of the add-ons that I explained just now, are based on her traps. But her ambush, her, her power in chase, it's not very good. Survivors often can outrun it, they can dead hard into it, they can, if they see you crouch, they can just run away and make a lot of distance, especially if you don't realize it. So with this add-on, you have the constant threat of crouching, and if they run away, you get up and you catch them. It also makes it a little bit smoother for you to do any quick play around any obstacle where you might want to do a little ambush. So overall, it's not the most impactful add-on in terms of like, oh, it kills people like the other ones we mentioned, but it is nice and it feels really good in chase. We then have one of the most underrated add-ons on the pig's arsenal, the Amanda's Secret. This add-on has the downside that it completely eliminates your ability to see your own boxes. So normally the pig, by default, you can see the auras of your white boxes and you can like keep an eye on them. And if there's multiple survivors with a trap, you might be a little bit cheeky and go and check between the boxes to try to mess with them. With this add-on, the, the boxes are still there. You can still remember them if you see them, but you won't see them. So you need to do a bit of extra thinking. That's a bad thing. However, the upside is that anytime a survivor removes a trap, this add-on gives you a notification. They don't know about it. And it shows you their aura. This is really, really good because a survivor with a, with a trap, uh, this is the trap, da, 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 uh, you don't want to tunnel them. This survivor is wasting time. They're useless. But the moment they remove it, now they're going to heal, now they're going to hide, now they're going to do gens, now they're going to live. You don't want that. The moment a survivor removes their trap, that's typically when you want to hook them or kill them again. So this add-on basically tells you now is the time to do that and also shows you where they are so that you can maybe even use your sneakiness to get there. Uh, one common thing that happens with this add-on is that one survivor will be unhooked. They will not want to heal. They'll think they're safe. They'll do a box, they'll do a second box, they'll do a third box, they'll do the fourth box, and now they get the thing off. And now you get a notification, and then you see them start to heal themselves with the medkit. And then you can crouch and <laughs> approach and down them, and it's a very efficient way to find the person that you want to tunnel out of the game. And that sort of efficient hook playstyle is very powerful. So this add-on is quite okay. We then have the four add-ons that give effects when you put a trap on people. Mind you, this is just when you put a trap on people. Not when you attack them, it's just when you put a trap. The best one, the yellow one, is blindness. This add-on is the best. Being blind on the hook with a trap on is really, really good. It makes you not see what your teammates are doing. It makes it a bit harder not to run into them later uh, when you're being chased by the killer. It's really, really nice. You can even use it as a slugging tool. I've, have, I've done a lot of challenges where I challenge myself to play with little add-ons, and this is an add-on that can clutch it. You can down a survivor, put a trap on them, and just leave them on the ground with knockout or other perks, and then their teammates are going to have a really hard time knowing what the hell is going on. So it's a really, really cool. And they can't do gents either, because that would eventually get them killed. So... It is a really, really mean add-on if you have a build around it, and a decent one if you don't. The next one is Mangled. Um, this is where you... Uh, this is where you... Oh, that sounds... That looks so good. Damn. Damn. 2023. That looks like a celebrity signature. Anyway. Um, this is where healing takes a little bit longer to do. People that have a trap on, normally... If they are playing safe, they want to heal before they try to remove it so that they're not vulnerable. So this add-on comes into play pretty often. If they remove it first, then the add-on does nothing, but it's not too bad. Then there's the toxin, uh, which is uh, exhaustion. This is really good um, if you really need to commit to someone and you know that they might have dead heart, uh, made for this, spinburst, it completely removes it from them. But typically speaking, you don't want to tunnel 
aka go repeatedly for the guy with the box, with the with the trap, because they're useless. They're not doing gens. They can't really do anything. It's better if you pressure other people. So be careful. And then the last one is hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is the whole thing where if the if the healing is interrupted, they um they will lose progress. Most of the times, as I said, you're not gonna try to interrupt or bother the person that has a trap. So this item's really not that hot. Um, we then have the two add-ons that trigger when you miss a skill check during a box. I'm going to tell you right now, missing a skill check is very uncommon for players at higher levels. And these add-ons have another condition as well. So these add-ons overall are really, really bad. And there's only one thing that really saves them. Let's talk about the interlock and razor. This add-on only works if the survivor during the box is injured. Very, very important. It only works if it's injured. Uh, they don't stack, by the way, so don't even think about it. Um, if they are injured and they take a, they take a, they, they miss a skill check, they will become deep wounded, as if they have been hit with uh, borrow time or something. So this will obviously delay them a lot, and they'll have to stop it. And if they have to do another box, they'll have to clean the deep wound before. It's gonna be a bit nasty. But let's be honest, when do they ever miss a skill check? And even if they miss a skill check, they might be healthy. They probably will be healthy, so not a very strong add-on. But then we have the razor wires. The razor wires is the opposite. They need to be healthy. And if they miss a skill check, then they'll become injured. And if they miss another skill check after that, then yeah, this add-on could probably work together. But don't, don't expect them to miss two skill checks. So why is this one so much better? Because you can run it with the tape. If you run it with the tape... Everyone with a trap is healthy, guaranteed, because the survivors spawn healthy unless they have no miter. So it's very, very likely now that at least one of those four survivors is going to miss um, a, a skill check, especially if you're harassing them. If they're doing a skill check and they let go, they have no warning. They will take a damage. Uh, in fact, I tried this the other day and I chased a survivor out of a box. And when they left the box, they immediately became injured. They went down. I hooked them. Then they healed, then they missed another skill check, and then they took another damage. It's pretty crazy. Against lower level survivors, this is a pretty mean thing to run, these two combined together. Against the higher levels, it can still definitely work. This was a Prestige 100 player I just told you about, so it can definitely still work. Uh, but other than this combination, uh, I would not place this add-on uh, very, very high. We then have um, the Workshop Grease and the Last Wheel. Uh, these are add-ons both that improve the... Actually, let's put the let's put the syringe in there as well, and the broken syringe. These add-ons are all there to help you improve the, um, the ambush of the pig, which you can use in chase to more or less success. Um, and and they, they have some related effects. So the, the, the grease increases your charge. Your charge is faster. And it also decreases your cooldown. Um, so if you attack a miss, you will recover a quarter of a second faster. So it's a bit less punishing if you whiff an attack. The syringe does the exact same thing, but only the whiff cooldown. Not, in my opinion, worth it for a brown. It's a very minor reduction. You still have a massive cooldown if you miss, and you're punished quite severely if you miss. But you could run either of this if you're practicing. You could even run them together, but I'm telling you, even together, the whiff cooldown is not a big deal. The faster charge, however... Uh, it's pretty noticeable and it's pretty nice. And it sometimes removes a little bit of time from the survivors to make a decision. Then we have the last will. The last will does the opposite, okay? It decreases the time it takes for you to activate your charge, which is bad. It makes you, you need to charge, it's like the engravings for Billy. You need to charge your, your ambush longer. You can make up for it by running the these two together and then they kind of cancel each other out. But it also gives you a plus 6% speed boost to your ambush. Your ambush is really fast, so that 6% is, is a chunky amount. So this is basically a Billy or, or Baba engravings, but for Pig. She's slower, but her ambush is so fast that in some loops, it's actually quite unavoidable. Should you ever run this compared to some of the other more reliable add-ons that we talked about earlier? In my opinion, no. There is a really good chance that even if you run this, the survivors or the RNG of the game will send you to a map that is so awful that even this little bit of help is not enough. So I don't highly recommend it. And the last add-on to talk about is John's medical file. When the pig crouches, she moves, I believe, at like 90% speed. She also is very 
short because she's crouching and she doesn't see very well in the distance. So if you crouch and you go around the map being stealthy, that is a huge waste of time and a very potential uh, backfire situation because you waste so much time getting to places that even the stealth doesn't help. And yeah, it's not very good. With this add-on though, you add a 10% speed to that. So basically, when you crouch, you are almost as fast as a survivor essentially. And it's it's a little bit more worth it. I have seen some dedicated pick players try to use this in chase, and I've seen some, you know, some arguments as to why you could combine it with this to try to do ambushes very smoothly mid-chase. But I'm not gonna lie, I do think the effect is very gimmicky, and most of the times your stealth is so unreliable that you should just be focusing on getting into a chase fast and using your other tools. So I do not think of it very, very highly. Next up is the clown. Um, a few complicated effects, but the first add-ons we'll talk about are very simple. His best add-on, probably the one that goes universally the best with almost everything else, the one that you can almost never regret bringing, is the whiskey. This add-on and the sticky soda bottle both give you extra uh, bottles of either color. You have a slowdown bottle and the speed-up bottle on Clown. Well, you get two and one with this. Normally, you start with four, if I remember correctly. With this, it will be plus two. With this, it will be plus one. You can also run them both and have seven bottles, but it's a little bit overkill. It's probably better to just have six or, or five or whatever, and then have some other stronger effect. So um, yeah, having more bottles means that you can, much like Huntress, you can do one chase and then get into another without having to do the costly reload. It also means that you can get the effects of your other add-ons more frequently. Say you have an add-on, to see auras, well, you can trigger it more frequently. Um, say you have an add-on to slow down survivors additionally, you can spam it a bit and not be too worried. You don't need to be too conservative. So it's a nice, nice thing. And it goes particularly well with the iridescent um, redhead finger, but we'll, we'll talk about why in a second. The next best add-on probably is the cigar box. The cigar box makes it so that you have a 60 meter radius around you. Uh, where you see Subaru Auras whenever you are empowered by your yellow bottles. Now, you can use this whenever. Whenever. You can use it in chase. You can use it out of chase to find people at the start when you're trying to look for someone in the endgame. It is very, very versatile. It makes the clown into a little um, Schwarzenegger commando where he is a, a relentless hunter he will find anyone hiding around you and if there is distortion or off the record or other outer hitting abilities that's bad but it should be burned through them pretty quickly at least so this is really really good um at the start of the game you can put a yellow bottle in the middle and go around and find people hiding everywhere you can use it in chase it's actually really useful in chase even if a survivor is hiding behind some obstacle and you can't hit him with a bottle you just empower yourself and get the auto read and it's really 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 nice you can also be sure that there's not other people nearby for saves the the, the, the utility of seeing people constantly i don't even think i need to explain it too much it's just a really really good add-on for almost everything so it's really, really good. And it goes well with the extra bottles and it goes well with the increased duration of the yellows. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Next up, we have the iridescent um, red, red head pinky finger. As I mentioned before, you normally start with three, uh, sorry, with four bottles. This add-on is a little bit extreme. It takes away three of your bottles. So if you put this add-on on and nothing else, you now have one bottle. That is really 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 bad really 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 bad but now you have the upside where if you hit a survivor with a direct head-on collision um with a with a straight bottle if you hit them physically with the bottle for as long as they are uh, affected by the bottle which is about two seconds you will insta down them and that's a big deal that means that if you catch a survivor in the open Insta down. Catch them on hooking, insta down. Uh, obviously, with one bottle, this wouldn't be worth it, but the idea is always to bring it with the whiskey bottle. So now you'll have three bottles, which is not as good as four, which is the default, but you insta down, which is insane. So you can camp with this, and there's nothing they can do about it, uh, or almost nothing. And you can you can be very, very punishing. This add-on against the top-tier survivors that are aware of it is going to be a bit hard to use. They'll loop very tight. They make it very difficult, but... 
most teams aren't like that and most teams will make one mistake and with this add-on you punish that very very severely so it's a pretty disgusting pretty um pretty powerful add-on just keep in mind you'll have to run the whiskey bottle to get the effect out of it um, if you have an add-on to increase the effect of the well you shouldn't have that so i was going to say that with this you can you can technically insta down for longer but forget it you're never going to do that uh, now we have the bleach uh, the bleach add-on is really 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 simple and useful normally when you hit a sour with a bottle they are 15 percent slower for as long as they are in the bottle and for a bit afterwards with this it's another four percent so total 19 percent slower this add-on is so good at countering made for this and hope and other speed perks it really 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 helps and even without those perks the extra four percent is quite noticeable it makes it, it makes it easier that a single it, it makes it easier to get value of a single bottle normally a single bottle in one loop might not be enough because the swallow will still barely beat you to the palette but with this add-on it might just be enough and it's so simple to use and it works on your purples and it's just great uh we now have another add-on the ether 15 ball percent um it's got a weird name but that's apparently how it goes um so this add-on doesn't make the slowdown uh, stronger, but it makes it last longer. I believe it adds one extra second. When a survivor is in your purple bottle and they run away from it, they will um, experience a lingering effect. And with this add-on, it lasts one whole second longer. Now, be very careful because this isn't always good. If you hit a survivor, they are immune to the effects of the purple bottles during the hit animation. So do not throw a bottle at a survivor and hit them and think that you're doing anything. This add-on will do nothing in that situation. This add-on is best when the survivor is in a really good spot and you throw a bottle, they drop a really good pallet, you break it, but because they're slowed down for that one extra second, you, you they don't make as much distance. So in situations where a survivor has to leave a loop, and you catch up to the next one after going around or breaking a pallet, this add-on really, really, really hurts. And needless to say, if you pair it with the Bleach, that will be an extra second where they're also that extra 4% slower. So it's not too bad and it's easy to use. So it's quite serviceable. The Tattoo Finger, the Tattoo Man Middle Finger is a bit of a reverted, um, a reverted cigar box. Instead of seeing them when you use the yellow bottles, you will see them when you hit them with a purple. Now, the sad part about the purple is that you need to know where they are. With the yellow bottle, you can hit yourself with a yellow. It's a bit slower, but whatever. And then you see people around you. With the purple, <clears throat> I mean, if you don't know where they are, obviously it doesn't work. But this add-on is still really, really usable. Um, if you're in a small loop with bad visibility and there's a pallet, you can hit a survivor with a bottle. Their screen goes blurry. They don't know where you are. They don't even see your red stain. And then you can see their aura to immediately tell which side of the pallet they're kind of waiting. And then go and do a little quick hit. Lots of little uh, moments like that where you seeing an aura is super valuable. If there's multiple survivors, you also benefit from it. I also neglected to mention that the purple add-on has a downside. If the survivors step into your yellow bottle, they also see your aura, but it's not a big deal. This add-on does not have such a downside. It's not possible. So yeah, just so you know. Uh, pretty decent add-on. Uh, then we have the two add-ons that extend the uh, duration of, um, of um, what's the word, of the yellow bottles, of the invigoration effect. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, they are the, jug sol the solvent jug and the garish makeup kit. Normally, when you put yourself in a yellow bottle, it lasts for five seconds. When you leave it, this adds plus two and this adds plus one, and you could stack them if you're absolutely insane. You don't have to, but you could. Obviously, the purple one is a lot more noticeable, so I'm going to assume that you just run that one. So what's so good about running this add-on? Well, number one, having an extra 10% movement speed for two seconds is pretty nuts, and in many loops, it makes a huge difference. Uh, normally, the, the way to play clown, this is not a clown guide, but is to put a bottle uh, at your feet that's yellow, a bottle at the loop that's purple, and then they get slowed down, you get sped up, you gotta get the hit no matter what, right? Um, so with this, you are faster for longer, and you get the effects of this add-on for longer. So you will have seven whole seconds of seeing others around you, which is huge, and being faster, which is super, super huge. So yeah, that's pretty worth it. Um, the yellow one, not so much, but still. Uh, this add-on, super interesting. When you hit a Subaru with a bottle, they have mangled. 
even if they're not injured. It's a bit weird. Uh, so basically, at the end of every chase, if you leave a survivor or you don't, they'll have mango. It's it's like a weird way to add a, a mini sloppy butcher into your build. I don't. This doesn't actually make the bottles better, so it's not going to help you to get hits like this add-on, and it's not going to help you to insta down, and it's not going to help you to not run out of bottles. But it makes them have to heal a bit slower. It's not the most impactful thing. This is this is not like the nurse add-on where she can hit everyone super quickly. The clown is not like that, but it's still okay. We then have the smelly souls and the thick cork. This add-ons help to make the reload better. This add-on makes more speed. And this add-on reduces the timer by, I believe, 0.5 seconds. So with the yellow add-on, you reload faster. But with the green add-on, you don't slow down much when you reload. So there's two situations. You can run them both and it feels super comfy. Um, but there's two situations where one of them is better and the other one is worse and then reverse. If you are in a situation where the survivor that you're chasing is completely, completely corralled, they cannot run away, right? They cannot run away anywhere because they're at the edge of the map and you need to reload your bottles. You're standing still. So in that situation, the yellow add-on is a little bit better. You get it half a second sooner. But if you're in a situation where you need to reload while you catch up or reload after hooking someone and you're going around the map, which is honestly a bit more common, this add-on is a little bit better. Because you're, yeah, sure, you reload for longer, but you're moving very fast. You're losing very little distance. Either way, neither of these add-ons are super top tier, but they're both comfy. We then have two add-ons, the Bottle of Chloroform and the Spirit of Hardshorn. These add-ons make the purple bottles, the purple clouds larger. Let's make a little cloud. Makes them larger. And this one makes the yellow clouds larger. Uh, also indirectly, because the clouds are supposed to occupy more space and they are supposed to do it at the same time, they're actually a little bit faster. This is a very indirect, almost noticeable, almost imperceptible, don't know why I mentioned kind of deal. But technically, if you throw a bottle up top, the clouds will hit the bottom a little bit sooner with either of these add-ons. So just so you know, but it doesn't make a huge difference. So yeah, um, having bigger purple clouds is a good thing. If you throw them in the middle of a loop, the chances that it will envelop even further and will slow down to hours even longer are increase and that's a good thing it means that maybe they take half an extra second to leave the cloud or something and that's more slowdown so it's not bad it's not amazing but it's not bad however having a bigger yellow bottle is a terrible thing the yellow bottles can actually buff survivors if a survivor steps on a yellow bottle they actually benefit from it and it also cleanses them of the slowdown so the yellow bottles ideally should be as small and as concentrated on your feet as possible. So if you make the mistake of throwing a yellow bottle and somehow it splashes onto the other side of the loop and it helps the survivor, that is a horrible thing. So the Spirit of Harshon add-on, you should never run. It's bad, honestly. I mean, I guess that if you try to put it in the middle of the open, it covers more distance so you can benefit from it a bit longer. It's just not a good idea. Don't run it. Bad idea. The chloroform, though, that's okay. That's all right. Now we have uh, a very... Under, underwhelming add-on. Uh, I think it's called the Can of Kerosene. Uh, this add-on makes survivors blind when you hit them with a bottle for like a little bit. It's, it's not even much. It's like 30 seconds. Like extended blindness is good to confuse them in the long term. But it's very short time blindness. It really doesn't help that much, man. Especially against a killer, the counterplay of which is typically to just pre-drop pallets. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. I can, I can hardly recommend it. Then again, lots of survivors running Windows Opportunity and stuff, so maybe it's not too bad. Maybe even, honestly, now I would even place this maybe a bit lower. Maybe I would place it here now that I think about it. We then have the Starling Feather and the Robin Feather. These add-ons are almost identical. One of them is 0.5 and the other one is 0.4. It's very, very close. Seconds. Um, whenever you throw a bottle, you have a one-second cooldown where you cannot do anything. You, you cannot throw a second bottle, you cannot hit. This is not typically a big deal, because there's not a lot of situations where you throw a bottle and then you want to, like, Ew! hit immediately after. Uh, but there are a few situations. There's many situations, uh, in fact, where you throw a bottle and you miss, and the survivor runs into you and you want to hit them, but you can't because there's a cooldown. Well, with these add-ons, you can spam bottles more repeatedly. You can hit a survivor after a toss more repeatedly. Um, you could even get grabs on hooks more commonly before that was uh, removed. So there's a few situations where being able to spam bottles helps a little bit. 
a little bit. In almost every one of those situations, instead of doing this, you should have extra bottles so that it's actually a good idea to spam them before you run out. So this would just be better, but they're okay. Uh, we then have the VHS porn tape. This add-on is a bit funny. It takes your purple clouds, which are the slowdown, slow, and your yellow clouds, which are the speed up, speed, and it swaps them. So, yeah. <sighs> this is really bad. It's really, really bad. Uh, why is it bad? It will maybe trick a survivor the first chase or two into running into a purple bottle, which is really funny because they'll think they'll get a speed up. But if the survivors are smart, they should know the difference. When you throw a bottle and it changes into a color instantly, that's slow down. When you throw a bottle and it's white for the first couple seconds, that's speed up. So if it's white and purple, or if it's white and yellow, speed up. If it's instantly purple or instantly yellow, slow down. That's it. That's all you need to know. So this add-on doesn't really do anything. It doesn't help. If anything, they'll know one of your add-ons already, so you're kind of giving away information. We then have the party bottle. The party bottle makes it so that when you hit a, a bottle uh, directly on a survivor, you, I mean, you, you will see it very clearly if it's direct hit. It gives a bit of like, there's like a bit of confetti. Now, the only thing this does is tell the survivor that you are chasing, that you have a useless add-on. So it's basically giving them information that you don't have too strong add-ons so that they can better adapt to your playstyle. It's funny. It's, it's funny. Run it. But yeah, you also get extra blood points, I guess. We already explained that this is a really bad add-on. And then we have the parade gloves, I think it's called. This is a really, really strange add-on. This add-on changes the angle at which you throw the bottles. And I guess they thought that some people would like to have a default angle where your bottles are like a little bit like higher and stuff. But the truth is, why would you do that? Why would you, why would you do that? It would be like having a gun and instead of aiming up, you just bend the barrel to aim up. Why would you just aim up? Just aim up if that's what you want to do. You want to aim down, then aim down. Don't bend the barrel of your gun. It's only going to throw you off. It takes up one add-on slot. You're going to get used to an angle that will be gone whenever you change it. It's worthless. It's one of those experimental add-ons that I wish they would reconsider. Not a very good one. At all. Ah, <sighs> spirit. I need, a, I need a drink for this. All right, so starting with the spirit's power, she has a really strong ability to move really quickly and somewhat undetected for five seconds default. These five seconds, uh, each time you use a bit of your power, it will take you three seconds to recharge it for each second use. So if you use the whole power, you will take 15 seconds. That means that if you use half the power, you'll take seven and a half seconds. So I'm sure it's no surprise if I tell you that some of her best add-ons are her recovery add-ons. Uh, this would be the flute, the watch, and the origami. Uh, these go as high as 40%. And that means that you're almost, almost really uh, cutting your recovery by two-thirds. And after using your whole power, you're basically waiting less than 10 seconds instead of 15. Being able to use your power, which is really, really impactful and really useful to have it on like five or six seconds sooner, depending on the add-ons. It's really, really nice. Another thing that's really good is that you can use your power in short bursts and then break one pallet and have it again or get one hit and have it again. With these add-ons, I often find myself teleporting on top of a survivor, hitting them, and then having my power ready to go nearly on the spot. They go really, really well with almost everything else. And as you can imagine, the higher the rarity, the better. But the recovery add-ons right now are very, very strong. Uh, other two add-ons that should not be slept on are the activation power add-ons. These add-ons reduce the time it takes you to start by, I believe, 0 0.30 and 0 0.15, if I remember correctly. Obviously, the yellow one is more impactful. You can run them both if you're crazy. Um, being able to start your power sooner means that you get to catch up faster, that you have you give the survivors less time during which they're invisible to try to lose you, and they are very, very, very mean. You run these add-ons, and survivors will often think that you're much faster than you really are, and you give them very little room. So it's actually quite, quite nice. We then have the speed add-ons. Um, there's only four, I believe. Um, no, three right now, I believe. Um, they are um, the sandals, the cap, and the modded data ring. The modded data ring used to be 40%, and it was an S-tier add-on. 
Now it's not anymore. Now it's 25%. And it removes scratch marks. They are removed completely. This add-on is only 9%. Yes, I believe. Uh, but it doesn't have any downside. And this add-on is only 5%. But it doesn't have any downside. The Monetary Ring is still really, really nasty. 25% extra speed on a killer that already has a really high movement speed is very, very much noticeable. And despite the downside, it is a bit of a beast. The other two add-ons are a little bit more restrained, but you do not sleep on them. Then the the more speedy that you are, the less distance they make, the less chance they reach a pallet, and the less room for mistake they have when trying to juke you. So, so overall, these are overall really, really good add-ons as well. We then have a fairly unique add-on called the Cherry Blossom. Whenever you are using your power, this, let's say that you're using your power, this add-on gives you like a little detection radius around you of three meters. This is, well, this looks funny. Three meters around you, where if a survivor comes in contact with those three meters, you will hear a heartbeat, a killer instinct. This add-on was nerfed. It used to be four meters, it used to be larger, but this nerf is actually a buff because now that you can detect people from closer, it's easier to react and hit them on the spot. Uh, in particular, this add-on also removes the scratch marks, so it makes sense to combine it with the Modern Daughter Ring, since it has the same downside, you don't really get it twice. So with these two add-ons together, you can move very, very, very fast, and the moment you come in contact with a survivor, you immediately hear the heartbeat and swing, and you will hit them. And it is a pretty disgusting combo. And the fact alone that this add-on exists is pretty messed up, because it means that survivors can never try to stand still. If, if a survivor stands still or crouches, they are basically quiet or very silent if they're injured even but if you have this add-on you completely counter that as well so even even sound is not their friend sometimes so that's quite powerful uh, we then have an add-on called the furin that is a little bit complex normally um when uh when the spear uses her power if you are within 24 meters uh, it's a fixed range you will hear it if you are further than that you will hear nothing at all um if a survivor is really close to you, they can also discern more or less where you are. They can more or less hear your approximate location. Not enough to react always accurately, but more or less to know where you are, right? So this add-on changes that. This add-on makes it so that survivors that are far away from this 24 meter range, they will hear a constant noise that will sound like you're coming. And this is going to mess with them. If they're on a gen, they're going to be very, very afraid. Survivors that are within the 24 meter range, they will hear you just fine. So if you use it in chase, this add-on will do nothing. If you, uh, to the people next to you, to the people far away from you working on a gen, it will confuse them and make them think that you're coming for them. As if you were much closer than you really are. Now, the real strength of the Furin is what happens if you start your, your chase from your point and then reach past the 24 meters. And the truth is, it doesn't begin to sound directional. So again, if you have a survivor near you and you use your power, they will hear you directionally. But if you have a survivor that is past the 24 meter range and you have the Furin, you can get really, really close and this other survivor will have no idea. So you could theoretically, and I've done this a couple of times, pull survivors out of a gen without them knowing that you're even coming. Uh, but before that even happens, you will probably scare them many times. They'll let go of gens, they'll trigger Deadman Switch, they'll trigger Ruin, they'll trigger a lot of perks by being scared, maybe even lose progress to healing because they think you're coming. It can do quite a lot for you. Even though it doesn't affect your chase power directly, it messes with survivor's perception, and that is pretty good. Uh, we then move on to the Uchiwa. This is an add-on that triggers when you get stunned, and it gives you 100% of your recharge power. And then we have the Kintsuki Cup, and it's the same thing. It gives you 100% of your power back, but this is when you break a pallet or a breakable wall. So, uh, these add-ons are okay. They're not too bad. Are they as good or as reliable as the activation add-ons? No, because those work no matter what, almost all the time. But um, if, you are, if you run Enduring or some other uh, aggressive perk uh, loadout, you can chase survivors into pallets, and if they stun you and you get a hit, even if you did a really, really long uh, power uh, use, you get it back immediately. With the Kintsuki Cup, you actually have quite a bit of advantage in maps that have guaranteed breakable walls. So for example, in Midwich or Dead Dog Saloon, you can go across the entire map 
use all of your power, maybe with the speed, and then when you reach there, immediately break a breakable wall that you wanted to break anyway, and you have your power back again. And survivors might not be super aware of this. Uh, same if you break a pallet mid-chase, you get your power back immediately. So these two add-ons are okay. We then have the Suba, which is a uh, which is an add-on that increases the speed boost that you get when you come out of your power. If you come out of your power for mobility, you will be a little bit faster for a bit longer. And if you swing, you will get a significantly longer swing. Uh, from my testing, it adds about one meter to your swing. So if you were hearing a Subaru in front of you and you wanted to go like, Wah! and just do a long launch, you will go about a meter further with this add-on. It's not bad. It's not maybe ideal. Maybe speed is just better. Maybe recovery is just safer. Maybe activation is just simpler. But it's an interesting add-on. Uh, I believe we already talked about the origami recharge. Cool. That leads us with the duration add-ons. There are three duration add-ons and they're very neatly stacked right here. Uh, this add-on gives 20% uh, extra duration. Um, yeah, so that's one extra second. Wait, am I right? Huh? <laughs> I think so. Uh, wait, am I right? I think so. I think so. And this is 10% uh, extra duration. Uh, you have five second power, remember? So that's half a second. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Anyway, yeah, I think so. Uh, this add-on gives, uh, I believe it's 70% uh, extra duration. Yeah. But it decreases your speed by 15%. So yeah, uh, the extra duration... It, these add-ons used to be bugged or or intentionally or unintentionally badly coded, and they used to give extra recovery. So if you look at one of the old tier lists, you'll see that these add-ons were actually some of the best. Uh, right now, that's not the case anymore. If you use extra power, if instead of five seconds, uh, which would take 15 seconds to recover, uh, you use seven seconds, guess what? You'll take 21 seconds to recover. So more power use means more power to recover. That's Probably a good thing. That means that these add-ons are not very good anymore. I mean, you can use this one if you want to use your power for an extra two seconds for mobility, and you can use this. You can use this one just in case we ever need it in a clutch. But please never use the purple. The purple add-on used to be insane, and it had a massive downside of removing your speed. But you could pair it together with this add-on, and the result was really, really good. Or this add-on. But that's not the case anymore. This add-on has no upsides. The extra power. Uh, usage time is not useful if your recovery is not uh, affected and if your speed like, having a lower speed is just bad it's just really really bad just consider it a meme add-on until they rework it it's not something you want to run anyway um moving on we have the um the bonsai add-on this add-on is a bit difficult to explain but essentially whenever the spirit is moving around the map normally she has moments where her uh, body disappears. So you will see her, you will see her, you will see her, then you'll see nothing. Then you will see her, then you will see her, then you will see nothing. And it's a bit random. It has a bit of randomness to it. But there will be times where if she's moving side to side, it will be like a slideshow with a missing, um, with a missing piece, right? With this add-on, the frequency and the length of these disappearances is a bit bigger. So you'll have see her, see her, oh, don't see her, don't see her, see her. See her? Oh, don't see her. Don't see her. See her. This is not visible from your point of view as a killer. It's not like Sadako when she can see her hands disappear. You do not know when this is happening as a killer. Uh, but it is something that will mess with survivors passively. So if you have this add-on, that part of your power is a little bit better. And every now and then, even good survivors will make a mistake because they don't see exactly where you are. So if you like gambling and you don't know what add-on to run, this can be okay. Especially if you plan on using your power very little. Um, right, next up, we have this Wakizashi Saya, uh, I believe it's called. This add-on is like, um, a bit like, a, it's like, um, I believe Jenner's Last Breath on Nurse. It's the one that lets you go back. It's the one that lets you get called back to your original position. So you start using your power from here, and then you use five seconds, and at the last moment, you can recall it and automatically get teleported back to your starting location. Most of the times, survivors are not stupid and they will never run back into your husk, into your previous body. Your previous body has a body blocking feature, so they can't go through it. And if they go there, they're very likely to bump into you. 
So the survivors, 99% of the time, will run away from you and never back into you. So this has no benefit. Uh, you only have power for about five seconds, so it's not like you can use your power out of a hook and then teleport back and try to grab someone. Like, it's it, that just doesn't work anymore. So it's a really stupid add-on. The best thing you can do with it is trick a survivor into vaulting a really safe pallet back into your body. Like, if, you, if they drop Shaq and you use your power and you go around and they vault back into, like, because they think you're close, then, yeah, you could trick them, but the situations where this comes in handy are very far in between, and I do not recommend it. Uh, we then have uh, Mother's Glasses, I believe, and this add-on shows you the heartbeat killer instinct on a survivor that goes close to your uh, husk. So this would be ideal to pair with this add-on if they were good, but they're not. Um, if a survivor runs back into you, you hear the heartbeat, and then you use this add-on, and you teleport back. However, as I just explained, People do not do that. They do not go back into a, into, into your husk. So you'll see that if you put it on, you'll see it work maybe once every three games. Um, we then have the, what is this called? Senko Hanabi, uh, I believe. Uh, this is the add-on that makes it so that if you use your power, the location where your husk was left will block windows for like five seconds. This is like a bamboozle with a lot of extra steps. So say you're in the shack, and you use your power next to the window, and then you appear on the other side. Now the window gets blocked for like, for like nothing, for like a, a, a second, a second. It is insane to believe that you are ever gonna make anything worthwhile. You also need to be very close to the window. If the range on this was bigger, maybe I could see you using it on multiple floor windows. Say that they're on the second floor uh, of Badham, and you use this add-on. And then you block the window above you, and now they can't use it. That could be smart, but will they ever do that? No, probably not. And the range is very limited, so you need to be very precise. Extremely, extremely situational add-on that I don't... Like, you, you'll see that when you use your power, people do not play in a, in a way that really lends itself to this. So, I really do not recommend it. And that about wraps the spirit up. We now have the Legion, who has, as you can see, a very strange distribution of add-ons. His best add-on is possibly the Iridescent Button. It has a very simple effect. It allows you to vault a pallet, and upon vaulting it, destroy it permanently. Gone. This charges up Spirit Fury. This activates um, uh, other perks that activate upon pallet break, like, I believe, um, Game of Food. So it has quite a good amount of synergies with other add-ons. Uh, with other perks and even add-ons, so it's a really, really nasty one. Many survivors do not understand that lesions are essentially guaranteed to injure you on a pallet, no matter what, and they still have this notion that they should try to drop the pallet to stun you, and with this, you turn that minor mistake into a big mistake, because now that they're injured and their teammates are all injured, uh, they are starting to run out of pallets, and if you get rid of a god-tier pallet, a really safe one with this, it is really, really nice. Uh, also, you can be a bit of a, of a knitter, a bit of a, of a seamstress, and if you have a situation where three good pallets have been dropped, you can use your Feral Frenzy um, in between chases or whatever to go and vault, 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 and break them all. Like, go in between them like you're threading uh, a needle. So that's really, really, really good. And it's probably the most directly impactful uh, add-on on the Legion. It goes well with Julie's mixtape, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, a much quieter add-on that is not so obviously good is the Mischief List. The Legion can use their power for 10 seconds. They can run around for 10 seconds. And with this, you add two seconds. Flat, two seconds. Uh, critically, it doesn't make the recharge any longer. So this is two seconds, but with the same recharge. That does mean that if you use the same amount of power, you do get it a little bit sooner. So it's also it also doubles as a minor recovery add-on. There is a proper recovery add-on, but we'll talk about that later. So that's really, really nice. With an extra two seconds, a lesion that has already stabbed a person or two can make a long distance, a very long distance. They move at like, what, uh, like five meters per second plus? Uh, yeah, it's bad. With an extra two seconds, that means they make an extra 10 meters. An extra 10 meters in DVD is a long, long distance. Uh, what ends up happening with this add-on is that after you hit one or two survivors, the third and fourth survivor, they need to be extremely far if they want to outrun you. And that is really, really nasty. Uh, having that duration is just really, 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 really good. Uh, overall, 
Um, very easy to use, goes with almost anything, and is a very strong add-on. Did I forget anything about it? Hopefully not. We then have the Fuming Mixtape. This add-on does two things. Similar to the Raids Iridescent add-on, it shows you the progress of a gen based on uh, its color. So normally, when you look at a gen, it's red. With this add-on, it will be white if it's... Actually, I forgot which way it was. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it will be white if it's at zero, and it will become close to red, fully red, as it's more completed. So that's nice. It's an inform instead of running barbecue, tinker, thrilling, all these information perks, you can run this add-on and immediately know what is going on across the map, even really large and obtuse maps. And on top of that, anytime you're using your power, all gens that are not being worked on begin to regress. And they regress for as long as you have your power. So let's say that you have the mischief list. For 12 seconds, you can make gens go back slowly. And if you have a perk like Ruin that already makes the gens regress, this stacks with it. So... It's never bad. It's really never bad. A bit of slowdown on the side. Information and a bit of slowdown is always nice. And I don't think you can go wrong with this add-on. Uh, we then have the Filthy Blade. It adds, I believe, 3.5 seconds to the mending time. And it has a curious effect. Let me tell you about it in just a second. <laughs> right, sorry about that. Uh, back to the Filthy Blade. Every time you hit a survivor, let me make sure everything's recording, uh, with your power, they will be in Dipun. When they are in Dipun, they have to mend. Now, if you are a little bit too tunnel vision-y, focusing on one person, this doesn't happen very often. You hit them, you down them, that's it. But typically as a legion, your best idea is to injure multiple people and make them all have to mend and ideally make them waste as much time mending as possible. This add-on will add a couple, I think it's three and a half seconds, if I remember correctly, uh, a couple extra seconds every time they have to mend. And a really cute... Um, um, side effect of this add-on is that if they have to mend from things other than your power, they will also have to mend longer. So if they take a hit with Dead Heart or if you hit them after the hook, this will also indirectly make that mending longer for some reason. If you do the math and you assume that you're going to make people mend maybe six, seven, eight times and you, 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 you do the multiplication, you'll realize that this add-on adds up quite a bit. You can get people injured, get one down, and reliably prevent any of them from being in a good spot before they can heal. And that's that's also really, really, really good. If they have to mend longer, it's also going to become much harder for them to open an exigate. If they are to open an exigate, even if they have resilience or something, they won't be able to open it because they'll bleed out by the time they get to do that. So there's a bit of utility on it as well. But it's just a very simple add-on that adds a little bit of extra time. Uh, this add-on is a little bit more complicated. It's called the Friendship Bracelet, I think it's called. Um, it makes your lunch during Feral Frenzy, the Feral Slash, much, much longer. It is actually an insane brown add-on. With this, you can launch people from afar, and especially after you've already gotten a couple hits, let's say with this, you can hunt down survivors from really, really far, and if they start to vault the window, you can hit them and, and, and start your attack from really, really far. A bit difficult to use and a bit difficult to get used to, but once you understand the hitboxes well, you'll see the real power of the friendship bracelet. Um, the Etched Ruler is a personal favorite of mine. I've tried a lot of add-on combinations of Legion uh, with, in challenges, and this is one of the few that routinely gives value, and it's so, so good. Anytime you hit a Suwara with your Feral Frenzy, they become oblivious for 60 seconds. This means that they won't be picked up by uh, Terror Radius perks, and they won't be picked up by your power detection, but that's okay, because they're out of the injured. Uh, and it often leads to survivors doing really, really stupid things and not realizing that you're canceling your power and coming back for them. It pairs particularly well with the next two add-ons that we'll discuss, since they show the artists of people um, um, when they are mending, basically. So yeah, it goes quite well, and it's quite nice. Uh, next, we have the Stabwound Study and the Fancy Glasses. This add-on shows you the aura of people that finish mending, I believe for 4 seconds. And this one shows you the aura of anyone that is currently mending uh, forever, infinitely, until they finish mending, which is typically a few seconds. Uh, obviously, you know, if you come close enough, they'll stop. But seeing the aura of someone that's mending is really nice if you have the ruler. And seeing the aura of someone that finished mending is nice to know who to focus on after you've hit some other people. Um, it's not too bad. You can look at the HUD to see when someone's health goes from mending to non-mending to know when to look out for this. So it's quite nice. It's it's honestly quite nice. Uh, a little bit of info that can result in a bit of a change of pace if the survivors get um, surprised. 
Next up, we have uh, Susie's. Is that Susie's? It has to be Susie's mixtape. Susie's mixtape is a bit special. When uh, the, the Legion normally has a 32 meter terror radius. And when you use your power, for some reason, this is increased to 40. I believe it's 40. So it's actually 40 meter terror radius. During this, during your power, you detect people with Killer Instinct in this whole radius. But with this add-on, it adds an extra 20 meters for a total of 60 meters. Now, this doesn't let you necessarily find the survivor and then reach them. You won't necessarily reach them if they're that far. But with this, you are essentially guaranteed to cover almost the entire map and make it so that it's inescapable, the detection. <laughs> This means that after hitting a survivor or two in one part of the map, you can go to the middle and detect the other two and have a really good picture of where everybody is. Maybe even where that one person that you were looking for is. So I see this as a as an interesting add-on. A really interesting thing about this add-on, however, is that even if you have zero terror radius, let's say you have a zero terror radius, this add-on still does its thing and it still adds the 20 meters. So you might have Tinkerer or something that reduces your terror radius and you can still detect people because this add-on technically... Oh, there's something, something on me. Oh dear. I think it's one of Nina's hairs. Oh dear. I'm so sorry. Uh, that was really distracting. And uh, yeah, you can detect people even outside of your terror radius with this add-on. Funnily as it is. Then we have the mural. Um, this add-on makes it so that every time you hit a survivor, uh, if I remember correctly from the top of my head, every time you hit a survivor, you gain 0 to meters per second of speed. So you become faster and faster and faster. Uh, 0 0.2, I believe is like, what, 5%, right? It's 5%. Uh, yeah, I think so. It's 5%. So you get 5% faster every time you hit a survivor. With this add-on, now you get 0 0.3. So you become 7.5%. That means that after two hits, you're now a little bit faster. Uh, this pairs really well with the Never Slip Pills, which we'll talk about in a second, and pretty well with the um, with the Mischief List. I will tell you, though, the extra percentage from this add-on is nowhere near as good as the Mischief List. So if you're going to pick one, just pick the Mischief List, probably. But the speed makes it, obviously, a lot harder to, to outplay a Legion that's running at you real fast. We then have the three pin add-ons, um, the, the the five smiley face, the, the lesion pin, and I don't even know what the other one's called. Uh, anytime you hit a survivor, they become blind. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They become mangled, which is harder to heal, blah, 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 blah. and they become broken, where the healing is just prohibited. They cannot heal at all. So... Um, which one is better? I mean, the blindness is not a very impactful one, but it's not too bad either. It's all right for a brown. The mangold is a bit scary. Um, if they want to heal really quickly, sure, they, 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 they will have an even harder trouble. But they already have to mend, so I don't think this add-on is all that good. Um, so the mango one, uh, you would be surprised that survivors eventually grow to become injured and stay injured against lesion because they know that unless they really, really have to, they don't really need to heal up. So the mango might actually not do too much. Now the broken, however, is a bit more interesting because it can prevent things like adrenaline from triggering. It can, it can make people stay injured so that you can trigger other perks like hysteria or thunderphobia more consistently. So the broken is a little bit scary and it can put survivors into a bit of a bind. But all of these add-ons have one weakness and that is if, the, the same thing, if survivors mend each other, the, the effects do not trigger. This doesn't happen very often, but if survivors group up and they mend each other, they, they don't trigger any of these effects. Uh, obviously, if they do this, then they're together and you can hit them again and it, it fits a vicious cycle, so it's quite all right. We then have the Never Sleep Pills. The Never Sleep Pills are interesting. They make the lesion very, very slow. In fact, the he lesion moves at the normal 150%, which is not good when he uses his power. Your first hit is very hard, but instead of having 10 seconds of power, you now have 20 seconds of power. So essentially, you become, instead of being like a, like a 100, me 100 meter sprinter, you're more like a marathon runner. You're slow, but you go twice as far, which is a big deal. Um, the general idea with this add-on is that you're gonna, you can also obviously add two seconds with the mischief list if you want to. So what is the downside of this add-on? 
uh, very significant one. The, the slowdown is really, really bad. So typically you will want to pair it with the Legion Mural. That way, even though you start very slow, eventually every time you hit a survivor, you gain 7.5%, uh, I believe. So, you know, after a couple hits, you're actually moving relatively fast. And the third and fourth survivor, good luck to them. They're going to have a really hard time avoiding you. I used to rank these add-ons pretty high because I thought this was fairly unplayable against uh, and, and had little counterplay. And I thought survivors weren't all that smart about it. And to this day, I mean, I still think they don't play around it super well. But compared to the mischief list, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you should just run this if you and you'll get plenty of four hits if they make mistakes And if they don't make mistakes, you're gonna find out that these add-ons are all actually not that strong uh, Let me explain at least one or two or three things that can go wrong Even with this add-ons if you go on a large enough map Survivors will literally spread out and the map will work against you They go around a fence once in 20 seconds. You don't even catch them So yeah, not to mention that the initial hit is gonna be a lot harder and it's gonna be a bit obvious that you have it Right if you have these two uh, another thing that could happen is that a single survivor breaks you out of frenzy. If they manage to stun you with a pallet, you broke out of frenzy. If you vault the window and they blind you during the animation, they break you out of frenzy. And the third and less common but can also happen is body blocking. Uh, there are four survivors, right? Let's say four survivors. Let's write them here. Uh -huh. And you need to hit four of them to get frenzy. So if the swappers are stupid, they'll let you bounce from one to other, to other, to other. And then you hit the same swapper twice and insta down. Man. However, what's going to happen if swappers are smart is you're going to hit one, you're going to hit one, you're going to hit one. And then one of the swappers that has already been hit is going to come and try to body block for you. And once a swapper that's already been hit and is in deep wound body blocks, you're screwed. Either you hit them and you lose power or you don't hit them and you also lose power. So... If they play smart, even uh, even a team that gets hit multiple times can do the whole body blocking where people with deep wound body block for people without. And yeah, it's not a great idea. We then have Julie's Mixtape. Uh, Julie's Mixtape is not an add-on that super experienced Legion players favor, but it's one that's nice for beginners. If you get stunned out of your power, you immediately have your power bar back. Uh, this is super useful with the... Uh, eerie button because every time you reach a pallet, right? You reach a pallet and the survivor wants to drop it. If they fail to stun you, you vault it and you break it. And if they do stun you, guess what? You got your power back. So you use your power, you vault it and you break it still. So no matter what the survivor do, what the survivor does, if they drop the pallet, they're going to get hit and they're going to lose the pallet. So it's a really fun thing. Um, and it really punishes you a little bit less for making a mistake. Um, there's also another add-on called the other brown ruler, whatever it's called. <laughs> I forgot the exact name. This add-on increases your cooldown, um, it increases your recovery a lot. So this add-on is also uh, suited for beginners. If you find yourself hitting a survivor and then not quite catching up to another, um, th this add-on will let you get your power back sooner so you don't have to wait uh, the normal, I believe, what is it, 20 seconds? Uh, the normal 20 seconds it would take. So that's nice if you want to run that instead. Uh, next, we have the BFFs, one of the coolest add-ons in the game, probably the, the, the most intricate add-on in the game. Uh, it has a score system, it has a point system, it literally has a number on it that you need to reach. The more chain hits you do, the higher the number goes, and when it reaches, I believe it's 14 or something, it activates in the end game, only in the end game. So basically, the way to use this add-on is play normally. And if there's ever a moment where you're going to cancel your power on someone, just hit them again, you know? Let's say you do survivor 1, survivor 2, survivor 3, and you realize that, you know, that's the last survivor you can hit. You can hit them again, so the game thinks that you've hit 4 survivors. And after doing that a couple times, you will max out the add-on, and the add-on will trigger, and in the end game, you move 4% faster. I don't need to explain that... When you move a little bit faster, many situations are easier and you can counter made for this and hope, kinda. So that's nice. And it would also stack with the 4% from Noid, which also gives you 4%. Uh, long story short, the end game collapse is way too short. Like the, the end game part of the game is way too short to dedicate one add on to it that's not even so strong. So the BFFs, in my opinion, is not that hot. But it's a funny add on and you should definitely try it. We then have the Stolen Sketchbook. 
This add-on makes it so that if you double, if you two tap a survivor, if you double hit a survivor, they will drop their item. Double hitting them also gives them a speed boost. You can do this if you, don't worry about medkits because survivors that need to mend cannot use medkits in chase. They need to mend first. But if you have a toolbox or a flashy or something that bothers you, you can run this just to mess with them. I personally don't find it super useful. The items do not disappear or anything. They can just go back and pick them up whenever they want. It's just a bit of a minor inconvenience. Um, we then have the two tapes. Uh, by the way, each of these uh, tapes that we uh, talked about, they changed the music of Legion, so that's fun. Um, the first one is Frank's. Frank's is really, really bad. Uh, Frank's mixtape makes it so that when you um, hit a, a, when you are hitting a generator, breaking a wall or breaking, well, you can't break palace. So when you, whenever you're kicking a gen or a wall, during that time, your power gauge is paused. So if you're chasing a survivor, want to kick a gen, and then want to keep chasing them, you, you you have a bit more time to do that. You know what else would give you time to do that? Just a bloody mischievous. So yeah, it's a, it's a you should almost never ever be doing that. You should almost never. So it's a really really stupid add-on. And Joyce's mixtape is not. It doesn't sound as stupid. Uh, every time you hit a survivor with your power, they have hemorrhage. You would think, oh, this will go really well with Mango, so I can have Mangled and Hemorrhage. That way they heal slow and they get interrupted, they lose the heal. There's a problem though. You don't care. You don't care. You're the lesion. Your entire power is to injure people. That's all they do, essentially. If they heal, good for them. Next time you find them, you use your power, they injured. And the chase begins and they're injured again. So if they want to heal, let them do it. You're most likely not going to interrupt them. You're probably uh, using your power and your time elsewhere. Them having hemorrhage comes into play very, very scarcely. Uh, scarcely. So don't, don't, don't think you really need this add-on. You put it on, I reckon you won't get much value from it. And if you do, I mean, uh, we'll, call it, we'll call it me surprised. <laughs> Next up is Plague. And her add-ons are quite strong. We have an S-tier add-on, which in my opinion is... Very, very rarely seen for how strong it is. So the plague has one, uh, she has a red puke power that she can pick up from a fountain that lasts 60 seconds. Now, normally there is only one fountain, one fountain in the entire game. If the survivors cleanse, which they don't always do, maybe you get two, maybe you get three, uh, but don't hold, don't hold your breath on that, they might not happen. So that means that you might only get 60 seconds of your power. And if they mend, uh, sorry, if they if they cleanse, yes, they, they will give you your power, but you need to go there, you need to pick it up, you need to waste time, uh, and they might heal from it as well, so it's not so consistent. However, with the Iridescent Seal, your power becomes 40 seconds long, which is a bit bad, but you get it once per your once per your fountain, and then also every single time they do a gen. So assuming that they don't die, assuming that they make it to the end, that means that you're going to have six guaranteed times where you're going to have your power. And not only that, it's times when you don't waste any moment going anywhere. That is nuts. That is absolutely nuts. Considering that it takes a long time to go to a fountain and then go elsewhere, the duration difference is not even that big of a deal. It might as well be the same, these two. So basically, you're multiplying your power by like five easily. That's really, 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 really strong. On top of that, you can pair this with perks such as Tinkerer, so you know when a gen is about to be coming. Uh, Deadlock, so that they can never pop two gens back to back, and that would be the way to counter this perk. This, this add-on was a bit scary some time ago, because if they finish three gens in a row, like back to back, you lost much of the value, but now they can't do that because of Deadlock. So it's a real, real problem. Real, real problem for survivors. So if you have perks like that, and you are basically a fire speeding plague that is really hard to outplay, impossible to rescue your guns, uh, very difficult to loop, and with very, very nasty perks on top. So I, I generally think this add-on is way, way overtuned, but not a lot of people run it. So, you know, you s do with that information uh, what you will. We then have the Black Incense, I believe it's called. Uh, this add-on works when a survivor is fully infected. A survivor takes, if they get infected from something random, they will take, uh, I believe, about 50 seconds to get infected. With a certain add-on that we'll talk about later, this can, this can be more like 30 seconds. And with some other things that we'll also talk about, it can happen in one second. So whenever a survivor is fully infected, one way or another, they will begin to puke. 
and, and do noise. And every time they puke, you will see their aura. This add-on is pretty nuts. It allows you to essentially keep tabs on survivors throughout the match. If a survivor team makes the mistake of, oh, let's stay injured so he doesn't have a fountain. Well, now you know where everyone lives. You know their social security numbers. So then you're going to go to a fountain. You're going to pick it up. And then you're going to know exactly where to go and where to hit to really, really hurt them. So the information that you get from this is pretty unrivaled. I do think it's supposed to stack with Lethal Pursuer. But from my experience, it might not. So... Maybe do your own testing. I don't know if that's changed recently. I think it might not stack for, with Lethal for some reason. Uh, but if it does, and it should, it's obviously a good thing. So yeah, a crazy, crazy information that can combo really well with other add-ons and stealth perks. But you already figured that out. We then have the two apples. Uh, they're honestly about as good as each other. Um, these apples make it so that instead of having one fountain by default, you have two and if you bring them both, which I love to do, you get three. Now, this is super, super important, right? Um, normally, in a map, you have six fountains. Oh, by the way, using the green apple, it makes one more fountain spawn. But that's pretty that's pretty important. If you're very, very unlucky, right? You're going to get one empty fountain here, one empty fountain here, one active fountain here, one empty fountain here, one empty fountain here, one empty fountain here. So this sucks. This is awful. This happens very frequently, for example, in maps like Pale Rose. Or green pantry so right now if all the gens are around this area how the hell are you gonna come all the way here to grab this one fountain but the nice thing about apples is that if you have multiple apples the chances that you have one fountain right in the middle somewhere really really good begin to increase so in a normal map there's a really really good chance that with one or two apples you will have at least one or two fountains right in the middle of the action where it's easy to pick it up easy to use it afterwards so uh, yeah, that's really, 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 really good. Uh, be careful, though, because they could cleanse and, and they could cleanse all of them and then they all go away. But if you're a bit careful about that, that's completely fine. So, yeah, uh, yellow and green apple, they almost do the same. The green apple adds an extra fountain, which gives them more chances to use it far away, but also gives them less chances to over cleanse. Uh, it's complicated. Which one's better? It's almost a philosophical question. I think the yellow apple is honestly a little bit better, but it's not important. They're both really, really good. We then have the Severed Toe. The Severed Toe increases the rate at which survivors become infected. If a survivor becomes infected by touching something else and they're not fully infected, um, as long as they're not walking or standing still, as long as they're doing anything, like gens, healing, uh, um, running, vaulting, they will become infected. As I said earlier, it will take about 50 seconds. With this add-on, bang, only about 30. This doesn't seem all that powerful, but it is really significant. This means that if you puke on gens and then you chase one person, if you down them in 30 seconds, that means that everyone else is already fully infected. No one can take a hit. No one can go for the quick rescue. They are already thinking about cleansing. It puts a lot of pressure on survivors. And he also stacks with this other add-on that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, then we talk about the two add-ons that increase duration. There is the this seal and this one right here. Now, notice that they are very, very far apart, but there's a very good reason. This add-on increases your normal uh, red puke from 60 to... 80, so plus 20 seconds. And this add-on increases it by 10 seconds. Now, um, why is the green so much worse? Why wouldn't you want both? Or, like, why wouldn't you want... The, why isn't the green even anywhere even close? It's very, very simple. There is never a situation where the green is a good choice. Um, the purple is a good choice because if you pair it with an apple... You can have two fountains that are 80 seconds, and that's a total of 160 seconds of power. That's really, really good. Um, you can also pair it with the Iridescent Seal, and now instead of having five, uh, 40 seconds, which would be 200, you instead have 560 seconds, which is 300. So if you pair the purple with the Iris Seal, you get an extra 100 seconds of power. That's pretty nasty. That's really, really nasty. Um, obviously, you don't necessarily need an apple with, with the Eerie Seal, so the extra duration is way, way better there. For most other situations, you just want an apple. Like, why would you want one fountain in a bad spot of the map that is 70 seconds, which is this, when you could just have two fountains, which is two minutes? Why do you want an extra 60 seconds or an extra 10 seconds? An extra 60 seconds or an extra 6? Or an extra 10? Obviously. So this add-on... <clears throat> can 
can realistically be used with this, and thus is okay. This add-on should never really be used with anything. I mean, you could use it with this too, and it will be all right. But just, just, just get a fountain at that point and use it at the start. You know what I mean? There are better options. So the, the, the yellow, the, 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 the green duration, I do not um, think very highly of. We then have the prayer tablet. Uh, this is a meme add-on that is actually a, a, a bit of a beast. Um, it enables a different playstyle on the plate that is arguably just as good as the normal. You do not get to infect survivors directly. This is the main downside. If you have a survivor in front of you and you puke on them, they are completely immune. Uh, you can only puke objects. Now, this isn't a bad deal though, because if they're if they're in shack, you can just puke on the window and puke on the pallet and then chase them. And if they drop the window or, or <laughs> if they go through the window or drop the pallet, they're gonna get infected when they touch it. Um, so even though you can't fully infect people with your puke, you will still infect them one way or another. But as a result of this, your puke lasts way longer and the infection that happens when they work on infected things is way, way faster. Um, so, oh, um, so yeah, basically you puke on, you puke on an object, it will be infected for, I believe, 80 seconds, which you can then increase with other add-ons if you want. So this is a, a bit of a strategical chess uh, strategy for Plague, where you play it slow and you puke on things, and they get infected very, very fast. With these two add-ons together, they can be infected in like 15 seconds on working on something. Even with just this add-on, it's still like 20 seconds. So that means that if you puke on a gen and someone does the gen for 20 seconds, they're already fully infected, and that is brutal. It is super, super brutal. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an add-on that makes you have to change your ways, but if you're ready to do that, most teams, you'll find out, are not ready for that. Rubbing oil. This add-on was sadly nerfed to half of its effect recently, um, but it's still a good add-on. It allows you, it's like the babushka for hunters, but for plague. It allows you to do, uh, to fully charge your puke or to do the minimum charge faster. It just lets you puke sooner. Mm, it feels good. It's nice. Uh, the puke speed on plague is really slow. So anything that makes it faster is nice. This helps with the red puke and the green puke both. So it feels good. But many times I find that it's just a bit unnecessary. Many times I just hold the puke and just run with it anyway. So you keep in mind that plague moves at 110 when she's holding her puke. So sometimes it's completely fine to just like hold it, hold it in. You don't need to like tap it. Then we have two add-ons to the cruise her cooldown. Uh, one by 0 0.4, one by 0 0.25. Um, her cooldown helps with red puke and green puke, both faces. But with red puke, it doesn't help too much uh, other than the speed. You, you, you're you a bit faster if you have a shorter cooldown. Uh, what I mean by this is that if you puke on a survivor with the red puke, the corrupt perch, and then you puke again immediately, you won't even damage them. They have iframes from the first hit. It's a bit weird, but you cannot damage people too quickly. So running this add-on and doubling it is a bit strange. Uh, the most interesting thing I've seen people do with this add-on is pair it with the infection, which we'll talk about in a second. And basically you can puke behind someone, fully infect them, and then immediately be able to hit them. Uh, the cooldown is really, really nice because sometimes you can puke on someone and, and still hit them while they're going through a window. So that, ha that almost half a second, it's, it's quite nice. Uh, we then have two add-ons that increase the infection time. Uh, one by 20 seconds, I believe, and one by 30 seconds, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, either way, they make objects that you or survivors indirectly infect stay longer infected. It's nice if, you're wanna, if you want to play really passively, and if you think the survivors that you're going up against will will try to outweigh it, because then it takes so long. It takes like more than a minute for these things to go away. So it could be all right, but if survivors play aggressive, you won't find a lot of value. Uh, we then have the two infection add-ons, which are 20 and 30%. Basically, whenever you puke on a survivor, um, you can infect them directly yourself. With these add-ons, even if you get only a little bit of a puke, it's very likely that they're gonna be fully infected really quickly. Beginners, in my opinion, get way too, way too blindsided by this. They see one survivor and they puke on them and they get them fully injured and they're, they, they start to see, you know, they get the dollar sign on their, on their eyeballs. They're like, wow, this is amazing. I'm going to use this every time now. But the truth is that the puke is really hard to visualize. You don't ever accurately know ahead of time how easy it's going to be to hit someone. And if you hit a survivor that's like moving side to side, it's really difficult to fully infect them. Most of the times, it's much better to infect them a little bit, 
go for the next guy and in 10 seconds they're gonna be in 20 seconds they're gonna be infected i'm fully infected soon anyway so you do not need to focus on one survivor too much sometimes it's much better to just spread that a little bit and just hit them with your basic attack if a survivor is doing something really 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 slow like for example doing an unhook in front of you you can fully infect them even without these add-ons that being said Anytime I try these add-ons, I have at least one situation where the full infection really helps. So, uh, arguably, I could have been a bit more generous. Maybe I could have put them in the C tier. Now that I really, really think about it, but they're 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 good. Just maybe not so good if they induce mistakes. Keep that. Keep what I said in mind, and they're fine add-ons. Uh, then we have this. Wait, what is this called again? A uh, worship tablet. Yeah, the worship tablet. Uh, this add-on makes you drink up from fountains a little bit faster. Uh, I mean, how often are you going to be doing that? If you have this add-on and an apple, you're only going to be doing it twice per game. Maybe a bit more if they cleanse. So it's not like that super, super big, but it's nice. And it also makes you move at 115 if you hold your like, puke. This means that if a survivor is looping you around something, you can hold your puke and be like a hunter's holding hatchet that is as much faster than the survivor. It's nice. It gets you hit somewhere, but I don't think it's super worth it for a purple. Uh, then we have the Vile Emetic. Uh, this add-on makes the puke 10% faster. Now, I told you earlier that the puke, we, it travels very slow. So 10% faster or very slow, it's still very slow. I find this add-on to work out very, very little in my experience and to do very, very little in my personal experience. Now, if you're chasing, thing, uh, chasing people really, really tightly, if you have this and this, I mean, it can be helpful. Um, and one thing that's worth considering, since the puke travels faster, it also reaches further. So if you're the plague right here and you're trying to aim at, let's say, a gen or something, uh, let me make it pretty, that is a little bit too far, you'll see that with this add-on, maybe you reach it where otherwise you wouldn't without the add-on. So that can be okay. We then have the, what is it called? The anointment, uh, the green anointment. Uh, this is a bit of a tracking add-on that works whenever you pick up a fountain anyone within a certain range will scream. It won't show you their artists, but they'll scream. I mean, this is nice. Uh, no one runs calm spirits, so no one's gonna counter it. But many of the times when you pick up a fountain, you already know that there's someone there. There's not a lot of situations where you pick up a fountain and you go, gee, I hope someone's here. If that's something you do, it's risky. So the usefulness is limited. Uh, then we have the Olivamon Instance, I think it's called. Uh, this add-on makes it so that whenever a survivor cleanses, you see their aura, so you can see where they're running afterwards. Most of the time, if you're a Season Plague player, you constantly keep a, keep an eye on your fountains, and you know which fountains are on and off. So if one of them turns on, you know, oh, it was that gun. It was that one. Yeah, they're there. But seeing the aura is still useful, and for beginners, this add-on is okay. Just a little bit of tracking. Uh, we already explained why the 10-second extra duration is not a good thing. And then we have the Hematite Seal, I think it's called. I think I'm, I'm saying that phrase a lot, forgive me. Uh, the Hematite Seal is a very bad add-on. Instead of spawning um, six fountains, you will only spawn four of them. So one, two, let's say this is on, and then another. So this add-on is supposed to make it harder for survivors to find a fountain to cleanse. And then when they cleanse all of them, you automatically get your power. That's the rationale behind it. But this is honestly just trash. It's just awful. It's just not a good idea. If you want to have automatic plague powers, then use this. If you want to have more fountains, then use this. If you want to make it harder for survivors to uh, get rid of their infection and so on, try these, you know. I, I think this add-on overall does more harm than good. And waiting for them to over-cleanse is just putting power on their hands. You want to take it away from them, really. Next up, goals face. Oh, let's take a little break before we go into it. All right, so starting with his best add-on, we are probably talking about the... Oh, it's not working. Hold up, there it is. Uh, the Ghostface Caught on Tape add-on. Normally, whenever you are put out of your power by swinging or by being exposed, you will have to wait a 20-second uh, cooldown until you can use it again. With this add-on, if you hit a survivor and you down them with your attack, you get it back immediately. This helps in two situations, generally speaking. When you down a survivor and ready to hook them, you can use your power immediately. Even if you go to a nearby gen, you already be within uh, your stealth. Be careful not to be revealed by the person of the hook. And also, it can help, more importantly, in very um, um, hectic 
uh, drawn out situations where you down a person and you immediately want to down someone else. So say someone's coming for a flashy rescue, you have your power back ready to go to use it on that person if they were already fully stocked. Uh, that chaos and that ability to get your power back so quickly and the potential combinations that this add-on has with a few others is what really, really makes it so good. Even if you don't use it to fully stock someone else, you can use it to just get them ready for the next time. So you can down a person, uh, stock someone else to 99, and then go back, pick up, which is something that you simply cannot do even with the other best recharge add-on. So this is a difficult to replace add-on that just lets you keep on going a little bit uh, faster. It's just really that good. Uh, Philly probably takes spot number two. Uh, normally, it takes you five seconds to stalk someone. With Philly, 20% of that is gone. So you only need four seconds. And that's really, really good. It means that if someone jumps on you, if you're about to get interrupted, you, if you only have a brief moment to stalk a survivor, that one less second is a good thing. Obviously, if you're leaning, um, the difference is half. But still, it's a big deal. Even, even in that situation, it's still a big deal that you can pretty much fully stock a survivor in just two seconds. So yeah, there's no there's no reason why, why this is really, really bad, especially the more aware the survivor is and the more they fight and use um, their environment to try to um, get behind cover. The more they do that, the better the survivor, the more useful you'll find fairly um, this brown add-on to be. Uh, this other add-on is a little bit different. Uh, you definitely benefit from this add-on a lot more if survivors are careless. This is the um, the driver's license. Anytime you stock a survivor that is working on a gen, you will block that gen and make it lose a bunch of progress, which is huge. Uh, the funny thing is, is that I believe this add-on can stack. So if you have two survivors on a gen and you hit them both with a mark at the same time, I think the gen might take the damage twice if it happens closely enough. And that's pretty wild. Uh, but regardless, um, there's not a lot of items in the game that provide gen slowdown or even gen stalling. So this is an incredible effect. It's only limited by the fact that many, uh, many generators are in very difficult locations and survivors will obviously be more and more aware but it can be really really powerful and really stop survivors from doing a gen in front of you if you have previously stocked them left than 99 so really 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 good stuff uh if a bit situational uh the wildlife matchbook is a uh, not situational at all add-on it's really really good you probably don't want to run it with the ghost fist cotton tape because it has a similar effect it reduces your cooldown uh by six seconds um so you'll be only waiting 14 seconds um, by default with itself, um, by itself. It's really, really, really nice. Um, paired with the Philly, you have two add-ons to stock faster and stock more frequently, which is honestly everything you ever need. And it is, it is almost always, always useful. The only thing is do not pair it with the other recovery add-ons. Um, the other recovery add-ons, by the way, since we're talking about, include the, the aforementioned Ghost of Scott but also the Olsen's Wallet. Uh, this add-on, doesn't change your recovery normally, but if you break a pallet or a breakable wall, it immediately gives you 100% of it ready to go. So in maps where there are a lot of pallets, you might actually benefit from using this. You can stalk someone, get revealed, and then break something, a pallet they drop, for example, and get it back. And it can be all right, but nowadays the recovery is so fast after they buff Ghost Phase, and this add-on is so sweet, and this other add-on is so good, you don't benefit nearly as much from the wallet, while still being a very decent add-on. Next up is the outdoor security camera. Anytime you fully stalk a survivor, the 100%, and then you, you hit them with a basic attack, every other survivor outside of your terror radius gets revealed. Normally, at this stage, you would be stealthy, normally. So that means every other survivor on the map gets revealed. It's like a barbecue in Chile, only for a few seconds, but on everyone. Nowadays, survivors do have access to quite a few common uh, perks that block uh, auto reading. But other than that, you do get a lot of information from this, which is really, really, really helpful. Uh, pair this with this, um, with the other iridescent add-on, and you have the wombo combo of getting your power back immediately and knowing where everybody is, which makes uh, things like flashy saves very difficult, which makes things like um, getting away and, and hiding and healing very difficult since the ghost fish could decide to switch targets at any moment. So this is a really, really nice combo. Um, but even then, the add-on by itself is really, really good. If you're struggling to hit your mark targets, though, maybe not the add-on for you. We then have the drop sheath leg knife, the drop, drop 
drop like sheath knife uh the purple sheath thingy anytime you mark a survivor for the next few seconds you will have a very significant 10 percent increase in speed this doesn't make a huge difference if you're stalking someone that is completely corner and you're going to hit them half a second later anyway but it does matter a lot in situations where a survivor is about to get a spring burst or this, or you mark them right as they try to reach a, a, a loop, the 10% is, a, even if it's only um, a few seconds, is a very, very significant amount of speed. And again, if you stalk two survivors at once, it stacks. So you can get this twice if you stalk two survivors at the same time, which you might not want to do, but I thought it would be funny to mention. This helps a lot in loops and you can use it a little bit, almost like a reverse clown. Instead of slowing them down at a loop, you can actually speed yourself up. So you can chase someone that is even injured, that is 99, even if they're injured, and pop it just to get that speed boost because it's quite, quite significant. We then have two add-ons that do the same thing with different um, conditions. The monocular and the detail victim route. These add-ons, uh, if I remember correctly, they both exhaust for five seconds to the survivor. The monocular is if the survivor reveals you, which... Uh, which they'll do if they look at you for a bit. And the other one is if you mark them. Now, most of the times, survivors that you mark, you don't do it expecting to chase them for very long. You expect them to be marked and go down ASAP. If you expect them to get away, you would probably just leave them 99% stocked. Um, so even though it's an okay uh, add-on, it's definitely better to run the monocular. With the monocular, you can 99 someone, let them exhaust you, and then leave, and they'll be... Uh, let, let them um, reveal you. And if you ever have to commit to that person for five seconds or so, they'll be exhausted. And you'll know that if you have to chase them, they won't have made for this. They won't have dead heart. They won't have balance. They won't have anything that could really, really put them um, at a, an advantage against you and give them a lot of distance. And next up, we also have two add-ons that do the same, but on different conditions. One of them is the chewed pen and the other one is the perfume. These add-ons make it so that a survivor, instead of taking one second to reveal you, they'll instead take three seconds to reveal you. The pen works on survivors that are on the ground, if I remember correctly. Yes, on the ground. And the cologne uh, or the perfume works on survivors that are on the hook. Now, why would you want to run these add-ons? There's actually a few situations where they might come in handy. Uh, the pen in particular goes, goes really well with the ghost face card on tape. Say that you're chasing two survivors, right? and you wanna hook one of them, but the other one, you don't want them to just get away. You can down one survivor, and while the other one runs away, you can sit down by some obstacle and lean and reveal the other guy. While you lean, it will take you two and a half seconds or so. Um, so you can 99% their stock, and the guy that you just down cannot reveal you in time. This also happens very frequently during unhooking, during unhooking situations. So you hit a survivor, um, um, the survivor unhooks, you hit them again, and then you use the hook or some other prop to just lean, and the person that's next to you cannot reveal you in time. In the three seconds they need to reveal you, you have already stuck someone else. Uh, similarly, the perfume can be used as a camping tool. Let's say that you're in a house or a building with someone on the hook, you wait for someone to arrive, and when they come last second, um, you can use your power and begin to reveal them uh, out around some corner or some doorway, and the person on the hook will try to, to break you out, but by the time they break you out, you have already marked the other person or 99 them. It also helps you a little bit if you hook someone and use your power while leaving. Even if they stare at you, they won't break you out of it easily. So as a beginner, this add-on can be okay. And as a more advanced player, I think the pen is probably the better of the two, but they're not bad. Uh, we then have the journal. Uh, this add-on makes it so that anytime they do a fast action, in chase, mostly vaulting windows or pallets, you will see their aura for five seconds. It's like Amaliers, the perk from Ghostface himself, but in add-on form. I have had decent success with this add-on, but it's really not something you should look to equip because normally when someone is fully exposed, you are trying to expose, expose them in a situation where you're almost guaranteed to down them. You don't necessarily want to expose people and then try to chase them for a while and see what happens. You want to seal the deal as soon as possible. But guess what? Life happens. Sometimes mistakes occur uh, or sometimes you mark multiple people and then when you're chasing the second guy, this add-on comes in clutch and it's quite okay. Um, the brown perfume, uh, the cheap cologne, I think it's called, is a very simple add-on. Instead of marking survivors for 60 seconds, where they are insta this adds 10, so it will be 70. 
Uh, as I just mentioned, you don't necessarily want to mark people and then just hope that you catch them in a minute. You should never be chasing people for a minute. You mark them, you down them, or you mark them and you let them go. But believe it or not, this still can be useful. Sometimes you can mark someone and during that whole 70 seconds, they cannot take hits. They cannot open a gate next to you. They cannot uh, go for an unhook. There's a lot of things they cannot do if they're exposed and adding an extra 10 seconds to it. It's not by any means a bad deal. Uh, we now have two other add-ons that both, again, do the same thing under different conditions. Um, the telephoto lens, I believe it's called. Let me check it. Yes, I think so. Okay. So the telephoto lens. Mm. Am I stupid? Yes. <laughs> I got it. It's a telephoto lens. Uh, the telephoto lens triggers, uh, triggers when you mark a survivor, so it's the 60 or 70 seconds that we explain, and during that time they will be oblivious. Now, they cannot reveal you while they are marked, and while they cannot reveal you, that means you should be, you should be under stealth. So making the person that you just mark oblivious while you're stealthy sounds really, really stupid. Um, so this might not sound super, super good. At first glance. So this is if you expose them. But this is a bit different. This gives them also oblivious, also for about 60 seconds, when they reveal you. So that means that if they break you out of stealth, they're not going to hear your your power, uh, your terror radius. Normally, you'll get back into stealth in about 20 seconds or less, so it's not a big deal. Now, these two add-ons are both pretty bad, but there's one thing that the telephoto lens that gives it a bit of an edge, and that is if you mark people aggressively in a situation where they all get together. So say that you have a person on the hook and you see two others coming in and you mark all of them. Now, for the next few seconds, they're going to have to be extra careful because if they go for the unhook or do something risky or try to do a heal or go for a gate or work on a gen, it doesn't even matter whether or not you're in power, they will not hear you. And that does throw them off, and people will try to play a bit more carefully around that, even though they should ought to be playing carefully because you are a stealth killer. Uh, now we go to the newspaper cutouts, and this add-on is a bit strange. If you remember the Myers add-on that makes him faster at stalking, and why they're not very good, this is a similar thing. It makes you 40% faster when you stalk. Now, there are two speeds at which you stalk. One is if you're stalking um, the air, nothing, and then you move relatively fast. And that is, and the other one, when you actually have a target on screen that you're building up. And the thing is, this add-on makes you stalk pretty fast while you're stalking the air. But when you stalk someone, you're still very, very slow. And the problem is, the ghost fish wants to lean out of stuff to, to mark twice as fast, to stalk faster. So when you're leaning, you're standing still. So having an add-on that makes you move faster when you should be ideally standing still, I don't need to explain why this isn't super, super hard. The faster speed, however, sometimes does help you to mark someone a little bit and lose a bit less distance. Sometimes it can make leaning out of corners a little bit uh, smoother. So it is an add-on that has a very minuscule effect that you might feel from time to time. Uh, but it's otherwise not very good. We then have another add-on, the knife belt clip, that drops your terror radius significantly. It reduces it by a little bit whenever you crouch. Uh, there's a problem. Why would you want this? Why would you ever want this? Well, the truth is, if you have a smaller terror radius and you become stealthy, that means that it contracts a little bit faster into nothing. So sometimes when you are approaching a, say for example, you're approaching a gen and your power is still not quite ready, you can crouch and there's a chance that by the time you get close enough because of the smaller terror radius, they might not even hear a terror radius at all. Uh, but honestly, I just, it's such a gimmicky effect. Uh, you could run it with more internal abuse so that you have a small terror radius even when you're not out of your power. But why would you want to do that on a killer that has such a nice recovery and has such a nice ability to constantly lose his terror radius? Not very good. Uh, the green sheath increases the movement speed significantly of you crouching. I mean, you could run these two together if you wanted to get value out of both, but it's not very good. Most of the times, anytime you crouch, you'll do it in a loop to try to throw off the survivor if they don't see you behind some car or some rock. And this add-on can make that whole process a little bit smoother, but you typically only do it for like a fraction of a second or a second or two. You don't necessarily go around crouch. It's not very productive. So the extra speed, nice as it is, doesn't help a lot.
Another add-on that doesn't help a lot um, is this map that reveals the survivor that uh, broke you out of stealth for two seconds longer with Killer Instant. It's not useful. <laughs> a survivor that reveals you with Killer Instant is either on the hook, and then you know it's on the hook, or they are somewhere around you and you see them right away. Having a longer terror terror uh, Killer Instant um, heartbeat on them, it's just... It's not bad, but it's also completely pointless. You almost will never benefit from it. And then this add-on is called the Cinch Trap, and it's honestly worse than nothing. This add-on makes it so that if you hit the air and you whiff, you no longer get brought out of your power. This might seem to a beginner like something that should be desirable. Oh, if I do an attack that I didn't mean to do, I, I get to keep my power. That's a good thing. That's actually a bad thing. Using your power on your own terms can actually be a good thing. There will be a time where you are afraid that a survivor is going to break you out of your power and you want to and you want to have it on command. And the safest way to do that Let's say that you want to camp someone on the hook or you want to camp an open exit gate and there's multiple survivors coming at you, right? And they're all 99, but you need to have your power ready. If they break you out of your power, then for the next 20 seconds or so, you're useless. But what you can do in these situations is use your power yourself, break your own power and then get it back. And then you will decide when you trigger it and you can't really, they can't really break you out of it because you will trigger it whenever you need it. So using a basic attack to trigger your own cooldown and have it ready whenever you want is actually a somewhat situational resource that you can use as a ghost phase. But if you use this add-on, that ability is removed. You no longer can do that. And uh, I don't need to explain. That's that if you lose an ability thanks to an add-on, that's not very good. So it probably is generally worse than nothing. All right, moving on to the Demogorgon, which I hope many of you still have the chance to play. Uh, keep in mind, after the next update, his best add-on, which up until now used to be the Leprous Licken, is getting nerfed. So if this surprises you, keep in mind, this is for the Alien chapter update, so this add-on's getting nerfed. Otherwise, it would probably be his best. His best current add-ons are probably the Black Heart and the Barb's Glasses. These two add-ons are almost identical. They almost do the exact same thing, just with a slightly different color. Uh, the Barb's Glasses makes a minus 15% recovery when you break a pallet. And the black heart, um, there you go, is the same thing, but when you hit a survivor. So if you know how save the best for us, if you know how save the best for us works, where you recover faster, it's the same idea. It's the same idea, uh, but with your power. And if you know what brutal strength is, well, it's the same idea, but with pallet breaking with your power. Both of these are really, really nice. It helps in chase. It helps. Um, to get the second hit in, even if you down someone, it helps you save a little bit of time to pick them up faster, make it a bit harder to do a pallet save, and so on. They're just nice add-ons, they're super straightforward, the values are small, but it doesn't matter, even a small value for something so important really comes in clutch most of the time, so these are just stri straight up very, very solid add-ons. A slightly more complex add-on is the Lifeguard Whistle. With the, life work, with the Lifeguard Whistle, uh, your portals will detect survivors next to them, constantly, uh, as long as they are active, even if you don't hold your power. Normally, if you have a portal next to, let's say, a generator, um, it has a little detection radius around it. Uh, this add-on uh, changes that a little bit, but don't worry too much. And if you are holding your power as demo, and you're holding uh, the M2, you will detect any survivor that would be here. But if you're busy carrying, if you're busy chasing, if you're busy doing other stuff, you're not gonna get any warning. This add-on changes that. This add-on lets you know exactly when someone comes in contact to a portal so that you know immediately. And why is this so important? Hexes. You can protect gens, you can protect totems, you can protect anything you want, basement, stairs, you can protect whatever. But hexes are very, very mean on Demogorgon with this add-on because you can protect them very, very zealously and very uh, ferociously. And even if they break them, you can then have Pentimento. So basically, if you bring something like Devour, Pentimento, survivors will be super, super screwed to try to deal with your totems. And then when they do that, they'll have to deal with them again. So that is a very, very difficult and unwinnable position many times. And this add-on enables that playstyle. We then have Muse Guts. Muse Guts gives you one extra portal, I believe. To place down around the map, which is really, really nice to have. You don't use them all, all the time, and survivors sometimes cleanse them, but having an extra one is never bad. And it also gives you a slight, I believe, 11% recovery on a miss shred. After missing a shred, having uh, having that 
quarter of a second faster recovery is noticeable and nice, and the extra portal already kind of uh, sells you the sells you the add-on quite well. For a yellow, it is really, really powerful. Uh, the Leprous Lycan used to be the best add-on by far. Every time you teleport with your portals, you see everyone, and when you come out, you continue to see them for a few seconds afterwards. Now, it's not like that anymore. You only see them while you teleport, and when you come out, you only see survivors that are close to open uh, active portals. It's not bad, but it's not the insane information that you got before. So this add-on, I mean, it's still... if You you need to be careful when you teleport, because if you teleport into a corner of the map, from a corner of the map, uh, like you need to have the whole map kind of in front of you to really benefit, because you need to see during the animation. You're really not going to see much when you come out, most likely. So if you use this add-on in a smart way, you can still get decent value out of it. Again, I've said this many times today, but keep in mind that survivors nowadays often use other hiding perks like distortion, so even this add-on can still quite fail. Uh, next up, we have the three add-ons that increase your stealth when coming out of a portal. Your stealth when coming out of a portal has gotten quite a bit better in this update, but you can make it even better with these add-ons. Uh, this one adds, I believe, eight seconds, which is pretty nasty and also makes the process a little bit more silent. This one adds um, three seconds, and this one adds one second. Um, the extra one second's not that big of a deal, but the purple and the eerie are pretty significant. You are still making certain noises and certain stepping noises. It's not like you are the stealthiest killer of all time, but being able to teleport somewhere in the middle and then access a few gens or areas around it while potentially catching a survivor healing or something is not bad at all, and with certain info perks can be quite nice. Uh, we then have the oh, what is this called? I forgot about the name of this. Mm, well, I, I just I didn't forget about the name. I just forgot about the word. Um, I'm I'm gonna have to look it up. One second. Right, this is the upside down resin. That's the word I'm looking for. Which is one of two add-ons that increase the time it takes for survivors to destroy your portals. Uh, the yellow one, uh, I'm not gonna lie, is not too good. I believe it's only sixteen percent. I think I just checked. Uh, this one is forty percent. That is nice. I think this add-on shines particularly when you pair it with the um, just mentioned whistle. With this whistle and this add-on, um, you guarantee that you're going to have portals that are on very sensitive areas that survivors really, really, really want to get rid of, and they can't possibly do it because it takes so long. And if they get rid of the portal and they're about to finish the action, but then you come out of it, it interrupts them and they have to start over again, and it's a bit... Um, it's a bit of a mess for them. So with this add-on, these two together, they are quite good. The yellow one, I think the effect is pretty poor, and either or either one of these two add-ons, I wouldn't run them by themselves, because in your average match, two hours are not going to get rid of that many portals. Um, the rat tail, however, is getting a bit of a buff in this patch, which is going to make it really nice again. It makes you faster to put down a portal. It's a very time-sensitive thing. Sometimes you put down a portal and you want to like go back to the other one, so saving uh, half a second here and there is quite nice. The Rat Liver has a very subtle effect. When you hold your uh, power, uh, it makes you 3% faster, I believe. Now, if you hold it repeatedly for long, um, this is not something you should be doing much. And there's a little bit of debate on whether or not this add-on helps you uh, until uh, until your power is fully charged. Uh, if you're not aware, with the Demo Gorgon, when you charge your power... Um, at first, you can do a small shred, and if you hold it longer and longer and longer, you can do a longer and longer shred up until a maximum. I do believe that between the minimum and maximum, you are slowed down, and this add-on sometimes can let you pre-charge a, a, an attack around the corner and make it land a la la little bit longer. So even though I've, I've found uh, contro uh, controversial and, and mixed opinions on this, in my opinion, it is quite decent for these situations, even though the effect is pretty small. We then have the Thorny Binds, um, which have uh, two effects. They they mix the effects from the two add-ons that we mentioned earlier, where I believe... Wait, am I wrong? No, I'm right. Um, they, they mix the effects where they slow down the portal closing, uh, and they... Uh, but, but only by 11%. Yeah, that's right but only by 11%, so it's a bit less than the other two. But more importantly, they also extend the range of the portals detecting survivors around them. Not too much, not super useful, but it's nice. Uh, I guess you could run this and pair it with something else like that to, to really make the, um, 
the the um, the portals attack people from afar. You could also pair it with the whistle to make up for the whistle's reduced range. Uh, and then the what is this called? Linen or something? Uh, this add-on um, increases the range of an active portal detecting survivors by two and a half meters, which is very very significant. You can put a portal behind a wall behind a gen, and it will detect people coming from really really far. Uh, we then have the brass case lighter, I believe it's called. If if a survivor steps near an active portal, they'll be blinded for 60 seconds. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I think this add-on is pretty meh. The best thing you can do with this is put portals next to loops and activate them, or on top of basement and activate them. And then anytime a survivor has to go into basement or has to go around the loop, they'll get hit by blindness. If it blindness, if blindness was this really, really strong effect, then I could see this being stronger, but it's not, so... I can't say I love this add-on. Uh, 11 Soda is also a bit of a mm, add-on. Uh, when you teleport, any any generator that's currently being worked on will become yellow. Normally, ideally, that's the generator you're, you're traveling to, but sometimes you'll see a generator in the corner and be like, oh, there's someone there. So it's a little bit of nice information, even though you probably have other perks and your own intuition to find that out anyway. We then have the green... Uh, Green Rotten Tripe, I think it's called, and the Deer Lungs. Both of these add-ons increase the speed at which you we travel through your through your underground to the next portal. Now, the way the speed is coded, it has a maximum and a minimum. So even if you go very close, you'll still take a while, and even if you go really far, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, the reason why the yellow add-on is better than the green one, even though the effect is a bit a bit smaller, is that this one has no downsides. This one makes you go like 20-ish percent faster. This one's more like 40% faster. This one is way more noticeable, but it removes two portals. It takes them away. So you only have four portals. And after you place the portals, if survivors don't break them, you're out of them. So losing portals, losing maximum amount of portals, I don't know why this add-on has a downside, honestly. I generally don't know. Um, so that's why the deer lungs, in my opinion, are worse than nothing. And you shouldn't run it. And this add-on, it's not amazing, but it's all right. We then have the egg, the egg that has been uh, buffed. This add-on allows you to spam your power a bit sooner. When you teleport, you have to wait 10 seconds. With this add-on, you'll have to wait 2.5 seconds less, aka only 7 seconds. Not a lot of situations where you teleport and then you want to teleport back immediately, but... I mean, it's worse than nothing. For a purple, I think it's absolutely laughable. This is the stealth atom we out of the cover. This is the slightly longer destroying portal out of the cover. And that leaves the rotten pumpkin. This is a bit of a meme add-on, and it might have a moment where it's okay. So the way the demo gorgon works, if you put six of your portals somewhere, let's see, let's put them all. Now you cannot redeploy these portals. Unless survivors destroy one, and then you can put another. So sometimes you might find yourself slightly annoyed that all of your portals are placed down, and you're like, damn, what am I going to do, right? Or maybe you're playing the deer lungs, and you're like, damn, I've put four, four portals, and now I, I, I don't have any more. Well, with this add-on, whenever you teleport from one portal to the next one, the one that you teleport from disappears, and then you can place it again. So then I can teleport from here to, for example, here. And this will disappear, and you keep re-getting your portals. That sounds really nice, but, but you're wasting time. You're wasting time. If you go from point A to point B, and then you want to go back to point A, then you have to walk there again. So the time, the, the, the convenience of re-getting your portals is way, way offset by the fact that you're losing some of them. So, yeah, overall, I think a bit of a gimmicky add-on that I wouldn't super highly recommend, unless you feel like you know what you're doing. Next up, we have Oni, and this is one of the most shameful distributions of add-ons ever. Notice that none of his add-ons are Mimi. He hasn't. He doesn't have any add-on that is worse than nothing, but he has a record of E-tier add-ons, and we'll see why. Uh, now, his best add-ons are the duration add-ons. In in number one spot, the Lion Fang, although the the standard, the banner. And the, I don't know what this was called. Uh, these are all duration add-ons. They give a plus eight, a plus. No, 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 no. A plus 10, I think. A plus 8 and a plus 6 seconds. Uh, this is to his normal uh, power duration, which is 45.45. It's like 45 seconds, more or less. So, why is this so good? For multiple reasons. Number one, being able to be an absolute beast. Uh, we already know that the Oni's power is really strong. Being able to be a beast 
for 10 seconds longer or 18 seconds longer, if you have two of them, is obviously very, very, very good. But there is also something else that comes with duration, and that is the power that you lose from downing survivors. Uh, whenever you... Um, uh, let's say we start our power, right? And we have 45 seconds. Let's say that we catch up to a survivor and it takes us... Um, um, 10 seconds. So now we're at 35. Well, when you hit a survivor and you down them, you lose a fixed amount of seconds. Uh, I don't remember for the top of my head, but I believe it is 6, if I remember correctly. Let's say it's 6. It doesn't matter exactly what it is, just get my point. So that means that the moment you hit a survivor, bam, now we're at 29 seconds. So, um, then we take 4 seconds to break a pallet, and then we we pick up. So we are now at 22 seconds, let's say. So that is half, right? 22 is half of 45. So that means that in this time, I now have used half of my power and need to pick up 50 orbs to get back there. However, if I, if I had duration add-ons, then I would be at 55. I would have wasted uh, 20 seconds, right? Uh, sorry, I would have wasted 10 seconds, so we would be at 45. Uh, after that, we would have wasted, um, oh yeah, I would have downed someone, so I would be at 39, and then after that, I would be at, da, 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 da. Uh, we wasted 7 seconds, so I would be at 32. Now, 32 is higher than 22, so when, when I end my power without add-ons, my power, this is the gauge of the power, it's gonna be at like 50. It's gonna be at 50, but here, my power is gonna be f higher than 50. It's gonna be like, I don't know. What is 30 of 45? Like two thirds ish, right? So that means that I need to collect less blood. In times when you don't use your whole power, I'm sorry if this was a bit complex, in times when you don't need to use your whole power, having extra duration means that every time you down a survivor and time happens, you need to collect less blood to get back into your power. This means that after using my uh, after using my my power, like in the example we just said, if I hit a survivor without with the uh, with the duration add-ons, I already have my power back. And if I if I didn't have any add-ons, if I hit a survivor, I still need to go and collect a little bit of blood because I don't have I don't quite have it yet. Um, I, I I know that I haven't been super specific with the exact numbers of everything, but just take my word for it. The duration add-ons make it so that you have to use less blood if you don't use your hard power, and that is re that is an indirect. Uh, effect of them, and I'm not sure if it's fair, but it makes all of the duration add-ons uh, good for both of their effects, both the increased duration and the decrease uh, time it takes to get your blood. Uh, for a very similar reason, the next two add-ons are incredibly good. They are the Broken Hull and the Oni Mask. These add-ons make it so that survivors drop more blood uh, when they are injured. They drop more blood in two ways. They, When they are passively just doing stuff and waiting, they drop blood more frequently, so they they dribble blood more frequently. And also, every time they interact with a pallet, with a window, any time they do an action, like vaulting, they drop extra blood as well. With these two add-ons, after hitting one survivor and chasing them for just a minute, they are going to feed the heck out of you. This is basically, like, only going to a really nice buffet of blood. He will eat very, very well. If the survivors are playing really stupid and giving you hits left and right, then these add-ons are probably not too hot for you because you're getting blood anyway, but most of the times they're going to put up a bit of a resistance. And if you have to be forced to follow one survivor and grab a lot of blood, you are going to be so happy that you chose one of these two add-ons. Though, though they're, the, the, the purple one is a little bit better, but they're both very, very close and mostly do the same thing. Uh, after that, we have the speed increasing add-ons. Now, having add-ons that increase your speed does have the side effect of making uh, your power slightly harder to control. Um, from the top of my head, I believe the top one is 9% faster, which only is already really fast, so it's very noticeable. Uh, so, But even though it's a bit harder to control, it also gives far less... Um, it's a bit like Blight. If it, it gives survivors far less time to react to anything. Makes it easier... To run into to run around things and do flicks makes it easier to catch up since you go around the map sooner. Sometimes you get down faster, and obviously you save blood. So the the, the speed add-ons are nothing to be scoffed at, and they are valued very very highly by the experienced uh, Oni players. So that's all you need to know about that. Um, 
Now we talk about one that's a little bit interesting. It's the sculpt top knot. This add-on makes it faster to start your sprint. When you're in demon mode, you have to hold your power a little bit before you start to run. And this can give survivors a little bit of time to, to get around corners and whatnot. With this add-on, that is significantly faster, even though it got nerfed, I believe, some time ago. Um, it's still it's still decent to run, even though it probably gets outclassed by the other add-ons we've discussed. We then have an add-on that is really difficult to classify called uh, Rangiro's uh, Bloody Glove. And this add-on has an upside and a downside. The downside is that survivors, when they leave blood on the ground, uh, in the air, they absorb that blood. So that means that if they're doing a gen, instead of leaving a huge pool of blood, they keep absorbing their own blood. But every time they absorb it, they also give you information. So in matches where a survivor is doing a gen, you will see their auto constantly. If they run around a loop and then someone else runs it, that blood will become like a radar. So it turns your it weaponizes the blood that survivors drop passively when injured into a radar of sorts. And that can be quite okay. It can give you information in quite clutch moments, but I also feel like it can rob you of blood that you otherwise would need. Keep in mind that while you use your power, you do not, uh, the survivors do not drop blood, so you cannot benefit from this while they are, while you're using your power. So this kind of encourages you to use your power a bit less, and you could pair it with one of the two add-ons to make them drop more blood if you were keen. Overall, I don't know how to feel about this add-on. I have It's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, if you have a build around it, it might be a bit more effective. Next up, we have the family crest, the Yamaoka family crest. A bit of a meme add-on that got buffed some time ago and is now a little bit better. Um, when you smack your weapon against the ground, people scream. This can be useful with Deadman Switch to make people scream on different floors and to find people in small maps like Midwitch or the game. Um, you should probably only use your power when when you know you're gonna find and down someone, but sometimes after you down someone, you could use this again just to check if there's anyone around them, find the last guy. There is actually a fair amount of utility and the increased range is okay-ish. Not too bad, but also a bit gimmicky. Um, then we have, uh, well, I guess these add-ons um, need to be um, talked about separately. This add-on is a bit weird. Uh, this add-on reduces the amount of blood that you lose when you hit a survivor. As I explained earlier, um, when you use your power, you will lose part of it every time you down a survivor. Um, unless they go into a locker and you grab them. If you hit them with your cannibal, the big stick, you will lose blood. With this add-on, reduces the amount of blood that you would lose from each down. So what this add-on basically does, it allows you to down a survivor, down a survivor, down a survivor, and at the end of the day, have more of your power left, which means less blood to pick up to refill it. Now, the problem with this add-on is that it gets utterly, and I mean utterly outclassed by this add-on. Um, if you want to get the same value as the purple duration, you need to down three people. And downing three people with Oni, I mean, it's not impossible, but why would you do that? You're probably going to down one or two tops. And obviously, if, if for whatever reason one person runs you for a long time and you need the extra duration, then this add-on is much better. So, yeah, this, this add-on just, it's, it's coded and designed badly. It's badly designed. If you run the green or even yellow duration, you're probably going to get similar results with better outcomes and without as much pressure on you to down multiple people. Not to mention that sometimes you might get greedy trying to down people. So it's not a good idea. We then have the Ink Lion and this broken uh, uh, cup, the name of which I don't remember. Uh, these add-ons have the exact same effect. They both make it a little bit faster to enter and leave the Oni Demon form. Um, it's, I believe, 0 0.25 per add-on. Um, so you can stack them together to get double the effect. The reason why the yellow is a little bit better is because it also has a tiny little bit of effect from this add-on as well. So when you down a survivor with this add-on, you also lose a little bit less blood than usual. I would say it's not worth running just for that. It's better to run duration, but I mean, it does two things, so it's not too bad, I guess. Uh, this add-on only has the speed up. So yeah, these add-ons are comfy and they're probably his best uh, brown and a decent yellow. So it's not too bad. Now we get to the infamous E tier, the infamous E tier on Oni. This is really, really bad. Whew, where to begin? Um, 
uh, the top, I guess. We have this add-on and this add-on. Um, they increase the speed at which you walk while absorbing blood orbs. Uh, this one by 0 0.7 meters per second. This one by 0 0.4 meters per second. Basically, if you run them both and you hold your hand, you move at normal speed and you pretty much don't slow down when grabbing orbs. Is this important? The answer is no. Most of the times you're going to get orbs from blood orbs from hitting people and grabbing them quickly when they're scattered. You do not want to go around like a beggar being like, oh, blood orb, oh, one blood orb, oh, one blood orb, whoops, you know, piece of candy, oh, piece of candy, oh, piece of candy. You don't want to do that. If you do that, you are honestly shooting yourself in the foot. That's not a play style or something you want to do ever, period. So, yeah. Every now and then, it's true, you will be chasing a survivor and you'll need blood and not losing a bit of distance. It can be all right. But generally, these add-ons have a, a very negligible negligible effect, and you almost never put them on expecting anything. The next two add-ons, which is the Rotten Rope and the Wooden Child Sword, are weird. They increase by plus 4 meters and plus 2 meters the range at which you can detect orbs. But there's a problem. The orbs are already visible. You can see an orb from like 30 meters away. You can see them from very far away. Very far away. This only applies to seeing them through walls. So, say that you're in an indoor map and there's an orb right above you, you will see it. But with these add-ons, you will see it from a little bit further even. So yeah, the best thing that can happen when you run these add-ons is that, I don't know, you walk close to the edge of the map and then you notice that there's like one bloat orb behind some wall or behind some Z wall, and then you go and there's a bunch more. So yeah, this 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 add-on can sometimes, and I mean, and I really, really mean sometimes, make you find a stash of blood that you, that you would have otherwise missed. But most of the time, survivors don't do that. They heal in the open, the blood orbs disappear over time. These add-ons are not good. They should be combined into one maybe and removed. They're, they're not very good. You will see that most of the orb you find most of the blood that you find, it's just in plain sight, or you just get it from hitting people directly. Not very good. Oh, I'm so sorry, I closed my my own thing. So, moving on. Uh, we then have the Polish Maedate and the whatever, Broken Shattered Wakizashi, I think it's called. So, uh, the Oni has a power that builds up over time, right? It goes like this. It builds up over time. And then, when it reaches 99%, it stops. And it's really, really annoying. <laughs> now, for you to build up your power passively, it's extremely slow. I think it takes like eight minutes. It takes like eight minutes. That's an entire game. So if you go the entire game without hitting someone, by the end of it, maybe you'll have your power. Uh, that's not a very good thing. Uh, these add-ons speed this up a little bit, okay? They speed it by like 100 and by like 200%. So instead of waiting eight minutes to get your power, you only have to wait, wait for it, five minutes. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you want to wait five minutes for your power? No. In that time, you should have hit survivors a billion times. Over the course... Uh, and, oh, and, oh, and by the way, if your power is at 99%, these add-ons don't make it go past it, so you'll still be stuck. So you might think, oh, odds, but what about those times where I hit a survivor, and then I hit another, but then I don't find any blood, I'm like 99, will this help me get to the full? No, it won't. So these add-ons genuinely do almost nothing. They speed up the process by a lot, but the process is already so unbelievably slow that it's not very good. It's really not. They, uh, I could swear you would never notice a difference if you had these add-ons equipped or not. And then we have the paper lantern. This add-on makes it so that the blood that you uh, pull towards yourself, which comes at you very fast, now comes at you even faster. I've tried this add-on on and off, and honestly, you would be hard-pressed to notice a difference. Most of the times, you're grabbing... You're gra like, the distance from which you can grab blood is so short that the speed at which it comes, it's very irrelevant. Uh, maybe in your mind, maybe if you're an experienced Orient player, uh, Oni player, you will think some of these add-ons uh, could be swapped around, or maybe you like this one better, and we could agree to disagree, but I'm sure what, we will all be on the same page on the fact that all of these add-ons are absolute garbage. So yeah, please don't use any of them. Stick to the good ones that we talked about earlier. Next up is Deathslinger, who has a much more pleasant distribution of add-ons. His best add-on is probably the Iridescent um, the iridescent coin. 
This add-on got buffed some time ago, so I don't blame you if you don't know that it's so strong. And it's actually really, really good. The Deathslinger has a gun that can go all the way up to 18 meters. You can shoot people that are 18 meters away, and if there's not too many obstacles, you're probably going to be able to reel them and hit them. Uh, this add-on used to be that you would insta-down if you hit them at 50 meters. So if you hit them between this two points, this would be an insta-down. But then they buffed it a little bit to what it is now, so that it's only 12 meters. And this is incredible. This is so good. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a lot. This area right here is where all the magic fun stuff happens. There are a lot, if, especially if you're a more seasoned slinger, there are a lot of maps where you can consistently hit people for 12 meters. Heck, you can even wait until they unhook or they do a get in front of you, and then you shoot them, and from 12 meters, that will result in an insta-down. This killer, his main weakness is the fact that he can't get around the map too quickly. And sometimes, even if his chase is pretty good, survivors can just waste your time and split you up and, and reduce the pressure. Getting an insta down is so valuable on this killer. It's so good. It also makes the whole, oh, hit, reload, catch up. It makes all of that irrelevant because you just down them. So yeah, the insta down on this killer is insane. And with this add-on, it happens really frequently. And yeah, it's just really, 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 really good. You probably want to pair this with reload, but there's a few other add-ons that can go with it as well. Uh, the iridescent coin is nuts. Uh, next up, we have the two reload add-ons. One of them is the ammo belt thingy, and the other one is the warden keys. This reduces your reload by half a second, and this by a quarter of a second. You could stack them both, but honestly, uh, even though it feels nice, you just need to run the green reload. The green reload is on. It should honestly be basic. It feels so natural. This killer feels so awful without it. And the nice part about the green reload is that it's literally in every build. The best combination of add-ons all have green reload. So you can go green reload, brown reload. You can go green reload, uh, mango. Green reload, cigar. Green reload, this. Like every single. I I cannot conceive. The best build on Slinger, not running at least the green reload. Everything else is on the table, but this is really, really, really good. Um, and yeah, uh, being able to have a shot ready it up five seconds sooner. Uh, sorry, not five seconds, imagine. Uh, half a second sooner, 0 0.5 seconds sooner. That is just really, really, really good. Uh, pretty much as good as the next add-on. Um, the next two add-ons increase uh, decrease the time from which you get stunned if your chain breaks. And they are the Cigar and the chewing tobacco. The cigar by minus one second, and the chewing tobacco by minus 0 0.5 seconds. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, the chewing tobacco, you could stack it with the cigar, but you could also save five, uh, 0 0.5 seconds with the, with the keys. So this add-on is not as des desirable, even though it's good, it's not as desirable, because if you're gonna save time, you might as well save it on the keys, which is more important. Um, so it, everything I'm gonna say about the cigar is good about the tobacco, but the cigar is even better. So what do you do with this add-on? It's very simple. You shoot a survivor, you reel them towards you, and then you let the chain break to some natural uh, obstacle that is in between you and them. And instead of having to be stunned for three seconds, now you're only stunned for two seconds. During those two seconds, they need to immediately make distance, and you're gonna reload really quickly, and what you can do with these two add-ons is essentially have, like, save the best for last, but for this killer's power. So you break it, you recover fast, and you reload super quickly, and then shoot them and get them again. In tournaments, I have seen good survivors be absolutely demolished by this combination. Even really good survivors cannot get out of sticky situations. They get one tap into two taps, and there's very little they can do about it. This is a very nasty combination, and at higher levels, possibly his best add-on combo. We then have two add-ons that trigger Mangold. Mangold is, of course, the thing that makes survivors uh, heal slower. Uh, the Rusted Spike works when you reel them and you hit them. And the Thorny Binds, or whatever this is called, they, or, or I forgot what it's called, um, they work when you reel them and you break the chain. It's a little bit more consistent to hit them than it is to break the chain. You're gonna have two chances to hit them and only one chance to break the chain, right? So overall, the yellow version of this item is a little bit better, and it's also cheaper, so yeah, this item is a little bit better, but this one's not bad either. Um, putting them in Mangled, it doesn't help you super immediately, but in the long term, it is quite okay. We then have two different add-ons to increase the time it takes for them to mend. This one, I believe, is 3.5 seconds. This one, I believe, is 1.5 seconds. 
Uh, so anytime you hit them with your with your chain or they break the chain, they need to mend for longer. Funnily enough, just like Legion, if they have to mend from something other than your power, like taking a hit after a hook, this, I believe, also makes that mending time longer, unless they patched it recently. So that's a fun fact for you. These are okay add-ons. Um, you don't typically leave people to mend very often, but if you do, adding three and a half seconds to it, it does make the whole healing pff, uh, idea uh, a little bit slower. Now they need to do the three and a half extra, plus the 12 seconds it takes to to mend, plus the maybe 16 seconds they'll take to heal, maybe more if you have this add-on. You know, all that time adds up. Then we have another set of two add-ons with uh, a very similar uh, effect. This is the, the, the spit rag and the tin can, whatever, or tin can oil. Uh, these add-ons reduce the cooldown of your gun when you miss a shot. They do it by 0 0.5, and also by 0 0.25. So they're basically a mirror of the keys and the reload uh, belt. They're basically a mirror. They save you half a second and a quarter of a second when you miss a shot. Now, needless to say, you shouldn't be missing shots too much if you're a good slinger. But if you're a good slinger, you're going to take some risks. And when you do, these add-ons kind of protect you. Especially this one, having half a second. It's quite nice. It's quite nice. It's not too bad. It feels pretty comfy. Moving on, we have the heavy chains. The heavy chains uh, make your chains uh, after make makes your gun harder, your chains harder to break when you're reeling a survivor. Most of the time, this uh, is not super necessary. There's only a few loops where the extra ten percent. It's only ten percent, ten percent. Where that extra ten percent is clutch. And sometimes it can even hurt you. If you want to break your own chain for, like, Cigar, it's just going to slow you down a little bit. So I found this add-on, and Experienced Linger tell me that this add-on is actually very unnecessary most of the times. Um, there is a thing where... It's, we're, we're getting into more technical stuff, which maybe I shouldn't get into. Uh, but just take my word for it. Because of certain mechanics that this healer has, getting nasty shots and, and breaking the chain uh, to 99 and then getting hit is, is possible on most loops, even without this add-on, so you don't really need it, even though, you know, its rarity would suggest that it's pretty good. Then we have the Hellshire Iron, a very strange and misplaced iridescent that is nowhere near as good as the other one we mentioned. Anytime you hit a survivor from your gun, you become undetectable for a very short, brief amount of time. Why? I don't know. But I guess that it can be okay. You hit a survivor, you hook them, maybe they don't see you with Kindred. You hit a survivor, you go for someone else. Maybe you catch them off guard. Keep in mind that you need to reload. And during the reload, you're wasting time and you're getting slow. So it's not like you're an insane killer that can bounce between survivors super quickly. So yeah, not amazing. We then have the Whiskey and the Badge. These two add-ons work when you are aiming down your sights. The Whiskey reduces your terror radius by minus 8 meters and the badge by minus four meters. <sighs> this is really useless at first glance. Having a 24 meter terror radius is not a big deal. It's really not. People are still going to hear you. Uh, however, um, you can pair one of these add-ons with this. Ideally, if you're going to be serious, forget about the badge and just run the whiskey, right? But let's, let's assume you take the better case scenario, which... Honestly, you might as well, because you only want to use one of these add-ons. So you take the whiskey, you pair it with the Eerie Coin, and now you have a 24 meter terror radius while you aim down. You can pair that with Monitoring Abuse, and now you have a 16 meter terror radius, which means that you can get close enough to a survivor that you can shoot them, but not close enough that they can hear you. And by the time they hear you, they're already pierced, and they're already on their way to be insta-downed. That's why this is important, because of the insta-down. So with this in mind, these two add-ons, especially the purple, can have a can have a place in some builds. And if you want to look up a small terror radius slinger or whatever, uh, or underrated add-ons on different killers, I'm sure I have a video or two about this setup. It can be okay. Moving on. Uh, yeah, these two add-ons are regrettable. Uh, these two add-ons make you pull survivors 9% and 5% faster. I'm going to tell you, I've also made a video comparing that side to side. It is pathetic it is absolutely pathetic the the effect of this add-on if it was greater would be welcome 
reeling a Suwabu towards you sooner, that seems like a good thing. It seems like you would put more control in your hands and, and, and shorten your chases. It's really not good. It saves a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second, and it's really not that good. I'm talking about the green one, not even the... The, the 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 brown one which has an even smaller effect so yeah please do never never ever use these add-ons uh, i guess that if you use them the whole game and you put up all the time at the end maybe they save you like two seconds total in time but it's generally it's generally nothing generally nothing uh compared to reload compared to miss cooldown they are really 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 bad uh, maybe not as bad as the next two add-ons though uh the wanted poster and the jaw smasher increase your speed by 2.5 oh okay and by 1%, oh, alright, tell me about that, while you aim down your sights. Why? Why? Who thought of this? While you aim down your sights, you are very fast, and you don't need to aim down your sights for very long. It's not like Huntress, where she has to wind up very slowly, and she's very slow. You're perfectly fine, and you can even cancel it. So if you're chasing a survivor, and you aim down, and you want to, like, fake it, you can just stop, and your speed comes back to you immediately. Why would you want to be 1% faster is a question that no one other than whoever made this add-on has asked themselves. So yeah, that's not very good. And then we have the rickety chains. It's a meme add-on that makes your chains break faster when they go into obstacle. It's not coded exactly the same, but think of it like a reverse purple chains. Uh, you can actually use it to break your own chains faster with the cigar, but don't do that. Just bring reload or bring tobacco. So yeah, there, there, there might be some meme uh, potential in this, but overall it's still a meme worse than nothing. Pyramid head. Oh, my heart. Uh, this, this killer has one of the most atrocious add-ons in the game. Uh, but luckily, he's got a couple of good ones. Let's get them out of the way. Um, his best family of add-ons are the range add-ons. That is the Burning Man painting, the Dog's Wall, and the Black Strap. This killer has a power that hits in front of him, and this power reaches 8 meters. It looks like this. 8 meters. Um, with this add-on, you are adding uh, 1.5 meters on top. With this add-on, you're adding 1 meter. And with this add-on, you're adding half a meter. So basically, if you put together the yellow and the brown, it's the same effect as the green. And if you have the green and the yellow, then heck, you are reaching now, um, let's do the math, 10 and a half, uh, 10.5 meters or so. That's not too bad. Uh, good pyramid head players, they know really well how to predict certain movements, and they can use this range to hit people that are unhooking and doing other things. So having this extra range is never a bad thing. In some maps where you hit people from only up close, it might be a bit redundant, but still good effect and really opens up a lot of scary medium range hit possibilities. The next best family of add-ons is arguably the power duration add-ons. They include... Um, <laughs> yeah, they include these three, I believe. I, th I hope so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, these add-ons um, allow you to use your power for... Hold up. Yeah, um, two seconds. Uh, one and a half seconds. And half a second. Oh, no, and one second. Sorry, that's that's it. So two, one and a half, and one. Um, what is the real meaning of this, however? Uh, it's a bit complicated, okay? Because this killer is really strange. He uses his power to attack. But he doesn't need his power to attack. So if your power is at 50% and you attack, you lose it. But if it's at 1%, you can still attack. So basically, having more power means that you can drag your sword for longer and, and mess with them for longer, make them dodge for longer, and set more trails on the ground. Normally, you can set trails for 5 seconds, right? So after 5 seconds, if you've been dragging your sword, if at that moment you want to attack, you're out of juice and you run out of power. But if you have this add-on, which adds 2 seconds, now it's 7 seconds. So you have two more seconds to do something. Uh, this also has a similar bug as some of the other add-ons we've mentioned, other killers, the recovery bug. And because they add more power to the total, you if you use less, if you use the same of your, let's just just take my word for it. All right, just take my word for it. You have better recovery. If you use five seconds of your power, that's typically a hundred percent of it, right? So you need to wait a long time to get it back. But with this add-on, if you use 5 seconds, uh, that's not 100% anymore, because you have an extra 2 over here. So you technically have used, let's say, let's round it up, 75%. 
So now you only need to recover 75% of your power, which is less than 100. So these add-ons, all of them, make your power recovery, which is not super important on this killer, but whatever, it makes it better. So you can spam uh, your rights on the ground and leave trails everywhere a little bit faster. So yeah, they're okay, and they're not too bad. His best two add-on combinations might generally be these two or these two. Next up, the mannequin foot, uh, the music uh, box, and the copper ring, I think it's called. These add-ons increase the time the the trails stay on the ground by, I believe, 30... Um, either 25... <laughs> is it 25? It does it by increments, okay? I believe it's 30, 25, and 20, or 30, 20, and 10. Either way, uh, they're good add-ons. They're not too bad. You can put your trails in sensitive areas, like a middle main building, or around the basement, if you're hooking there, or in a totem, or, you know, stuff like that. And being able to make that last a little bit longer is a good thing. By default, if I remember correctly, the trails stay 70 seconds. So now with this add-on, it's 90 seconds. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, it's it's 20, 15, and 10. I remember now. Sorry, I, it was there somewhere. So yeah, that's, that's pretty good. 90 seconds, not too bad. Um, then again, some survivors just don't give a, don't give an F about trails. Uh, we then have the Metatron seal. Whenever you have multiple survivors uh, affected by torment, let's say this is tormented, this is tormented, if you cage one of them, you will see the other one's auras that are tormented, which will let you harass them and prevent them from going to the rescue. The problem is, most of your games, that's never gonna happen. Most of your games, you're, you're gonna torment one person and hook them or cage them and that's it. You're not gonna try and torment, you cannot realistically torment the whole team. That's just not how this killer works. So this add-on for an eerie is absolutely laughable. But maybe not as bad as the next few. <laughs> uh, this add-on is, I believe, the rust colored egg. It's the one that gives you blindness for 60 seconds when you step on a trail. This is absolutely garbage. It's terrible. The only thing about it that I can think is okay is that sometimes a survivor steps on a trail and then immediately, immediately goes down and then you can cage them and then they come out of a cage and they have no idea where their other teammates are. Or they go into a pa into a basement and they all step on trails and they're all, cha you know, the, the, the chaos, uh, you know, takes over. There can be a few situations where multiple survivors get tormented and giving them all a passive blindness. It can be okay. For a purple, though, absolutely laughable. <sighs> Next up is... Uh, I don't remember what these books are called. Um, I know what this, I know what this one does though. It gives you hemorrhage for as long as you have a uh, for as long as you're tormented, you have hemorrhage. If you get saved from a cage, it goes away. I believe it's not very good. It's really this was thought out before hemorrhage was even buffed. It's not amazing. Um, I guess it can help you tunnel and interrupt someone healing, but the, the, for, for this add-on to give any any kind of value at all, it, there are so many conditions, it's, it's really not very good. Uh, we then have the um, uh, Scarlet Egg, I believe, and the... Oof. Let me make sure I get this right. Mm. Yes. The Misty Days, Misty, Misty Days, no, Misty Rain Days of Judgment, either way, and the Fabric Leopard. Uh, these add-ons increase the killer instinct that you get when a survivor steps on a trail. Most of the times when they do that, they are right in front of you because you're pushing them into it. And this add-on, this, this is pathetic. This is like half a second. This is like half a second. This is like one second, which means you're going to hear the heartbeat like, once or twice more, and this for some reason is three seconds, so it's three times as good as the green. Now, I do think that the purple three seconds is a little bit okay, because every now and then a survivor will step on a trail, and being able to see which direction they keep running for the next uh, three or four or five seconds, that's not too bad. That's, I mean, for a purple, again, laughable, but whatever. Definitely a little bit better than these two, which I put at the very, very bottom of the tier list. We then have the uh, Obsidian Goblet. Uh, this goblet is it's absolutely pathetic. If you set a trail on the ground and then you stand like an absolute idiot, let me give you a pyramid head, um, 
on top of that trail, after a few seconds, it takes a while, after a few seconds, one, two, three, four, you become undetectable, your red stain disappears, and you have no terror radius. This is basically insidious, but with extra steps. You could have a trail that you draw that goes a long way and then walk on it to try to mess with survivors, but this is so many steps. Why not run Tinkerer? Why not run Monitor? Why not run Plaything? Why not run perks and uh, and effects that actually stick, that actually are good, instead of this thing? While you are drawing your own trails, the, the add-on goes on and off and it doesn't really work too well. So, yeah, stepping on it doesn't have any lingering effect. You need to stay on it and stay a few seconds for your terriers to fully go away. It is a pathetic add-on. The best thing you can do is hook in basement and camp outside with this and hope that they all go in and go for some nasty hits. Like, use it like you would in Sidious just to camp or do anything funny. But yeah, really, really bad. Uh, then we have this uh, book, which I'm so sorry. I, I have remember the name of it. I really do. Um... But I will tell you what the effect is. It makes the survivors oblivious for 15 seconds. Oblivious means that they don't hear your terror radios, and this is when they step on your trails. This used to be fairly good back when a certain perk called Borrow Time work of the terror radios. Now it doesn't. And most of the times they step on a trail, they're all going to be right next to you. This is absolutely awful. Absolutely awful. If you want to get value out of this, I mean, you could put trails around the map and run these two add-ons so that you can detect people uh, for long after trails and then be undetectable, but they know that they're oblivious. So they 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 know that you might be coming. It's a terrible, terrible add-on. And then we have the videotape, the something butterfly, and the Valtio sec photograph. These add-ons are all terrible. They make your power come back sooner. It is a recovery, recovery, and recovery add-on. Guess what? Even the best recovery add-on is worse than pretty much this or this. Remember how I told you? that these add-ons give extra recovery, well, they all give better recovery than the actual recovery add-ons. And as I mentioned, the recovery is not that important, unless you're trying to spam trails. And if you're trying to spam trails, then bring the mannequin food so they stay there longer. Uh, not even gonna bother giving breath. I'm I'm sorry if if, uh, if, if, if anyone of behavior finds this offensive, but I'm pretty sure I've put more thought into these add-ons than whoever designed them in the first place. And what they should honestly do is give some love to these add-ons because they are so, so, so bad. Moving on before I get pissed. Oh my god, now I'm angrier. Uh, the Blight. Um, a new, we have ding ding ding, a new record on how many S tier add-ons you can fit on one character. And I do believe at least two or three of these are, are warranted. Who knows, you could argue more. At least the first one for sure is an S tier. Anyway, let's talk about add-ons on the Blight. The Blight is already a very strong character, and with these few top-tier add-ons, things get even more ridiculous. His best add-on is probably the Kampong 33. This has the sad fact... Uh, that it's good for good blights, but it's also good for even potato players. This is a really, really strong add-on. It slows down survivors significantly when you bump near them, which gives the add-on away and helps to counter any speed perks they could have. And it also lets you smash into pallets and break them at an absolutely insane speed. Very, very insane. Much faster than any of the other killers with a really strong power on top. So yeah. Uh, if they play around windows or loops, you destroy them. If you if they play around pallets, you literally uh, you 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 liquefy them. It is ridiculous. Uh, next, we have the alchemist ring. The alchemist ring uh, allows you to get all of your power recharge immediately back if you hit a survivor at the end of a rush. So normally the Blight has five rushes, but he can have more and he can go further or closer depending on add-ons, but it doesn't matter. Even if you go across the entire map, even if you spend like half a minute just rushing around and stuff, if at the end of it you hit someone, after the very short fatigue, you will have your power immediately again. So yeah, it's like having, say, the best for last, but on steroids, you hit them, they make a bit of distance, but you immediately get your speed and all of your momentum again uh, going. So this add-on is disgusting. Uh, it robs survivors of the, the little chances to run away they can. It prevents them from repositioning to a stronger tile. It also makes it really easy for him to down one survivor and then immediately jump on the next one nearby trying to help. So it creates a lot of snowballing situations. It's quite quite nasty. And honestly, I don't even feel like explaining it anymore. It's such an obvious, obvious strong add-on. Next up is the Adrenaline Bile. Now, this add-on has a downside. It allows, it doesn't let you move and control your, your rushes as much. If you want to make up for this downside, the Umbra Salt and the Vile, um, and the Plague Vile, I think it's called, 
um, will will help a little bit, but you don't even have to. You don't even have to. You can generally get used to the slight tankiness of the adrenaline vial. And I've even been told by some top players that this can also be a bit of an upside because you cannot physically turn as much as you could um, without this add-on. You can actually move your camera and check what survivors are doing without necessarily altering your course. So it's almost like someone else is driving the car and you're just peeking through the window without, you know, driving off the road. So if you get used to the slight downside that this add-on has, you will find yourself more than compensated. Instead of having five rushes, you now get two extra. Uh, with seven rushes, obviously things can get really ridiculous. Uh, you also recover your rushes, I believe, like twice as fast. So very, very, very high recovery through the, through the roof recovery. And then on top of that, you're also 10% faster just in general. And 10% faster on a killer that's already 230% is absolutely insane. So all of this BS is crammed into one tiny green add-on. So yeah, uh, the extra speed is crazy. The extra, the extra rushes allow you to honestly raid into, you could probably rob a bank with this add-on and get out in a single, in a single stroke. And the extra recovery, you can pair it with this add-on, for example, and just break a pallet and then immediately be ready to go again. It's absolutely gross. A slightly more uh, restrained, but still very powerful, powerful set of add-ons are his speed add-ons, the, uh, the Blighter Crow and the Blighter Rut. These add-ons start doing nothing. When you first initiate your first rush, they do nothing. But every single rush you do afterwards, they keep adding speed and speed. For every subsequent rush, you get a plus 6% from the crow and a plus 4% from the rat. So that means that on your second, you'll be 12%. On your second, you'll be 8%. Second will be 18%. You know, 12%, yada, yada. You, I mean, you, you get the idea, right? They increasingly increase, increasingly increase, <laughs> they increasingly increase your increase of screens. Uh, they make you faster as you go and they do stack. So you can run them both together. And in fact, that is a very popular um, setup that I'm sure you've played against many times. Um, that being said, they're both good. And even the rat is really good on its own, but the crow is a popular one. The, I've seen the, the, the good blight players, they love to run crow and they'll pair it with this. They'll pair it with this. If they're insane, they'll pair it with this. It can go with that. It can go with anything, really. It, it's a really, really stupid good add-on. Uh, the increased speed on Blight doesn't really make him less unwieldy. Uh, unlike Billy, Blight doesn't have the risk of bumping into things and going into long cooldowns. Overall, the faster you are, the easier it is to play and much harder it is for survivors to outplay you. And the moment you gain a certain speed, many loops become very, very one-sided. The whole playstyle of following bump logic, uh, which is a bit of a topic on itself, uh, is also increased very, very um, directly with this. There are there are blights out there that do not try to do any fancy flicks. They simply bump like pinballs from thing to thing until they are so fast that you literally cannot do anything right. And no matter what you do, they're just going to beat you to the other side. You vault the pallet, they are already there to hit you before you can even go back. Uh, and these type of players, they relish on the chance to use these add-ons and they really squeeze value out of them. Um, a little bit harder to use, but equally lethal is the Iridescent Blight tag. Uh, as I explained earlier, uh, the Blight has five rushes. And if you hit a survivor on your last one, you use your power, now you're a four. You use it again, now you're a three. Bump into one more thing, now you're a two. Uh, one more, bang. If you hit a survivor now, that survivor is insta-downable. There is no warning, there is no downside, there is no, um, I don't know, condition. Just hit a survivor on your, on your last rush. This, on the hands of a beginner, is a double-edged blade if you go out of your way to, to try to hit this, you're going to fail. But if you put it on and you wait for the opportunity, or if you're one of those blights that is so unbelievably good uh, that you can engineer it, then this add-on is disgusting. Being able to down someone as quick as blight can should already be illegal, and doing it twice as fast is just wrong. You can also run it with crow so that your final rush is super fast and super hard to avoid, and you can do some extra bumps. You can go on a tree and do uh, just bump on it repeatedly until it's your last one to hit someone that's trying to outrun you. So yeah, very, very disgusting. And according to some Blight players, they believe this might be potential to be actually number one add-on. But, you know, maybe in the context of public matches, 
it's arguable. We then have the compound 21. This add-on, uh, upon hitting um, somewhere, will reveal survivors around you. So it's like a little radar. Whenever you hit a tree or hit a bump uh, between your rushes, if survivors are hidden, uh, hiding behind it, you will see them. And other than distortion or off-the-record hiding them, this add-on is very, very oppressive. It's a really, really good tool that makes it really hard for survivors to do anything smart. They might not realize you have it and still try to hide or do cheeky little plays, hide around corners. Maybe you might find a survivor that you didn't even know was there. And this is this just makes it so that they have far less options to try to trick you and makes your job a lot easier. It's a really, really nice add-on for beginners and intermediates. I personally like using it. We then have the Summoning Stone. Uh, this add-on has a similar effect as the Blight's own perk, um, Blood Favor. When you hit someone with your power, the nearby pallets will be blocked and you will not be able to drop them. Um, it's okay. It's all right. This would honestly, if the Blight didn't have all of these insane add-ons, honestly, this would probably be pretty amazing in comparison. But honestly, even that effect is pretty tame compared to what we just talked about. We then have the Umbra Salts and the Plague Vial. These add-ons allow the, the Blight to turn a bit more aggressively. So normally, you know, he can only turn a little bit. So say that you need to, say that you need to hit a tree, but the tree is right here. Ah, you can't hit it. You don't turn it off. But with one of these add-ons or both, your turning is actually a little bit more aggressive and you can bump where you want to bump and then follow it up with something. Um, you can use these add-ons to make up for the downside of the vial. Um, and you can use them to be a bit more creative, but most of the Blight players, they are used to different techs and, and different... Uh, bumping spots, um, even with speed, where where these add-ons are not super necessary. So they are nice, but they feel a niche that doesn't really, really need to be filled um, and can be entirely ignored. Uh, we, then we have Vigo's Shono. Uh, this add-on, again, would be really, really amazing if the other ones weren't so good. When you use your, your power, you are undetectable until the end of it. So that means that you can go across the map and you could get really, really close to a survivor before they even know you're approaching. Uh, it's not bad, really. Uh, we then have the um, Pustula and the Rose Tonic. These add-ons are a little bit funny. When you step, uh, when you bump into an obstacle before you go with the next um, attack, you actually have a little bit longer. I think it's half a second and 0 0.75 um, seconds. So basically, they give you more time to make up your mind for the second attack. Uh, more importantly than that, they alter the speed formula they, they stretch the, the, the graph of speed, which means that you keep some of your speed for a bit longer. Um, if you ever have to bump, let's say someone is going into a building, right? And the doorway is really, really tight. So you bump into the doorway and then you need to re readjust yourself ever so slightly before you can go and hit them. This add-on helps you to get there a little bit sooner. It's very subtle. But it's there, and that side effect is what makes these add-ons really worth running. The extra time, it's really not that big of a deal. We then have the Soul Chemical. It's an interesting add-on. Whenever you approach a, uh, a generator, let's say there's a gen here being done, or someone healing... Um, da, 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 why am I doing this drawings? Uh, let's pretend I didn't do that. Whenever you have someone healing or someone doing a gen and you approach them, maybe with the, with the big O journal so that you are sneaky, uh, whenever you come in contact with them, they will get a difficult skill check. It's very similar to the oppression or overcharge skill check, and it might come without a warning um, with certain perks, uh, which is really, really funny. And yeah, if they miss it, obviously they'll lose progress and you can force them to miss skill checks. This honestly is kind of fun and you can make a build around it. It will be far from the best build you can have on Blight, but it's a fun gimmicky add-on if you ever want to give it a try. We then have the Conquer Thorn and the Flux Glove. Um, it's called just Fox Love, isn't it? Uh, these add-ons reduce um, by 0 0.5... No. Yeah, 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 your exhaustion when you run out of a rush. Now, let me be super clear here. If you hit a survivor, you do not benefit from these add-ons. So they're not, like, say, the best for last. And if you attack and you miss... I'm almost 99% sure that you also don't benefit from these add-ons. So it's not like unrelenting. These add-ons only, only work if you run and then you're like, <gasps> and you do not hit a target and you do not whiff. Many times, 
this doesn't happen and you don't really need these add-ons. But if you want to have add-ons to allow you to mess up and recover a bit sooner after making mistakes, even though these add-ons are hardly, hardly noticeable and they don't come into play very often for the reasons I just mentioned, I mean, you can put them on. Unfortunately, the next few add-ons are a little bit meh. We then have the first one, which is a bit interesting, called the Shredded Notes. The Shredded Notes makes you have one fewer rush, I believe. So instead of having five, you're losing some. I think you lose one. That's not good, but it gives you very fast recovery on your four rushes. Now, the problem is, why would you want that when you can just put on the Adrenaline Vial? The Adrenaline Vial doesn't take away. In fact, it gives you stuff. And it has basically the same effect. Why would you want that when the Adrenaline Vial exists? You can run them both, and then your vials, your, your, your charges re re recharge in, like, instantly. But hey, other than some advanced memes, like maybe, for example, trying to make it easier to hit this, it's really not that worth it. Overall, I would say it's more trouble than it is worth. We then have the Monocle, the Compound 7, and the Placebo Tablet, all of which are terrible add-ons. Uh, the Monocle tries to illuminate and create a little, a little visual cue, like a little sun, on whatever, on whatever place you're about to bump into. So it's kind of like a training wheels to learn collisions, but the fun part is it's not particularly uh, intuitive, and it gets in your screen really, really close and bright. And it's more of a distraction than anything else. Try it on as a beginner. After that, you'll probably take it off. The compound seven makes it so that if you bump into an obstacle, let's say that you bump into a tree and there's a survivor here, you bump into the tree, the game will automatically turn your camera towards the near survivor that is close to you. Now, this doesn't have any magical properties. If a survivor is in, if a survivor is really far away, it doesn't detect it. If a survivor is in a locker, it doesn't automatically turn into the locker. It only locks you into survivors that honestly, you are out of the seeing and you are perfectly capable of hitting yourself. This add-on is meant to help beginners steer themselves, but honestly, it's going to mess with you far more. Sometimes there's a survivor uh, next to you and your idea is not to go for them is to go for someone else or it's to go for a different area to to hit them elsewhere you know and 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 the camera automatically locking onto them is just awful 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 but definitely not as awful as the placebo tablet the placebo tablet makes you slower it reduces your speed meow, 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 meow. makes your speed go down it's like a the adrenaline bio but in reverse and oh my god, it is super noticeable. It is noticeable. If you ever want to feel weak as a blight, it's almost impossible. Run this add-on and nothing else and just go around the map and, and it feels like you're almost just moving normally. It feels awful. Um, some people have speculated that you could run this add-on to try to have more control over your, your rushes, maybe with the Umbra Assaults, to control yourself better, steal yourself better. And it's a fun idea, but it's awful. Because you don't go very far, your options to bump into things are much more limited. Overall, it's a horrible add-on. Please don't run it. We now have the Twins, who are pretty high up there with the amount of E-tiers they have. I think they are second. Uh, their best add-on is possibly the Forest Stew. The Forest Stew takes Victor, which moves... Uh, 150%, which is 6 meters per second. And the Madeleine Scarf. This add-ons at 0 0.6, I believe, meters per second. So 15% speed. And 0 0.3. So they each make Victor very, very... Who's already very fast. They make him even faster. Um... This is good. It helps at everything. It helps for Victor to go around patrolling. It helps Victor to catch up uh, after downing one survivor before the next one can make it far. Uh, it makes it so that the first person that you chase cannot go too far, which is also really, really good. Keep in mind that when you are Charlotte and you send out Victor, if the survivor that you down or the survivor that you injured is 10 meters away from you, that's pretty good. You go and pick them up. But if they're 50 meters away from you, it's going to take you so much longer to go there and pick them up. By the time you get there, God knows what will happen. So being able to reduce the distance the survivors can run away from you and being able to go around the map faster and being able to set yourself up for attacks faster, it's just so, so good. And the purple one in particular is a very, very strong add-on. 
No need to explain much more after that. We then have the Sailing Sink Cloth. This add-on triggers every single time you go back to Charlotte from Victor. They hit you or you teleport back or whatever. She becomes undetectable for a very significant amount of time. And this against a team that has perfect communication is obviously not going to be all that insane, but it enables a lot of dirty plays. You can down, you can hit a survivor and then go for their teammate, then get everybody injured. Getting free injuries with lot is just so crucial because those injuries will then turn into downs with Victor later as soon as you recover him. So the ability to make lot a little bit better is just super, super, super good. Um, the person that you hit with Victor is obviously not affected by this too much because they're oblivious by default, but if they do get rid of Victor immediately, then not having a terror radius and being able to hound them and chase them down is a really, really good idea. So yeah, Silence and Cloth is pretty amazing. Uh, a really, really beloved add-on for Twins and Joyer is the Toy Sword. It doesn't do a whole lot. It only makes your attack with Victor come out 2 point, uh, 0 0.2 seconds sooner. I'm telling you, I generally cannot stand the twins without this add-on sometimes. This, those 0 0.2 seconds are really critical because even though Victor moves very fast, he also, he, he also pretty much paralyzes himself when he is attacking. Uh, when he's readying an attack, he pretty much slows down to a crawl. And what ends up happening is that if a survivor keeps running around a rock, if they keep going around a rock, you will now not see them. If you try to hit them around a rock, you're going to hit the rock hitbox. With this add-on, you can actually do quick attacks and react to what they do much faster, and you're not afraid that that 0.2 seconds is going to give them enough time to go around the corner. So it makes, it's a massive insurance. It's, it really helps a lot to get the hits with Victor that you really, really need, because guess what? The difference between hitting Victor and not hitting Victor is huge. If they kick you and, and you are now have to start over again, it sends you back so, so much. So yeah, it's quite powerful. Uh, we then have the spinning top. It's a very simple add-on. Whenever you hit someone with Victor, their item falls off. Psh. It doesn't make the item disappear. It doesn't set it aflay ablaze or anything, but losing their item is a good thing. If they have a medkit, they can't heal immediately. If they have a toolbox, they'll have to waste a little bit of time get getting it back, which kind of defeats the whole point of a toolbox. Um, if they have a flashlight or whatever, they'll also probably go and waste a little bit of time. It's nice. Not as important now as it used to be since medkits since med used to be so much stronger but still very good. Um, we then have the iridescent, um, what is this called? Pendant? I think it's iridescent pendant. Yeah. Uh, this add-on makes it so that anytime get Victor gets kicked, wait, uh, he needs to be kicked while idle, not, uh, yeah, it, it, it won't work if he's kicked um, normally when you miss a pound. But if idle, if, if the AFK Victor gets kicked, the person kicking it becomes exposed for a significant amount of time. I believe it's 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm not sure if they buffed it. Anyway, that's pretty good. That's really, really good. There are a lot of situations where survivors feel really bold for whatever reason, and they'll kick Victor next to you, and then they will be slapped with the insta down, and having a person on the ground is huge, huge for these two killers. So, it's not too bad. You could pair it with the statue figure in, so that you can see the aura of the person that kicks it, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, there's a few options, but just, just this on its own, it's really not too bad. It also goes really well, obviously, with the um, with the silencing cloth. You can do the fission victor strategy, where you put victor in front of baseman, and when someone kicks it, then you you're, you reveal that you are right there, and you come out and you hit them. You know, there's some dirty strategies you can do with this. Uh, we then have two add-ons that are almost identical, the toenail and the black hood. These add-ons save you five, uh, sorry, 0 0.5 seconds when sending Victor and 0 0.5 seconds when returning from Victor to Charlotte. So this is for Victor, this is for Charlotte. Which one's better? Probably the nail, because sometimes the most, time the most time sensitive moment is when you're trying to get that first hit on the survivor. So it's pretty good. It's nothing unbelievably strong or OP. Like, they still take a while to do both of these actions, especially the Charlotte one, but they're not bad. They're not bad for the rarity. We then have the Stale Biscuit. The Stale Biscuit makes the cooldown of Victor uh, 0 0.4 seconds shorter, which means that sometimes if a survivor uh, tries to kick you after you down someone or after you miss, 
they have a little bit less time and that might throw them off. This add-on doesn't come into play a lot, but when it does, it can make a huge difference. Say a survivor is injured and you down their teammate and they're coming to kick you, and because of this add-on, instead of kicking you, you actually down them. That is a massive, massive difference. Getting an extra injury or an extra or an extra down for one add-on, that's pretty unbelievable. So whenever that does happen, you will be very, very happy and you will thank the heavens that you brought this add-on. Overall, though, hardly the most incredible add-on. 0.4 seconds out of a cooldown that is like, what, 6 seconds? Yeah. Still pretty bad. Um, we then have the glove and the spoiled milk. When Victor is being carried... Um, oh, sorry, I don't know why I drew an 8. When Victor is being uh, attached to a, a little survivor... This is Victor. I'm mad. They have a terror... Uh, like a shrieking radius around him. Um, which I believe is 20 meters by default. I believe. Where other survivors that come into contact will be revealed and you'll hear the heartbeat. With this add-ons, you increase this by 2 meters on the brown, and by 4 meters on the yellow. The yellow is the real good one, but you can run them both, and then you have a massive radius. What I've noticed with these add-ons is that if you if you have one survivor holding Victor hostage, you can basically use that survivor as a radar for the rest. It's quite fun, and overall, it's not too bad. Apologies. Uh, we then have the cat eye. This add-on is really gimmicky, and during normal play, nothing really comes from it, but it's really, really funny. Uh, whenever you have Victor with a fully charged attack, he becomes completely silent. So what you can do with this add-on, if you know that a certain survivor is on a gen 100%, thanks to perks or whatever, instead of going there and watching them run away, you can actually get a little bit close, begin to... Begin to um, to use your power and then sneak around kind of like a ghost face and then do a surprise pounce attack. And that is very effective. No one expects it. And occasionally it can lead to really, really fun um, ambush attacks with Victor. Keep in mind that if Victor is in a high place, he can jump really far away. So it's kind of fun. We then have the bottle perfume. It's a really stupid, uh, very, very silly add-on that is very situational. But anytime a survivor is within the radius of Victor, they become oblivious. Um, so what you can do with this add-on mostly is play in an indoor map. Let's say that you have uh, an indoor map, right? This is this is two floors. Let's say a survivor is hooked down here, and somehow you have Victor up here, and you are playing a Charlotte down here. Anyone within this radius, which is going to be really big, becomes oblivious, even across floors, which means that you can go around even without this uh, stealth add-on and still catch people off guard and mess with them quite a bit. That little bit of using Victor as a as a UAB jammer of sorts is an interesting idea, but ultimately for a purple, it is very gimmicky and you'd be better off with just the very simple sounds and cloth. Uh, the uh, the soldier toy uh, highlights the aura of a survivor that kicks Victor when idle. And that can be okay with the pendant to insulate on them. Unless they have an add-on or a perk, sorry, to reduce, to, to hide their aura. This is not that big of a deal. It's pretty meh for a purple. This should be a brown, and even then. And now we go to add-ons that all have real big problems. Um, the first one. Oh, dear lord. Um, the first one, the weighty rattle. The weighty rattle makes it so that if a survivor removes Victor, they are broken for 20 seconds. This is good. If it's the end of the game and they're about to get adrenaline, they don't get it. If it's if they have a medkit and they want to use it quickly, they can't. Uh, but there's only one problem. Many times, survivors don't remove Victor. Many times, it's you that removes them. It, it, many times, survivors hold Victor hostage and then you press left control to recall him. And when you recall him, this add-on doesn't do anything. And the next add-on, which is hemorrhage, wouldn't be too bad. It's the same thing. It applies hemorrhage whenever they remove Victor. Guess what? They don't remove Victor, so it also doesn't work too often. <sighs> and then we have another add-on, the bucket, that makes it so it takes longer to remove Victor. But guess what? Many survivors don't remove Victor. In fact, you kind of want them to remove Victor in chase so that they slow themselves down. They don't do it. They let you down them or they just keep running with him. So it's not very good. Maybe in a situation in the exegates where survivors trying to remove Victor to escape, you can use this, because if they have Victor, they can't leave, so that's kind of cool. But for the most part, the sewer sludge is really, really bad. And then we have the baby shoes, which inflict blindness uh, with the same condition as before, if I remember correctly. 
Uh, it's only like very few seconds of blindness. It's not even like a minute or anything. Really, really, baby teeth are really, really weak. Then we have the Candelabrum. This is an add-on that increases the time it takes to kick Vector by 2.0 se uh, 0.2 seconds. Only when idle. It is an absolute disgrace of an add-on. It's a really bad add-on. Like, yeah, if you're hooking someone and you and you need to walk out and teleport to Victor before someone kicks him, that seems like a good idea, but it's only 0.2. It's it's honestly it's one of those items that does almost nothing. Uh, the cat figurine is an interesting one. It's a learning uh, tool for twins. Whenever you prepare your attack with Victor, it kind of shows you a little beam, a little light, if you will, um, that highlights, that looks oddly phallic, that highlights the place where you're going to land. But it's really unnecessary. It's very easy to figure it out with a bit of practice. In fact, if you run into an obstacle, the light is going to be right in front of your screen and it's going to be very distracting. So over time, you should really grow out of using it and it's going to be more harm than it is good. Next up, we have the Trickster. I'm going to take a one minute break. <sighs> so about Trickster add-ons, what is arguably his best add-on, especially at a high level? the Death Throws compilation. Uh, keep in mind, the um, Trickster has 44 knives by default, and most people that aren't incredibly good at him are going to have to reload every other down. You're going to find yourself reloading very, very often. However, after every 30 successful knives, let's write it down as well, after every 30 proper hits with a knife, you get main event. This means that... Uh, you can throw a flurry of knives, and with the Death Throws compilation, you get a full automatic reload. Now, this is super, super important for two reasons. Number one, you get a reload. Number two, you save the time that you would have had to get there. So you can continue to be in chase or move on to the next one without potentially having to waste a lot of time, especially in some of the not so good maps for Trickster, finding a locker somewhere and wasting all the time. Now... Obviously, with 44 knives, it becomes very difficult to land 30. This is a really high accuracy. This is like, what, 70% accuracy? This is really, really high. So this add-on on its own really doesn't hold up too well. It's only nice sometimes. The real strength of this add-on is when you pair it with the Bloody Boa or the Trick Pouch. These add-ons increase the amount of knives. Uh, with the Bloody Boa, you're going to have more than 50 knives. So now, if you have 50 knives plus, it's a bit more, hitting 30 is actually not too bad because it's like 70%. Um, um, you don't, like, you don't, you have about 20 add-ons to, to uh, 20 uh, knives that you can miss and still get to 30. So a really powerful combination on Trickster that almost nothing else can match is the Death Rose compilation and the Boa. And if you keep your accuracy a little bit above 50%, about 60%, then you can essentially never have to reload. And as far as I understand, the top Trickster player that I know thinks that this is the strongest combination, and I can see why. Never having to reload is a really, really powerful thing on a killer that is very hindered by his speed and his lack of pressure on the map. So this is what makes the Death Rose compilation really, really strong. Arguably even stronger in public matches is the Udesan photo card. This add-on makes it so that survivors that are hit by four or five knives can become insta-downable, even when healthy. If you hit them with six, that damages them, so now they're injured, and if you hit them with three, that's not good enough. It needs to be four or five. This is a really, really nasty add-on. It is similar to the pinky finger on Clown, where if a survivor has to do something in front of you, open a gate, do a rescue, finish a totem, anywhere where they ca that you catch them a little bit off guard, they won't just take one damage, they'll take two, uh, they'll take the, the whole insta down. This obviously only takes four or five knives, which means that after getting one down, you might still have about 40 knives left, which is amazing. It also saves you a lot of trouble. Against the top tier survivors that are going to be super careful and, and run really, really tight, you're 110 killers, so you're not going to have an easy time hitting, um, hitting an M1, and they're going to make this really, really painful. But against the average and God forbid below average survivors, or if they make enough mistakes, this add-on will punish it very ravenously. That's why I believe it's one of his best.
Getting into the add-ons that are not quite as impactful, but still really, really good. We have the Fist Spin Soda and the G1 Autograph. So another thing that you need to about, that you need to know about Trickster is that the more knives that he has thrown, the faster he begins to throw them. So he becomes faster the more knives he has thrown. Um, once you have hit uh, eight knives or just miss eight knives, you're throwing knives uh, like 33% faster. This add-ons accelerate the rate at which you do that. So with this add-on, your second knife is out, like your first knife is out of the as fast. I, I don't know how to say this, but I don't know how to put this. It, it, it wouldn't make any sense. Your first knife will be just as fast as usual. But basically, you will have one knife extra of speed, and this will give you two knives extra of speed. In other words, when you throw, when you begin to throw knives, with the, with the green add-on, it's like you've already thrown two and you're already accelerated more. And with the yellow, it's like you've already thrown one and you're already accelerated more. And you could combine them. These add-ons essentially make you a bit more machine gun-like. And believe it or not, this is actually really, really good and goes very, very well with uh, many other add-ons. It does make you miss a bit more and waste a bit more add-ons, which could be a, sm a small downside if you're not careful. But anytime a survivor is vaulting a window or doing anything uh, that puts them in front of you for a split second, you will be able to get an extra knife or two during that time, which could result in a down. How many times have you thrown knives at survivors and then there's, they need one more knife and they end up getting away. With this add-on, there's very like it's very likely that that would have happened already. You would have already hit them during the animation. So they're pretty, pretty good. And the fist spin soda in particular. The cuff link is also an incredible add-on. Anytime a survivor is one knife away from being downed, aka five knives, they are highlighted. And this highlight doesn't go away, they take damage. So what ends up happening, right, is that sometimes you hit five knives on a survivor and they go behind cover. And because you can see their aura, you can actually make a really, really smart uh, play and know exactly where to go and prepare a knife and toss it right at them. And even if you hit them with six knives and you injure them, that's really, really good. It's the same as uh, the Hag's uh, aura add-ons because it allows you to hit them and then watch them carefully and see where they go, even if they lose themselves around a corner. So the auto reading from this add-on is really, really useful to keep track of them and sometimes do that one last knife. It even particularly combos with the next, um, the next add-on, the Trick Blades. The Trick Blades, in my opinion, were a very mediocre add-on that was very overrated, and I didn't see any value in this until I was... Um, until I was shown the, the way. Uh, this add-on makes it so that your knives will bounce up to two times. That means that if there is a wall and you throw a knife there, it will bounce once, it will bounce twice, and then it will hit its target. This is actually pretty nutty. Um, believe it or not, um, this add-on can be really, really powerful in places that the trickster typically struggles. You need to make sure that you're not too stupid and you don't try to make use of it all the time. There are a lot of maps that have very rough structures, very rough terrain, very uneven walls. And obviously, if you throw a knife there, the, the, where exactly it will bounce, it's absolutely uh, luck base and there's no rhyme or reason but most of the places where trickster struggles are main buildings shacks buildings and 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 indoors that are relatively predictable and this add-on is really really good in these uh, for example if you ever find yourself in the shack and let's say that a survivor uh, this is the window right here let's say that a survivor drops the pallet and then they hide on this little corner because they have a lot of knives, you were throwing knives from out here, right? This is normally a bad situation for a trickster, because what's going to end up happening is that you're going to have to rotate all the way around or all the way around to try to find an angle, and they might just be able to hide behind some obstacle that often spawns in Shaq. But with Trick Blades, you can actually bounce them off and get that final knife on. It, this also happens very frequently with pallets. Let's say that there's a loop. This is a small part. This is maybe the larger part. And we have a pallet right here. A survivor will often try to go around here. And even if you don't have an angle, you can sometimes throw a knife that will bounce right off. The knife will bounce off and hit them around the corner. So this is an amazing add-on to have when a survivor 
that is getting away from you finds a little bit of safety, you can actually kind of snipe them around them a bit like Revolver Ocelot. It would still probably be better to run this add-on to make sure that you don't have the first the, the problem that they are one knife away in the first place, but it's still a really, really good add-on that can really come in clutch in situations like that. We then have the two add-ons that increase the, um, the carry capacity of Trickster. Uh, normally, as I explained earlier, it is 44 knives. With the Bloody Boa, you add plus 8, which is pretty nice. It's like 20% or so. And with the Trick Pouch, you get a very modest plus 4. So you could run them both for 12 extra knives. The, the Trick Pouch is not that incredible, although it's nice for a brown. The Bloody Boa, however, as we explained earlier, it's super important to keep the strategy of never having to reload. Even if you don't have the other add-on, you will probably have to reload one or two times less per game. And it will allow you to go on chases, confident that you can get it down without having to reload every now and then as often as before. So the extra eight knives, absolutely crucial, especially if you're very, very accurate with them. You can get a lot of mileage out of them. Uh, we already explained that the autograph is for the speed of throws. And then we have the two add-ons that increase the movement speed of Trickster when he's holding knives. The hard cage shoes and the killing cords. Uh, this is a 1% increase and this is a 2.5% increase. Now, if you watch the, the Death Slinger before, you probably remember that I scoffed at the idea of 1 and 2.5%. The Death Slinger has add-ons that basically do the same. But on this killer, these add-ons are actually quite nice. You will very often have to bring your knives up, throw a knife or two, put them down, bring your knives up, throw a knife or two, and repeat and repeat and repeat. If survivors run you around shack or several obstacles that are very long for a killer that moves as slowly as Trickster, it can become really, really painful. And many times you'll feel like you're getting absolutely no distance. And putting up your knives to throw one becomes sometimes not so worth it. The cords have a somewhat neglig negligible effect. It's not that big, but especially the shoes are very, very noticeable. With these add-ons, you can throw knives every now and then, and the fear of throwing a knife or two and slowing yourself down is much diminished, and it does make uh, a, a quite a significant difference. It allows you to get that one extra knife around corners as well. In that sense, it has a similar effect as the fist spin and the autograph. Now, I have also heard that these add-ons can actually in, in, engender a bit of a bit of a play style that is not ideal. You do not want to have your knives out constantly as Trickster. Even with this add-on, you will still slow yourself down a bit. So it's not something you want to go with your hunt with your with your hatch, uh, with your hatchet up like hunters all the time. It's not a good thing. So definitely do not hold knives the whole time. But for the time where you are throwing them, you will you you will feel the difference on this add-on. Then we have the cut through you single. The cut through you single makes your add-ons be able to penetrate survivors. That means if you have a survivor right here. And another one, damn, that's beautiful. Behind them, your knife will hit both of them. And this is quite useful. Um, there's not a lot of situations where survivors will willingly take hits for each other, not against this killer. Um, and there's not a lot of situations where you're going to massively sneak up on multiple survivors to take advantage of this. But the occasional moment where they do somehow... Um, try to body block or you, or they are both coming out of basement or they are rescuing or they're finishing a heal. Being able to x-ray and damage multiple survivors for one single knife is good economy and can really, really shred through health states. Survivors often don't quite expect it either until they get really, really hurt by this. So overall, um, the add-on can have its moment, but it could also be a very situational type of add-on that never comes into play. On the other hand, the Edge of Revival is a bit more usable, but the effect is a bit less uh, pronounced. Uh, the Edge of Revival basically makes each knife have an AOE effect. So if you hit a survivor with a knife, it will be the same as before. But if you hit the space next to them, it will actually have a bit of splash damage. It will be like the knife explodes. Um, again, in situations where a survivor, for example, uh, drops, let's say they drop a pallet, right? They drop a pallet and they're hiding behind a rock. And you cannot, you just cannot seem, um, hold up, I really take my art seriously. You cannot seem to get them, right? You can throw a knife next to them and make it explode right here. 
and that can do the last bit of damage. I've seen some really insane clips of this add-on um, contributing towards a down that would have otherwise been very difficult. So survivors will have a hard time finding safety behind little gaps, and this can throw them um, way, way off. Also, if you aim at the ground and you miss a knife, this will turn a miss knife into a partial damage 50% knife. So that's all right. The problem is the damage that you do with the Edge of the Rebel does not take itself into account for the main event. So if you damage survivors like this, you will not be building up main event, and that is a bit regrettable. And at the end of the day, I also don't feel like in your average match, you will use this a lot of times. Now we go for add-ons that increase the main event. And there are... Uh, there are... Um, four of them. Uh, first one, the Tequila Moonrock and the uh, Inferno Wires. Tequila Moonrock, if I remember correctly, adds... I could really, really check this whole lot before I mislead you. Um, I have a list of add-ons right here. It's 5 seconds. Yeah, it's 50% fi it's but it's 10 seconds, so it's 5 seconds. So this is 5 seconds and this is 2.5 seconds. So basically, this will make main event last an extra 5 seconds, and this will make it last an extra uh, two and a half. These two add-ons, on the other hand, have a similar effect, but it's a bit different. This one extends it by 0. Point, I'm gonna check. Yeah, they, they buffed it. It used to be 0. 0.2, now it's 0. 0.3, and this is 0. 0.4. Um, if you do the math, um, you'll see that this is very stable. And this seems very small, but this is zero point per knife hit. And this is zero uh, three per knife hit. And you throw knives every 0 0.2 seconds. Oh, uh, no. Um, yeah, actually, I think so. It's every 0 0.2 or every 0 0.3. So basically, with these add-ons, if you keep throwing knives and you keep hitting your target, you are almost guaranteed to never... You, you, you will have an, an infinite um, um, main event until you stop hitting your knife. So it will be very, very long. And especially with the, with the green watch, it can go on for a very long time. If you hit 10 knives, that's an extra 4 seconds, right? So that's pretty good. And you can easily hit 10 knives if there's a crowd of people. Um, and with the other one, it's a smaller effect, but still pretty noticeable. So as you can imagine... Um, they are a little bit better, maybe, than the brown one sometimes, but sometimes the problem is that you use your, your main event and you need to wait until the very end to get the knives, to, to, to do some kind of, like, you know, uh, zoning or whatever. So these add-ons, in my opinion, are a little bit harder to use. These ones are a little bit simpler. And overall, if I had to pick one, I would pick the, the Tequila Moonrock uh, straight up. Um, it's just five extra seconds. If you need them, great. If you don't need them, you can cancel it, so you're not even locked in the animation. Five extra seconds on main event, um, I don't think it's super, super game-changing most of the time, but every now and then it will make a difference and will result in an extra injury or an extra down. Um, so, yeah, these four are overall not too bad. We then have the Melodious Murder. It increases the speed at which you, rel you reload from lockers. Um... Hardly the most incredible thing ever. It's very, very subtle, but, you know, you'd be better off with this, uh, needless to say. But it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's a cute add-on. for. It could honestly be a brown. And then we have the, um, the Brace Ripper and the... Um, what is it called? Um, the something single. Yes. Um, these add-ons uh, take the time that it takes for the knives to begin to go away and increase it by two seconds and three seconds. So they're very, very similar. Normally, if you hit a survivor and you have to reload or they make a big getaway, you need to hurry up and hit them again with knives because if you don't, uh, the knives will go away. They will, they will begin to deplete. It's like a stock that just depletes over time. If you really, 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 really need that down, sometimes you will continue to chase a survivor. And if you are a little bit unlucky, you will see that the that the blades begin to go. If I'm playing well, this doesn't happen often. But in my average trickster match, this will happen at least one time, right? Where a survivor makes a getaway. If you have one or two of these add-ons together, the extra three or two or five seconds will mean that you have more time to catch up before the blades are lost. So these add-ons are okay, but hardly, hardly, hardly worth the rarity. 
And then in last place, we have the Memento Blades, which are a meme add-on. It makes it so that you take one more knife to injure survivors, which is obviously awful. It's just a meme add-on for extra blood points. Try it if you want a challenge, or stay away from it otherwise. Next up, we have Nemesis, and I'm going to tell you already, uh, up there with Wraith, this is probably one of the hardest, one of the absolute hardest killers to rank in terms of, uh, of add-ons. These, these killers' add-ons are all absolutely uh, unpredictable, all have very differing values. Some of them can do clutch things, some of them can do very little, some of them do things that are useful but only sometimes it is very very difficult and i've spent probably more time on this killer than almost anyone else trying to figure it out so if anything i say seems a little bit weird just understand that i'm doing my best to try to find an average but it's very very difficult uh, possibly the best add-on surprisingly on nemesis is the serotonin injector this add-on gives you something that, while not incredible, is fairly consistent and typically leads to good things. Anytime you kill a zombie, or they kill a zombie, but typically it's you, uh, either with your fist or with your tentacle, typically with your tentacle, uh, so that you can tear up, you become undetectable for 15 seconds. That means that Wiretab, Kindred, all these things will not detect you, and you will be able to sneak up the survivors doing stuff. Maybe uh, trying to find a vaccine, or doing a gen, or what have you. Now. Um, I'm sure you're all aware that Nemesis is extremely tall and he's also very loud. He makes these big stomping noises. Being undetectable with Nemesis doesn't mean that you're going to go and grab a survivor out of a gen. That's almost never going to happen. But if you get close enough to get a guaranteed hit or catch them a bit off guard enough to the so that you can get to tier 2 with a tentacle, if it's just just the just the fact that you might get close enough and then get a, a, a single hit into potentially a follow-up hit, being able to catch them off guard with Nemesis like that, even slightly, is already a very, very good thing. Killing your zombies is honestly not even worth it sometimes, and with this add-on, you now do make it worth it, and you do, uh, it, um, you do grease the wheels of your strategy, if you will. You kind of um, make, make your time in between chases, a little bit better. You hook a survivor, you kill a zombie, tear up maybe, and now catch the next one a bit off guard. It is honestly a really, really decent add-on, and I, I feel like you, you can almost never go wrong with it. Anytime I bring it, I feel like it does something a bit more consistent than others. We then have Marvin's Blood. Funnily enough, this add-on is bugged, and instead of fixing the bug, the developers have just updated the description to reflect the bug, so I'm just gonna let you know right now. Normally, when you hit a survivor with your tentacle, you will get three points of uh, infection. You need six, by the way. Um, when you hit them again, you will get one point of infection because they're already infected. So keep this in mind. We need six to get into tier two, and then more than that, 15 to get to tier three. So right now, if I hit a survivor, I'm at four. Let's hit him again. Okay, I'm at five. So, I mean, I can't even hit him again. So now I'm going to go hit a zombie, which is also one point. So now I have six points of infection. That's default. That's really, really slow. With this add-on, your first hit will give you 3.75. So an extra... Um, oh, what would you say? <laughs> an extra 25%, right? And then when you hit them again, instead of getting 125, you'll get 175 too. So that's a bit weird. That should be 125, but regardless. So when you get another one, it will be also 175. So basically every single time you're hitting a, a, a survivor, you're getting three point, you're getting 075 infection on top, which is almost as much as killing one whole zombie. That by the end of the game adds up. If you hit a survivor three times, that's enough to get to tier two, which mix, makes you it removes one of your weaknesses. One of your weaknesses as a nemesis if the, is that if survivors split up, you are kind of screwed because if you if you go for one of them, you'll never hit stage two. But with this add-on, you can hit stage two thanks to the increased infection that you get from them. It also really helps you to reach infection three in the mid game a little bit sooner. So because this add-on is quite consistent at what it does, I do think it's one of his best. Unfortunately, even this add-on is not that amazing. Sometimes if you hit two or three survivors that were not infected, you're going to get to tier three super fast anyway. So 
is not that amazing. When you get to tier 3, you do get an extra uh, meter of range and some other benefits. So it's nice to get there fast, but it's hardly the most game-changing ever. Uh, the Broken Recovery Coin is a nice add-on. Uh, it makes it so that instead of having four boxes that spawn in the map that they can use to remove infection, now they only get three. That's it. Uh, this means that if you infect four people, one of them is already going to be permanently infected. I don't know who, uh, it will depend on them, but one of them will be permanently infected. Because there's only three boxes, that means that it's less likely that survivors will have one box next to them, which means they might have, on average, to waste a little bit more time going to a box and having to remove it. So, it's not too bad. Uh, Jill Sandwich is a really, really strange add-on. Whenever a survivor picks up a vaccine, Whenever they pick it up, not when they use it, when they pick it up, you see their aura for a very long, I believe, 12 second uh, um, timer. This stacks with Lethal Pursuer. So if you keep a, if you keep a really, really close attention to, um, to the map and you're constantly scanning the horizon, you can sometimes see when someone is about to use a vaccine and you compare it with the serotonin injector to go and mess with them. You compare it with the umbrella badge to go and insta on them. Or you can just keep an eye on them to try to prevent them from using the vaccine, especially if you have the syringe, which will make them take longer. So there's a few things you can do from this. Uh, however, if they have off the record or distortion, which are fairly common, mm, yeah, you're not going to really see them. So that's a bit unfortunate. Um, now, the Iridescent Umbrella Badge. This is a weird add-on. It's another one of those strange instant on add-ons. Whenever a survivor uses one of the vaccines, uh, that survivor that, uses, that receives the vaccine will be exposed for 60 seconds. Uh, obviously, survivors don't use vaccines in chase, so this is not going to be incredible. And sometimes they might already be injured, so what's the point, right? This isn't amazing, but every now and then, a situation will come where a survivor uses it, and you're right next to them, and you insta on them. Especially if you have things like monitor or plaything where they're not sure how close you are, this could put them in a bad spot. You hear a heartbeat, you know they're there, you go, you insta on them. They drop a pallet, you break it quickly, you insta on them. It can be okay. It can also create situations where no one can go for a rescue. Let's say that you have one survivor in the basement, and out of the three remaining survivors, uh, two of them are injured, and the other one, stupid as he is, uses a vaccine and now he's instantable for 60 seconds. So that means that if you want to camp basement, unless the other two get a heal quickly, no one's going to be able to go through you. So this add-on can also create situations like that. Um, but it's very, very situational since we're using that word. Really not that great. Now we have the broken syringe and the plant 43 binds. These add-ons do similar things, okay? And funnily enough, the brown one is better. When a survivor tries to use a vaccine, they take five seconds longer to use the vaccine. Uh, I think by default, it's uh, two seconds. So I think total, seven seconds. Uh, but this adds a plus five. Also, the act of opening a chest takes um, another four seconds longer. By default, it's four seconds. So this adds four seconds on top. In total, if you run these two add-ons together, which I really like to do, by the way, you add nine seconds to the whole thing. That means that a survivor going out of his way, opening a chest, putting it on themselves, wastes nine extra seconds. This it really, really depends how good it is. If you spend five hours trying to hit one guy with a tentacle, this isn't worth it. But if you're decent at Nemi and you find a group of survivors and you quickly go tap, 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 or if they or if they run into a zombie and then they do this in the background, this nine seconds, you know, they're going to happen up to four times. So that will be 18 seconds if they do it twice, 27 if they do it three times. That's quite a bit of time. It's nothing like pig, but I mean, it's nice for two add-ons and for a brown add-on. I reckon this is okay. So really nothing too bad. Nothing too bad at all. It also obviously makes it almost impossible for a survivor to be a, a bit cheeky and use a vaccine in chase, which otherwise would be very, very doable. Uh, with this add-on, it's basically guaranteed that they will never be able to do it mid-chase because it takes now seven seconds. Now we talk about the add-ons that increase the speed of zombies, and there are three of them. The depleted ink ribbon, Mikhail's eye, and Brian's intestines. 
Uh, this is 25% faster. This is 33% faster, if I remember correctly. And this is 50% faster. Uh, zombies are very slow. They are basically as slow as Suave walking. They are pathetic. They are awful. They take a long time to go around the map finding people. And even if they are chasing someone, the pressure they exert on them is really, really bad. With these add-ons, guess what? They're still terrible, but they're a little bit less terrible. They go around the map faster, so they're more likely to bump into zombies, uh, into survivors, sorry. Uh, if they are chasing a survivor, they're a bit more likely to catch them before they can do something. If they're finding, if they're harassing them on a gen, they're going to be a bit nastier. The speed is honestly nice. It's really not too bad. But these add-ons have um, uh, an extra effect. The, the, the depleted ink ribbon also makes uh, zombies spawn um, a little bit faster. I think five seconds faster. So, hey, that's nice. And in the end game, if you kill a zombie or they kill a zombie, the zombies will respawn at the exit gates. So, yeah. Is that good? No, it's terrible. They are super predictable. Only a survivor that's only played three times in their whole life would fall for it. They don't even catch survivors that well. Even if you run into them, they're probably you're probably going to miss you. Sometimes they even look away. It's not that great. It's really not amazing. But hey, it's a fun gimmick. We also have a fourth add-on that increases the speed called the Shattered Stars Badge. Now, this is an insane add-on. This increases the speed by 150%, which is wild. But only for 60 seconds... Hey, I'm drawing on top of me. <laughs> I have a mustache. Only for 60 seconds after they clean, uh, after they do a gen. Um, not as nice as the consistent 50%, but a little bit better maybe than the other two. So these add-ons are alright. The extra speed sometimes messes with survivors and makes the zombies find people a bit more frequently. But it's really hard to gauge how good it actually is. And let me just tell you right now, many times survivors will blind zombies with with flashes, they will just kill the zombies with a pallet, or the zombies will just get stuck in the middle of nowhere, and in all of these situations, none of these add-ons are worth anything, so watch out. We already explained part 43 binds, and now we have the T-Virus sample, the Tyrant Gore, and the Zombie Heart. These add-ons all make it so that killing your own zombie gives more points, okay? Killing a zombie normally gives one point. With this add-on, it gives now two points. With these two add-ons, both of them, you get 1.75 points of infection. So, yeah. Uh, why is one of them better than the other? Because this one also reduces the spawn time for zombies if they are murdered. Let me tell you right now, these two add-ons aren't that hot. Um, if you try to run a few simulations in your head, you'll find that for the most part, it, they don't make a huge difference. I'll give you an, a, a situation where they're actually kind of good. Let's say you hit a survivor, that's three points, but then the survivor, I don't know, you lose them, they're, they're gone, and then you can't hit them again. Um, after that, uh, you find a zombie and you hit it. That would be one point, and then you find another zombie and you hit it. That's another two point. Ah, damn it! You only get five, five out of six. That's not too good. Dang it! But in this situation, if you had either of these three add-ons, this would already be six, because now it would be like three, two, two, or three, one seventy-five, one seventy-five. So these add-ons allow you to hit stage two and sometimes tier three of your mutation a little bit sooner. And honestly, it's not even a bad idea to run the T-Virus sample and this, and then killing zombies is a bit of like a part-time job. It's like a little side quest that actually pays off quite a bit. It's not too bad. Then again, sometimes, sometimes you find two survivors, you hit one, hit another, and immediately, immediately hit stage two anyway. And then these add-ons are super, super redundant and very, very unnecessary. So yeah, hard to say. There's times where they will save you, there's times where they'll, where they'll do little. And I think the T-Virus sample having a two is a little bit easier to like mentally know what you're doing, so I like it better. We then have the admin wristband and the visitor band. These add-ons, um, oh, damn it. Uh, I wish I had the picture. You know what? You know what? I can just pause the recording. Let me just show you the picture. All right, uh, here you go. As you can see, uh, a default zombie, which is on the top left, uh, right here. Um, hold up. Yeah. 
A default zombie, which you can see right here, sees in front of them a little bit in a, in a bit of a half circle. If you give them the brown add-on, this extends itself a little bit on the edges and they can even see a bit behind them. With the yellow add-on, you actually see a very noticeable increase of how well they can see behind them. And if you combine both of them, the zombies suddenly can see much, much more than if you have no add-ons. This seems really decent at first glance, but keep in mind that this doesn't mean a lot if the zombies themselves get stuck, or if they get killed, or if they get blinded, or if you kill them, or if they're just not fast enough to go around a big map. So sometimes, generally, I don't know how much these add-ons help. I've tried my best to try to gather some kind of, like, evidence of how useful they are and it does feel that if you combine speed and maybe some and maybe some detection range these add-ons seem like they can be decent they um, zombies are also attracted to certain noises even outside of their cones so these add-ons are not too required if you have something like the perk discordance or if they make a noise even if they're not inside the cone the zombies will detect it so you don't need these add-ons and they don't affect that as far as i know but overall they're not bad for their rarity i would say they're worth equipping Next up, we have the Nemesis Alpha Parasite. This add-on makes it so that anytime you hit a survivor with an infection, typically yourself, even though zombies should also work, um, they become oblivious. Zombies on their own, they're never gonna hit anyone, so basically the person that you slap with your tentacle becomes oblivious. That person, you typically will keep chasing, so I don't think this add-on is all that strong. There's very few situations where I hit a person and I go away, and even if that person is oblivious, most of the times you're gonna play against survivors that are smart, that are communicating, and they'll know where you are, and they're gonna hear you, they're gonna be fine. They're gonna be absolutely fine. We then um, reach the Adrenaline Injector. The Adrenaline Injector increases the time where you can hear a survivor's heartbeat when they use a vaccine. So let's say, for example, that you are using this add-on because you want to insta-down a person that used the vaccine, and then you hear the heartbeat a little bit with this add-on, you will hear it a few more times and be able to track it a little bit better. Is that a super big deal? No, it's actually a really, really weak, pathetic add-on. There's a good chance that if they're too far, you probably don't want to chase them anyway. And if they're too close, it doesn't matter that you hear the harbor, you already know where they are. So yeah, the chances for this add-on to provide a to make a difference are very, very slim. But definitely a lot more than the next two add-ons. Huh. The next add-on is called the Liquor Stong. So when a survivor becomes uh, infected, they are hindered by, I believe, 0 0.35 seconds, something like that. So, so they, they, they get a, they get a speed boost, but they are hindered. It's, uh, why am I even trying to explain this? All right. So when you hit a survivor, you make them extremely fast, but also there is something in the code that makes them very, very slightly slower. They're still fast, but slightly slower. With this add-on, you increase this window where they are slower by, I believe, 0 0.2 seconds. So they're still very, very fast, but they're a bit slower for a tiny bit longer. The effect of this, of this add-on is it's like, it's like pissing against the wind. Like, it's nothing. It's... It's tears in the rain. It's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. If you do the math, it comes down to you catching up to the survivor a few centimeters sooner. And that is assuming that the survivor is using the movement speed. Many times when you hit a survivor, they are going through a window and they're not fully affected by the hinder anyway. So half the times this add-on does nothing, half the other times this add-on does next to nothing. It is essentially a placebo a placebo pill. Uh, um, I'm not gonna offend anyone uh, with uh, with homeostatic um, uh, jokes, but yeah, it does basically nothing. Still, probably better than the next one. The next one is called the Starch Manual. The Starch Manual will trigger whenever a zombie hits a survivor. Whenever a zombie hits a survivor, that zombie will have their aura turn to yellow for four seconds. Now. There's two situations, okay? Situation number one, you chase a survivor into a zombie and the zombie hits the survivor 
And obviously, well, that happened in front of you, so you already know that happened, so what's the point of the zombie turning yellow? And the other situation is when you're just doing your stuff and you see the HUD that someone turns blue and you're like, oh! And then you immediately look, and if you look fast enough, you're gonna see one of your zombies be like, ooh, I just hit someone. So you don't really you don't need this add-on. If you look at your zombies and you see their posture, you're gonna see that one of them is walking and one of them is chasing someone, and the one that's chasing someone is the one that got a hit. So this add-on is honestly... It's thought out so poorly. I, th I think the devs thought that the zombies were gonna like get hits across the map constantly, but this definitely is not. It doesn't match with the reality of this game. And if I catch you ever running this add on, I will be very sad. Please don't do that. Yeah, it's terrible. Next up, the Cenobite, and he has an assortment of really powerful add ons. The strongest in the current meta might very possibly be this one the original pain. Uh, the original pain triggers when you um, when you hit a survivor with your chain, uh, your possessor chain, not the other ones, not the random ones, the ones that you control when you hit them, and they or you break the chain. Whenever these chains are broken, the survivor, if they are injured, goes into deep wound status. Now, there are a lot of reasons why this is really, really important. A survivor that is in deep wound cannot be protected by endurance anymore, and they will go down on the next hit no matter what. So what can you do with this add-on? Why is this so good? Well, let's do a little list. Number one, um, you can chase a survivor, hit them with a chain, and then decide, okay, I want to leave it. I want to go for someone else. And that now that survivor now has to mend, which wastes time. Uh, number two, if the survivor has dead heart, uh, they cannot use it anymore because they're already in deep wound. They will go down no matter what the next hit. Uh, number three, uh, times when survivors have uh, deep wound uh, um, borrow time by by default, like when you unhook them, you can hit them with this, and then they will go down no matter what. So this add-on outplays borrow time, it outplays default endurance, it outplays dead heart, it outplays off the record. Essentially, with this add-on, you can tunnel anyone you want, and on top of that, slow them down, and also prevent adrenaline from triggering. Say that a survivor has a medkit and they have a syringe. They can't use it, because if you're in deep wound, you can't use it. You're going to get adrenaline. It, won't, it will give you the speed boost, but it's not going to heal you. So it creates a lot of situations where survivors' tools and resources can be straight up removed from them. And it's quite a mean add-on because you can just tunnel through it. And a survivor that just got unhooked can go down in a second. And yeah, good luck dealing with that afterwards. So it's very, very nasty. Uh, next up is a much harder to use add-on called the Engineer's Fang. Uh, normally, when you hit a, su uh, a survivor with your Possessor Chain, this is one of them, they will also be attacked by two other chains. One and two. Combine this with the one that you sent, and now you have three chains. This is the default. This is really, really good. Because the more chains on them, the harder they will have a time to get rid of it, and also the more chains, the more slow down they are. However, um, with uh, with this add-on, you remove one of these chains, so you only have two chains at a time. This makes his chasing power very, very weak and very, very bad, but it has a major upside, and it's that every time you hit a Subaru with your chain, you injure them. You straight up injure them. It also has another minor effect that is not even noticeable, so don't even worry about that, but yeah. Um, you, you, you injure them. That means that if you're accurate with your chains, you can absolutely cause all kinds of horror on the survivors. You can send your, your chain up in the distance and hit someone on a gen. You can injure someone that was coming for the rescue. You can play him like a huntress, uh, almost damaging people from afar. You can interrupt the person on the cube and now be guaranteed that they are injured, so it's easier to interrupt them later. Um, I don't need to explain, right? You can get the whole team injured and, and then and then use Thanatophobia or the perks that really get mean once everybody is injured. Um, and even if you are worse in chase, you can make up for this by running perks like um, Blood Faber. Play with your food used to be insane with this because you wouldn't even lose stacks using this, but you can also run Play with your food now, even though it's not as good. So you can run other chase perks to make up for your lack of uh, power in chase and... And the lethality that you gain from this add-on is really, really brutal. Now, I do think that if you run this add-on without much thought, the downside might actually catch up to you and you might not benefit from it. But if you're a very experienced player that 
specializes in getting good at running this add-on and hitting your chains religiously, I feel like this add-on is going to do a lot of damage and the average team is going to get absolutely destroyed. So, yeah, uh, wait your decision, I guess. Um, next up, we have the add-ons that make it harder for survivors to complete the box. Boop. That is Larius Remains and Liquefied Gore. Larius Remain increases the time by plus two seconds. Liquefied Gore plus one second. Now... If a survivor is doing a box and you let them do it, that's not very good. It means the box is reset and they don't have to worry about it for a long time. If a survivor is doing the box and you teleport, that also solves the box, which means that it counts as if they solved it. Yeah, you're there. That might be good or bad. Who knows? But the, solve is also, the, the box is also solved. Ideally, you want to down that survivor as soon as possible you want to prevent them from doing the box and you will get a little heartbeat indicator when they're doing that. If you are very far, it's very likely that they're just going to finish it and there's nothing you can do. But with these add-ons, uh -huh, the extra two or three seconds if you run them both is actually really, really significant. This gives you time to teleport last second if you were busy before and you want to teleport, or more importantly, to interrupt the box holder. You can get close and hit them, or you can get close and send a chain and hit them with the chain and interrupt them. And if you interrupt them and you down them, the box gets reset. Everyone has to deal with the chain hunt, the random chains again, and then the, the, the momentum of the game shifts very heavily in your favor. So these two seconds, believe it or not, are super, are super, super crucial. If you don't run these add-ons, what you will often find is that if you do your best to stop the box, they finish it like a second or two seconds before you can stop them. And with these two add-ons, you stop that. You could pair them, or you could even pair them, um, you could pair the previous one uh, add-on as well with the, with the heart so that you can send your, your chain even further and interrupt them from even further, and that is a pretty hot combo. Uh, or you could pair them together, which both of which would do a really, really good job. Next up, we have the impaling wire. I explained earlier that when you send a chain, you normally have two chains on top uh, for a total of three. Now, if one of these chains gets broken by the environment, let's say that the survivor runs into a tree and the chain breaks against a tree, another chain appears to replace it. And it might miss or it might hit. And if they break another one with the environment, another one appears. This only goes away. Um, this only can be prevented if you break the chains manually. With this add-on, this dynamic changes, okay? Uh, when they you send one chain, right? If they break one of the other chains, they don't get one, they get two now. Now, survivors can only be chained up to three times, so the chains can override each other, but it's a really good thing. What this add-on creates are situations where survivors are hit by like potentially four or five chains at once and dodging one or two is possible, but dodging all of them becomes really, really difficult. So it makes one of your weakness into a strength. One of your weaknesses as a scaler is that your chains are easy to break, but with this, it turns into an actual asset that makes your uh, your your chain so much harder to, to shake off. All you need to know in order to understand how strong this add-on is, is to play against one that has it. Play against a friend of yours with this add-on and without this add-on and play around shack or some other common structure and you tell me if you notice the difference. With one of them, you're going to feel like you're getting slapped left and right and they're, it's going to feel that no matter what you do, the chains are holding you down. Without this add-on, many times the chains can be shaked off, uh, shaken off almost immediately. So yeah, it does make a big, big difference and it's a huge help in chase. Next up is the Foggy Lens. This add-on applies to any survivor that you hit with a chain. And after during the chain uh, holding and after, uh, and after it breaks for the next six seconds, you will see their aura. I think it's six seconds default. Which can be more with Lethal Pursuer. This add-on is super fucking... Uh, I'm sorry, I just didn't mean to use that word. Uh, this add-on is super hacking good. It is a very, very good add-on. Um, it allows you to see uh, uh, how a survivor is doing behind a wall. It lets you hit survivors uh, in places where normally 
you wouldn't and then mind game based on where they're going um, you can hit them behind a window and then see their reaction and know where to go. Like, it gives you information so that you're playing like a god. It's basically you, you have wall hacks on the survivor. So on tall jungle gyms and other common tiles, this add-on is super, super clutch. And the only major downside is that some survivors run anti-aura perks. So that's something to consider. It also pairs very well with the Engineer's Fang. The Engineer's Fang makes your power not very good in chase, but... If you can hit a survivor, injure, and see them, that's good. And even if you hit them with weak chains, seeing their aura still makes up, kind of makes up for it. So in some places, these two are pretty good together. We then have the Iridescent Lament configuration. Um, this add-on basically is like a stealth add-on for your box. Your box is always visible to survivors whenever it is uh, being prepared. It has a little timer that takes a little while. I think it's 90 seconds. 90 seconds, right? But during this whole thing, the box is visible as a white aura from afar. So if a survivor is kind of cheeky and they realize, oh, the killer's kind of far, they can go and fix it. With this add-on, this box is invisible. They don't see it until they get 24, sorry, 24 meters close. So they need to be relatively close to it or until the box activates. When the box, the, the box activates, it works. What this add-on does essentially is it encourages survivors to just do gens and worry about the box later and if it's not super close to them they might think ah someone else will do it and this can sometimes delay them and make it easier for you to really mess with them when the box is really active and it can it can put them into awful situations so overall it's one of the easiest add-ons to run and if you pair it with say this you could ha you would have two add-ons that are super easy to use and on average are going to give decent value then we move on to frank's heart and the stupid TB. These add-ons allow you to project your chain further. Normally, you need to hold your M2 and then you send out like the channel where your chain will spawn, kind of like Nurse. Uh, with Frank's Heart, it's 8 meters. With a TB, it's 4 meters further. I don't think these add-ons are incredible, especially the 4 meters. Eh, it's whatever. It takes you a little bit longer. It's not like you get to 8 meters faster. You get, if you want to hold your, your chain that far, you need to hold your power for a long time. Uh, but especially with Frank's heart, there are some cute things you can do. You can run this with this add-on so that you can snipe people and injure people from ridiculously far away places. You can hurt people doing gens that are really outside of your terror radius, which is crazy. Or you could run it with uh, Larry's remains so that they have nowhere to hide. They will take a long time to do the box. And even if they're far, you're going to send a little probe to Mars to stop them doing the box with the increased range. So it's serviceable in that regard. The other add-on, which is only four meters, I don't recommend you run too much. Um, we then have the... Ch the the chatterer's tooth the chatterer's tooth is a bit of a meme add-on uh, it makes it so that if you pick up your own box um it doesn't activate it normally if you come across your own box that's an amazing thing because it means that you reset you activate it on the spot and if you down someone with the box same thing but this add-on takes that away now if you pick up your own box or you hit someone with the box nothing good happens it just resets but the downs, but the trade, the trade-off is that the box is now visible to you. You can see your own box, which means you can kind of defend it indirectly, without getting too close, or else it despawns. And also, if you pick up the box, you become undetectable for a very long time, and obviously everyone still screams. Now that last bit is what makes this add-on pretty good. What you can do with this add-on is bring a perk like Deadman Switch, which makes every survivor scream. Uh, sorry, which makes every survivor get off a gen if they scream. And then just go and grab your box in between your chases and get information of where everybody is and mess with them. And obviously the stealth also will mess with them. If you want to look up um, Chatterer, Tooth, or Starbow or whatever combination of words to find my video on this, you might see an example and a really decent match of how this add-on can play out. So it's actually... A bit of a meme add-on that can have a bit of utility. And for that reason, I am a little bit fond of it. And I do think it's better than some of the other add-ons that we're about to see. Next up, Skewered Rat and the... What's, where's the strap? Right here. Uh, uh, Pinhead has a 5-second cooldown on his power. With the Rat, that is 9% shorter. 9% of 5... 
seconds, you do the math, it's not a lot. And with the strap, it's 3%. Uh, uh, like, this speaks for itself, basically. 9% is a decent thing. Sometimes you do need to spam your power a little bit, and having it sooner will make a difference. But the 3%? 3% of 5 seconds? That's really bad. That's like 0, 0.15 seconds, isn't it? Or something. Not very good. Not very good. Very, very bad. This one, okay for a yellow. This one, very, very minor effect. Not to mention that there's many times when you're just using your power normally and you don't need to spam it. So having a power that you don't spam come 3% sooner is honestly insultingly low. Very, very mm, not impactful add-on. Slice of Frank. This is a very weird add-on. Whenever someone picks up the box, this add-on gives them exhaustion. As long as they hold the box. Not afterwards, but as long as they hold the box. This is pretty meh. But keep in mind, they're, like if a survivor that you're chasing has the box and they give you a good chase, that's really bad. Keep in mind, um, uh, I'm going to tell you why, that while a survivor is holding the box, this survivor will be the only one affected by the box for a while. So if you chase a survivor and you down them with the box, everyone else gets messed up. If that survivor, you know, somehow manages to juke you for two minutes, you're going to lose the game right there and then. So if that survivor has made for this, or dead heart, or life, or balance, or some other exhaustion perk, and they use it successfully, that's going to hurt. And this add on being able to make sure that you don't have to worry about anything at all in terms of exhaustion is kind of a good thing. So it's really not too bad but it only works on the box holder. We then have the torture pillar and the candle. Um, this add-on takes the timer that it takes for your power to come live, which I think is 90 seconds, and it makes it six seconds sooner and three seconds sooner. Uh, yeah, it's not very good. For, for, for this duration, if you want to delay them at the box before they find the box, bring this one. And if you want to mess with them once they pick up the box, it brings Larry's. This is awful. What the hell is this? Three seconds? Ugh. The sixth one, I mean, it's all right. The three seconds, I mean, okay, you could bring them both. But yeah, no, there's better options. It's really not too good. We then have the maggots and the lively crickets. This add-ons increase the turning rate of your chain. Your chain is a bit like Hillbilly, where it can move a little bit, but not too much. It's really hard to control it. Sometimes if you can control it, and especially with these add-ons, which I believe are 15 and 10%, especially if you stack them, you can kind of like move your chain a bit like a, like a serpent and sometimes get hits that are pretty nice. You can even do like hits that go up and, and above. It's, it's, quite, it's quite nice. If these add-ons were a single one, I would have recommend them. But as it is right now, I don't super recommend them. Uh, they're going to mess with your muscle memory. Most of the times you hit chains, you do it immediately. You you put the portal, like the 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 the, the sponge in right behind the survivor and then hit them immediately. So the turn rate is not that big of a deal. Um, so they're not super, super, super hot. Um, but, I mean, you, you might grow fond of them if you try them a little bit. You, you might come to enjoy them. Uh, one thing that's worth mentioning is that the speed of the chain of Pinhead is not static. It actually ramps up. So when you start your chain, it goes fast, and then it goes fast, 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 and faster, faster, faster. So trying to steer that last second, it becomes increasingly difficult. So don't do anything too fancy. Stick to chains that just work, and you'll do yourself a favor. The vial of blood and the spoiled breakfast, or whatever this is called, spoiled meal, these add-ons are awful. They make the chain that you shoot, you, you have a little portal, right? And out of it comes a chain. And it comes with a little hook. This has a set distance. And these add-ons increase it, I also think, by 8 meters or 6 meters and also 4 meters. I'm telling you right now, there's almost never, never a situation where you need those extra meters. If you have a survivor that is doing the box really far away from you, and you are right here, you're the killer, don't put the chain here and try to hit them. That's, that's stupid. Just place the chain, you know, send the chain forward, place it nearby, and then shoot them like this. So the, the Frank Hart and the TB are much better to interrupt the survivor from a distance, and the extra chain distance, it's just absolutely pathetic. There's been a situation or two where I made the mistake of miscalculating and I tried to hit a survivor and I was like one meter short 
and these add-ons can help, but even them are not that big of a deal, so meh. Uh, and now the bent nail. You guys remember how I explained that this add-on has a downside where it, where it spawns, instead of three, it spawns two chains, and how that was really bad? Well, this is the same. Instead of three, you spawn two. And if you have both of these add-ons together, instead of two, you get one. <laughs> and it's pathetic. You get extra blood points, but it's a meme add-on and it doesn't even feel good. It's not even fun. Don't try this. Awful. Please have it. Please make sure that this add-on has a 0% usage rate so that the developers one day change it or something. It's absolutely pathetic. Next up is artists. And look at this beautiful pyramid with one thing in the basement, huh? Let's talk about her best add-ons. Her best add-ons probably are these two, starting with the uh, severed hands. The severed hands is an incredibly game-changing add-on on the artist. It basically gives her a new power. Whenever you uh, swarm a survivor with birds, that survivor can infect other survivors with birds. And if they infect it immediately, that can count as damage too. So, uh, why is this so good? What are some of the things that you can do, right? Let's say that there's a survivor on a generator. This is a generator. There's two survivors right here, right? They're both working on the generator. Normally, if you send a bird, they're away. You're going to hit one of them. Maybe not even the one you want to hit. And then that survivor is going to go to the right. And you're going to try to hit them with another bird. However, if you have the severed hands, you're going to hit them both with the birds. Because they're going to share it. And now, you not only, not only are you going to shoot one bird on the right, you might shoot a bird on the left too. And now you have a chance to hit both the survivors while they run away. Arr, no. And you can very realistically find yourself in a situation where you down two people or you injure two people across the map thanks to this one add-on. So that is incredible. This also comes into play when survivors are unhooking. If a survivor unhooks and you hit the unhooker, you will now also infect the person that is being rescued. And this is really nasty as well if people are trying to body block. If people are trying to body block, you can hit one survivor and then infect the other. And if the other one is infected, you will damage the other. So you can do double health states. There's actually a really simple trick that you can do uh, as the artist when, when you know that two survivors are on a gen. Let's say that you have the perk Discordance or you somehow know that two people are on a gen. You put a bird, you walk a little bit, only a little bit, put another bird and then you send them both. The first bird will hit both survivors. The second bird will injure one of the survivors and then infect the other, which will also result in an injury. So that's pretty wild that you can injure two people from a distance with one add-on. Uh, there's also quite a few other nasty situations where a survivor might get rid of the birds and then they accidentally run into a teammate and get them again. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of nasty situations as well and a few other things that maybe I've neglected to mention, but needless to say, this add-on creates a lot of extra pressure and puts survivors in a really, really big bind. Especially if you know how it works and you bring perks to play around it. Uh, next up is babies, uh, Matthias Baby Shoes. Uh, this add-on is a lot simpler. Uh, every time you place a, a little bird head, I'm a bird. Uh, this bird head will have a big area around it where artists of survivors will be shown indefinitely as long as they stay inside the bird zone. This goes up floors as well, so you can put a bird underneath a, a floor and then see someone above it. Crazy. And also for a few seconds when they leave the bird radius. Why is this so good? This completely removes the element of guessing. Imagine a tile like this, okay? There's a big window that is right here. Now, normally here, you would need to play this a certain way. You would need to take a little bit of risk, right? Because you, you don't know where the survivor is going to be. Right now, I can place my bird head right there. This is the eyes of the bird. And this is the detection area of the bird, right? <laughs> this is beautiful. So what I can do is quite literally, if a survivor is right here, this is a survivor, I can put the bird right here as a killer and then come this way and because I see the auto of the survivor, only two things can happen. If the survivor comes my way, they're going to get hit. If the survivor goes the other way, the moment I see them at the very center and not a second earlier, I'm going to send the bird off. And it's going to be a direct hit, damaging hit. And this is the essential idea of this add-on. You put it in places, you react to people going in front, and then you shoot the birds, and there is nothing you can do. They use this add-on in tournaments, and it makes 
every single loop in the game, every common loop, basically a death trap. You see survivors leave the loop, leave the loop, leave the loop, and hope to God they reach the next one because they cannot play around anything. Unless they, of course, have distortion or some other auto obscuring perk. So yeah, very, very strong and very, very simple. And after you do hit them, you still see their auto for a few seconds. So you can follow up where they go and maybe even line up another shot. Who knows? But yeah, very, very nasty stuff. Next up, we have two add-ons that decrease, uh, increase your fire rate uh, directly or indirectly. They are the Festering Carrion and the Black Tar or the Thick Tar. This add-on makes you shoot, shoot your next bird 0.5 seconds sooner. So you shoot a bird or two or three, doesn't matter. Typically, it should be less, uh, so you can do follow-ups faster. And the next time you get to shoot your bird, it's half a second sooner. And this add-on is a similar thing. Uh, it makes it so that when survivors remove the swarms of the birds, they take also half a second longer. So it's plus 0 0.5 seconds. This seems subtle, but that small difference is enough to make it very comfortable for you to shoot multiple birds. Without this extra half a second, or without this extra half a second, if you put one bird down and then shoot two birds, if it took you a little bit too long or it's a little bit too far, you might find yourself in situations where the survivors barely, 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 barely manage to remove the birds in time. With this, almost guaranteed that it's not going to happen. It makes it easier to spam your birds from a distance, uh, the yellow one. It makes it easier uh, for survivors to have to be interrupted. Keep in mind, uh, let, let's let's imagine a situation where a survivor is running to a pallet or a window, let's say a window, and they are about to reach the window in eight seconds. Normally, what they could do is run to the window, remove the birds, which takes eight seconds, I believe, and then they remove the birds and then vault it. But with this add-on, if they vault, they reset the whole process. So now they can't even take the window. They have to choose whether or not they want to remove the birds and then wait a second and then vault the window and it's no longer a fast vault. So it puts a lot of pressure on survivors to do the right thing and gives you a lot more room for error and a, lo a lot more room to set multiple birds and try to seal the deal. So for this reason and for their low rarity, these are highly regarded, highly appreciated add-ons on the artist. We then have the Garden of Rod, which I've also covered in a video if you want to look it up, which is a lot less common and a lot less appreciated, but very impactful nonetheless. This add-on makes it so that anytime a survivor gets rid of the swarm of birds, they are five seconds, very very little, I think it's five seconds, exposed, which means they can go down in one hit. Uh, this add-on does multiple things. The first time you find a survivor, they will often down themselves accidentally if they remove the birds in front of you. It also forces, because survivors do not want to go down in one shot, it also has a bit of a similar effect as this add-on, where they'll stay swarmed forever. And if they stay swarmed forever, you might see their aura longer, because you can see the, the bird's aura, you can follow them longer. And yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on them, and even, it's a bit of a damn if they do, damn if they don't kind of idea where if they remove the birds, they risk the insta down, and if they don't, there are a lot of clever ways for you to punish that and do things that will eventually end with you getting a hit, one way or another. So it's a pretty nasty add-on that needs a little bit of finesse, um, but it's, it's pretty good. And obviously, survivors are stupid, and, and they make a blunder, and they give you an insta, an insta when they shouldn't on an already strong killer. Yeah, it won't help them. We then have the Severed Tongue. The Severed Tongue makes it so that every time you fire a bird, you send them out, you experience less of a slowdown. Uh, you will notice this very early when you start to play the skiller. When you're chasing someone and you hit them with a bird, you, you, you will see that you do this little point forward and you're like, Ugh, you're like a little bit slow. With this add-on, that slowness becomes very, very minor. You can actually send the bird and barely feel the slowdown, which is going to let you play more aggressively. And it's also going to well, go well with another add-on that we'll talk about in a second. And many times, this is also an interesting add-on, uh, an interesting artist fact. If you have one bird set to go, um, it's often better to shoot it because the cooldown for letting one bird come back is faster than letting one bird die out. So in a situation where you put one bird and you're like, uh, I don't know what to do with it, just shoot him, shoot him off, you barely get slowed down and you get, a, you get the bird faster. So this add-on also helps you to experience even less of a slowdown. It's quite, it's quite appropriate, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite okay. And for a, the more season of an artist you are, the more you'll appreciate that little slowdown. It allows you to just 
make it even harder for survivors to do the common strategy of just holding forward and going to the next loop. Next up, the thorny nest. Whenever you hit a survivor and injure them with a bird, they have mangled, which means harder to heal. Simple, straightforward, pretty good on this killer because if you have multiple people injured and then you have auto reading perks like barbecue, you will be able to interrupt them on gents, but also interrupt them on heels. So this is pretty, pretty nasty. Not bad. The velvet fabric makes it so that you can see the birds for longer while they are being removed. Uh, this goes really well for snipes. If you hit a survivor and they walk off a gen, you will now have a longer follow up on that survivor. You will be able to see what they do, whether they keep going right, whether they're standing still, whether they're crouching, whether they're like moving side to side. You're going to be able to see what they're doing for longer, which will let you do follow ups and snipes easier and also helps in loops as well. Because if a survivor is trying to be cheeky behind some obstacle, you immediately can tell because you can see the birds. If you don't have this add on, the birds become invisible very quickly after they start removing them and you no longer have that information. But with this add on, you keep it for a bit longer. It's pretty, pretty nice. Uh, then we have the uh, Untitled Agony. Is it called? Yeah. Yeah, the Untitled Agony. <laughs> Sorry. They have some strange name. The Untitled Agony is a really strange add-on. Anytime a survivor gets swarmed, either by your birds directly or because they walk into a, 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 an idle crow, if they walk into a bird that you've set up, or if you hit them with a bird, they get slowed down very significantly for a second and a half. I've seen this side-to-side -side comparison, and it's actually really, really nasty. It's pretty comparable to the tongue. With the tongue, you lose less speed, and with this add-on, they slow down. So basically, you can almost play the artist as a, as a clown where you're in a loop, you hit them with one bird, and they're so slow that you actually get the M1 before they make it to the, to the loop. It's not so good for snipes because you're gonna be far, and it's not so good if you're gonna go for straight hits with the shoes where you're just gonna damage them. But if you're going for a more com conventional artist gameplay, I think you'll quite enjoy it. We then have the bell that makes them oblivious. Anytime you hit them with a bird, they will be oblivious for 15 seconds. This pairs really well with the hands because you apply it to multiple people. This pairs really well with the Garden of Rot because if they uh, get rid of the birds and you're approaching and they don't hear your approach, uh, this is oblivious, um, you could potentially be there for the inst down. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Mm. It's all right. I personally don't like to run it a lot, but there are people that favor it. It's nice to basically uh, make the survivor have to second guess whether or not the person that sent birds to them is actually coming or waiting elsewhere. We then have the O Grief O Lover. This makes survivors, whenever they are swarm, exhausted. They, you don't have to worry. It, it, basically, this is just insurance, all right? You hit a survivor with a bird and they go up, you know they're not going to fall down with balance. You know that they run into you, you know they don't have dead heart. They're roping you tight, you know they don't have made for this. So you can basically clear your mind of any doubt and don't have to play around in any perks that aren't there because you know that you can rule them out. We then have the inky egg. The inky egg makes it so that instead of having three birds, you now have four birds. But... Each bird that you place down has its own cooldown. So if you shoot three birds, you'll be slow. But if you shoot four birds, they'll come back even slower. And obviously, the act of setting up multiple birds also takes more time. So if you don't have an add-on like the thick tar, by the time you set one bird and you set up four birds after, they've already gone, they've already gone and removed it or gone into a locker. So the extra four birds are sometimes useful and sometimes not. Most of the times, not. But sometimes, that can be okay. So what would be a situation where this would be super clutch? Let's say that you chase a survivor, you hit one bird on them, they are swarmed, and now you force them to vault a pallet or a window. Well, you know that now they need eight seconds to remove the birds, right? And there's no locker nearby. So in those eight seconds, with this add-on, yeah, you can set one, two, three, four birds and make them cover like such a thick array of distance, you can basically stagger them like they're gonna cover the entire uh, part of the map that you're shooting them towards, which will make dodging them nearly impossible. So in those situations where you need the uh, assurance to, to, to make sure that you hit someone, it can be okay. But it's pretty situational and also makes the birds uh, stay idle less. It has a downside, which you might not enjoy. 
Um, we then have the iridescent fetter. Um, this is the opposite. This makes it so that instead of having three birds, you only have two. But whenever you are recovering from the two birds, you can stack them together if you want. Don't recommend it. Whenever you are, rec uh, whenever you have these two birds and you shoot them both, you are undetectable. So it's a little bit of a more unexpected version of this uh, bell. What I like to do with this add-on is to pair it with the hands, and then you shoot a survivor on a gen. Maybe you hit two. And while you approach them, they have no idea that you're coming. And then you can be a stealthy artist, which is kind of funny. We then have the automatic drawing. Uh, this is a very simple add-on, very easy to understand. Whenever you, you have shot all of your birds, uh, when, no, actually, <laughs> um, whenever you place a bird, that bird will sit there for a while, and if you don't shoot it, it will eventually disintegrate. When it disintegrates, you have a two... Your power fills up, and it takes two seconds for your power to fill up. So say that you put a bird and you're like, oh, I need it back, I need it back. It disintegrates and now you see your power go two seconds. With this add-on, this turns into 0 0.5 seconds. That's really nice. It reduces minus 1.5 seconds of waiting. So essentially, if you find yourself having your birds disappearing on you often, you can bring this to have your next bird uh, up a bit sooner. As I mentioned earlier, this shouldn't be that common, because if you put if you place one bird and you realize, oh, this bird is kind of bad, you could just shoot it off, and it will come back actually a little bit sooner. But hey. Um, the ink. It makes survivors blind when you hit them with birds. Blindness is not a super big deal, and it lasts only 15 seconds after they remove the swarm. It's not a big one. We then have the paints and the, th the, the Byron obituary. These add-ons do something similar, okay? Uh, the... The obituary, I think. it's They're, they're similar, so I might mix them up. Uh, but the paint make it so that if your bird barely misses a survivor, you will have a longer killer instinct. So if you send a bird and it misses, you normally hear a little, a little heartbeat. This will play for longer so that you can more accurately determine where exactly is the person that you miss. Not a big deal. Normally, you're shooting towards a gen, you already know they're there. Uh, this add-on, however, I think is a little bit more interesting because it expands the range of what is considered an, uh, a near miss. So that means that if someone dodges a bird and they dodge it by a lot, they might still give you a heartbeat so that you know that you miss them and you know that they're there. This also helps in endgame situations where you're looking for people and you can just shoot birds in the distance. Just bird, 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 and just shoot them all off. And there's a chance that one of them will fly by a survivor, maybe even in a locker, and detect them. So that's not too bad. And then we have the crow drawing and the chocolate corn. This add-ons increase two seconds. Oops. <laughs> Why did I type a three? Two seconds and four seconds, the time it takes for birds to go away. As I told you many times, you want your birds to be shot immediately, and sometimes you just want them to come back. You don't, there's almost never a situation where you put a bird on the ground and you're like, yeah, I need this bird here for 16 seconds. Almost never, almost never. So I highly, highly suggest that you stay away from these add-ons unless you have some mad doctor idea. I'm sure there are some situations where they could be useful. Like, for example, you have Batia's baby shoes and you just want to place one bird that's just aiming down a hallway for the next two years. And anyone that comes there, you just want to like make sure. To, then yeah, sure, they can make sense. But for the most part, they do. They are either comparable to having nothing, or they do more harm than good. An add-on that definitely does more harm than good, however, is the charcoal stick. This add-on is an add-on that is meant to transform your power and make it better and worse in some ways. But it makes it worse in every imaginable way. So by default, whenever you place a bird, this bird is invisible. Survivors do not see it through a wall. Look at that, it's invisible. And when the bird flies, the survivors can actually see the trail of the bird a little bit. With this add-on, the reverse is true. The trail that the bird follows is now invisible, so survivors don't see so clearly exactly where the bird is aimed. Spoilers, it's aimed at the generator. Where else would it be? Like, you know? So it's a little bit harder to dodge an incoming bird. But whenever you place a bird, the survivors actually see the aura across the map too, if I remember correctly. This is really, really bad. Awful, in fact. 
Let's say that there's a big wall here, right? A big, big, solid wall here. What do you think is easier for a survivor to dodge? A trail that they see last second from a bird that they couldn't even see? Imagine if they're closer, no need to mention that. Or a bird that they actually see the perfect orientation of. This is terrible. This makes shooting birds through walls almost pointless. The survivor that is running around here will see the bird and will see that it's facing this way. It doesn't matter that they don't see the trail. So this add-on is supposed to be better for sniping and it's barely any it's barely any help and it's much much worse for mid or even long range shots if survivors pay attention because they can see the bird and then just dodge it one of the best things you can do as artists right is chase a survivor and there's a big wall here and then you place a bird here and you aim it somewhere and the survivor has to run this way and they don't know exactly which angle it's this one but it could be this one right it could also be this one. They don't know which angle, so they have no idea where to juke. So whenever you see them on the actual path, then you you shoot and you get them. But if they see the bloody bird head, then they know exactly and they're just going to go around it. And they, they're going to play around it perfectly. Not a good idea, right? Yeah, this add-on is really bad. And hopefully, if you didn't understand it now, uh, you have an idea of why that is. Oh, next up, the rework Sadako. Um... um Heads up, I do think this killer is headed for a rework, so don't kill me if these add-ons change super, um, super quick in some future update, but let's explain what they do after I drink a bit of water. All right, on to Sadako's add-on. Uh, Sadako's arguably the... Uh, uh, Sadako's arguable best add-on is the Iridescent Tape. Um, the way you need to understand this add-on is as a massive delayer of something that survivors eventually have to deal with. Uh, either because you get hit with a tape on your hand or either because she keeps teleporting, there's going to come a point where the average survivor in an average lobby against Sadako nowadays has to go and pick up a tape. And this tape, um, they might hold on to it for a little while, but if their condemn is pretty high, they're going to have to deliver it somewhere. And normally, um, tapes... Um, can be picked up from TVs, and TVs appear relatively close to gens. There are seven gens, so that means there's seven TVs. Uh, normally, uh, gens are distributed a little bit like this, right? Um, let's see, we have how many so far? Five, six, seven. So let's assume that there's a TV next to each of these, right? There's a TV next to each of them. So what survivors can do, and what they often do without this add-on, is to pick up this TV tape right here, and then bring it to the closest one. So in a matter of 10 seconds, they can pick up a tape and very safely deliver it to the next place and put it away and then remove much of their condemn. With this add-on, this doesn't happen. If you pick up a tape here, the add-on will force you to deliver it to the furthest possible TV. In this case, here. And this is a massive deal if you are in a big map or if you are in an indoor map, which is hard to navigate. You don't see the TVs until last second as well. So it is really, really rough. With this add-on and particularly the next one combined, you have this situation where survivors don't find TVs. When they find them, you can know which one they triggered. And if you know which one they triggered, you know which one they have to go to because it will be the furthest one. So it can make a condemned playstyle, which is already de decent and strong enough, even more difficult to prevent from the survivor side. And that alone probably makes it the best add-on in the game for her. The next one is the green add-on Mother's Calm. And this is nasty. This pairs very well with the previous add-on. Whenever a survivor picks up a tape, you will be able to notice it if you look at the HUD but you might not be able to tell which tape they picked up. Unless you have razor sharp focus, it's really difficult to look around and tell which TV just disappeared. In fact, if it happens quickly enough, you might not be able to tell at all. But with this add-on, that TV will turn yellow and it will also give you a loud noise notification. So it's literally impossible to miss it. If a survivor picks up a tape, you will see it on the HUD. You will see where that survivor is. You can now go harass them. They don't know that you have this add-on, so they might not realize that you know that they're there. You're going to go and hit them. And if you, on top of that, have this other add-on, you also can figure out which TV is the one they have to go to and then just defend it. And there's nothing they can do. With these two add-ons, particularly in, in, in maps that are difficult for survivors to navigate, such as Midwitch, it becomes un unbelievably difficult to get rid of Condemn. So yeah, 
it's pretty nasty. Uh, we then have the um, newspaper, the old newspaper. Uh, this add-on makes it so that when you come out of your face, uh, out of your uh, the manifestation status, you have a flickering um, animation that lasts longer with this add-on. It's a little bit easier then to manifest at a loop, pretend to go one way and then suddenly flick the other way. And since you can see your skin become invisible, you can pretty much see when this is happening and learn to play around this and use this in loops to basically do a fake out. Oh, I'm coming from the right. And then the survivor goes the other way. And then suddenly you're coming from the left. So this is a nice chase tool that honestly complements her playstyle pretty well. Uh, <laughs> There's another add-on, but I, I think we'll talk about it when we get there. We then have the iridescent remote control, which has <clears throat> a very simple effect. Whenever you teleport to any TB, any survivor next to an active TB will be highlighted. And this will typically be a bit too late. You cannot, it, for, for a few seconds, 12 seconds, I think, you cannot teleport, see someone, and then teleport right away to the other side of the map. But what you will often do is teleport to a TB and then find someone right there next to you and see the auto through a wall. And if you see people from afar, you can also figure out what you're going to do next. And it's it's a nice information uh, piece. One second, I need to drink something. Uh, next is the ring drawing. The ring drawing spreads condemn when a swabber heals someone else. So essentially, people that are condemned, that have an action, uh, a healing action condemned on them, they they translate this to the person that heals them. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's exactly right. So what this will create is a situation where you can injure, 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 keep teleporting, keep a close eye on the TBs, and if survivors don't have a way to heal themselves, they might suffer and inadvertently precipitate the, the speed at which they get condemned. So you can pair this also with this or with that to make that playstyle even nastier. Uh, the Broken Nail is comparatively a much simpler add-on. Every time you teleport to a TB, you get a 30% duration extra on the boost of the speed that you get. So you will come out and be fast for 30% longer. It is quite noticeable and it really, really, um, it, it feels pretty good and it helps quite a bit. It's not a bad add-on. Next up, we have Reiko's Watch, which was sadly uh, nerfed a little bit. Uh, uh, Reiko's Watch is a bit like an opposite newspaper. Instead of working when you are coming out of manifestation, it works while you are demanifested. So what you can do with this add-on is take advantage of the fact that you are now invisible for longer. And while you chase a survivor, you just stay the manifested, go one way, wait until you become invisible, then flick the other. And by the time you appear again, you might get a little bit too close to the survivor. And this can help you win some mind games and let you do some things in chase that would otherwise be difficult with her base power. However, keep in mind that while you are demanifested now with Sadako, you no longer gain bloodlust. So doing this before was a little bit nicer because the add-on was 50% uh, longer instead of 33% longer, which is right now. And also because you could gain bloodlust while you did this, which was kind of scary. Now, right now, if you unclo if you demanifest, uh, the bloodlust is completely uh, disabled. It completely goes away. So, uh, this playstyle is not quite as viable. The well water is another simple add-on. Whenever you come out of the manifestation uh, or come out of a TB, you will remain undetectable for two seconds longer. This allows you to mess with survivors a little bit. You can you can demanifest from a bit of a distance and then go around and grab them. Uh, Sadako has no footstep sounds. She's very, very quiet. So if they're not listening to the lullaby that she has, the little shling -ling, ling ling sounds, you will very often be able to catch them off guard. It also pairs well with the VCR that we'll talk about in a second. Because if you, if you make survivors used to the sound of you appearing somewhere, they will never be able to tell whether or not you're there or not because of the lingering undetectable. So this is a cute add-on. The telephone is a very subtle one. Whenever you demanifest next to a survivor, it slaps them with a 3% hindered, which means they move 3% slower. Now, if you know about the perk made for this and how important it is, uh, a 3% increase or decrease, then you know that that can be quite clutch. Um, but I do think you need to be quite a very well-seasoned Sadako to play precisely enough to make that 3% count. Very small effect, but it's there. Uh, the mirror has a similar triggering condition as the newspaper. Whenever you come out of the manifestation, 
you will uh, appear and disappear intermittently. This add-on makes those disappearances longer. This add-on makes them happen more... Uh, uh, it makes it happen for a bit of an extended time. So it takes the it takes the time where that happens and it increases it by a couple of seconds. I don't think this is quite as impactful as this or this, but it's also pretty free and it can mess with survivors. You come out of a TB or you the manifest and you do a little bit of mind games, you might not even be planning anything at all. And that alone can mess with them a little bit because it lasts a bit longer. Uh, needless to say, it also pairs well with this add-on since they kind of synergize together. Uh, the VCR is an interesting add-on. Uh, as we explained earlier, there are seven TVs around the map, and it's very likely that if survivors are doing a gen, they're going to be close to at least one of them. If you teleport from one TV to another, the TVs will play the sound as if you're coming out of them, even if it's not that TV you're coming out of. So if there are three survivors working on three gens next to three TVs, and you teleport to one of them, the other two will also hear the same sound, and they're going to get a little bit spooked, and they might let go of a gen and maybe trigger a deadman switch, and yada, yada, yada. So it's actually a bit of a nasty perk to catch them off guard a little bit and waste their time and make them paranoid. But other than that, it is a pretty substandard purple. It doesn't do a whole lot directly. Uh, we then have the photo. Uh, this add-on only works if a survivor is directly looking at you, and if you the manifest, they will scream and they will show their aura for a few seconds, which might help you in some loop or to make a little decision in the heat of the moment. However, funnily enough, if they're not looking at you when you come out of a TV or when you the manifest manually yourself, they will not scream. So it's an add-on that works differently depending on, of, on the kind of survivor that you're chasing. Uh, Joichi's fishing net is a really interesting one. Uh, as I'm sure you know, survivors have seven, st seven points of condemn, right? And they will need uh, this is seven, I think. Uh, and they will need seven before you can straight up more them. When they reach four, this add-on activates and it makes them blind. Now keep in mind, blind survivors they still see power uh, auras. So if you're a blind uh, survivor against the pig, you still see the boxes. Blind survivor against Freddy, you still see the clocks. Blind survivor against Plague, you still see the fountains. And blind survivor against Sadako, you will still see the TVs or whatever else. But you might not see your teammates, you might not see the exit gates, you might not see other things that your perks are revealing. And this is a bit of a win more add-on. If you're already if you already have someone at fork on them, they're quite screwed. And this is gonna help to put your boot on their neck and really help them sink. However, most of the time survivors are gonna play a bit more carefully, and you're not gonna benefit from this very much. So I don't think this is super, super hot. Other add-ons that we've mentioned would do a lot more to help spread that on them and keep it coming. So don't think it's super strong. We then have the, the pinwheel and the sea wash cloth. I'm so sorry, I need to drink again. Um, these two add-ons are interesting. Um, whenever you have a little TB, right? I'm gonna draw it right here. These add-ons actually create a little area around it. It's like a little cylinder. And within this area, survivors will be oblivious uh, for the green one and blind for the yellow one. Now, these effects are okay. And against the old Sadako, since people ignore TVs, they were actually quite a, quite of a, quite of okay, and of, uh, quite an okay pair of add-ons. Because people would be working on a gen nearby, right? And they would ignore the TV and they would be affected by these two things. However, right now, people pick up the TV tapes pretty frequently. They should be. And the fact that this add-on makes particles appear next to the TVs actually is a bit of a nerf. Because in some maps, when you're looking for active TVs, which is what this does, you will see the particles and you'll be like, oh my god, I'm in Midwich, I can't find any TV, I need to find a TV. Uh, this TV I found is closed, uh, it's off. Oh, wait, I see the particles. So it actually kind of helps the survivors to find active TVs. So... I'm actually not too much of a big fan. I don't think they do a lot. They definitely do a little bit more than the next few items, though. Uh, the sea wash... No, the, this is the, the clump of hair. This is terrible. Uh, when Sadako is uh, the manifesto, when she's cloaked, quote-unquote, she cannot be seen from afar. And with this add-on, she is invisible for longer. This is very similar to the pill bottle for Freddy, if you remember that. It basically takes uh, the range at which she's visible and it makes it smaller. But it's not by much. And let's be honest, 
most of the time survivors will know that you're approaching because number one, you're in the open and they see you. Or number two, they hear the lullaby. What is the lullaby? Sadako, when she's the manifesto, has a bit of like a like a little like a like a little sound that you can see or even you can even see visually if you have the visual heartbeat. So people are gonna react to that, and this thing is gonna make almost no difference. We then have um, the sea stone and the cabin sign. When you teleport to a to a TB, there is a cooldown of I believe forty five seconds before it turns back on. And when survivors disable it, I believe that's 70 seconds. Uh, doesn't matter what the exact numbers are, but basically this add-on removes 7 seconds from this cooldown. So that when they remove a TB, it comes back sooner. And this add-on removes, uh, I believe, 4.5 seconds. So basically 10% of, um, of, this, of this one, if I remember correctly. I could even check it out. Hold up. That is exactly right. Nice. So yeah, it makes the TVs come back sooner. Now, is that good? Yeah and no. Yeah, because you can teleport to them sooner. No, because sometimes it's actually a good thing if survivors do not find TVs, especially in indoor maps, they will often struggle to all find one. So I'm not really sure if this is super worth it, especially this one. Uh, but hey, that's fine. If they come back, I guess you can spam your power a bit more frequently. So they're not too bad, they're not too good. They have ups and downs. We then have the videotape copy, which is a bit of a meme add-on. It makes the condemn that you inflict a bit weaker. If you teleport with this add-on, you will need to teleport 14 times, which is a lot. It takes 15 seconds every time. So it will take you like five minutes of just teleporting back and forth too much. It will take you 14 teleports to build up seven points of condemn, because it's only half a point with this add-on. But the TBs come back much sooner, which means that you can spam it a bit more. So it's a trade-off. Uh, overall, I think it's a negative one, but I've tried it and she's still pretty good with it. So now who is to say? Who is to say? Maybe maybe I got it wrong. Uh, the one add-on that I'm fairly sure is definitely worse than nothing is the um, uh, videotape editing deck. This add-on makes every survivor start with a tape and they can immediately go and deliver it. This is a terrible thing. This is terrible. I mean, if in if in the first ten if in the first thirty seconds of the match you manage to hit every survivor once, then this add-on is incredible. But most of the time, that's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is they're going to go, they're going to do gens whenever they're in trouble. They'll put them in the TB or not. And th this add-on used to be really good because having a TB was scary. Now having a TB is protection. So giving them a a, a, a TB tape. Is actually kind of helping them so yeah uh, unless you have an amazing plan that you can tell me about in the comments uh, this add-on will probably do more harm than good you should stay away from it next up is dredge what a beautiful set of add-ons he has his best add-on is possibly the lavalier microphone the lavalier microphone does two things uh, whenever you use all of your teleports it will show you the artists of all the survivors in the game and if you have Lethal Pursuer, that will stack and you'll see them for a bit longer. So essentially, this add-on is like a nuclear its like a nuclear option. If you're not sure where people are, you can do teleport, 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 and then you'll see everyone. Obviously, if they have perks like Distortion, not so effective, but that's still really good. This add-on also has a secondary effect that is quite clutch. And if there is a locker next to a survivor, if a survivor is nearby a locker, the locker will flap open whenever you are teleporting. And this has at least a couple uses. Uh, the first and most obvious is that it will scare the heck out of a survivor. They're working in a gem peacefully and they hear this, they're gonna go, oh, you know, they're gonna think that you're on them. And if they and if you have a perk like Deadman Switch, which is a great pick to go with uh, with the lavalier microphone, they will let go of the gen and the gen will automatically block, which you will then see. So that's also quite useful. And another use that is a little bit harder, um, but still possible, is information gathering. Right? Uh, so let's say that there are four lockers in the map. Let's draw them right here. This, every time you teleport, keep in mind, your all the lockers that have survivors next to them will flap open, right? So I'm the dredge, uh, I'm right here, and I teleport to this locker. And while I teleport, as soon as I arrive, I notice the aura because you can see the auto of gen of, of lockers, I noticed the auto of this locker flap 
its doors open. Yeah, like, it does little noise. So what does that tell me? What is what can I infer from this information? I know now that next to this locker there is one survivor. So I can teleport there directly and probably find someone. This is a bit harder, you need to pay a bit of attention, but it's something that I've surprised myself doing and realizing, oh my god, I can actually notice that. So you can actually tell when a survivor is there, even before you see their aura. So yeah, uh, seeing everyone's aura is quite nice, it pairs really well with Deadman Switch, it pairs really well with instant down perks like Hunt the Ground or no one escapes death. I don't need to explain to you why gathering this much information on a killer like this is important. Keep in mind that if you stay in lockers longer and longer, um, that also is, I mean, it's not super, uh, it doesn't put a lot of pressure on survivors directly, but it does build up the nightfall meter a little bit faster as well. So uh, using this add-on really pays off. The next add-on that I think is best is the Automarian Riding. Uh, this killer has a 12 second cooldown. Every time he uses a teleport or every time he teleports to his little shadow remnant, you have to wait 12 whole seconds. At the start of the game, before you can teleport anywhere, also 12 seconds. With this add-on, that 12 seconds goes into the much nicer 8 seconds. In fact, with this add-on, I have managed to grab people out of lockers. Because um, if I have Lethal Pursuer... I recover my power so quick at the start that I can see when someone's gonna lock a locker and then I teleport and I grab them out of it directly. So this add-on is super, super nice. This is outside of Nightfall, by the way. In Nightfall, the recovery is very, very fast. Um, so outside of Nightfall, you recover super fast. You can teleport, then teleport again. You can use your Remnant, then teleport. You can do everything faster. And guess what? The more you teleport, the more you use, you use your Remnant, the more you spam your Remnant, Nightfall adds up faster and faster. Whenever you do these things, Nightfall happens sooner. So... This add-on contributes to that, and then when you're in Nightfall, you're already really, really strong. So, this add-on is super, super nice. It is a massive, massive reduction of like a third of your cooldown, and it feels incredible. And playing without it, honestly, feels a bit of a drag. Another add-on that feels like an absolute must is the uh, Malthinker Skull. Now, as I mentioned, doing certain actions, like using your power, speeds up the rate at which you get the Nightfall. However, the thing that most drastically speeds up the nightfall is the amount of injured survivors that you have. If you have one survivor injured, that's like a little bit faster. When you have multiple, it speeds up very significantly. With this add-on, you add an extra 66% to that. And that is actually nutty. I made a graphic part of a video and I'm going to go and find it right now and play it for you. And you'll see for yourself just how insane it is. All right, let's have a look. So... With the Malthinker's Call, you, with one person injured, instead of 5 minutes, it will now take 3 minutes. Instead of 150, 90. Instead of 160. Instead of 75, 45. Look at the green. Look at the green right there. Let's play that again, just so you can see it one more time. In blue is how far you are around the whole nightfall. Look how far you would be in green, though, with the add-on. Just with one yellow add-on you are 66% further. So, and the more people injured, as you can see, the further it speeds up. So, as you can imagine, having this add-on means that you, on average, reach Nightfall like 25% sooner, maybe 30% sooner, maybe a bit more, depending on how much comes from injuries. It is pretty insane. It is a genuinely overtuned add-on that I absolutely love and hope they never change because it is sick. It is really, really good. So, yeah. The only mistake that you could make with this add-on is just hurting one person and then sticking to that person. If you injure multiple people or at the end of Nightfall there are multiple people left injured, they will go back into Nightfall super, super quick and it will be very, very brutal. There we go. Uh, next up is the Boat Keys. The Boat Keys does two things. Number one, it speeds up the, the teleportation speed of Dredge out of Nightfall by 25%. In Nightfall, the dredge goes across the map at like lightning speed, and it's super, super scary. But out of Nightfall, his teleporting can feel a bit sluggish. With this 25%, you notice it be and feel a lot stronger, and it makes teleporting in Chase a little bit nicer. It also has a secondary effect where in the end game, where all gens are done, all the locks that are present in the game will automatically break. So if you have, say, some end game perks and you teleport to Shaq to come out of it, the locks will always, always be gone, and you won't have to worry about that in the endgame. 
unless they start locking them again. Uh, we then have Hadi's Calendar. Hadi's Calendar is a pretty insane add-on. If you have to come out of a locked locker that has been locked by the survivors, you will have a very, very long, I believe, three second animation. It's very long. With this add-on, you save one whole second. You will be doing this at critical times, multiple times per game, most of the time. There's maybe a few exceptions, but most matches, most maps, you're going to be coming out of locked lockers, no matter what. You, It's an unavoidable part of playing Dredge for the most part. And this will save you one whole second right when you need it. So it is an incredibly useful add-on. Uh, the Broken Doll is no joke either. It makes every Nightfall, which is normally gone in 60 seconds, last 80 seconds. Um, there are some slight other things that can make Nightfall shorter if a survivor steps into your Remnant Shadow, but that never happens. So mostly it goes from 60 to 80 seconds, which is awesome. Super, super good. It also goes well with the Field Recorder. Um, which makes Nightfall start at the beginning of the game, at the end of the game as well. So on top of the normal Nightfalls that you have, with this add-on, you start in Nightfall and end in Nightfall at the uh, when the last gem pops. If you pair it with this, yep, that means that you start and end and have a uh, bunch of other Nightfalls, all of which will last 20 seconds longer. So this is a nice combo. Oh, and it also makes any exhaust, any survivor that comes into contact with your remnant exhausted but this is a pretty minor thing uh, we then have the worry stone i think it's called this add-on is kind of cute uh, it highlights any survivor that touches a locker to lock it and it's a really nice information gathering i think it goes particularly well with uh Hattie's calendar because when someone locks a gen you can uh, locks a locker you can see it immediately and then go there and immediately break it and mess with them um, we then have the tilling blade the tilling blade is like a, like a massive debuff applier. Anytime you attack a survivor in Nightfall, which is not all the time, but uh, a considerable amount of times, it gives them blindness for a minute, it gives them mangled for a minute, and it gives them a hemorrhage also for a minute, which is a bit weird. Now, if you on top of this have Fearmonger, the blindness will pause and they'll never really recover from it. So this can be pretty nasty. And if they come out of Nightfall with Mangled and then they can't heal, they'll get into the next Nightfall even sooner for the reasons we explained. So yeah, this is a decent add-on. It's just a little bit less usable than the others. I feel like the others are a bit more straightforward. And with this one, you have some conditions. Uh, next up though is the Follower's Cowl, which is one of the best brown add-ons in the game. Uh, so normally when the Dredge... Um, teleports in nightfall he can detect people around him so he has a 60 meter terror radius or it has a 60 meter terror, uh, uh, detection radius sorry where if you teleport to your shadow or teleport to a locker you will detect people around yourself which is awesome it's great it makes him really really scary and you can go locker to locker finding people right uh, but with this add-on you can do this outside of nightfall with your remnant so one thing you can do with this add-on, if you suspect that someone is near, is literally leave your remnant and then teleport to it immediately. And if there's someone nearby, 100%, they will give a heartbeat. Even if they're in a locker, well, they shouldn't be in a locker against Stretch, but no matter what, I'm pretty sure they detect them and there's no perk or anything in the game that can prevent it. So it's an, an, inc it's an incredibly useful tracking tool. You can go to a place and check it and then move on to the next bit. And it's a really, really nice tool. It adds a bit of utility to, to, to his power outside of Nightfall. And every time you spam your teleport, you also speed up Nightfall, which is nice. Um, the tablets are an interesting uh, brown add-on. Instead of showing you like this one, whenever someone locks a locker, it instead highlights the lock lockers in yellow. So if you see two lockers in the distance, right? Let's say like this. And one of them is yellow. That means that this one is locked. So what you might choose to do is like, oh, I need to be there kind of fast. Let's teleport to this one instead, since it's not locked. Or actually, since I have a bit of time, I'm going to go here and break it now so I don't have to deal with it later. You can make those decisions and know where survivors have been thanks to this cute little yellow add-on. We then have the iridescent floorboard. This is a really boring, stupid add-on. I don't like it. Uh, Nightfall, as we explained, literally, uh, uh, typically lasts 60 seconds, sometimes a bit more. But during the last 12 seconds, only the last 12 seconds, it doesn't change ever, even if the Nightfall is longer, you can insta-down people. So that means that 
survivors will get a warning, and the first time is probably going to be a bit of a shock. And they need to be careful. This is difficult. Many times survivors are already injured. Many times you're already hooking people. Many times if you if you could get them, you would have already gotten them. But there are a few situations where I had this add-on and I kind of like manipulated survivors into thinking they were safe. Delayed the hit a few seconds until I see that it's almost there and then bam. So every now and then if you have it, you'll get value. But it's not a super, super hot idea on him. Uh, then the burnt letters... The Fallen Shingle and the Wooden Floorboard. These add-ons all do the same thing. They take one action that you do and make it faster to get to Nightfall. It's a bit similar to the Malthinker Skull. With the Burn Letters, every time you, uh, hit, you injure a survivor from healthy to, to injured, you get a little bit more Nightfall. It's very tiny. It's very, very tiny. Super, super tiny. Um, with floorboard, every time you hook a survivor, you normally get a bit of nightfall. With this, you get a little bit more. Is it worth it? No, it's comparable to the Malthinker Skull. Not even close, but still. And with the Fallen Shingle, every time you are inside a locker or currently teleporting, you speed up the nightfall super significantly. And this add-on gives it a little bit, 15%. This one is more significant I mean, you shouldn't be staying in lockers forever, but it's 15% of a very fast one, so this one's a bit more noticeable. Uh, all of, overall, all of them, they're not super great. Malthinker's Call beats them, and if you want to have a bunch of Nightfalls, you can just have Field Recorder, and it's the same old idea. But they're not too bad. They're okay. You put them on, they're going to give you some value, right? Then we have the Shattered Pillows. This, this is like the Automarian Writing. Um, the Automarian Writing uh, made your cooldown from 12 to 8 in uh, outside of Nightfall. This one makes your cooldown in Nightfall 4 to 1.5. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. In Nightfall, you can already teleport and do insane things at insane speed. But now you can do it even more. You can put a remnant, teleport to a remnant, and then put another remnant. And then put another one. And then teleport and then come out and put another remnant and then teleport again. And then just be the most ADHD, I'm doing everything uh, kind of killer ever. So it's a bit overkill. You don't really need that too much in Nightfall. In fact, you'd be better off with this because, you know, it's helping you when you're weaker. But it's also not terrible. So, yeah. Uh, the Air Freshener. It gives you three teleports instead. Uh, sorry, it, instead of having three teleports, which is the default, you get four teleports. Uh, this isn't great. The cooldown is the same, thank goodness. So that's nice. Uh, I guess what you can do with this is teleport to one place, teleport to another, then teleport to another. And if you don't like what you see, you can just teleport to the original. Uh, like you can do a bunch of, you can go around the whole map and check for stuff. But typically, you would just benefit from having this a bit more. I feel, but hey, it's not too bad. This add-on used to be bugged, you might remember, and it used to have an extra effect where it allowed you to teleport and then use a remnant quickly. And that was really awesome. They fixed it, sadly. Uh, next up is the Ritual Dagger, I believe it's called. Uh, this add-on sucks. When you teleport to a locker, uh, during nightfall, any window that is nearby will be blocked by the entity for like five seconds. In nightfall. Ugh, this is awful. This is awful. In fact, it the blockage happens a bit late. So I've seen clips of dredges teleporting to a locker and they come out and the survivor is going through the window because the blockage happens really, really late. So this is a situational, short-lived, awful add-on that no one should ever run. Every now and then, who knows, you'll have a clip where, where, you, where you can show me, hey, look, I teleported and I blocked this and good for you, but it's terrible. Um, the wire helmet is an interesting one. Uh, remember how I told you earlier that during nightfall, you can hear a heartbeat of survivors when they when they are near you and you're teleporting? This add-on increases the time you can hear that by a couple seconds. That's terrible. Like, the fact that you know that a survivor is there, that's all you need. You come out, you see them. You don't need to f have the heartbeat for an extra second and a half or whatever. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. Now, the Mortar and Pestle, I think, is worse than nothing for, for a seasoned player. But this is a complete... This is, a, this is a, a, a matter of personal taste, okay? So, when you leave a shadow behind, the game remembers the direction you were looking. 
So let's say that we have a little obstacle here. Let's say that I'm going in this direction, right? And I leave my shadow looking that way. That's my big nose. Looking that way. If I then walk around and I decide to teleport right here, I will be facing this direction. But with the mortar and pestle, if I was looking at this direction, when I teleport, I will be looking at the direction that I'm currently looking at. Now, my best idea when I teleport, the suggestion that I would tell you if you're learning dredge, is to try to take a mental picture, right? If you're, if you're placing your dredge, right as you place them, if you're placing your, your shadow, your remnant, try to look at the direction that you need to be looking where the survivor, when the survivor is about, when you teleport back and you need to react to what the survivor is doing. And then this add-on is kind of pointless. But if you want to have the flexibility of like, oh, I want to I wanna, I wanna decide last second which area I'm facing, then maybe this add-on is for you. It's personal taste, really. Uh, try it out. In a, in, you can try it out very quickly in, in a bot uh, fill lobby in, in a custom match and decide which one is best for you. Though eventually, I think you should get used to the default uh, ability of the dredge. Next up is the Mastermind. And his best add-on, arguably, hard to say, None of his add-ons are too powerful compared to some of the other killers, so that's a pleasant surprise. But out of them all, the, the strongest one might as well be the Euroboros, Iridescent Euroboros vial. This add-on does two things. It makes everyone start out infected, and that's a pretty big deal, because they have to go and get rid of it, and if you interrupt them, they're going to have a hard time, right? And... <sighs> And before I go ahead and talk about the second add-on, this is already a pretty bit of a, a bit of a big deal, right? Survivors have a limited amount of first aid sprays, and they're gonna waste four of them right at the beginning. There are six, uh, there are six cases, and each of them has two uses, so they have twelve uses total. Twelve, and at the beginning, they're gonna have to get rid of four, so that's gonna leave them with eight. If you have a long game where you infect them and infect them and infect them, there might come a point where some of them genuinely have to really go very far to find the last few first aid sprays or even run out of sprays altogether and then they are suddenly starting to become fully slowed down and so on. That's pretty scary. So the, the fact that you hurt their first aid uh, economy, that's a very unique thing that only this add-on really does. So that's nice. And then on top of that, if a survivor becomes fully infected, they also become exposed for 30 seconds. Normally, if a survivor is infected, you can grab them and then toss, uh, and then slam them against the wall and then you insta on them. But what if they heal? Uh, what if they get rid of the infection? What if they, I don't know, what if you slam them and throw them against nothing? That could fail. So if a survivor is fully infected, the safest way for you to deal with them is just to, is just to hit them. And that is pretty nice. Knowing that you can do that, that is really, really, really nice. So yeah, the insta down and the early delay and the economy on the first day sprays, this add-on just does a lot. And even if they get rid of it relatively quickly, it's still quite a bit. We then talk about the unicorn medallion and its sister, the walkie talkie. So Wesker has two bounds, two dashes, okay? The first one, is not very long. The second one is a lot longer, like that. And in between, there's a little window where you can choose what to do. With the Unicorn Medallion, you actually revert this. You make them both similar to each other. You make the first one a little bit longer and the second one a little bit shorter. Now, in total, the way this add-on is coded, technically, you see this little gap right here? Technically, you lose a little bit of distance. So if you're using your power for mobility, this add-on is technically a little bit worse, but only a little bit, and it's not a big deal. And the walkie-talkie is the opposite. It makes your short dash even shorter, so like this, and it makes your second dash, which is already the longest one, even longer still. Wow, look at that. So again, if you do the, if you, if you do the little line, you will see that this is a bit longer. So this add-on for overall mobility is a little bit better, but only a little bit, and it doesn't matter. What you really care about is chase. And in chase, let me tell you right now, the unicorn is great and the walkie-talking is bad. It's bad. With the unicorn, your first bound is longer and you have more choices, right? So say that you're chasing a survivor around the corner and the survivor is planning to go left. 
This is their plan right now. This is where they're going. Normally, if you're right here and your bound only takes you this far, you're kind of screwed. They're going to beat you. But if you have the unicorn, now your bound takes you this far. And now you're ready to use your bound and then do the second one. And the second one's going to be long enough to catch them. So with this add-on, with this little brown add-on, you actually have a lot more choices in chase. It helps a lot around common structures like shack or TLs or jungle gyms, I suppose. Any, any common wall like that where you have to beat people around corners, this add-on helps you get there faster and can be a little bit unexpected. Uh, it's my personal favorite and I think other Wesker's favorite too. The walkie-talkie is the exact opposite. If you are chasing someone around a corner and you are right here, your first dash is so short that you literally have to keep walking and you can only use it really, really badly. Um, yeah, imagine if nurse was the opposite. Imagine if your first, long, uh, if your first nurse uh, teleport was very short and the second one was long. It would be so much harder than if it's the opposite, right? Normally you want your first one to be close to the target and the second one to just finish the deal. Uh, this also introduces a little problem with the walkie-talkie, and it's what happens if you miss. Uh, let's talk about them again. If I... Um, the normal second bound is long, with the unicorn it's shorter, and with the walkie-talkie it's longer. So let's say that instead of hitting a survivor, I accidentally miss and I send myself off. You are much better off with the unicorn or with the default because they don't send you off too far. If you have the walkie-talkie and you miss, you're going to send yourself so far, the survival will make so much distance. So it's very punishing for that type of mistake. So yeah, hopefully you understand what makes these add-ons similar and why one of them is just so much better. Um, then we have the video conference device. The video conference device is one of two add-ons that increases the infection rate. The other one is the green herb. The green herb, that is a purple, but yeah. So this add-on increases um, the infection when you hit them with an attack. And this add-on increases the infection when... Actually, it just increases it passively. It just stonks. It just, it just goes up. Whew. Really, really nicely on its own. Uh, long story short... Take my word for it, this add-on is incredible and this add-on is doo-doo. This add-on is terrible. This add-on only really does something when you hit a survivor two or three or four times. And by then, I mean, the second time, this should already be down. It should be a miracle if they somehow get hit three times and, go, and don't go down. That's not, that's not how DBD works. So this add-on really adds nothing to the table. Keep in mind that if a survivor is fully infected and you hook them, they reset the infection back. So this add-on is just doesn't help a lot. However, the video conference device seems to be almost better than the add-on suggests. And instead of having to wait uh, 40 or 50 seconds, now in about 30 seconds, survivors that are infected passively get fully infected. Uh, if you pair these two add-ons together, that means that if you chase someone at the start of the game, in very few seconds, they will be fully infected. And once they're fully infected, don't forget, you can instant on them, but they also get a massive slowdown, which makes looping very, very difficult. So because this puts a lot of pressure on survivors that are unhooked, survivors that are infected early, survivors in general that become infected, because this puts so much pressure on them to get stuff done fast and helps you in tunneling people off, in getting people once they are fully infected, it is quite nasty. The next add-on is a little bit harder to assess. It's called the Laugh Photo. And this add-on replaces your ability to vault pallets. If you come across a pallet that is dropped and you use your power on it, it will be like a window. You will go over it, which you just like that. And this is not incredible, but it can be helpful sometimes. However, with this add-on, none of that. You just straight up break it. You have a very reasonable, very fast, not super OP ability where you just slap the pallet and break it. Is this a massive upgrade? No. It's it's not super clear whether breaking a pallet or, or vaulting over it is that much better. I think overall, though, it is an upgrade. And it also allows you to break breakable walls. This pairs really well with perks like Thwack, which trigger when you break uh, something. So it's quite nice. It's really, really uh, quite nice. Um... And overall, I think that if you use it to zone survivors out effectively, it can be it can be an okay add-on. The only regret you might have bringing this add-on is that maybe you forget instead, you, you neglect instead to bring another add-on that you could have liked a little bit better. Now we have the Jewel Beetle. 
The jewel beetle is a strange add-on, okay? Uh, whenever Wesker grabs a survivor, first they will drag them. This will be a drag. They will drag them from a distance, and then they will throw them for another distance. This add-on increases the thrown distance. What this means... Oh, actually, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about another one. Uh, this add-on decreases the drag distance. This means that instead of grabbing a survivor and dragging them along, Wesker will drag them and throw them almost immediately. Now, you might think that this is a meme add-on, and it kind of seems like it is, but it actually turns out that it's pretty strong. Instead of If instead of slamming a survivor against something, you throw them against that thing, Number one, you start to recover your power sooner. Number two, you put them in a really bad position while retaining your, your position, which means that if they're in a corner of the map, now they have to go back through you. So you're kind of zoning them out. And yeah, this often results in multiple hits back to back. It is a bit risky, but it's very effective, especially in maps that aren't super, super huge. So instead of slamming them, you throw them. Uh, if they're fully infected, I mean, it's it's a it's a worse thing because you want to slam them because that will insta them. But in most of the situations, it's it's quite nice. So this add-on is quite cute, and it helps you do that. Um, it helps you be ambitious and go for throws rather than slams, which overall are better. The reason why throws are a little bit better is because Wesker is a bit strange. Okay, if you slam a survivor, you you slam them against the the wall and then put them on your back. And then your cooldown at that moment begins, and you get your power. But when you throw them, your cooldown begins immediately when you throw the survivor, and your power comes back sooner. So it's easier to use your power, and then use your power repeatedly. And next up is the Euroboros Tendril. It's a very simple, very minor add-on that has an effect that is probably quite nice, but it's a little bit hard to tell. It gives you, I believe, a 5% increase in speed when you hold your tentacle. Uh, the main thing that this does, if you hold your tentacle and you cancel it, you lose less distance. If you hold your tentacle and you try to go around the corner before you release it, it's a bit of a long animation, so you waste a bit less distance. It's a nice add-on that increases your power a little bit. Uh, next up, the gloves. The gloves increase your recharge by 10%. Compared to other killers, this 10%, it's not that strong. But many times with Wesker, you will realize that you need to use his power and he's like, oh, he's like one, one percent off and you still can't use it. And this add-ons help in those situations a lot. It helps you spam your power a lot more. Fun fact, the more survivors are infected, the faster his power recharges. So that adds up to the effects of this add-on. Next up is the egg. Now we're going to talk about the egg and the loose crank together. All right. So as we explained earlier, uh, Wesker has a bound that is a bit shorter, and then he has a little bit of time in between where he can decide what to do, and he can even move a little bit into position. And then he has another bound, uh, the second one, that is a little bit longer. These add-ons affect this time in the middle. With the loose crank, Wesker can move a little bit faster, very, very slight, 8%. 8% of the movement speed that he has here. It's very it's very small. So he can move a little bit more. So he can maybe maneuver a bit better and, and, and go around some corner before he can do his second dash. And with the egg, this time here is increased by 50%. And this has two effects. The first one is very immediately obvious. If you have more time to prepare your attack, you have more time to make your mind up. And if a survivor is trying to like dodge it and outweigh it, you might outplay them. But then you play the game a bit more and you might realize, ah, what if I do one bound and I just want to stop? Now I have to wait 50% more. That's one extra second. Ooh, I don't like this. So it feels like it's a bit wasteful. But then you realize something else. And it's the fact that the loose crank is actually just much worse than this add-on. Uh, because this add-on takes the speed curve and it stretches it, it also changes it. So when you're moving as Wesker, right, you move fast and then you move slow. And that's it. But when you use the egg add-on, it extends this formula, it extends this graph by 50%, right? So look at my speed now. Oh, what, what is that? Look at that, look at that. I'm keeping more of my speed for a longer period of time. It, it messes a little bit with the momentum and the speed. And... The more I've asked Wesker players, the more I've realized that they seem to agree, and I and my calculations seem to 
my tests seem to confirm this too. I'll make a video about it eventually. That this add-on actually does the exact same thing as the loose crank. It in, it indirectly increases your speed, and it also helps you in some uh, advanced techs like rebounds, where you where you uh, where you bump into something and then try to bounce out of it into another attack. This add-on is apparently. Uh, quite good at doing that. Enough to be the best down in the world? Definitely not. And the loose crank is, has a very, very small effect, hence its position on the tier list. But now you understand what these two add-ons do. Next up, we have two add-ons that show you the auras of survivors around their infection. The first one is this... What is this called again? I forgot. Um, let me find out. The curiosity is killing me. All right, I couldn't believe it, but it's literally called the Euroboros virus. So this is the virus, and this is the helicopter stick. So <laughs> uh, the virus shows you the aura of survivors for four seconds when their infection hits full. And the helicopter stick shows you the aura of, that's right, uh, eight seconds of survivors after they have removed the infection with the first aid spray. Now, when they do that, you already hear a killer instinct. So seeing the aura on top of a killer instinct, you might find that a little bit overkill, uh, but it's still useful. It's still nice to see where they're going and maybe that's the survivor that you're most interested in. So it can be all right. This one, however, is arguably a little bit better. If you play close attention to the HUD, you will notice at some point a survivor has made a mistake, especially if you run this other add-on, and their infection has gone to full. If at that point you have lost them, you can look around and see if their aura is visible, and then you can go and prevent them from using that vaccine, uh, that first aid spray. So you can really, really mess with them a bit. Uh, an add-on that can go really well with the helicopter stick that we just talked about is the bullhorn. It has a similar effect. Whenever a survivor cleanses itself, let me make sure I'm right. That's right. Uh, whenever a survivor cleanses themselves, you will see their aura for 8 seconds, and they will also be oblivious for 30 seconds. So now you know where they are, and they don't know exactly where you're coming from. Uh, the dark glasses have a different spin, but it's a similar idea. If a survivor becomes fully infected, if the infection reaches full, you will be undetectable not to them, but to everyone for, I think, 20 seconds. So this might never happen, but if it does, it can help you. And having a killer like Wesker, who has a 40 meter turret radius, have no turret radius, is honestly quite scary. So all of these add-ons serve a similar purpose, which is to search and destroy um, and disrupt survivors after or before they deal with their infection. Next up, the safe. Whenever you hit a survivor with their... With your tentacle, they get hemorrhage. Only hemorrhage, uh, which means that they will have a harder time healing if they get interrupted. I honestly slept on this add-on. I thought this add-on was very meh hemorrhage on its own without sloppy butcher, without mangle. Who cares, right? But remember that this is a killer that has a big terror radius, and he can use he can use perks such as Cordophobia very effectively to make the whole healing idea very, very difficult to pull off if he comes close to you. So it might have a place in some builds, though I don't think of it very highly. We then have the Golden Chalice. Uh, this add-on is essentially the opposite of the Jewel Beetle. Instead of having a grab and then a throw that is normal, with this add-on you make the grab go very long. And I mean very, very long. You will grab a survivor and then drag them for like so many meters so that it's easier to slam them. I also honestly thought very lowly of this add-on. The reason what makes this add-on good, I thought, is the reason that this add-on is bad. Uh, but also, uh, but I've been I've been enlightened a little bit, and some West comments that I uh, that I talked to uh, make the very valid point that this add-on is a little bit of a insurance, right? In your first few chases, it's not too uncommon to accidentally throw a survivor into nothing. And sometimes if a survivor is fully infected, you want to slam them against something and you end up throwing them against nothing. With this add-on, those two situations are less likely to happen. Yes, you are not as likely to get a amazing throw as with the beetle, but you're also less likely to end up hitting a survivor and throwing them into nothing, which is a huge waste of time. So that's pretty nice. Next up is the lion medallion. Again, it's very similar to this add-on, but instead of extending the time where you drag them, it extends the distance that you throw them. So this add-on is honestly quite nice with the beetle, 
And this is the throw Wesker build. Basically, you grab them, you immediately throw them with the Biddle, and then you throw them much further so they're more likely to hit a tree or some obstacle. Not too bad, not too bad. It complements it okay, it has a mild effect. We already talked about the crank, it makes you a bit faster between your bounds. Very minor effect, but it's okay. And then we have the green herb, which is not the green herb. I think this is the call. It's the red herb. It's the red herb, which is green, but it's red. All right. They love doing this. Uh, this makes it so that you take two seconds longer to use a spray. It's a very minor delay, but I mean, it's okay, I suppose. We already explained that this add-on is really bad. And then we have the, um, what is it called? The Siren Medallion? Maiden Medallion, I got it. Uh, this add-on triggers when a survivor is fully infected, the whole thing, and then it makes them blind for 60 seconds. Uh, keep in mind, blind survivors still see the autos of the sprays, so, so it doesn't really mess with them in any way. This is an absolutely horrible add-on. Blindness for 60 seconds, I think on other killers that can apply it quickly is fine. But it's not even, it wouldn't even be too crazy if you play a whole game and no one ever gets fully infected. That can happen. So why would you have a green add-on that might, just, might generally do nothing? Uh, question to ask the developers, I guess. Moving on, we have the knight, and he has a very strange distribution of perks, uh, of add-ons, forgive me. Um, uh, let me take a drink and then we'll dig into this. All right, so fun fact, uh, making the tier list of add-ons for the knight was actually one of the easiest ones out of every killer, because some of his add-ons are very clearly good, some of them are very clearly bad. Um, if I ask, and I did, uh, several Knight players what they think, they might have slightly varying opinions of the precise placements, but in general, they're all going to agree with more or less this distribution. Uh, the Knight's best add-on is possibly the Map of the Realm. The Map of the Realm increases the detection range at which um, your guards detect survivors, and as you can imagine, a survivor being detected or not is a huge deal. Um, when you set out a guard, they have a little range around them. It's a little bit bigger on the jailer. And then the guard will start to run back to where you placed it. So if a survivor is running away from you, it's very likely that you're going to barely, 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 barely miss them. With this add-on, you increase this range by a little bit, enough to catch them very, very consistently. And that is just great for almost every playstyle. I like it feels so bad to send a guard in a very very distant uh, place and then see them right on top of a survivor and then they miss. Oh, that's another fact, by the way. Without this add-on, if you place a guard right on top of a survivor that is moving in a straight line, you will almost never hit them. With this map, you suddenly start to hit them. So this is like increasing your accuracy by a lot. And it is hard to overestimate how important this add-on is. Super, super, super important. Not just for the initial detection, but also the possibility of catching someone a few seconds afterwards. Another add-on that almost feels like it should also be base kit is the Call to Arms. Uh, the Call to Arms does two things. Um, it allows you to place the guards further, and it also makes them... You, you can move faster while you go. The combination of these two things is incredible. You can set out a guard, you can send out a guard from the middle of the map to a gen around the edges and do it really, really quickly. And you can also uh, use your power in chase uh, to a survivor that is in me like at a medium distance away from you, not super close, but not super far either, and catch up to them a little bit faster too. So it is a really, really useful add-on in general that just uses, it just makes your power better in almost every single way. Uh, next up, uh, but not quite as useful, is the dried horse meat. This add-on increases the chase time for every guard by plus four seconds. Uh, if I remember correctly from the top of my head, the guards chase for 12 seconds, uh, unless it's the carnifex, which if I remember correctly is 24. So each of them will get four seconds extra. For the carnifex, it's not that big of a deal because he already chases for a long time, but especially for the other two, especially for the Jailer, who is a little bit faster and actually has a decent chance to hit a survivor, those extra four seconds are a huge deal. You should not trust this add-on with your life. Survivors these days have a lot of speed perks that can easily outrun the guards. They can also grab the flag. They can do a lot of things to outplay this. But in the event that they do not find themselves capable of doing it for whatever reason, this is a lot of extra time that they will be wasting. 
uh, in my personal opinion, with my preferred playstyle, the next add-on that I would uh, place here would be the battle head, the battle axe head. There are um, three add-ons of this type. Let's talk about them, right? The they are the poison blade, the manacles, and the head. Uh, as you know, the 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 knight has three guards: the big carnifex, the smaller but nimble assassin. And the big radius jailer, which has his little stick. Normally, you go one, two, three, one, two, three, and you cycle through them. However, with these add ons, you include two of each guard into the rotation. So if I bring the battle head, I include two carnifexes. So it's one, two, and so on. So why is having a double carnifex such a good idea? The carnifex is amazing at breaking pallets quickly. And if a swapper drops a pallet right in front of you, there is a very common and useful trick where you can insta summon a guard and break the pallet right as it's being dropped to pretty much walk through it. It's like having Spirit Fury, but like way, way better. It's, it's really, really strong. And this is something that makes it so that you now have two chances to immediately walk through a pallet and get it down. I have lost count how many times I have downed the first Swabber in a game in like 20 or 30 seconds because they drop two pallets and I immediately shut up through them. If Swabbers do not learn to play against this playstyle by staying, uh, by not dropping the pallet and taking a risk, they will die. And it's really, really useful. I personally uh, find it quite useful. Um, it also would help also if you brought a certain add-on that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, next up is the contract. This add-on is a little bit silly, okay? Every fourth knight that you sent will have the effect that any swabber near you will become instantable. Normally, that fourth knight changes. Like, the first fourth knight is the carnifex, the second fourth knight is the assassin, yada yada. If you have one of these add-ons, one of these three add-ons, it will always be the Jailer that has this effect. So that's a little bit easier to tell uh, when it's gonna come. This is pretty mean. You can camp someone on the hook, and if someone goes for the rescue, you can set a guard and then insta-down the person that just did it. It has no warning until the last second, and you can also defend gens with guards and spam them a bunch until you get your fourth knight and then be ready to insta on someone. So this is a this is an add-on that is super awkward, super ugly, nothing classy or beautiful or elegant about it, but it's just pure raw power and pure raw chance to insta down and clutch a situation that would otherwise be pretty difficult. So even though it requires you to use your brain a little bit and keep uh, keeping uh, keep the count of which survivor, uh, which guard is your fourth every, every any given time, it does have a bit of a uh, of a potential to be really really nasty. And I've had some really rough games going against it and playing with it. Uh, next is one of the three add-ons that only triggers on a specific guard, and it's the healing poultice. When you send out the second guard, the jailer. Any person near uh, near the the the, the usage uh, near the, the spawn point of the jailer will scream, and this is pretty good to interrupt heals and to trigger deadman switch. So a really effective build with the healing poultice is to bring two um, did I say jailer two assassins yeah to bring two assassins and then kind of spam them after you hook someone to trigger this effect and make people block gens. It's quite okay, it's an, it's an interesting uh, build and it works fairly well. So yeah, it's really not too bad. Uh, and it also obviously makes people scream and you can find them also for tracking purposes. It's not an incredible add-on, but as you will see from now on, the add-ons get worse and worse. But yeah, the, the treated blade or the poison blade, it gives you two assassins. I don't think it's super good. But assassins are pretty nice with the extra chase time and are pretty nice with this. So that's an idea you could bring. The next one is the Iridescent Banner. And this is... Uh, it, it, is a, it is a fun add-on. It does two things, okay? Uh, first of all, it blocks windows. So if you, if you are using your knight sending form and you bring a knight through a window, that window will automatically get blocked by the entity. And you can do this to multiple windows. So if there's a particular part of the map that gives you trouble, you could preemptively block it with this bamboozle-like add-on. 
And it also has an even more powerful effect in the endgame. Uh, whenever survivors are at the exit gates... Uh, I don't know why I made it look like that. <laughs> whenever survivors are at the exit gates and they're teabagging you, if you plant the guard right on top of them, the exit gates will be blocked as well. And you have a chance to go on down them and kill a survivor that would have otherwise gotten away. So it's like a mini blood warden. It is a bit gimmicky and survivors could catch on to it. Uh, and they could, you know, do some tricks to play around it, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. We then have the flint and steel. This add-on goes well with double carnifex because it only triggers on carnifex, which is the first card. Every time you send a carnifex, you will see the aura of survivors around drop pallets. This is a little bit weird. Uh, there's not a lot of reasons to leave pallets dropped in the map. If they have a a, a character with any means necessary, they could go and pick each pallet up really, really quickly. So watch out, right? Um, but there are a few situations where it can be a bit clutch. Um, if a survivor drops a pallet, you can go around it, then send a Akani to break it, and you'll see the aura of the person that dropped it, and you'll see if they're trying to do a mind game. Basically, this is an add-on that you have to have a little bit of faith on. You need to put it on, and then see for yourself what kind of value you can get. It also really, really helps in a few maps that have really bad pallets. So for example, in Dead Dog Saloon, uh, we have the shack right here, we have the main building right here, uh, a bunch of little structures over here, here's the windmill, and over here, near, near the shack, there is a pallet that is really, really bad. And then throughout the map, there's also a couple other pallets that are really not too good. You can leave those pallets, leave them down, do not break them, and then every time you use the Carnifex, you're going to have a radar around each of these pallets that will find survivors. And that is pretty clutch. I've actually gathered really nice information with that. So in certain maps, if you have a bit of faith, this add-on could give some returns. Otherwise, it's really nothing to write home about. We then have the Town Watch um, Torch. Uh, this add-on is getting buffed, thank goodness, in the next update. And basically, every time you send a guard and the guard fails to find a survivor, and this happens twice, you will become undetectable for a little while. And then maybe you can sneak up on someone. Okay, cool. Nothing crazy. It's a very short duration. But you get it kind of for free. So it's not too bad. Not too bad. Um, uh, next up. The Greaves. Uh, this add-on triggers only when you set out the Jailer. A.K.A. the third guard. And when you do that, you get a 10% speed boost, which is very significant for, I think, 5 or 10 seconds. I believe it's 5 seconds. It's pretty good. It's not too bad. The, the Jailer is not an incredible guard. He's not super good at almost anything other than having a bigger detection. Uh, but the ability to just drop him on a pallet or a, or a gen or something and then try to catch up on a loop against someone in the next few seconds with this incredible speed is actually quite nice. Keep in mind... The, the knight has a passive ability, where if he sends a guard really, really far, he also gets a, speed, uh, a movement speed boost. So say that you are in a loop somewhere with someone, and then you send a, a jailer really far away, that movement speed would stack with that 10%. So it can be all right. Uh, we now have two add-ons, by the way, in the game that are bugged. Uh, it's the hilt and the chains. Right now, in my version of the game, both of these add-ons are described as being hemorrhage when a guard hits a survivor. Uh, this is a bug. This one should be mangled. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret. There's a lot of survivors that once they realize that they're going to get hit by a guard, they just, they just go and get hit by you. You know, many times you don't, even though a guard might help you get a hit, it's not the guard that gets the hit. It's you that gets the hit. So these add-ons are both pretty useless. But if you're going to run one, at least make it the mangled one. Because that one's a little bit more... It's a little bit more consistent. We then have the Iron Mask. Whenever a survivor escapes a... Um, a hunt. They become blind for a... I believe 60 seconds. Uh, I mean, it's somewhat easy to apply, so it's likely to work several times per game. It's not too bad. Uh, we then have these uh, manacles, I believe they're called, and these make it so that you get two jailers in a row. There's not a lot of reasons to have two jailers. Uh, two uh, cardifexes are good. Two assassins can fit some builds. The two cardifex, uh, two jailers, uh, I don't find a lot of reasons, so this add-on's not too good. You could run it with the greaves, 
uh, did I say greases earlier? Yeah, the greaves to have two 10% um, back to back, and that can be all right, but eh, not not super, super powerful. Right now, the, the, the Jailer is possibly the weakest of the three guards, so having two of them is more of a detriment than anything. Uh, this little... Uh, <laughs> this little, what are they called? Prongs? Tongs? Um, something? Uh, this add-on will trigger whenever um, a survivor has escaped multiple um, guard hunts in a row, and it will make them oblivious, but for a very, very, for a very, very small, dist for a very small duration. Uh, honestly, hardly, like one of the worst screens you could possibly bring. We already explained that this is hemorrhage, not very good. And then there's the blacksmith hammer. This add-on is super, super pathetic. When a survivor escapes a hunt without, by outlasting it, they get a 3% slowdown and they are exhausted for a few seconds. Now, mind you, mind you, if you hit them during a, a chain, during a, during a, a chase, this doesn't count. If they grab the banner, this doesn't count. And if they get hit, this doesn't count. So this only works if they outrun the guard for whatever seconds. What? And when they do that, they are almost, almost guaranteed to be very far away from you. Why would you care about slowing them down for 3% for, I believe, 5 seconds? That is so pathetic. That is one of the weakest purple add-ons in the game. An absolute mistake. Like the effect is good, don't get me wrong, but the trigger condition is unrealistic and the and the effect size is extremely small. So yeah, this add-on is in do do need of a nerf. <laughs> Sorry, a buff. But it's probably not as bad as the next three. Uh, these three add-ons are arguably worse than nothing. The first one I think is called the Tattered Clothes. This make guards move faster during the patrol. You might think this is a good thing. If a guard moves faster, then survivors might react uh, a little bit uh, worse to its detection and they might get caught. It's kind of like trying to avoid a security camera in Metal Gear that's spinning really quickly. It seems like harder, right? But in reality, this might actually be a bit of a nerf. Uh, think about when you're chasing a survivor, right? Let's say the survivor is right here and they're running away from you. And you place a guard right at their back. And the guard has a detection range, and this detection range increases. And normally, if you're very close, the detection increases and envelops the survivor. But what happens if the guard is really fast and it moves back towards me, which is what they do, faster than normal? That might mean that the guard is so quick that by the time the survivor is 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 running away, the guard is already a bit too far and the detection is a little bit out. So this add-on can actually make your detection move away from the survivor and miss them. So it's almost like not having this, but worse. That's pretty bad. That's really not too good. Uh, then we have the greedy lump of bread or whatever. Uh, this add-on makes it so that, so that the guards stay on the hunt for longer. It adds... They buffed this add-on, and they made it worse by bu by buffing it. It adds a few seconds into their into the time they are patrolling. I'm gonna tell you right now, you almost never ever want a guard to patrol around the map forever. You want them on top of a survivor, or you want them to kick a generator. Many times, when a, when a guard is patrolling a, a place forever, that means that you fail to find someone, and in that situation, you want your guard back as soon as possible. If this add-on had was the opposite effect, it would actually be pretty good. Because that would mean that you can send the guard, it failed to do its job, but you get it back. You get your next guard back immediately. If you have this add-on and you send a jailer out and the jailer doesn't find anyone, you will not have a power for like 30 seconds. It's going to be really, really bad. So do not use this add-on. Uh, next is the pillage meat. This add-on makes it so that guards break things faster. Your summon guards. Um, the Carnifex is already really fast at breaking things, and he doesn't need this add-on. And the other two are slow, but this add-on is not too good. Um, sometimes it's actually a good thing that they're slow, because it means that they block a gen while they're kicking it for longer. So if a gen is like 99%, 
this add-on hurts you. You actually want the, the, the guards to be slow so that they kind of block the gen and no one can do it for those six seconds that they normally take. So yeah, this add-on is of extremely dubious effect and you probably shouldn't run it either. Moving on, we have Skull Merchant, a difficult character to rank because the effects of her add-ons are small and compounding and her playstyle is not always consistent. People play her in different ways. The two add-ons that seem to stand out in a more aggressive playstyle are the Strove Lights and the Geographical Readout. The Strove, the Strove Lights are extremely simple. Whenever you activate a drone area, any survivor that is caught within that drone area gets a 3% slowdown for a little bit, for a few seconds. Only at the start, not throughout, not forever, not for a lingering amount, just, just a little bit at the start. It doesn't seem too good. It doesn't seem too good, but let's keep that in mind, okay? Minus 3%. Uh, the geographical readout on top of that gives you a boost of speed to your movement speed and to your action speeds for every survivor that is currently being tracked by a drone. Um, this is on top of the normal movement speed that the Skull Merchant gets. So the Skull Merchant, if she has a person in her in her drones, she becomes faster. And with this add-on, you increase that by an extra 2%, I believe. So essentially, you're going to be doing a minus 3% and a minus, say, 5% on you. Maybe now my plus 2% on top. So when you put all of this together, you are going to find yourself in loops where you're moving at 122 and Subaru is moving at like 98% speed. And with these two add-ons, essentially, Shag, Jungle Gyms, almost every single loop in the game becomes much more one-sided. They will get one loop around it if they're lucky, and if they greet it, they might get hit because you're just so much faster. The more people are detected by your radars elsewhere or whatever, the faster you break and do stuff as well. So yeah, that's what these two add-ons do and that's what makes them powerful. Uh, the next three add-ons we're gonna talk about uh, are, or the next two add-ons that we're gonna talk about are related to the skill check uh, style of playing Skull Merchant. If you're more the kind of person that as of the current Skull Merchant, you can totally do this, you like to just trap gens and just defend them forever, uh, these two add-ons are really, really uh, good for that. Um, the first one makes it so that you have the Hunter's Lullaby effect and the skill checks that happen, shoo, they come without a warning. You don't have a warning. Um, did, I, did I get that right? Um, hold up. Am I, am I mixing them up? I think so. <laughs> let, me, let me double check. Um, uh, did I mix them up? Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I had a crisis of faith, but no, I was right. Uh, the shotgun speakers... Uh, will make the skill check warning, the little shilling sound that comes with our skill check, completely gone. Even if they turn off the the drone, they still have a lingering effect of this type for the next 15 seconds. And the other brown add-on, the Adi Balenter, whatever, um, does a similar thing, but instead of making the skill checks have no warning, it just makes them a little bit smaller. These two things combined are pretty nasty. And if on top of that, you have skill check perks and lullaby and so on, missing a skill check becomes very easy and extremely punishing. Also appropriate for this playstyle is the brown noise generator. This add-on makes it so that any survivor within the range of a drone is oblivious and also lasts for a bit afterwards. This might seem a little bit uh, overkill, since the Skull Merchant herself already becomes stealthy when she's in a drone, but the nice thing about this is that if you're defending three gens like this, you're constantly moving in, you're, they're probably not gonna be this close, you're constantly moving in and out of these areas, and your terror radius is going on and off, and this makes it so that anytime survivors have to deal with this, you are going to keep coming at them, being faster than usual and surprising them and catching them off guard and making it that much harder to focus on the gens, the skill checks, and also whether or not you're about to go there and impale them. So it is a nasty, nasty add-on for that playstyle. Uh, another add-on that I wouldn't be uh, super um, surprised if you thought this was a mistake is the next one. Uh, what is the, what is the, is it the navigation system? Let me read it. Uh, Advanced Movement Prediction, forgive me. The Advanced Movement Prediction looks very similar to the Geographical Readout. 
but it does something a lot simpler. Whenever someone steps into your trail, you will see their aura for a little bit. This helps in loops. This helps to defend totems. This helps to defend gens. It helps you to stay in the know of what's going on and see what survivors are doing. Needless to say, if they stay there a long time and you become detectable or you have the brown noise generator, then you can go and mess with them. The batteries are an interesting iridescent add-on. It basically makes everyone start out with a claw trap. It's a very short-lived claw trap. It's the type of trap that they would get when they hack your drones. And this does two things for you. Number one, it makes you very fast. If everyone uh, has a claw trap, oh, doesn't that contribute to your speed? Mm, yeah, as long as they have a claw trap, I think it does. Uh, so I think this should contribute to your speed, if I'm not mistaken. And more importantly, you can bring your little radar and immediately check the locations of everyone. So with this, you have like a budget lethal pursuer where you can find people really quickly. And on top of that, if survivors are a bit silly and they fastball a pallet, they will automatically break it if you are quick enough to catch up. So this makes your early game a little bit better, although a lot of skill merchants do not really care about the early game. Uh, they worry more about the last few gens. Um, let me make sure I don't get these add-ons wrong. Uh, this is, I'm going to tell you, I'm so sorry. I don't remember the names. I'm going to be completely honest. This is the powdered glass. Uh, the powdered glass inflicts, I do remember the, um, I do remember the effect though. It inflicts both hemorrhage and, uh, mangled if you hit a survivor with a claw trap on it. I remember correctly, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, so essentially this is punishment. And slow down anytime survivors try to get rid of your drones, you will make the recovery a little bit slower so that you can defend um, uh, you, you can defend your threesion or whatever you're interested in defending, such as your totems, a little bit better. Uh, right, so uh, a very minor correction before I go ahead is that the geographical readout does not affect you based on the amount of survivors that are on your on your drones, it works when you yourself are on the drones and it gives you a flat increase of 2% on your movement speed and 15% on all the action speeds like braking and vaulting and so on. So I'm very sorry that was a slight inaccuracy. I would be sad to uh, misinform you. Uh, moving on, we have add-ons that start to have smaller effects that are not that good. Uh, we are on the lower half. The first one is the floodlights. This is a simple one and I actually quite like it. Uh, anytime a swabber is within the range and for a little bit after, they are blind. And believe it or not, this is a killer that already requires a lot of teamwork. And if the kill, uh, if the survivors have a perk to see you coming, or if they have a perk to keep up with their teammate and so on, and they lose it for a while, I do believe that blindness on this killer, even if it's short, is not too bad for uh, for a pretty effortless add-on anyway. Uh, the prototype razor is a very strange add-on. Think of it like a play with your food, okay? So first, in order to activate this add-on, you need to set up a drone. Then the, no the drone needs to run out, and then it goes into the little search mode where it has like a little rotating, um, like a little rotating uh, detection mode. And if this detection mode detects a survivor, the add-on turns on, and it gives you a permanent. 5% movement speed, which is very significant, and it stacks with everything else, until the next time when you get a hit. This sounds really good. Getting a 5% extra speed that helps you get a hit that you might be struggling with sounds good, but the, the trigger condition is ultimately a little bit too difficult for you to consider running this. The geographical readout is an extra 2%, and it's very, very simple. And this add-on is a guaranteed 3%, and together both is a 5%. So these two add-ons, which are nice together, are a lot more um, consistent than the 5% that you get for, from this add-on, even though it's fairly unique. We then have the Iridescent Unpublished Manuscript. This is a weird add-on, okay? When you activate manually one of your own drones, it automatically creates a little 32 meter terror radius around it. So this is meant to kind of mess with survivors a little bit and try to inflict terror radius perks like Cobrophobia, Unnerving Presence, yada yada. There are some gimmicky builds you could run with this, but I am yet to find one that makes me think, yeah, this is incredible. Um, it doesn't really help too much. And it also has its own little cooldown. Uh, the screw, the, the loose screw is an add-on that exhausts survivors that are into an active area. 
and personally I don't think too highly of it. The this killer is such a territorial killer that the uh, the that survivors running away is you know it's not like you're really going to do anything that much different in my opinion, but I guess it can help with mate for this. It can help with the occasional dead heart and it can give you a bit of peace of mind. Uh, does it linger for a bit? Yeah, 3 seconds after they leave the area of effect. Which means that if they stand still for a couple seconds, they got it. We then have the adaptive lightning, lightning, and the ultrasonic speaker. Both of these add-ons do a little bit; uh, they do slightly different things, uh, but they're very, very similar. So one of them, um, let me get it right. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, one of them makes it so that when you become undetectable by being inside one of your drones, and you leave it you normally keep the undetectable for a couple seconds. This extends it for 50%, which I think gives you one more second. That means that if you're going in and out of your zones, you will be undetectable for an extra second, and that could lead to something. Uh, the brown add-on is a little bit simpler. This one takes place when you enter a zone. It just makes the effect of undetectable kick in a little bit sooner. You could stack them, and this would make you a little bit more unpredictable, but ultimately you might as well just run the brown noise generator, which is a lot more reliable with a single add-on slot. We then have the infrared upgrade. This is a super, super super simple add-on. Whenever they have a whenever they have a claw trap and they end up removing it, you will see the aura for, let me check, I believe it's four seconds. Only four seconds. It's similar to barbecue and chili. But yeah, it's not it's not that big of a deal. Uh, survivors that get rid of the claw trap, they're probably far away. If you're chasing them, the, the claw trap gets removed in chase um, and it could be okay, but then you might be there to hit them anyway. Uh, I don't find this super useful. The, um, the advanced movement speed uh, is a lot better because that shows you artists at a time where you can actually do something about it. So I think pretty lowly of this add-on. Even though... Even though you could run it with this add-on so that you get auto-reading at the start of... The, oh, sorry. With the other eerie add-on, so you get auto-reading on everyone when they start to remove their claw traps, which is nice. We then have the high current upgrade, which allows you to reset manually your uh, drones faster. So if you have drones that you're constantly resetting to keep an eye on gens or totems or whatever, with this you can spam that ability, but it's a very, very minor one. It's a very, very minor upgrade. Instead of being able to do it every, I believe, 10 seconds or so, this is a 10% increase. So this will save you one second, which is not that critical in this context. Um, we then have the stereo microphone. This is also a similar effect. When you first set up a drone, it has a few seconds, I believe 10, where survivors are unable to touch it. The drone, in fact, is enveloped in like a little bit of a wind. It has a little windy effect and it's high up and you cannot touch it. This is the unhackable state. This add-on adds one second to it. Yes, the unhackable state, if you're being really up, uh, if you're really, really, if you're being really annoying with drones, it can be a bit annoying. But an extra second on top of ten, yeah, it's really not that worth it. Yet another add-on coming up that just saves a little bit of time and it's not worth it. The Bytos targeting processor. Whenever swabbers get into a zone, they slowly get fully, fully, fully marked, and when this fully fills up, bang, they get exposed, and you can instant on them. With this, you will do it ten percent faster. Honestly, the game, like you, the need you the, the thing you need to understand is that this game, if the if the killer is playing in a in a chase oriented manner with these two items, for example, none of these things matter. They none of these things matter. They're they're far too slow paced, right? Or they're, they're far too little, and this is far too fast. And if the killer is playing in the opposite way, if the killer is playing in the oh I'm gonna kick gents forever, then these one second or two they don't matter because survivors will honestly be in a game for 40 minutes anyway. And what does it matter if they get exposed 10% faster? It's really not a big deal. Uh, we then have the supercharge. This is an add-on that increases the battery life of the traps a little bit, uh, which means that after they disarm a drone, you'll be able to track them for longer. This is a bit of a double-edged blade. It does mean that you could you can benefit from the whole drone debuff, uh, the whole claw trap debuff longer, and just survive longer and track them longer. But it also means that you don't get your drone back as quickly. So 
It has ups and it has downs, and I'm not really sure you should bring it. It could almost almost be argued that it's an F tier add-on that is honestly worse than nothing. And then we have uh, the low uh, power mode. This is a really bad add-on. Uh, basically, when you set a drone, as I explained, it stays um, it stays on, and then after a few seconds, it goes into scanning mode and it starts to look out for survivors and it spins around. This add-on makes it so that it takes a little bit longer to go into scout mode. And let me tell you what, it doesn't matter. The moment it goes into scout mode, you can look at it with your little PDA and then turn it back on. So this add-on makes basically no difference. Uh, long story short, add-ons from here on out are pretty meh. Uh, add-ons from here determine your playstyle a little bit and the ones in the middle uh, can swing a little bit both ways. That's a summary of the Skull Merchant. Moving on to the... Um, to the Singularity, I think I remember most of this add-on names, but I'm going to have them on the side because I'm pretty sure it's been so many hours. I'm so sorry. I got this. So let's talk about the Denied Requisition Form. This add-on is very similar to the video tape on the pick. Instead of, st uh, instead of spawning with uh, a bear trap on everyone on their heads, they all start slipstream. And for the first 30 seconds of the match, they have no... Uh, EMPs whatsoever is building up. This turns you into a really strong early game killer. Um, the more people that are slipstream, the faster that your that your teleport overclock mode lasts, which is a neat detail. So this makes you a very very strong killer in the early game, and it denies their main counterplay for the. It's not just the first thirty seconds, right? Because after the first thirty seconds, they need to start building out the EMPs for it. So it's very safe to say that for the first minute or two, survivors will not be able to fight back with the EMPs against your power, and you will be able to immediately chase them and pressure them. And needless to say, this is a very, very strong add-on, possibly his best. Um, I think in public matches, it could easily be his best. And that's, that's really, really nice. Uh, then we have the Soma family photo. This add-on has a small downside in that it makes your... Um, your overclock mode lasts a little bit less. This has upsides and downsides, but mostly downsides. It's a bad thing, but it also gives you a small boost of 5% whenever you teleport to a survivor. And it's already so difficult to catch up to survivors that this 5% is absolutely a blessing. And some of the high level singularity players that I know seem to really favor it and seem to really, really like it. Keep in mind that you can still have a longer overclock with the um, with the gloves that we'll talk about in a second. And if you infect multiple survivors with your sleepstream or they infect each other, your, um, your overclock mode also lasts longer the more infected people there are. Uh, then we have the... Okay... Uh, the diagnostic tool and the crew manifest. I'm so sorry, I didn't remember the names of this uh, from the top of my head. Uh, I think the the crew manifest is a little bit better, um, but it's honestly a bit arguable. Uh huh. Okay, let me make sure I get them right. All right, apologies. There were some changes to these add-ons, and I had to double check for my sanity. I think my brain isn't quite there. Uh, so let's talk about the repair tool. Um, the diagnostic tool um, construction and the crew manifest. Uh, both of these add-ons do something similar at different stages. Um, the okay, get it right, get it right. Uh, the diagnostic tool will show you the aura. I'm, dude, I, how am I forgetting this? Uh, I just read it. It's not that difficult. Why am I confusing them so much? The diagnostic tool will show you the aura of someone that just picked up an EMP. And this used to be really, really strong when this killer came out and EMPs were even faster than they are now. Now it's not such a big deal. But what this add-on allows you to do is to preemptively pre prepare uh, ahead of what survivors are thinking about doing. Many times when you play this killer, you will notice that you sleep stream, sleep stream a survivor and they have an EMP on their hand and you think, when did they pick this? Or they get cleansed by an EMP that someone else is using and you're like, where did they come from? With this add-on, you will occasionally notice the autos of survivors trying to pick up EMPs and you will be able to plan slightly better ahead of time and have a better awareness of what everybody is doing. And that is really, really nice. On the other hand, the crew manifest. 
is a little bit more complex. Anytime that you infect a survivor yourself or basically uh, it doesn't work with the denied requisition form. So it doesn't work if they're out of the slipstream at the start of the match. But if you slipstream them throughout the match, one way or another, their aura will be shown to you. So if they infect each other or if you hit them with a camera, they will have their aura revealed to you. And it also has a side effect where it increases the range that survivors can infect each other. But as we will talk about later, when we reach this add-on, it's not a big deal. The big, big deal about this add-on, it's the auto reading. This means that if a survivor goes around shack and you hit them with a quick camera, you can then see after hitting them where they're going and then and then line up a shot with your gun to teleport directly to them. The auto reading from this, I think is really, really good. And I think it's my favorite add-on of the bunch. Although I cannot for the life of me tell, the, tell these two apart. Uh, then we have the Iridescent um, Crystal Shard. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward add-on. I don't find it as useful as this, but it has a similar effect. Whenever you place a Viopod, it actually detects people around it and will show you their aura. It's useful around noobs for a similar reason, but sometimes you will be placing pods on very elevated areas that are very obviously nowhere close to a survivor. So I don't find this one quite as useful, though th technically there's nothing stopping you from putting pods everywhere to check people. Keep in mind though, you should not develop uh, a, a, an excessive dependence on auto reading perks. Uh, this one, I believe, doesn't yeah, it, it no longer gives you killer instinct. So this, this add-on could be completely bypassed by survivors that have off the record, distortion, uh, soul survivor, and, and shadow step, and any other perk that they come up with to hide out. So watch out for that. But it's a decent add-on. It's good for tracking. The nutritional slurry is honestly an incredible brown add-on. Normally, by default, you get 10 pots that you can put, 10 cameras that you can put around. With this, you will have an extra two. If you put too many cameras, the previous ones that you started placing will begin to be replaced. So with this, you can ensure that some of the key cameras that you place at the start of the match remain there for a much longer time. And you don't have to stress too much about beginning to replace them too soon. For a brown add-on, I, I honestly think it's incredible. I would not recommend it for very aggressive chase type um, singularity players, because if you're only going to focus on one survivor at a time and just have two cameras at any given time, this is not good. But that's not the way to play singularity. The, the way to play singularity is to definitely make each of your cameras feel uh, threatening for survivors and constantly check on them and constantly keep replacing them and keep um, sleep streaming survivors so that they really feel like they have to use them and PMP, EMPs and waste time. So in that playstyle, this helps quite a bit. The kids, the, the kids baseball glove is a simple add-on that simply gives you a big increase to, uh, for a brown, it's actually pretty big, to the time you stay overclocked. The longer you stay overclocked, the more you can chase a survivor and break a uh, break a wall, a gen, a pallet, or vault much faster than usual. I always forget that it also affects hands. And also the whole thing where if they drop a pallet on you, you can just immediately break it. So having that for a little bit longer feels pretty good. And keep in mind that this also stacks with the usual infection bonus. The more people infected by the slipstream, the longer the infection lasts on top of this add-on. We then have the diagnostic tool repair. This is a nice add-on with a small caveat. Uh, so the idea with this add-on is that anytime you have, uh, you're in overclock, AKA when you're glowing and you're powerful and you hit a survivor, you give them a permanent mangled, which means slower healing. Now, there is one very, very unfortunate fact about this add-on. If you're over, if you're overclock and uh, at the last possible second and you hit them right after, you don't apply the add-on. Also, if you chase a survivor and they drop a pallet on you, we all know what happens when you drop a pallet on Singularity. He immediately gets snapped out of overclock, but he can hit you. So in the many, in the very common scenario where a swabber drops a pallet on you and then you, you power through it and you hit, technically, when that pallet drops, you end the overclock mode. It technically ends it. So unfortunately, when that happens, uh, yeah, that this add-on doesn't get applied. So be careful because this add-on is a lot harder to apply 
at a, at a little bit less consistent than it might suggest otherwise. Maybe that's why it is a yellow add-on. But regardless, giving mangled is never a bad thing. We then have the foreign plant fibers. As I just explained, whenever you uh, destroy a pallet during your overclock, either because you teleport on top of it, uh, and it auto breaks or they drop it on you, you get slowed down very significantly. Sometimes this slowdown is so significant that a survivor can make quite a bit of distance. Uh, with this add-on, you reduce that slowdown by 20%. Uh, not the actual slowdown, but the duration of the slowdown. So a very common thing that you'll do with this add-on, I think it's still, it's still a bit situational, so that's why I don't love this purple add-on, but a relatively common thing that you can do is you chase a survivor, the survivor goes to, let's say, a tight area with a pallet that's been dropped. Let's say this is a drop pallet, I'm not a great artist at this time of the day, and they go through the pallet. When you see them go over it, you teleport and you'll spawn right on top of it. The pallet will immediately snap broken and you'll be slowed down, but with this add-on, a little bit less so. Uh, we then have the spent oxygen tank. This triggers whenever a survivor is slipstream, either manually or, uh, or automatically if they get infected, and it makes them exhausted for three seconds. Only three seconds. This means that if they're doing a gen or whatever, they can shrug it off almost immediately and they'll be fine. But if you're chasing them and applying pressure and not letting them be um, be relaxed for even a second, that means that you are guaranteed to dodge things like Spring Burst, Dead Heart, and so on. In the current meta where many survivors run MFT made for this, this is a really nice add-on to make sure that the person that you're chasing doesn't have a cheeky little 3% extra speed boost. And as such, it is a nice, nice add-on to have to your arsenal, more so to counter those specific perks than on its own merit. Um, the hyper aware spray, the hyper awareness spray is a really interesting add on, okay? Anytime a survivor sleeps stream constantly, and I mean constantly, they will hear your terror radius as if you're about 20 something meters away. This is really freaky. The terror radius is not real, it's a fake terror radius. This means that if you have a perk like Chorophobia to, to make the survivor heal slower, it will not affect them. It doesn't have, they will not scream from infectious or anything like that. It will not do any actual terror radius effect, but it will sound like it's there. That means that if you approach a survivor with or without a terror radius, they're not gonna know you're coming. If you don't have a terror radius, they're gonna be constantly on edge. And if you do have a terror radius, until you get fairly close, they're not going to realize that the real terror radius is beginning to get louder. So you will actually have a bit of a jump, and this will mess with survivors a little bit, to the point where I actually kind of like it a little bit. I did try it with some monitor and abuse shenanigans and didn't have the best success. So uh, don't forget that at the end of the day, uh, against a team that's really aware and really in, com in, in good communication, terror radius is still a bit of a gimmick. We then have the nanomachine gel, I think it's called. Uh, this add-on uh, triggers every time you hit a survivor during overclock, similar to this, and it will make them broken for 20 seconds. It's not a huge, huge, huge deal, but that's 20 seconds, and then a little bit of time after where you can expect them not to be healed by a medkit or anything else. Um, so that's honestly not too bad. Um, we then have, uh, wait, am I getting this right? Is this the life wires? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, this is a bit strange, okay? Um, this makes survivors scream. It makes survivors scream when they remove their sleep stream. Now, most of the times, the survivor removing the own, their own uh, sleep stream with an EMP, they're already not doing anything, so them screaming is not a particularly big deal, and them revealing themselves is also not a big deal. Um, but what often happens is that survivors use EMPs to help their teammates. So this can make that situation backfire slightly. Um, let's assume, for example, that some survivors are healing, uh, two survivors are healing, and then a third one shows up with an EMP, uh, and he goes in there, and then he makes them scream. And now you have a sloppy butcher, and then you show up, and then the healing is interrupted, and you actually can hurt your team by doing this. If you have the perk Deadman Switch, you can also trigger it. So this perk with Deadman Switch and Hemorrhage from Sloppy, stuff like that, can actually make it a little bit easier for, for, for you to interrupt survivors and get an idea of where they are. Still probably inferior to the um, diagnostic tool... Um... Wait, am I right? <laughs> I get them wrong. Uh, to the to the crew manifest, 
But yeah, uh, still a bit inferior to, to that, since that one tells you... Uh, yeah, no, it's it's the repair tool, yeah. Uh, it's still a bit inferior to this one, since this one just warns you when they're picking up EMPs and gives you a bit more uh, information early. But unlike this perk, it doesn't get countered by distortion or any auto-reading, uh, auto-canceling perks, so that's nice. Uh, we then have the heavy water. The heavy water takes the EMPs that spawn um, around the map and... These EMPs are only visible from a certain range, so it means that if a survivor is in a corner of the map, he's only going to see one of the EMPs um, uh, or two that are around him. Well, this takes this range and it reduces it further. That means that survivors will not see multiple EMPs. Maybe in some part of the maps they might not see any. They might have to waste a little bit of extra time looking for one that is highly advanced that they can actually grab. Uh, it's a bit wishy-washy, I'm not going to lie. Survivors have so many chances to grab EMPs. And even if they don't use them, it's not the biggest deal. So ha reducing the, the range from which they are visible is a bit of a hopium uh, strategy where you hope to God that it does something. It's probably better to take more proactive measures. Uh, we then have the cremated remains. Uh, this is a really... really actually, we could, we could cover uh, the next two fairly quickly. Uh, the cremated remains and the uh, hologram generator inflict blindness upon blind uh, upon uh, sleep stream survivors and also obliviousness and the blindness is pretty mild and it's it's not even a long duration uh, let me confirm how long it is it is precisely oh as long as they are as long as they are slipstream okay it's not a fixed duration okay that's not that's not too bad i thought it was 30 seconds uh, it's probably going to come down to about that and the obliviousness is for a fixed duration which i believe is 60 seconds which i can check right now the, like the blindness i don't mind too much but the obliviousness here it's awful normally when you teleport um like this is only when you teleport and you show up there am i correct Yes, that's that's the thing that's that's way way worse. This is only when you teleport and you show up right there. So when you teleport to a survivor and you are literally quite on top of them and you are probably seconds away from hitting them, them being oblivious is one of the dumbest times ever. Obliviousness is a good status effect to apply to a survivor that you have lost so that they are paranoid about how close you are now and whether or not they should do something risky or play it safe. If you make a, a survivor oblivious when you are very clearly on top of them, it is possibly the worst time to do so. Uh, the broken security key is our next add-on, and it's a very simple one. Uh, when your cameras, when your little uh, camera pods get disabled, they go on a very lengthy cooldown where they cannot be used. Most of the times, your best bet is to go there and replace them. But sometimes if the map is big enough or if you're too busy, you're not going to have that privilege. This add-on decreases, I believe, by 15% the time it takes for that EMP to come back online. It would be nice if it was a little bit faster, but in some matches where the EMPs are used enough, you might find that there might be a situation where you can reuse your camera a little bit sooner and you don't have to replace it and 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 have to deal with the EMP too much. So in every now and then it's gonna come in, in clutch a little bit, but it's not too it's not too much. It's only a 15%. We then have two add-ons which we've teased earlier, the cryo gel and the Android arm. The cryo gel makes it so that survivors infect each other 25% faster. And the Android arm is very much like the crew manifest. It gives a plus two meters to the range at which they infect each other. Now I'm going to tell you a little secret. The infection on survivors is worthless. It's absolutely worthless. If a survivor that is slipstream is going to heal another, then yeah, they're probably going to infect each other. Same if the if they uh, if they are unhooking and they're and the unhooking person has a slipstream. But in most of the situations, this does nothing. Survivors need a perfect line of sight. You can have a survivor on one side of the gen, and then another survivor on the other next to them side of the gen, and because there's no perfect line of sight, it doesn't work. This is a very wonky mechanic. I have tried these add-ons in combination. I have tried one of these add-ons in combination with the crew manifest. I have tried every unholy combination of these three add-ons, and I've had games where survivors never infect each other. So for that reason, uh, this the crew manifest is fine because 
it has a good main effect, but these ones I cannot recommend at all. I think they are very, very bad. In most situations where survivors infect each other, they do it without these add-ons. And in most situations where they don't infect each other, these add-ons do not help. For that reason, I think their utility is very, very limited. And then we have the ultrasonic sensor, I think it's called. This add-on makes it so that if you stay on a pod for a extended time, you can actually hear around it. And most of the time, this engenders a, a type of playstyle that I generally do not think is good. Your camera should be checked very quickly and very aggressively. And even though, I don't know, it might help you find something, for the most part, you shouldn't be listening in. Like, if this activates after you've been in a camera for a bit, you start to hear. This is not something you should be doing. Uh, checking on your cameras constantly is a very passive way to play this character that needs to be played at lightning quick reflexes. So, unless you find, unless you've made a discovery that you want to share with us to make me uh, change my mind about this, my first impression on this add on is that it's not very good. And now let's cover uh, the Xenomorph. All right, so big, big disclaimer, big asterisk, the alien, the xenomorph hasn't come out yet. We have only played it on the PTV and not too much. So whereas most other killers in this, um, in this tier list, I have been able to put a lot of hours of research and consulted other players. All of this is almost entirely theoretical. And also it's possible these add-ons could be changed in the future. So knowing that, you will have to take all of what I'm about to say with a huge grain of salt. Uh, that being said, it doesn't seem like the alien has any S tier overpower add-ons. At least it doesn't seem like it at first glance. And it also doesn't seem like he has uh, or it has any awful add-ons that are worse than nothing. So talking about the best ones, I do think it's their ultra rares. It's ultra rares add-ons seem to be the strongest one. And which one exactly takes over? It's a little bit uh, up to debate. Some people would think the acidic blood might be better. I think the the stun the stump rod the stun rod might actually be stronger. Uh, what this add-on does is every time a gen gets done, it shows you massive information of every survivor that is next to a station, uh, the kind of places where the xenomorph can come out of. This is very close, typically, to where gens already are. So this doubles as a really strong information tool and I really do think that this killer has great chase and great mobility and information is pretty much all it needs. So knowing where survivors are and getting a burst of information every time a gen gets done is a very very strong thing. Uh, essentially Whenever a gen gets completed, for the next 15 seconds, you will see everybody that is gathering around the stations, which, as I said, coincides with gens uh, pretty close. So that bit of information, I think, will make this add-on quite insane. It might actually be a little bit weaker even than the next one called the Acidic Blood. Whenever you come out of a tunnel and you're almost going to be in runner mode uh, after you do that, whenever you're in runner mode after coming out of a tunnel, if you get stunned, the person that stuns you with a pallet will be injured they will take a minus one health state and if they were already injured let's say they got unhooked they will now be in deep wound so this is an add-on that allows you to kind of get a free injury if you have enduring you could then follow it up with a tail attack and down them and if someone's out of the hook you could even tunnel them through borrowed time and other endurance effects like from off the record so this seems like a really really nasty add-on in fact yeah it, it sounds like the most impactful uh, but survivors, I think, will soon learn not to do that. Uh, much like with Nemesis, survivors don't typically drop a pallet in front of you. If they do, they must know the consequences. Much like with Legion, um, and especially more so with the Skiller, I think the average survivor will realize that the risk of this add-on is real. And even without this add-on, dropping a pallet often results in you hitting them with your tail over it. So it might actually contribute to survivors playing smart, and it might be a bit hard. But anytime you get a free health state for making a mistake, for getting stunned, it's pretty incredible. Uh, we then have the Harpoon Gun, which I think could be nasty with certain perks. Uh, whenever you come out of a hole and you hit a survivor, people that are far away will scream, if I remember correctly. Let me double check to make sure. That is, yeah, that's exactly right. When you hit a survivor within 10 seconds of coming out of a tunnel, anyone that's far away screams and reveals their location. This seems to me like a... a, a keep in mind that screams are hard to avoid. You need to run Calm Spirit if you want to prevent a scream, and nobody runs Calm Spirit, and nobody ever will. 
probably. <laughs> so this is a really, really strong add-on to find people far away that you might be interested in because you want to kill them and they're the most vulnerable, or just to make them scream and interrupt their, th their action and stop maybe doing a totem or get kicked out of a gem with Deadman Switch and other nasty perks and, and schemes that you might have going. So this strikes me as a 24 meters further. If they are further than that, they scream. Oh no. So yeah, that seems to me like an add-on that has quite a bit of potential. We then have two relatively simple add-ons that also trigger when you hit someone with your with your runner mode. One of them inflicts Mangold, which is this uh, helmet, and the other one inflicts Hemorrhage. Um, it would be nice if they were one together. Uh, the Mangold's probably a little bit good, a little bit better, but the, but the Hemorrhage is, is not completely useless. So you could run them both if you wanted to. We then have the Semiotic Keyboard, and the serial rations. These two add-ons do something similar, okay? Um, the, the serial rations, whenever you are in your tunnels, shows you the autos of the turrets up ahead so that you know where the turrets are. That's really useful. And the semiotic keyboard makes it so that if a turret is placed next to a gen, you can actually check the, the, the color of the gen to know how progress it is. So, essentially, with either of these add-ons, I don't know if you would really want to run them together, uh, with either of these add-ons, you will have information about where survivors are planning to, to make their next move, right? You will all, you're not going to put uh, turrets in areas that you don't plan to visit. You're going to put them next to gens and next to places where you might heal, exigates, whatever. So, this seems to me like a really, really nice set of add-ons, these two, to find out where the action is happening and have an indirect source of information. Um, this is called the self-destruct uh, head or rocket propeller. Self-destruct bolt, that's right. Uh, this is a really crazy one that people were, were speculating about a lot. It essentially makes your vault when you're in runner mode 30% faster. So it's basically like having two bamboozles. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think this is a killer that's gonna follow people through windows a lot. Much like Nemesis, if you chase someone into a window, that might result in a hit with your tail right away. So I don't think it's too crazy, and people, you know, people need to understand that when you compound speeds, they don't, they're not that insane. It's not like this with Bamboozle is gonna be insanely fast. Keep in mind that if you have a 100% faster vault, that doesn't mean that you vault immediately. That doesn't mean the vault is zero. It just means you you go through it twice as fast. So it's not that crazy, but anything that helps in chase as directly and as consistently as that obviously has to be at least a little bit good. We then have the egg. Uh, the egg makes it so that when you're out of your tunnels, you recover your power, your runner mode, a little bit faster. Most of the times, going into tunnels is so, so fast and so, so free that you should already do it and you get your power immediately anyway. But it's a bit like reloading with Hunters. If you reload with Hunters, even if it's fast, you kind of lose uh, the grip that you had on Survivors, right? And that is not amazing. You might sometimes want to continue to chase someone and in those situations where you have a continued ongoing chase, being able to get your power back 25% uh, faster thanks to the egg is a nice thing. So I think for a brown, it's probably quite good. We then have Ripley's Watch, Ripley's Watch, and the Cat Carrier. These two add-ons are basically a consolation for whenever you uh, fail to deal with a turret. Um, um, if you lose your power to a turret with the cat, I believe that you get undetectable for 20 seconds. So it's like, oh, I lost my power, I'm now a normal killer, I lost my mobility and my tail, right? and my smaller terror radius, but hey, I, now I have zero terror radius, so during this time where I'm a bit useless, or I don't have a lot, hey, I'm now a little bit spooky. That's a good thing. And Ripley's Watch is a bit similar, where if you get hit by a turret, you don't have to break it anymore, uh, which you normally would, it breaks automatically. So the turret auto-breaks after destroying your, after stunning you out of your power, which saves you a little bit of time, and I guess it's like a nice consolation, uh, it auto-destroys itself, so that's nice. We then have Parker's Headband, which is an interesting add-on. It has a very small effect. It makes you, I believe, 5% uh, faster for only 3 seconds when you come out of a portal. It's a bit like the Green Nail for Sadako, except 
much, much weaker. That being said, when you come out of a portal, many times you will find a survivor immediately next to you and you will hear the heartbeat that happens. And in that situation, you really, really want to go to them. And I guess this cannot hurt, even though it seems like a relatively weak add-on. Just, just because of the three seconds. If this lasted longer, if it was a bigger number, then surely it would be pretty strong. Survivors should be aware this shouldn't be all that big of a deal, but it's never bad. We then have the crew headset. This is an interesting add-on. It increases by, I believe, six meters, uh, the distance from which you can hear footsteps when you're underground. If you're not aware, when the when the xenomorph goes into his little uh, cave of tunnels, he can it can look up to detect foot, uh, uh, footsteps above and try to come out at the right spot. And this increases the range at which this can be done. I have heard that the footsteps are a really underrated source of information for the killer, but at the same time, I don't know if you should be playing passive. It's almost like with Singularity looking through cameras and expecting people to run into them. Sometimes it's best to just go places and make things happen rather than hoping that you'll gather some information randomly. So I don't know if this will be very strong, but who knows, maybe it will. This could be the add-on that really goes up or down, depending on how footsteps turn out to be. Uh, now, we've already talked about most of these add-ons. We have four yellow add-ons from the Ashes End Sales to the Light one, and all of these add-ons do basically different things towards the same goal. All of these add-ons make the turrets a little bit worse. Either either they take longer to set up, or, they're, or, they're, or, or you take longer to be stunned by them. But I'm going to tell you right now, at least from the PTEB, the turrets did not seem all that threatening. If survivors managed to truly outsmart you, yes, they would feel a bit like a sting. But for the most part, you could be very aggressive and even destroy them with your tail pretty consistently without much trouble. So I don't imagine that this will be super strong. I'm going to guess that it might be similar to the overheat with Billy. Right now, overheat with Billy is so weak that you don't really need many add-ons to help. But that is my early estimation of these four yellow add-ons. We then, have, we then have the little bird, which is a cute one. When you come out of a station, out of a tunnel, if a survivor is nearby, you're going to hear a little heartbeat. This will extend that heartbeat for two seconds. Mm, not going to lie, I don't think there's a single heartbeat killer instinct add-on in the game that's good, and this is no exception. I think this is going to be weak. If you're onto them, you're onto them. You don't need the extra heartbeat. It's not going to help you that much. The next two add-ons are a little bit perplexing, though. They, they, um, they punish survivors, but they're very, very weak. Uh, the I think this is Brett's cap. It makes survivors blind when you break a turret. Any survivor within 60 meters of a turret, when you break it, is blind. Not even for a long time either. Uh, it's 25 seconds. This is one of the most pathetic add-ons that I can imagine. Why did they think this was good? You might not even break it, you might just ignore it. It's super strange, super, super strange. Like, if this was a strong effect, then I would understand, damn, ooh, they need to be careful around their own turrets. No, this is not even a big deal. Blindness is barely an inconvenience, and this will trigger so unfrequently, and to maybe one person at a time, really, really not a big deal. Uh, and then the remains, what are they called? The molten skin. Yeah, the molten skin remains. Uh, I need to feel better about not remembering its name. Is an arguably even worse add-on. Whenever a survivor deploys a turret... They are exhausted and hindered for five seconds, I believe it is. Not even five, three seconds. Pfft, this add-on is terrible. Uh, when a survivor is carrying a turret, they are very, very slow. This is something that they do outside of chase. They will never carry a turret while you're chasing them. They're very, very slow. So hindering a survivor and making them slower for three seconds, three seconds... Makes sense if this happens mid-chase, so that the killer can capitalize on that slower speed. But out of chase, making them exhausted for three seconds and making them hinder for three seconds, all they need to do is just walk to a gen for, for three seconds and they're fine. They're completely fine. So I generally think this add-on will need a buff or a rework, because as it is right now, it seems like a, an absolute nothing burger. Uh, but then again, keep in mind that anything on this tier list that I just described is theoretical, and these add-ons could easily change by the time the update comes. The other add-ons could change as well, and I'll do my best to update you to the best of my ability and to fill the gaps of my knowledge and to maybe cover some of the mistakes that I no doubt must have made when talking about all of these almost 700 add-ons. 
I'm sure that some of you can can correct that and can help in comments. Please comment something that you think I might have missed that would help someone that is watching this video. I would really, really appreciate it. I know that if I watch this video, I would probably nitpick something that I've forgotten. So I would really appreciate it if you do that. And if you don't, guess what? I still appreciate you. You've been watching me for nine hours and 25 minutes. You and I are tight now. Seriously, we're besties. Thank you so much. It means a lot that you even consider watching this video uh, for anywhere close to that amount of time. Thank you so much. And if you don't mind, I'm going to go to bed now.